twice to London, but a third time's the charm, or so they say. We find ourselves in Birmingham for the rest of the four days, and to finish off the week, that will finish off the year. The ALGS Year 3 Championship is here, and we are live with the best teams in the world who have found a way to the top. But they are just at the bottom of the summit. Who will climb to find themselves at the very pinnacle of what it means to be a champion? We are about to find out, because ladies and gentlemen, you only get one chance to do it, or you gotta wait again. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Birmingham. We're at Resorts World. It is a fantastic environment. And for those of you watching at home, whether it's early morning on the U.S. West Coast, or whether you're here live in England tuning in, or in the stands, we love you, we appreciate you, and we cannot wait to kick off our second day of the bracket stage, group stage, excuse me. Now, of course, my name is Randy, and I'm joined by two of the best in the business, my dear friends, Vicky and Lauren. Uh, what a great time to be here, and, and Vicky, again, Day two of our group stage. We still get to see all these teams go head to head. How is it feeling? You can already hear the crowd getting ready. I mean, if that isn't a statement enough, it's <laughs> pumping me up. I'm so excited. I mean, after everything we already witnessed, day number one, the action continues here in day number two. We saw some groups play twice, and now we're going to see that repeat here for the groups that didn't get to compete twice. They only played once, so that's why it's going to be so excited to see how that's going to even out the playground when it comes to the group stages. Similar dynamic, different energy, though. As you're right, Lauren, for some teams, they've already gotten two out of the way, mm -hmm. but now some will have that chance to be on main stage more. How's the environment feeling stepping into the arena this morning? I'm surprised that there's already as much energy going. It's very early in the morning and the fans are ready to go, which just makes me that much more excited. We saw so many phenomenal performances yesterday, some from teams that we hadn't necessarily anticipated for a day one performance, which means that today's gonna be tougher for some of the teams that ended up towards the bottom, towards the middle. But like you said, a couple still need to get that second series in in general, and that's gonna completely change up the standings. Yeah, well, it's easy to do it once, but can you do it twice? Can you repeat it? Can you close out? That's obviously the question that these teams are asking themselves and asked hopefully last night as they went over the tape. But if you didn't get, catch it and have a chance to see it, we've got a little bit of a recap for you for how day one went because it was very entertaining and also surprising in some ways. A versus B started off with Dreamfire, Vicky, mm -hmm. having an amazing performance. In this group, Dreamfire found themselves taking two dubs, a third place finish, but not only did they take those two dubs, they finished not only with the win, but with double digit KP. That allowed them to skyrocket in the overall standings for the group stage A and B. They finished with 78 points, but we got to see some more action in group C and D. Yeah, C and D, the only time that DZ has played so far, and they didn't even need a win to be at the top of their leaderboard. Two seconds place finishes with 14 and 12 kills respectively put them right at the top so if that's why anybody wondering where DZ is in the overall leaderboard they've only <laughs> played one time so they still have lots of opportunity to get those points on the board they were followed very closely though one point behind them was NRG a team that gave us a very standout performance on day one as well you'll see that reflected here in those series results so excited to see what both of those squads can do later on a lot of impact representation Dreamfire Blackhand Iron Blood Gaming all great performers A&D would close out the day though we'd finally see these teams play for the second time and it would ultimately end up being a, a match of juggernauts that Optic Gaming would come out on top of. We've talked about Skittle Cakes and his ability to predict, predict zones, but what we didn't know was how Dropped was going to fit in to Knock and Skittle's already established identity. Obviously, Duplex earlier in the year being a part of this team and now having to adjust, but they have adjusted quite well. 62 points, a first place, but a notable finish with Moist Esports right behind and I think ultimately when you consider that this is just the beginning there's so many different teams Vicky that are bouncing back and forth in terms of the leaders uh, the, the 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 pack that we think is trailblazing and ultimately maybe teams that we're starting to say this could be a contender to hoist the trophy at the end of the day. Yeah, there's so many teams that I'm excited to watch, honestly, now going into this. How is Alliance going to do? We know we're seeing some changes going into that roster. Say hello to Effect, even Wives <laughs> making their appearance. Uh, listen, I'm just really excited uh. to see how that plays out. But also, teams like Xset. Yeah. Like you mentioned, some teams haven't been able to play two mm -hmm. in those lobbies, but this is where we get to see which of our teams are going to fare in the winner's bracket or which ones are going to start in the loser's bracket tomorrow. Absolutely. That's left us here with the standings as it goes 
for day number two to jump in. Because yes, we did see amazing performances over A. And TSM, NRG, Optic, they have found their way into a top three position. But remember, they have played two sets already. Iron Blood Gaming, Black Hand right behind. Dreamfire, something I want to notice, and we'll talk about them a lot today. They've only played one set. So they played twice today, and they are still in the top 10. And when you talk about what does this mean, it really just means you are now getting yourself a chance to be in the winner's bracket. And yeah. then it all starts again. Yeah, it, which is crazy when you consider, like you said, one performance. We've seen so many of these teams not match that in two. So this is what's called impressive. Now, also, though, we need to talk about the other regional representation. We saw some pop-up moments from Real Life, from Start of Fart, Start of Fight, from uh, uh, Team Singularity from Tom Young Kung. Yeah. I mean, we could not stop talking about some of the APAC pop-up moments from yesterday as well. Absolutely, and when you take a look at these 20 teams, if it finished now, they'd be in our winner's bracket when we get to the bracket stage tomorrow. But the teams below that, in 30th to, to 40th, obviously right now have a little bit of work to do. For some, it's just a matter of having to play twice today. So you'll see that balance out. For some, maybe like Alliance, or if we take a look at our bottom 40, it just maybe is that they've got to figure figure out how they're going to approach this tournament to be more effective. We know Dreamfire with one can get all the way up to seven. What do these teams have that's stopping them from being there? Maybe Effect joining this squad for our Mia crew. We'll see if they can have uh, the title of the Hope of Europe or EMEA still after this. But as we settle in, it's obviously now talking about what is going on today. We've seen, uh, you know, B and C now have a chance to get uh, excited and, and connected to one another. And in terms of the, the way that I think this tournament has gone, these matchups often really determine how a team performs. It's, there's so many little things in terms of drop spots and early contests that we've seen, even with TSM and Kick yesterday, really change the narrative of how a game goes. Man, when you, you really want to just go in for that 50-50 <laughs> and go over and over again and you hope for a different result. I mean, it happened once, but that didn't do anything for them, unfortunately. Are we going to see them do something different or are they going to keep contesting tier one teams it's going to be very difficult but then you will get to walk away with lackluster points yeah and when you look at tsm as well specifically how did they manage that van glorioso was saying if i can't beat them in terms of the contest in the game i'll try to do it by getting the biceps bigger in the gym it didn't really help tsm still on top nrg though as well you had mentioned it a little bit glitter mm. surprising from them to be this effective in your eyes on day one i think definitely it was we've seen them have a little bit of a slower performance in the last land last season in general. We know just how strong that team is, and they came out yesterday trying to prove that. And you'll see just how dead even they are with TSM, with the exception of just the matches won. I mean, you've got 52 to 56 kills with energy actually in the lead there. You've got 25k to 26k damage. That's a negligible amount of, when it comes to a difference. I mean, the consistency that we saw out of both of these squads shows why, Rain, you've done so many Hal and Sweet pieces. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Do we have another one this land? Will it be a little different? Uh, I'm, you know, not going to say anything, but I do know that maybe this man right here, if he continues playing like this, could be a contender for another version of one of those docks in another moment. We have uh, an opportunity to gather the players. Look at that, 21 kills so far, 7,000. He is the kill leader on the day. His most picked legend, Catalyst. We've seen this happen with some of the stars in terms of our controller fraggers, AKA Verholz on the other side, also playing Catalyst, which is not necessarily what you would have assumed in terms of, I think, going into Apex or maybe playing your games. You might have somebody on a more aggressive character getting the most kills, but this is really the, I guess, responsibility that these two young stars have taken on for their teams, and it is certainly putting them in pole position. However, looking to today, let's switch gears and focus on B and C, because these are the teams that will be competing first off in this bracket stage. Excuse me, group stage again. I'm just excited. I want to get to the brackets, <laughs> guys. I want to get to elimination here. Uh, we're going to have those B and C groups come up really shortly, but again, just a little bit of a teaser uh, talking about it, Vicky. What are you most excited about with, with what today is going to bring? I want to see consistency for our teams that didn't get to play more than one game yesterday because we get to see now certain teams in action where is it that consistency going to transcend from yesterday's performance mm -hmm. into today? We highlight Dreamfire for a reason because to have that one standout performance allowing you to allocate 78 points is actually insane. Yeah, all right, well, we're going to bring those up, like we mentioned, to see the groups 
uh, B and C. Here they are, finally. Lauren, overview. We're going to talk more in depth in just a moment of what these groups mean. What is the tone of this B and C group for you? I mean, we've got lots of heavy hitters in here. Right in Group C alone, you've got DZ, you've got Alliance, like you said, Vicky. Now, Effect being able to jump on board with the squad for today. Dreamfire after a standout performance. But for me, I'm looking at Dojo, okay? They could not catch a break yesterday with some of those contests. They'd win them and then get thirded. I want to see what they can do without having to worry about that now. <laughs> well, there's certainly a lot of stories we can kind of jump into. For me, LG Chivas, another team that can win at any point in time. They could be a surprise today. Complexity as well. You know, Kimchi Lee, he's been hitting the memes all on Twitter <laughs> and, uh, you know, throughout the venue. I love the way he's performing. South America, will they have a chance? We'll find out because we've got to push now onto our teams that we're going to be focusing on. This is who we've selected, and I'm going to lead it in with you, Vicky, to talk about your selection here of Exa. Yeah, first off, I just love how all the IGLs are doing a special pose, striking a special <laughs> pose while they get to take a picture with the rest of their team. But my team to watch is Xset. I talked to them yesterday. I talked to the Nocturnal specifically. First off, they want to be under the radar. They don't want us to talk about them. They want to slide through. And I said, unfortunately, you guys are too consistent and you guys are too good <laughs> for us to just overlook you. Yeah. So while we are on this topic, this is the team that has gotten first into the Split 2 Pro League to then get fourth in the Split 2 playoffs. The same thing happened, it was replicated in the Split 1 Pro League. They didn't get first, but they got second. Mm. And then they got fourth again wow. in the Split 1 playoff. What is it that is the difference between their performance in the Pro League versus these playoff matches? Yes, you're in land. Yes, you're in front of a crowd. But th throw those nerves out the table. Hot sick, you know what? They call him Grandpa Hot sick for a reason. He's a veteran. <laughs> He's molded by all the pressure. And he knows what he needs to do to keep this team together so that way they can finally obtain that dub that they've gotten so close to getting. It's one of the things I almost, you know, want to talk about a little later, but is there a personality thing that needs to step up for X set? I know that uh, Sykes is ready to laugh at anything Fun says after yesterday, but, but what I'm does Nocturnal have serious. to say about this? Who has to be the golden child, so to speak, to kind of take on the mantle and say, we are a team, but yes, I'm the standout leader. I think every championship squad typically has that standout player that kind of takes a lot of the attention. Which person from X set will that be? Such a good team, but maybe that's what they're missing in terms of hoisting the trophy. But Glitter, I want to pass it on to you. Who's your one to watch here in B versus C? All right, we've said their name a million times. We're probably going to keep saying it throughout the day. For me, I have to talk again about Dreamfire. I mean, their performance yesterday cannot be ignored. They came out on top with 78 points, which a reminder, that was 20 points above the <laughs> second place team. That is a performance that cannot go unspoken about and honestly their macro yesterday was untouched they had done such a good job making those early rotations getting into solid positions knowing where the zone was going to end and holding it until the late game they were patient they were decisive and then you take into consideration you've got Roy running the whole show and the stats coming out of 3MZ 17 kills to match the 17 knocks over 5.6k damage I mean come on they're the only team that played once yesterday that is in the top 10 in the yes. group standings currently right now and that that is a statement on its own. I think ultimately, too, APAC has had such great representation, but let's just remove APAC. Let's just talk <laughs> Dreamfire. They have half the stands currently right now yes. filled with their uh, supporters. That, that's got to mean something. And we've seen that for two events now. They have a fan base that is coming with the signs, ready to go to cheer them on. And honestly, we've seen how much fun Dreamfire has. We're seeing it now yet again. They win, we get dances, we get poses. I mean, not only are they doing well, but they're having a good time. And that's one of the most important things to see. And I wonder if those dreams will stay in their heart and their fire in their gut. I don't know, we didn't plan that, but that was about as good as it could get in terms of synergy. <laughs> that sign, that phrase, that is what Dreamfire are hoping to bring to today. Will it unfold the way the fans in the front row are hoping? We'll find out very, very shortly. For me, though, I maybe have a twist on what I want to talk about. We've got some heavy hitters in here. Dark Zero, of course, playing, and I think they might be alongside TSM, the two teams I expect at the end of this land, unless someone proves differently, to be the ones holding the trophy. But a team that I think has a chance to get a little bit better than their top five finish in split two is FaZe. Honestly, I think FaZe Clan has had such an incredible journey to even getting to this position. Snipe down, returning from Halo, taking that hiatus, and coming back in to join Phony and Frex, obviously, with this kind of dynamic of a team that is veteran, that is uh, not necessarily journeyman, but also found their ways as a unit together better than maybe they would have expected had they 
pick two other players randomly and said, these are the two that I would play well with. It's just worked out for them. And for me, one of the biggest things I've asked and I've said to Phony as we rode the elevator down before this entire event started, he was about to get a workout in in a jacuzzi. I appreciate that <laughs> prep. But he also uh, commented on the fact that I said, you know, you need to be the one that steps up. If there is someone who in this team leads them to victory, becomes the personality and helps to bridge that gap between your other two players, I think Phony is it. And I think he's taking on that challenge this tournament. I think it's a Cinderella story too, because Phony has always wanted to be part of FaZe, you know, and then Snipe Down making the realization and the adaptation, you know what, I've been gone for a little bit from the scene. I'm gonna step down. What I was doing wasn't working. Gave that mantle to Phony and in him taking the reins, not only part being part of the team that he really loves, but also has the IGL to help guide this team to victory is the story that you really love to see from FaZe. Yeah, and I really can't wait to see if those three guys have a chance to do it today. We will find out very shortly as BNC is nearly underway, which means that we've got to dive into our talent predictions. What do we think is going to actually happen right now? Well, you know, I'm going against who I'm watching because I think Dreamfire, Ooh. with the support, is actually going to be able to get it done. But again, a lot of choices. Vicky, you're going Dark Zero. I, I appreciate that as well. Yeah, they played once yesterday, just like Dreamfire, but I talk about consistency, and I have seen that from Dreamfire before, but last line there was a bit of struggle, and now I want to be able to see things change up going into this championship. Dark Souls has been one of the teams alongside TSM that has been the storyline of the century when it comes to champs. So that's why I had to go with Dark Zero for this group, because now we get to see them play again. I mean, Lauren, it's, it is kind of hard to pick anybody but Dreamfire right. after only seeing them once and seeing 78 points on the board. Above TSM in that group. TSM was the second place team, 20 points above them. I mean, obviously we agree here, Rain Dia also agrees with us, and I trust Dia with my <laughs> life when it comes to some of this stuff. So I feel good about this choice now. Yeah, and let's take a look at what the other talent have said. Gaskin with a Dark Zero pick. Graceful going Alliance, representing Amia. It's been fun to hang with Graceful backstage as well. Peeps going 100 Thieves. That seems like a very Peeps pick as well. And Dreamfire <laughs> and Zephyr, another one on the Dreamfire train. We'll see what ends up happening. There's only so much prediction that we can do because we're about to get it underway and see exactly what unfolds. If you are watching today, though, what does that mean? It means that you have a chance not just to see some great Apex, but also to earn some Twitch drops. That's right. You, just by watching, will have a chance to grab the Crimson Hawk Valkyrie skin today. So watch 60 Minutes, you'll have a chance to actually go play Apex and look a little cooler, look a little different. People will ask you, where's that from? You say, oh, by watching the ALGS. And it just gets better. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, specific, beautiful ALGS stickers, hollow sprays, and gun charms that you can only get here this weekend. So make sure to watch in and enjoy. All right, I'm excited. I'm a little, I'm a little bummed that I, you know, I gotta watch backstage, but I will have my Twitch drops rolling. So even though I can't be, you know, actively in Twitch, I will have the drops happening as well. So hopefully you guys follow suit. It's been great to open today, and you know what? I'm ready for some action. Let's send it over to our casters to kick off day two of our group stage here. I believe we've got Dia and Tiff ready for the action. Thank you so much, Rain Day, Vicky, and Glitter. That is right. Spider Tiff and Dia, we will be bringing you all the action for the second day of group series, and I couldn't be more excited. But Rain Day did mention here, he was talking about maybe getting his Twitch drops, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be back there 1v1 challenging Vicky. Didn't we see a little bit of that action yeah, yesterday? Yeah, we, we, we did, we did. And she'll probably show him some clips in between, just to, yeah. Yeah, that's been sure. kind of interesting. Vicky, if you guys ever see her in the arena and she shows you her clips, definitely enjoy those. But let's go ahead and look at what we've got in store for you guys today with that map schedule. We will be kicking things off on World's Edge for the first three maps and then switching over to Storm Point later. And when we start off on World's Edge, you know, I only got to cast over some Storm Point yesterday with you, Dia. We've got a lot of action that's going to be handled very quickly. Yeah, you know, I'm really I'm really happy that we are getting to start all of our matches on World's Edge as well. It's a typically more calculated map where teams tend to share a lot smaller spaces and it'll give the more veteran squads, the opportunity to really flex their muscles. And the team that I have to be looking at is Alliance as oh, we pick. jump in. Yeah, you you know exactly what I'm talking about. The changeup going into today is going to mean so much. As even yesterday, while their performance was fun, it, it wasn't the Alliance that we saw in Split 2 playoffs. Yeah, and I love that you bring that up because when you think of Alliance and Split 2 playoffs, the one difference there was they had effect at the early stages of group yep. season. Throughout the entirety of Split 2 playoffs, effect accumulated 75 eliminations. He was at the top of the board, and 23 of those 
just came from just his first appearance in group stages. But now that they already have one under their belt, Effects kind of got his little work to cut out for him there. Yeah, this is not going to be an easy lobby by any means. We've got our drop spots up. And that means that some of you are going to be picking up the contests that are happening around the map. Riddle and FaZe thinking about going over by Climatizer. And then up in the top left, Xset and Element 6 at Trials. This is a really storied matchup that we also saw play out during the Split 2 playoffs. And it tends to be quite a difficult contest because both of these teams are not going to 50-50. They're not going to drop on each other's faces, but they will take every opportunity along the way to take each other down. Yes, and that's really smart, right? You have Trials there, you've got Skyhook, West, and they'll probably do some of the building looks there and run into each other. It's gonna be really tough for the rotations, but as we keep moving over, there's that Riddle Order versus Phase contest. And typically, if you're contesting at Climatizer and you have complexity over at Survey Camp, you know in your mind that there is about to be a contest, and that could be potentially an easy third party to look to clean that up. And with complexity coming into their second round of group stages, they're sitting in 40th place and need every point that they can get to situate themselves in that winner's bracket. Now, ha having spoken to Riddle, who's another team who needs every point that they can get, they started off yesterday with a 20th place finish. They were also contested, and it was, re it was really tough for them. The biggest thing for APAC North was going to be this battle for POIs coming into, into this championship. Now that we're on the now that we're back on World's Edge, now that Riddle had the opportunity to again fight for a POI, will they return constantly to Climatizer? Will they instead pivot to Overlook? We're about to find out as we've got Legend Select live in the arena, and we're starting to figure out how we're approaching this very first game of the day. Yeah, it's been really fun to see all the Legend Selects done live. You can see Timmy there on the Bangalore, Enemy on Cat, Designful Horizon. I did see a Loba yeah. in the midst, and I know a lot of teams that were electing to play Loba. It looks like it's going to be Polverex shooting me. When you're rotating out of a POI such as Tree, you want that quick rotation and you have to kind of loot on your way. And that's going to be really helpful when, whenever you've got Loba. Think of on your way. I saw some Valkyries picked up here as well, which is really interesting. Teams that are pivoting back to Valkyrie, even with evac towers in the game, find that early rotation so much more necessary. And let's not forget, sort of get out of jail free card that she can provide you at any point in the game. We are jumping into our first of the day match number one of C and D, excuse me, C and B oh. as we get ready to drop in. Everybody going to be pretty calm during the early stages. And in fact, taking a look at the drops, even as they lie now, it does look like Riddle has forfeited the contest early on and dropped over at Overlook instead of contesting phase acclimatize. Look, it's smart, right? Especially knowing where you started off early. You don't want to forfeit any more of those points, specifically when we're gearing up for that bracket stage that will be kicking off tomorrow. It is pretty imperative that you can find yourself in the winner's bracket to situate yourself going into finals. As a big buff for Riddle as well. They've dropped, as we said, near Overlook, where they have a ring console to make use of. Since they're running Catalyst, they'll be able to grab that and then start rotating in. Geyser's also got one, and they've got Ascent landing over there. One of the other teams that could take a step up today. They did finish ninth in yesterday's lobby, which is not bad for them, but they are coming off the back of a land performance that they surely want to write the course of. Exactly, and this is where it all starts. They have that ring console. You're right, Riddle Order already just popped theirs, and you can see immediately where that zone will pull for them. It's nowhere near Overlook. We're going down towards the tree, so the dojo landing at Lava Siphon will have a really preferred rotation. Dark Zero at Harvester, and then Alliance as well with the survey beacon information should be just fine. And notably, Dark Zero will be rotating likely over through Siphon if they want a bit of extra information. You do have the opportunity to go down to Tree, but it's very out of the way. And Dark Zero do have, I, I will say, the opportunity to go a little bit slower, mm. to farm up teams that are rotating. And they know exactly where the ring is going since they, they landed with both beacons right next door. Oh, that's very nice. You can see Element 6 knowing they were able to get Trials quite nice, but Enter Force 36, this is what you want. Sitting on triple blue, knowing that zone is coming to you, but you have to be prepared to fend off any of the early rotations that will be coming through. LG Chivas lands in launch light. You know that this is likely a choke point that they will filter through. I I'm really scared to fight against LG. I, I gotta be honest, this is the team that is known for fighting in North America. We've seen them slay incredibly quickly. 
And their rotation, as you said, extraordinarily fast. All with triple blues as well. Means that they have a bit of extra HP than those in tree might otherwise have tree, not as powerful of a POI typically. Yes, and with Jaguares on the Catalyst, they should be able to lock down that side of the building and maybe coexist with E36. Now, the issue with that is maybe E36 is like, hey, maybe we take this early engagement and clear this building. But honestly, at that point, with Dark Zero so close and operating on the low ground buildings, I wouldn't even want to chance that. But start thinking about the teams that are going to have the longest rotations, Phase, Complexity, Exit. Phase coming from Climatizer, since Riddle did leave them, would leave Overlook open to go ahead and rotate through there, grab that ring console information for themselves. Be really nice to have a little bit of extra data. Plenty of time to pick that up as well. Overlook and Geyser both having ring consoles, even if you want to go over down, down towards Big Mod, as Ascend are doing. Northeption, meanwhile, they're coming down towards the south from a bit of a different angle. Going to move through Landslide and see if they can get a bit of additional information. And if they want, like can actually find the people beacon and see where everybody else is going, where the rest of the lobby thinks the ring is going to end, which can provide you just as much help, if not more, than a ring console. Oh, but we've already got LCDF, Kitharan, going down, but they're hitting the quick res, and they do have the loot from Big Mod. You know, that was originally a contest between Gombreo and Tosan, but it looks like they may have split that POI amicably, or maybe Geo dropped to actual stacks, which provides a good chunk of loot. And for all the loot redistributions that we've had, our teams are doing so well at finding decent loot and shields, and then crafting them up. 100 Thieves may be hoping they can find a crafter pretty soon. Double whites is not where you want to start and certainly not where you want to finish this lobby. But they're bunkering up for now, which is an interesting choice. There's not a whole lot of defensive capability outside of the legend choices on 100 Thieves, and it'll make an actual push coming into Lava Siphon that much more difficult to defend against. Dreamfire's position also really difficult to manage. This is such a tough one to hold. Specifically, everyone is going to be looking at them. And Pulverex, with them being on their rotation 30-30 in hand, able to just poke and prod at Dreamfire, who showed off so exponentially yesterday. Our desk, their fans here, we want to see them do well. And starting it off like this, hey, they were able to retain the res on Roy, though. It's really cool to see how different teams sort around how they want to deal with loot. Loba and Watson, two big picks that we've seen to make sure that you have enough shields, both providing you the extra economy of Apex Legends. We even saw Newcastle picked up yesterday to try and answer a bit of that question for teams. Find a way to gather more bats that make such a difference at any stage in the game. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, complexity. They started in survey camp. They rotated over to the survey beacon on the outskirts. Hit that, grabbed an evac tower, and are now in landslide getting themselves a survey beacon for all of the information. And that means they'll actually see other teams that could be rotating in on them. And there's only really one up to the north of complexity. Exet have just left Skyhook proper and are starting to make their way down. A very slow rotation for them. The same cannot be said of LCDF who have just made their way past Harvester. In this ravine, you do have a decent bit of safety, but it isn't a place that I'd want to stay in the long term, especially with a ring pulling as far south as it is. Good smoke out there from Sikop and Kizaran trying to get inside. At least just hang out here for the moment. Good use of the Jenny, immediately fencing up the area, but this is tough, right? They're not, they're electing to play Watson as opposed to Catalyst, and Catalyst yesterday had an 80% pick rate, so very interesting. Yeah, w Watson helps in some situations, especially against Fuse, right? 100%. Super nice to have, but as you say, is more of an economy pick than a strong pick for playmaking. Catalyst is just so ridiculously flexible, and it's why we see her so often appear in team composition. Well, we've got the rest of the lobby setting up for their own way to play. North Epstein actually have a fantastic position here to continue to lay down abuse to those rotating through Harvester, and that's going to be a really common rotation for anyone coming from the north. 10 in the building and LCDF is trying to apply pressure, keep them from poking and prodding, but to close that distance would give LCDF, but we're keeping on the, the method here. But okay, so here's the deal. LCDF, they only have five shield cells. You're talking about economy with Watson, yep. having that Jenny out, you get, I believe it's around 175 shield rechargeability just from that Jenny, which is perfectly nice. But even get an Evo, keep landing shots like that. A longbow is gonna be really nice and a gold longbow, no less. I like the pickup from Psychop. We'll see how it works out. This is a pretty unusual scope as well. It's very difficult to find gold sniper scopes, but 
When you're, when you're in a lobby with a lot of Bangalores, that could result in a few extra kill points going your way. I would like to see if we are going to abuse the particular weapon that you've been able to pick up, an opportunity to grab a little bit more high ground that is available in places like Shrink. Complexity, they've made their way in, and Cody on the rotation goes down to one HP, finally able to find a chance to heal, but utilizing the Beast of the Hunt to go ahead and get that speed boost, get to cover Monsoon and them. They would like to play this RV, but it's going to be a little challenging. The issue we saw on World's Edge yesterday was the amount of fuses in the lobby able to provide all the knuckle clusters, which was making playing RVs so difficult. And Complexity are playing it on an even harder mode because they don't even have catalysts to seal the doors. They don't have the traditional, the old pick of Caustic even. No defense to put up in here. So this is a temporary stopping point, but it won't be what wins them the game. Alliance, meanwhile, are trying to win a fight on their own terms outside up against, I believe, Element 6. It is Element 6, and we know Tyler's a oh crazy fragger, but this is effect for showing it. Yuki, anytime you get a PK in his hands, he can go off, able to grab a knock onto Tyler, but does get traded out. So we ask yourself, is effect going to be able to clutch up this oh. moment? No, the third party from North Epson coming in. They want a piece of this action. And with Case Winnie and Slayers, the only two members up from Element 6, this should be really Jump. enticing. Jumping onto a weakened E6, like does waste a clip into the knockdown shield. We're coming over the top right now. It's really difficult to contest a Bloodhound push through all the chaos. E6 lose a Tyler. Now, still got to play defense on the low ground. North Epson are wasting a lot of time finishing off what's just a duo. I almost wonder if they want to just relocate past it. I love what they're doing, right? Clearing out E6 is going to allow them to rotate through and have their back on the furthest side of the ring. But Black Hole will be wasted. They're able to destroy it immensely quick. And a 3v2, Ling does take the know. issue to them, but loses out on their shields. Now Slayers is one to clutch up, but goes down to one HP. The number advantage just not in their favor. Now Case Winnie, the IGL, immensely talented, is going to need to clutch up here or disengage. Swing has the opportunity to survive. In fact, the scan from like doesn't even reveal him. So Swinney has gone out and left the rest of the team. There's no point in trying to salvage this fight anymore. As East had lost it basically from the get-go. North Epson took a while to clean up, but now we finished and we'll see what E6 can do. Exit, on the other hand, they've got a different story to tell as they defend Thermal Station from rotation out of the north side. Ah, uh, you can see North Epson rotating out, but Exit able to regain. They not does have the Bangalore ultimate available to utilize should that be necessary, but I don't think you have to expend it just yet doubling back down into Harvester. The last team we witnessed in this area was LCDF. Likelihood of them to still be here. We're going to hit a quick pause, make sure that our players are all sorted. It was nice to see Exet taking a bit of harass, like you said, towards Harvester. FaZe are actually sharing space in Harvester with LCDF, another team that we saw trading. A really nice thing about the position that FaZe holds is that they've got priority over the Crafter in Harvester, which is why you're rotating through there in the first place, especially as that team that has come from so far away, has looted up so much. At this point, you are using the Crafter as a bat machine, getting yourself ready for the very difficult rotation that will take you further south into a zone that is continuing to pull towards tree and a bit of lava siphon. Yeah, it's really tough. So you mentioned their rotation, right? We thought they would potentially go to Overlook, maybe hit that ring console, but they actually dipped down into Epicenter, which also had a ring console. So it's such a nice pattern for them to just drop straight down, go through, maybe potentially get another information because Harvester has a ring console as well. So they're just kitted out on utilities, health, and information. But think of what lies about them. Because even if you have that information, trying to get through LCDF, try to get through Area 310, and then you have to break through Dreamfire on your way, which that will not be easy by any means. Especially because Dreamfire have, Dreamfire have put themselves in the large and in charge position in the lobby. That's why you play the bridge, and it's why it's so difficult to play the bridge in any, any ALGS position, because other teams really want that same ability to influence the lobby, and especially the teams that are continuing to move in, especially not on their own schedules. The next ring closes, there are gonna be a lot of squads that are over in the Harvester area, even those that are still sat in Lava Siphon that, that are forced out in ways that they wouldn't otherwise have expected or have been able to plan for. Yeah, 
Yes, now you got Dreamfire on your screen right there. I had a chance to sit down and talk with 3MZ yesterday. He was nominated for an EA Positive Player Award. And when I was asking him what that felt like, he told me he was over the moon to be mentioned in that. And just with so many talented individuals, he was talking about Verholz and Hackett. So being able to be among those legends in his eyes, he was just ecstatic. So all the fans out there representing Dreamfire, the coolest of signs and everything about it, I know I've got the dreams in my heart as well and would love to see them do exponentially well. But so let's start to think about it, right? As we pull further to that zone you were mentioning, outside of Lava Siphon, who lands Lava Siphon, Dia? Yeah, it, it, this one is Dojo and, and, and fortunately for them, they've been able to just chill in Lava Siphon. They landed there and they have lived there the entire game. It's a fantastic place to play the game from, especially when the zone does start to pull tree, because often you will have zones that pull a little further north as they start to move and everybody piles into tree, they go, oh, never mind. We're actually, we're actually just gonna play the, the uh, high ground to the south of Lava Siphon, and that seems to be what Dojo are set up for, though we haven't jumped on board with them just yet. Exactly, and I think that's gonna be really smart for them. They do have the catalyst. There is an RV out there that is able to play, and you start to think about the dynamics of that team, and I was kind of perusing social media to see how all that was working, and you know, Design said it's all business today. He's ready to lock it in, so let's hope they can do it. We know they have the fragging power, but the game is back, and let's get on board with Xset, who was currently looking at Harvester, but you know, as soon as fun put up the fingers and said, Shh, they turned around. You know, it's funny, their rotation's been kind of stymied just because of a small skirmish that they took. It was start a fight just ahead of them that are now rotating in and retaining high ground outside of tree. It's a good spot for them to be in. That is unique. Actually, we were talking about Dojo just chilling at Lava Siphon, but look how much space that yep. they've extended out to hold. I know that Designful will typically kind of separate out to maybe look for some action there, but you have one member completely into that next ring, but the other two have circled back around, so it looks like they're reuniting, expecting a push, and knock. He's taking the action as Sykes completely finds out on K-Swinney. So K-Swinney, Element 6, will be eliminated despite his best effort to get some survivability. It's been a while coming. A good attempt from Swinney, but it's really difficult to survive, not just when you're a solo, but when you don't really have the ability to craft your, your banners back up, get your teammates into the game. So a, a conclusion that was a long time coming. We've seen Element 6 on the way out for a little while. Exet collecting that kill point will be nice for them, but the position they put themselves in right now over by Thermal as the ring starts to close means that they're going to be part of a multi-team fight towards the southwestern side of the map. Ooh, North Epson, no stranger to fighting here. We knew they were incredibly talented when it came to that. That is something that stood out throughout Split 1 playoffs, throughout Split 2 playoffs, and now coming in with a new roster, seeing Leica coming in from Naked and Ling stepping into the roster as well. It's been a joy to see them adapt throughout the group stages. And speaking of adapt, Gibby Bubble engaging here against Dark Zero, taking on 100 Thieves. Can Peeps pick make it through our most recent as Land. soon as the bubble expires, they've got no choice but to fight close range. Wall goes out, Dark Zero throws in a Horizon Ultimate to pressure 100 Thieves out of the building. And the nice thing about being in tree with everyone else is that once the team is out of the building, once 100 Thieves are no longer there, they're no longer your problem. Everyone else is going to be taking shots at them. North Epson and Riddle go down in the meantime, but Dark Zero continue to hold squads out of sharing space with them. This is crazy because they have Gombre Otosan that is currently in their building on the second story that can kind of just dump down and be like, oh, we want a piece of this. Meanwhile, FaZe not able to make it out despite having all of the loot, despite having an L-Star. The dojo was able to eliminate them. Oh, nice swing from Junghee. Takes down Zainu, and now Dark Zero on the ropes. Very much so. Defensive cooldown already wasted for them. Justna does good work, even though he can't see. But Gumbar Ochosan are struggling to push through all the knuckle clusters that Dark Zero keep throwing at them. I mean, Justna on the fuse is just punishment to Dark Zero right now. And I always say, if Gumbare is going to contest, if you leave Juzna up, he will go crazy. And that's exactly what I expect here. But 100 Thieves do lose out on Vaxlon, and they're looking to bring him back. But Zainu, as well, has exited. And Jen Burton and Zero do not have the banner. Meanwhile, think about the capability of trying to get something back in here. It just might not be possible, because you have Geo, you have DZ, and it's chaos here with 100 Thieves. Might be a 2v1 soon. Jen Burton almost finds a knock. 100 Thieves on the disengage, leave just the bubble behind, but Jen's flanked as well. Things are getting really difficult, and LG Chivas are here to clean up. 
Enter going up against 310 right now, looking for the last member, but just kidding. It's Enterforce 36, and just like that, they are eliminated. LG Chivas will have to focus on that rotation, but as we jump back to GO to 100 Thieves, this building has been absolutely chaos, and at this point, Dark Zero is just living underneath, like the trolls under a bridge. And, and unfortunately, they've got no choice. They need to collect Zainu for their chance to win the game, and they certainly can't be rotating ahead of the squads that will then be leaving this building. This is the exodus that I talked about. This is where we are going to drop so many teams moving out into the open. Start by eSports. They are one of the people that are not benefiting the most. And Sleep trying to clutch up. Sleep? And he is doing Sleep? Work. Sleep, what are you doing? He's awake. Complexity is eliminated. And one HP, the dream, going for the shield swap. Can we get the reset onto Jinx? Keeping the dreams of Star to fight alive right now. We'll see how long they last as Dark Zero need to make their own stand. LG go down, but Jen Burton bites the dust trying to find a shield swap. Yo, that's going to be at the hands of Ascend. The last we saw them, they had landed dead center of tree and were beginning their own rotation. But as we jump towards the free cam, we'll have to wait to see what happens to the remnants of that squad. I saw a little bit of Ascend there and jumping on board with Hong Young Kung. They are perfectly healthy, currently sitting on five points in this series. And Dojo up on top by Lava Siphon is the team that is in arguably the best position moving towards the next ring. And even in this one, they and Dreamfire are the two squads that have high ground to work with. Well, teams like Tom Young Kun down here are the ones that unfortunately are in a tighter spot. Dreamfire are going to try and contest the one other team for a chance to win the game. This is a play for the win. Dreamfire sharing space underneath the dojo gives themselves an opportunity to, with them, hold out the rest of the lobby. Yeah, but this is really tough. You only have two members of the dojo trying to hold off Dreamfire. The other third is so separated out, trying to put the pressure on Ascend and keep them where they want them. This is a typical dojo strategy. And if they are sitting on seven eliminations already, what is going to happen? We knew this is the power of the dojo. You said it yesterday, Dia. The most important series of their life was yesterday. Well, actually, it's probably today. An incredibly important impactful moment for them. We'll see if they can close it out among some of the best teams in the world. We've got a prayer on the outside. Gunbarrio goes on taking to the skies and ascend, just laying in the damage off the side. Start a fight, not going to be able to continue anymore. Sleep, well done, but now it's time for the top six. Send. Have the Prowler. You can see he's using it on the full auto. Select fire, singing, and post skill. It's so funny. I, they have some really cool Watson um, posters over there. They were doing autographs yesterday, and they were saying they were felt a little nervous, but it looks like they're shaking some things off. And Tom Young Kung, they're going to have to shake off those nades because way last standing. Very tough. You just have to survive at this point because trying to get a reset amidst all the chaos with Ascend on the other side. Unfortunately, they will fall here. Top four squads and Ascend are poising themselves to climb back up the group stage leaderboards. Nice that Nocturnal ended up picking up the kill as well because while it was Tom Young Kun that were in the position to be bullied, now it's Xset most of all. Even Ascend have a better position with the Watson Crypto squad that they're running. And importantly, having talked to Kasher before the competition, the value that Crypto provides you in a scenario like this is so high. Your ability to scout and get a full picture of what's going on as, as an IGL, even start a fight at an advantage with the EMP, could be devastating jumping onto squads like Dreamfire or Xset if you need to play defense. Dreamfire is set up so beautifully here. They have all the shield cells they're sharing, but they also have shield swaps available to them. Should Xset decide to push down, they can immediately grab that because that's the issue here. It's all about timing. With the dojo sitting on top of Dreamfire, Xset cover, it's all about who has to move first and how can you position yourself to make the other teams engage. Dreamfire's spot is really unusual for them. Most of the time during the course of the last day, during the course of the championship, I should say, they've been the ones that play the active high ground position. Recognizing they finally cannot do that, this is still a game-winning spot. You can hold on to low ground for long enough that you straight up win, but it's going to be critical that they use the Dark Veil to block off lines of sight from other teams like Ascend and Xset, because otherwise it is just going to be third party on fourth party on Dreamfire ultimately not being able to find a win.
G7 scout in the hands of post kill, but only 30 bullets in it, so he's got to make every single one count. But you can see XSet taking to the sky, but with the dojo on high ground, they're able to take down two members and knock his last alive. But unfortunately, that was their only option to play for some more eliminations with these four squads at each other's throats. L Star in hands of Timmy now. They're going to start putting some pressure as Dreamfire cleans up the rest of XSet. And great Dark Veil vale to make it happen. Unfortunately, they exposed themselves to fire from the high ground. Pipe takes to the skies, and they're trying to push up to the dojo and have no way to do it. Fortunately for Dreamfire, the dojo have multiple avenues that they need to cover, blocking out Xset as well. They've got so little high ground left, and actually, Ascend have the chance to pick up a win here. The other two squads, Dreamfire and Dojo, have to fight. They're trying to retain high Stunning. ground. Go for a shield oh that God. keeps Timmy alive. That's what I'm used to seeing of Timmy, but Ascend, this is everything for them with the fences, with the Jennies, but they are making the push on the Dreamfire for the win as the Dojo is just go, eliminated. Luka getting all the damage and post kill, just throwing himself right into it. And yeah. Ascend, they are your winners of match number one. Fantastic win for Ascend, and it is the day that they needed it. Had a few questions about them as sitting at ninth coming out of yesterday. They had a lot to prove. The last land left them wanting so much. And to pick up a win, and a win coming out of Geyser, is the best start they could have had to the second day of championships. That has to feel good, too, because you think about playing the center of tree when that zone started to pulling, and including that mass exodus. Sometimes if you take the center of tree too early, it is almost a death sentence in game. But for them to manage being able to play from that position, survive the chaos of the rotate, and still prioritize it, Honestly, I told Post Kill he was one of my favorite Watson players yesterday, and that Jenny, the fences, everything staved off. It really, really was Watson, right? Yes. Well, you, you and I talked about this earlier, the sacrifice of the Catalyst Watson trade-off. Catalyst so flexible, but Watson is so dang good at what she does. Uh, makes unplayable positions playable, so many of our defensive legends do, but in a way that keeps not just abilities from disrupting you, but in the long term, ordinances that, as we saw looking at Dojo, can be game changing. The nade from Roy on the low ground completely destroyed Dojo's position on the high ground. And while we have a relook at the final circle over on board with Ascend, you can see so much ammo not in the hands of Posty. I mean, we need to go. Does anyone have light ammo? Who says that a lot? I mean, just how he's not in this lobby. Regardless, they were able to do so well over here, utilizing that to keep pressure going out. But the moment they see the Dark Veil, vale, they start fencing up. They already have the Jenny at their, oh, no. One's for spare, one at their back. Look, he's just prepped. And uh, I like that as soon as Dark Veil vale goes down, you lay down a single fence as well. It may look a bit silly, silly little fence, but it actually fence. really helps because nobody on the other side is available to shoot down that fence. A nice EMP afterwards makes sure that Ascend stay topped up relative to their opponents. And at this point, you just watch the kill feed because eventually we are going to get a nice nade coming in. And that's what ultimately decides the fate of JoJo leaving Ascend fully in the driver's seat. I mean, just think, if post kill would have been catalyst here, they would have had a Dark Veil vale and Pierce spikes and all the incoming ordinances that you mentioned would have taken them out so they bide their time they see the dojo get eliminated and immediately start putting the pressure but the fact that post skill just full sends straight into the mix of it has the heirloom out is just it's just epic so congratulations to ascend that has to feel good I, I really appreciate it. watching how it all went down and with a very different read on the meta as well. Ascend with their first place finish. Do comp a nice bit of damage, but it's Dojo who finished third, who were the most active during the course of that game, putting out so much work across the rest of the lobby. They didn't pick up as many kills, but uh, you can tell that they were sitting on high ground. I mean, this is very impressive and very typical of what we saw in a prior series with a lot of the point sponging happening on the top three teams, mm -hmm. allowing for so many changes throughout the later games. But Ascend, a 26-point game to start off the morning is everything that you need. Dreamfire, though, 20 points. And then the Dojo. Yeah, you're right. From the high ground, let me just tell you, 5K, they are putting pressure on everyone. Now, I'm sure the Dojo are going to look back at this game and have a hundred ways that they could have played it differently. But let us not forget that we have just jumped from LCQ to top three on the world stage. This is a great place for them to be, a great place for Dreamfire, and importantly, Ascend. Because Kashera had his confidence shaken after the last land, still was working on it, still playing his own game, and that's what he said. 
I want to play my own game. I don't want to be taking the read off of anyone else. It lands them at the top for now, where teams like 100 Thieves didn't quite manage to jump into the top 10. Enter Force 36, Riddle Order, North Eption, and even other great EMEA IGLs like Element 6 and Alliance end up falling very early in our first game of the day. That's pretty tough. I mean, the point sponging is definitely noticeable with everyone on the second half of the scoreboard being zero to three. You have your work cut out for you because we do start the bracket stages tomorrow. Your goal is to make it into the winner's bracket and that has to start with your second showing. And as we talked about, points cut off is really important as we go through today. Yes. Some of these teams didn't really get the opportunity to accumulate a lot yesterday. And uh, what, what was the cutoff that we were talking about? It was... It was realized with 92 points. That was the cutoff for split two playoffs on the group stages. And Complexity was the one just out 91 points. So you know them playing here today. They want to get in that winner's bracket and they have their work cut out for them. But we're going to cut to a quick break. And when we come back, match number two. WD Black, the official storage partner of the Apex Legends Global Series. Welcome back, everyone, to the Apex Legends Global Series Year 3 Championships. We are live from Birmingham, UK, and I could not be more excited because we got match number two after way after Ascend take that match one victory with style, with fences, with Watson. And with their own game plan is the most important aspect of that. This is something that, as an IGL, differentiates Kashera from so many others, being not, not focused, honestly, on flexibility. That's what I talked to him about just before the, this event started, was not about how he's looking at how other teams are playing Bloodhound and how we can play, but he's like, no. I think that the best way to do this is Crypto Watson. So we're gonna play Crypto Watson, and if it works, it works. And it worked. And I, 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 I cannot understand the unshakable confidence that he has in himself, but it has absolutely been worth it here on the world stage. There's only been a handful of crypto players that we've witnessed throughout the playoffs, one of them being Noises over there on J-Lings, but Kashera has been the mainstay of crypto. His confidence on it, his ability to hit some of the biggest regains has been absolutely insane, often coming in there with the drone, getting double reses, 
is in mid to late game. And, you know, honestly, the fact is, when they don't have to do that, look at what they're able to do. And, and the biggest part of the, that pick as well is how much room for error, human error, it just takes out of your game. Because it's all on the AGL. It's not about, oh, well, you didn't come that they were in exactly this position or that their fences were set up here or whatever it was. Because your IGL has all the information. And it's why we see really confident IGLs play crypto so often. A, a legend that most people would rather choose to forego for a little bit more firepower instead gets the front row seat to a lot of action as IGLs set up for their team to execute on fights with full information. I mean, that's sometimes that's what you need to do. There's a difference between playing like a very aggressive crypto with getting the information, relaying it quick, hitting the EMP and pushing immediately, just maybe like 10 seconds behind your entry and refragger. But that rather than sitting in the drone for, you know, 50% of the fight ahead of time and trying to kind of micromanage your team. Now, since, since we've got Ascend in a fantastic position right now, the best thing that we can do is see how that translates into the next couple of games. Since this time they were over at Geyser, they ended up getting a ring console. Yes. That gives you such a head start. And Geyser's a difficult position to play out of. Anyone will tell you that. Uh, so my, my, my largest question is going to be when you don't end up having the ring console to help you out, how does that factor in with you having to rotate into places like Big Mod or even Overlook where we've now got Riddle landing? It is going to be the test for us and seeing how far they can go as we take a look back at how they manage this G7 in hand. And Ascend, honestly, approaching this when the time is right with Reckless Abandon. Something I really appreciate about their final 3v3 because they played the rest of this really conservatively as they very much had to. Trapped in this corner with Dojo looking on them from above. But as soon as Dojo's out, Ascend know they win the game. And it's only Lufka who's out here going, what, what? we're just, we're running at, we're running at them. And it worked. I think that was beautiful that you mentioned the conservative play style of it because utilizing the marksman rifles from a distance to be able to put damage down on the chaos that's happening in front of them while remaining in cover because that can be one of the biggest issues with Ascend when I was watching kind of all the prep and preparation coming into champs is was your main fragger overextending? Was that Lufka getting caught off guard? But here, it's completely different just from match number one. So maybe they're starting to adapt and turn the tides. Or maybe, hey, they just woke up, had some good breakfast, and they're feeling themselves. <laughs> that very well could be. I'll tell you who should be feeling themselves as well. Dreamfire and their fans in the audience. Because while they may not have come away with the win at the end of this, it was a very well played game from them and one that sticks to exactly what made this team great during the course of yesterday's games. Sitting up on high ground, prioritizing positions from where they could be active. And what really impressed me most was what Graceful was highlighting about this team yesterday. Their ability to make snap decisions, like jumping onto a low ground position that was not as active, that wouldn't get them as many kills, but that still put them in a position to win the game. It is clear that Dreamfire are not just preparing for group stage because they slaughtered group stage yesterday. They're now preparing themselves for the finals, for the championship first place by Playing for the win, like we saw even Optic be able to do yesterday, picking up two wins in a row. If you can do that, if you can pick up two wins during the course of a group stage, that is a testament to how much easier match point is going to be for you. And that's got to be Dreamfire's focus. And that's a really unique thing to think about, right? Because if you start going through group stages, it's not that they don't matter. That's how you position yourself throughout the bracket stages. Yep. But when you get to finals lobby, everything changes. Teams are staying alive so much longer. They're playing a little more reserved, but they're also, that's only once they've hit match point. The chaos that ensues, the macro that goes out the window while you're trying to accumulate those first 50 points to get on that threshold is something that will be completely different. And our teams that are playing in group stages, think of, you know, Alliance, that they have effect here, so dominating in the group group stages, but didn't necessarily perform the best on finals day. Yeah, and, and that that's the curse that haunts them. I think, funnily enough, I, I, I hate to bring them back up because I'm talking about this so much, but it's mirrored with Ascend, right? Ascend made it all the way to finals. They had a, a finals performance that will haunt their nightmares. And uh, Alliance, I think, felt very similarly. I, I did talk to Hackies about it, and while he was not shaken, their fans certainly were going, all right, well, we made it all the way here. We're actually doing really well. What happened? 
why weren't we able to close it out after such a fantastic tournament? And it is it is clear that they do have to step to that in even the finals. And to not make finals for Alliance is utterly unacceptable, based on the position that they've already placed themselves in. So as we move forward, as Effect, thankfully, has been able to join us, it's time for them to regain that synergy despite the challenges that they've had during the course of this pa the past 24 hours alone. Exactly. You think about those past 24 hours. Yes, Effect is in the building. I don't even know what time he got in, whether it was yesterday, whether it was this morning. But the moment he got cleared to play on that stage, he got in that booth and is ready to throw down. So I am chalking map number one up to a warm-up, right? It's his first time kind of stepping back into the fray of things where Split 2 Playoffs was his first ever LAN performance. And, you know, Alliance, they recently brought on North FPS as their Apex coach and recently started sitting in with them on international scrims, kind of working to even further that team. They have a strong team behind them. They, that they really do. And I don't think that we can doubt that about the performance that we've seen from Alliance so far. It is really about whether they can keep that consistent as other teams continue to change their play styles and their, I want to say, game plan during the course of the next couple of games, during the course of the next couple of days. Because right now, we're just in the second day of group stage, already very different than the first. Already, you've been able to research your opponents on land, not just in scrims. And even during the course of this, we're going to finish today off and then we're jumping into winners and losers bracket that is so much higher stakes where play styles change once again. Where people will start to go home, but we're gonna start picking legends because match number two. Is that a caustic Do for area have, 310? We got a caustic? <laughs> we're gonna have some gas traps. We were talking about it in match number one. We're like, where is our defense? It's a Wraith Caustic Loba. Caustic Wraith Loba. Did not have that on my bingo card. And honestly, it's uh, it's putting me in a medically unsound position. That is not doing good things for my heart, but we'll see how it works out for them as right now, I like the theory. I do like seeing different legend compositions and Wraith is somebody who I think people could be making more use of. One of the interesting things is that as soon as we saw Catalyst enter the meta, as soon as Catalyst was released, we saw her really slot in for Wraith in more scenarios than not, which sounds a little bit weird, but the micro rotations they provide in the late game are actually very similar. If anything, Catalyst gets to be more aggressive, gets to be a little bit less predictable. So picking that legend up again is really to unleash your firepower and uh, get a little bit riskier in, your, in the positioning, being able to make use of the tactical, not so much the ultimate. I was told that Area 310 actually played the same comp in the match number one. They just must have not made it to our broadcast, but here uh. we are finally seeing it. Super exciting about it. Riddle Order, they will benefit from the hot zone. They do have a beacon of sorts over there. FaZe getting their own ring console at Climatizer, and that is true. Gombreo, Tosan, and LCDF, instead of challing at Big Mod, they're going to go and split stacks and Big Mod accordingly. But you know who's really benefiting from this? LG Chivas, able to take both launch site and dome. As a result, they roll themselves a ring console, which is good because all the way in the south, they've got to hoof it up towards the north. We've got a zone that is pulling us right around the landslide area. Pulver X, fortunately, are going to know this, which is great because when you land landslide and the ring is pulling to you, you may as well make use of it. I'll tell you who else is going to know is X set, likely Element 6, who approach from the north. Dropping over by Skyhook, you've got a lot of loot, and now you've got a lot of information to make use of. With Dreamfire in the ring as well, this is going to be an interesting circle. A lot of powerhouses just found out that we're playing in their house. We definitely are. You can see Riddle Order kind of going over towards No Name where that survey beacon is. So looting there, splitting it out, and being able to get not only a ring console, but have access to a survey beacon. But the landslide, this is going to be such a wild ending when you start to think of the possible pulls that could happen there and landslide being so open, having the platform as the high ground. If you can maintain that and stave off people from the rotations, imagine what could happen. You could have a good chunk of elimination. Yeah, like high ground is so important in landslide, whether it be Sniper Tower that's a little bit off to the north or landslide proper, even the high ground outside of Countdown, because once you actually get into the field that makes up the outside of landslide, that's when you fall at the mercy of other teams. It's no, it's no longer your game to win, it's other teams' game to make you lose, which is an odd way of saying that and not one that I'll repeat. 
E36 utilizing the Evac Tower, trying to get out, but Dark Zero able to put some damage, but it's Dreamfire that's going under fire as they've actually made their way over towards Skyhook, which is kind of an interesting move there. Maybe they wanted to go in and get some engagement, rack up their eliminations. They've dropped down towards the center of this fire. Now know that North Epson X at Element 6. They'll be in the distance as well as start a fight. Exet, fortunately, were able to climb up and contest that, which is good. Able to defend their POI or their landing spot from those that would otherwise enter it out of countdown. And it's really curious that Dreamfire would end up doing this. A lot of people might ask themselves, why would Dreamfire rotate away from the ring? And it's because they don't know where the ring is going yet. They've come up here for the chance to access a little bit of loot that Skyhook gives them and sniff out whether they have the opportunity to pick up either a survey beacon or a ring console. As it is, though, they found themselves with nothing. They've got no nice attachments, very little... Uh, shield cells and very little sustain, and they're trapped right underneath Xset, which is a terrible place to be. As a lot of teams rotate through Skyhook looking for the information that DreamHack wanted, it's Pulverex who have found themselves in their landing POI alongside Dark Zero on the high ground. They've made their way from Harvester on an early rotation, and they've already got a fuse ult on the ground that will just expire, but they are forcing Pulverex towards the low ground in an uncomfortable position and maintaining that strength. It's funny how we talked about that high ground being super important when we jump into zones like this, when landslide is in play, holding specifically landslide high ground can straight up win you a game. Pulverex have it. Dark Zero walk in, fuse ult them, and Pulverex say, you know, we, we didn't really want it anymore. That's that's not our thing. The thing is, Dark Zero, they hold a grudge, and Zero is getting so aggressive on the side, huge cracks with the grenade, and Dark Zero continue to push up with Jen Burton finding a fry. No knock, but that's a matter of formality, as now you've got Saku and Fitan down on the ground. And they are just circling like sharks in the water, taking apart Pulverex. You can see in the distance, Alliance working on their rotation that will be privy to the engagement happening. But Enerforce 36, because Dark Zero was able to push on to Pulverex, have actually regained the high ground. But do they have enough health, enough cover, and utility to maintain this? I wonder if we're just going to mother load this on cooldown, get the opportunity to push up again. Dark Zero do take just another fight, though. Moving into the RV with Jen Burton down, it's Alliance who take the contest up against them. They have the opportunity to knock down the number one team from yesterday. The Lions are going to take it, moving up quite aggressively. Jen Burton is down, so we are in a 3v2 situation. Act is connecting with the PK, but loses his life. Now in a 2v2, Zero still up in Zainu as well, and that's where things will be a little dangerous as Zainu is able to stay up, utilizing Zero's Knuckle Cluster to hold off the push. The black hole not going to connect, but when you get stuck, Ooh. that makes things so much difficult. FX not taking any time to focus. He's getting into the grab lift, has to heal, and they're going to prioritize the res. This is really important. Maintaining numbers advantage, maintain some pressure. With Effect having to disengage, Yuki joining him. Zero gets to push you all the way out, and Dark Zero with the defensive performance of a lifetime in this RV managed to hold on 2v2. And they were able to hit the gold knockdown res on Jen Burton to get him back up on his feet that much faster. And there you go. You were talking about the cooldowns. Here come the ultimate accelerants, because that is what you need to get the mother load back up so quickly have the dark veil available because you know alliance after they weren't able to make this push successful will look for other opportunities Sandy's running a bit low on ammo might be time to kill another team i would Maybe. not be uh, i would not be so comfortable sitting where alliance are however it is another much like dreamfire's position last game active place to be they get to gatekeep a lot of rotates that might come from the south, as well as putting out a general amount of pressure over teams that might eat, might rotate down from Countdown, that could be forced into that later. And of course, Dark Zero have chosen to play the RV for now. The thing is, that's a two-way street, and Zero, he gets chunked down, does trade a little bit of damage back. Defensive cooldown forced out of Dark Zero, minimizing the opportunity for mistakes. As Zero will get all of his health back off the Phoenix kit, and they'll be able to play this wall for a little while, look for a small bit of pressure here and there. 
Well, you have one member of Alliance actively keeping a lookout on that southern choke point because there will likely be rotations coming through there. So trying to anchor in that role and keep Dark Zero from kind of getting any closer to them because we have to start to think about who's going to be potentially rotating through there. Lava Siphon is where Dojo lands. They'll likely rotate up through Harvester. Now, whether they decide to rotate to the choke point on that northeast or whether they go through staging is on them. But for the teams that are on the north side, they'll be rotating in towards Dark Zero. Got to appreciate that as soon as the ult cells go off, Dark Zero go, well, we have Mother Load back. Uh, we've got Black Hole back. Let's go ahead and push on to Landslide and see if anybody there wants to contest us. And while nobody was in Landslide proper, Enter Force 36 are playing through the tunnel just on the south end of it. And this is going to be a little bit more passive of a position. Maybe not one that Dark Zero want to push, but certainly one that they can abuse. Well, it's safer for them having minimal shield cells and such. They only had one bat on that player to be able to maintain that as opposed to that high ground. But Riddle Order making their way from Monument on their rotation path have kind of gotten into this tunnel oh. alongside LG Chivas and another team, Gombreo Tosan. This is a tough fight for both teams, as very much so. They need to step up after their performances yesterday, 20th and 18th respectively. But it's Gombare Otosan that will go down Riddle, collecting the additional kills, the much needed kills, and now the opportunity to be third parted. We've got LG Chivas pushing up on them and a whole other fight breaking out in Skyhook. We have Dreamfire and Exet. Then we're looking for that information in Exet. They have landed in Skyhook for the longest time. They are so comfortable with fighting here and fun, throwing up the grab lift. He's in hot pursuit, trying to make something happen. We're jumping back over. Niazul's down. Yaguarez is trying to play his life, but Nocturnal on the offhand hits a finisher on Roy. As, lo as long as Yanya is alive, LG Chivas, they, they can win a whole fight in just the course of a few seconds. And they're doing pretty well with it right now. Yanyu will actually be able to get a lot of HP right back off the shield cell since he's running a gold shield. But it is still ultimately a 2v2. Nice pressure laid down with the Pharaoh Fluid. And now the fight for high ground begins. Yanya gets fried, but trades out with Jaguars for a good crack. Not enough to be confident pushing off of. Instead, they're the ones that have lost momentum. And Jaguars loses half of his HP as a result. They've got one knockdown shield to play behind. No high ground to work with. And Yanya is still making this a Fight. It's going to be Mia K that was last standing, but he was able to turn around and find him and take Riddle Order out now. Let me just tell you, it was the two gold shields on the hands of LG Chivas that allowed yeah. them to stay alive throughout that engagement. Without those, I think it would have looked completely different. As long as Yanya is alive, LG Chivas can still win the fight, and that they do. Now, with a decent rotate out into Landslide, available to them later, but taking a look at the map, they may have another challenge coming their way. Start a fight are starting to make their way through this tunnel, and let's not forget that Enter Force 36 are right behind this if it gets too hairy. And it's tough because you still have teams that are working their way from outside of zone. Dreamfire, Pita trying no to make way. something happen on the outside. And we know about all of the ring changes that have happened. It makes surviving in that late game much more tough, especially when you still have Pulverex. You have Area 310. They're still in Skyhook. No way. The King Pita ends up picking up a kill as a solo. Area 310 are going to get the respawn, but this is rough and definitely not what they wanted to deal with is their composition. The way they're playing right now, Area 310 want to play passive. Use Loba, find a few med kits in the zone, wait for a few more squads to drop because we aren't even in points position yet. He's going out, he's going out. He had two syringes and one med kit and for the rotation, I don't think it was going to be enough, but at least getting one elimination before going out is going to at least help them in the distance on points, but Shunmi is gonna make the biggest attempt here, has 10 syringes, four med kits, the ability to craft the banner and the journey at hand. And a gold shield. <laughs> and I, lo, lo, at that point, You're good. you can take zone six, You're whatever. <laughs> Do as you like. The dojo, they're doing just that on the low ground out here, have picked a fight, and while it may not be the best position for the dojo, it's not one they've got lost control of just yet. Their opportunity to rotate does go to either side, and a gold knockdown will help Design will get back up with way more health than he had initially. Now, dojo's problems aren't over yet as Designful goes down again. Now that enemy's got the catalyst wall up, it's gotta be a 2v3 defense, and one the dojo just completely lost track of. No digis, no communication, no shot against complexity.
complexity timed that frag grenade on that designful mm -hmm. res so impeccably because if that hadn't happened, he would have been able to get a little bit more health up and rejoin that fight and already utilizing the dark veil, the bang smoke. Well, now our tides are turned over to Alliance. 16 squads remaining. They haven't found any eliminations on their rotation out through Thermal Station because that's ever, because everyone went north. It's been unfortunate that they have such a great position and yet weren't able to work with it. Likewise, on the opposite, opposite side of the map, Exit started off in a fantastic place for the ring and yet have just been constantly sent by squads and to deal with so many contests that they eventually get in late and just get taken out as quickly as they arrive. Phase X set, now 100 Thieves able to be so privy to that third party, cleaning up both of those teams as Enterforce 36 falls as well. But Niazul trying to get in some action, bro. We just had 16 squads, and now every bit of chaos is breaking out at the hands of LG Chivas, about to be on double-digit eliminations. And they are right underneath Dark Zero as well. This is where... We saw the big fights go down. Landslide was the place to be. LG Chivas do plenty to unseat the teams around them and have a bit of high ground to work with themselves. But the position is heavily contested with so many other teams in Landslide. Element 6 get pretty darn contested by TYK. That's a nice wipe for them. How does everybody have gold knockdown shields? How's this happening? Oh, how many gold knockdown <laughs> shields are in there? But not bad on Element 6 for going out there. They had just yeah. wiped LCDF and Tom Young kung They went straight in for the third party. They didn't have a whole lot of time to regain there. But now, with TYK having the North northern side available to them. It is on them to decide, hey, where do we want to rotate down towards? We know Complexity had already cleared out that northwestern side, and North Epson was making such a late rotation in, but Dark Zero still able to survive, now sitting on double red, a gold. They got shield bats, have a little more ammo than they had previously, and are finally able to start working. This is how we play in RV, too. Plenty of catalyst goop. Plenty of ability to fortify the doors, and Dark Zero are going to make this position look lo a lot stronger than it did before them. With LG right behind, 100 Thieves on the high ground. We're about to see why it's so difficult to make rotations out of landslide work. Motherload drops down in front of Dark Zero. They're fighting on two fronts now, being actively shot in the back by 100 Thieves with every move they make. It's exactly what 100 Thieves has been prioritizing here, but will Dark Zero focus on North Epson or will they focus on 100T? Let's jump in for a listen in and check it out. I think this is a different team than our, yeah, that's, a, that's a different team than our team. Don't have that right. Don't have that right at all. You play out then. No, they're they're, like they, they just catch you here though. Yeah, they're like is in, there in, team the, in the wall. They should have sprayed it. Yeah, they are. I think they are. Yeah, they are. They are. They are. I hit 142. Somebody carry back. I, I need to stay with Kariba. They're out. They're behind the box. Can you look at back? I'm fucking feeder. Okay, okay. I can stay with them. I mean, though. Here we are. One there, hi, hi, one team. Here. Hi, team. I dropped. Right, just yell at us if they do. I need one node. I'm a third. Can I get fuse keys? Yeah, do it right behind that box. That is, uh... is that good? Yeah, it's good. Pick them all. Nah. Yeah, I'm picking them all. Hit them all for like 30. Hi, team's high. still there. Hey, go right here, go right here. Bro, your khakis are like. Oh, oh, yeah. Can you take them off the fucking window? That's actually really uh, annoying. Just, yeah. Back close to this again. I want to. Yeah. Picking them all. Is it really good? Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna keep tanking. Ow. Dump it down, dump it down! Give me two. All right, we just witnessed Alliance and Complexity. A little bit of that happening on that western side of the zone. Dark Zero discussed, what is our next course of action? Can we keep this oh. team from pushing off the high ground? But 100 Thieves in landslide proper already expended the bubble and going up an aggressive LG Chivas. Like that quick overextension from Vaxlon. It's not bad if Dark Zero never turn around, but Dark Zero looked for the kill. Got a little bit of damage on, enough to take out Vaxlon, and now their backs are a lot more clear. Complexity with a very different journey in, are fighting Alliance, who'd have the low ground, and with the Vex down, with Alliance gone, Complexity owned the southwestern side of the ring. Complexity doing what we needed to do. We were talking about that cutoff on winners and losers bracket, and it was Complexity who was sitting just on the outskirts, 
looking in and coming in in 40th place. They knew that their backs were up against the wall. They needed to perform here today, and they are starting off so strong. At least seven eliminations for the team, with six squads remaining that could easily turn into double digits. They turn their sights on a North Epson, nice. but not before Zero wants to get in on the action. The mother load down, but this almost looks more like a defensive mother load. It definitely is. They're making sure that LG can't push up onto them. EMP going to do nothing in the face of that particular cooldown. Mother load not affected. 100 Thieves instead. The ones that were previously sandwiched between LG and DZ have gotten to survive for a little while longer. And it is only a little while. Post kill going to hit the floor. We'll see how long he's able to survive as Dark Zero are on the hunt. That was a double res from Kashera with the drone. We were talking about it. Kashera does lose his life here. What and 100 Thieves going down. Dark Zero in the center of the zone, wreaking havoc on everyone. Zion is throwing out the Spin. black hole. It's going to connect. Connected just like that, Niazul from LG Chivas will go down. What a great punish off of the Horizon ult as well. It's enough for Dark Zero to get a foothold into this fight. While North Option suffer losses off to the north. Dark Zero have lost just their fuse for right now, but with Zainu going down, it's all in the hands of Jen Burton. And Jen Burton doesn't find the first shield swap. And North Option able to clean out the left side as complexity fall. We're at the final four squads. You have LG Chivas, Dark Zero, Ascend falling now, but there's only one member. It's been like a rat race, and look where Lufka has been able to position himself on the Valk. We're playing hide and seek here. Classic Valkyrie gameplay. We'll see how long Lufka is able to keep hidden. As LG haven't noticed him just yet, but a little bit of noise, a nice turnaround. All it takes is one drop for the best players to know you're there. And uh, Jen Burton's in a similar spot. He's been sniffed out. Out comes the ultimate, giving him no place to run. Jen Burton is gone. Well, now we have a quick shield swap, but North Epson knows the tides have turned. The numbers are in their oh advantage. My Lord. And Laika finds that first opening. Not they just need to get their hands on the last member of LG, and they should be your map two winners. And just like that, North Epson reigning from the APAC North LCQ, showing out on match number two. Great way to finish that game for North Epson, who did have a difficult rotate. They were being harassed by DZ and 100 Thieves both as they moved in from the south. But it's this little bit of mirroring that they get to pull off on 100 Thieves, making sure that 100T take one nice side of the ring, draw plenty of attention, and they're able to play off of just a little box in the north for long enough that all of Landslide completely devolves. Alliance end up falling to complexity instead, and it is a fantastic victory for them to walk in and take. Let me just tell you, I love those North Epson fans out there. I might have to go find myself one of those. That's super cute. I saw Riddle ones yesterday. Now we've got North Epson fans and all of the signs. So cool to see. If you guys haven't checked out, there is a whole merch zone just outside the stage, and you can find some really cool stuff out there. Uh, that you can. I was uh, exploring yesterday. I know you guys have a little riddle fam. Yeah. Yeah, those are really cute. I'm a big fan. I, pun intended, I guess. I'm a big fan. Oh, look at you, Dio, with your puns. It's Catalyst yesterday, it's fans today. But regardless, North Epson are your winners of match number two in such impeccable style. After that win, I like that we get the celebrations. A bit of pictures, I'm sure, being taken. However, the focus of course, it has to be on how that game came about and how they can replicate their success moving into the next little while. There are a couple ways to win an end game in Apex Legends, and for, for the sake of the sanity of everyone, we don't have to list all of them. But the way that North Epson employed was largely staying out of everyone's sights. They didn't hold a power position at any point, and instead, would play a game of timing towards the end of the game. It helped that they're uh, pretty darn good at clicking on heads, as that, that was the real deciding variable up against LG. But the rotation through the north was one that was actually pretty darn stressful. They almost went down a couple of times. The thing is that even in a spot like this, wh why would you ever push Laika when you could instead take out Alliance? North Epson don't do not have a good position to play. Well, this was the best position for them, turning the tides towards the end. They had flown in initially behind Dark Zero, but Complexity had saw them. Given all of their engagements throughout Landslide, they wrap around, and that was the end of the fight that we just witnessed. North Epson cleans their side out after taking Complexity and are able to start focusing forward. 
And of course, they have a gold knockdown shield. I, everyone, Who doesn't? You get a gold knockdown. You get a gold knockdown. Look, I can never find gold Same. knockdowns unless I play Skirmisher. I'm scanning the care packages left and right, and I'm like, all right, I'll go get that one. Yeah, I, like, even even then, you know, I, I find more gold helmets than I do gold knockdowns. But this was a this was the point where it became not a two v three and really just a, a disgusting finish from North Epson. 3v1 with everything they could ever want. Red, purple armors, and a beam like that opens them up fantastically. But it was LG that made it to second place. And LG, whose praises we were singing during the course of the entire mid-game. A big part of that, of course, Yanya, who makes it possible for them to survive. And as we said, as long as he's alive, there's a chance. Oh, as long as Yanya's in the mix, it's getting crazy. 1,700 damage dealt, nine eliminations alone. That is absolutely massive so you think about that rotation and their timing on coming through monument into the tunnel and gone beret was there all the teams that were moving towards there start a fight at one point and they just kept pushing through and as we look at our top three teams what is that number by LG Chivas, Dia? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's... What is that? It's plenty. That's the, uh, though you might not expect it, the kills they were able to pick up over a quarter of the lobby drops to LG, and that is no coincidence. One of the best fighting teams, as we said, in North America. Definitely demonstrates that here on the international stage. Well, Dark Zero right below them actually put up similar damage numbers wow. and it's funny that we see these two placed right next to each other over the course of time because LG are the ones that needed to step up after yesterday with Dark Zero obviously having already taken a first place in their own group. It's pretty consistent ascend even after kind of that late game reset by Kashera and everyone splitting up and just trying to survive and salvage as many placement points grab five and that's off the back of winning match number one so they're sitting in a good place but that is what you need to do. Complexity able to grab nine eliminations, jumping on to the other half. This is where things got super weird, right? Why were there so many teams in Skyhook? I saw a little bit of the game chat. Everyone's asking, why Skyhook? And we called it out. They needed the information for the locations and the drop spots. Teams didn't have certain consoles. They had to go to Skyhook to potentially get it. And especially in a game like Apex Legends, it's a game of imperfect information. And when, when teams and players are asking, well, why did everyone go to Skyhook? It's not because they don't understand. They went to Skyhook too. It's a great place to be. The, the problem is that when you're rotating into a place like Skyhook, you're predicting that many other teams won't be there. Yes. And you're, you're taking that gamble and saying, ah, well, this doesn't seem like the best position. And if everybody takes that gamble at the same time, it doesn't turn out too well. I love those glasses, man. Those are fantastic. And well, here's the thing. All of this looks good. Those glasses look amazing. But you know what's also really cool? The fact that we've got watch parties lined throughout the stadium. Peeps caught up with one of our watch partiers earlier. So let's go ahead and see what that's about. Tiffin Dia, thank you so much. Here we have Restia, the one, the only part of the B stream at ALGS Champs. Um, dude, how are you doing? And how does it feel to be representing Scars and being one of the biggest content creators in the world? Um, it's feeling great here. Like having a passion here, like broadcasting Apex Legend and having fun with like all my viewers and like seeing the crowd and the team. Feels great, man. I love it. I love it. So we're here at ALGS, right? There's 40 teams. Who are your top three teams? Favorite teams? Oh, my top three teams? Like you can't see me wearing like this shirt. Um, but actually, Fnatic is my big fan, but I still have a better team. Um, Exit, my boys, you know, Nocturnal, my beautiful. Oh, I love him so much, <laughs> but still not my best top three, dude. Um, oh, Dark Zero, got to talk about it. Mm, this is like one of, my, one of my favorite teams, you know, like three-time LAN champions. Jim Burden, such a nice guy, but still uh, not enough. Oh, let's go with this TSM, dude. TSM fanboy always, dude. So, nah, this is my favorite, Alliance, Alliance on top. They have been like having a rough day yesterday, right? But I think they're gonna bounce back today. And my man, Yuki, please reply my Discord message, Yuki, or I'm not gonna root for you. This is my top team. I love that, I love that. You gotta get that sign, number one. Two, Effect is here now. I don't know if you know that or not. Landed in Birmingham yesterday. Uh, final prediction for who is winning ALGS championship right here in the UK. Yeah, I actually like saw like effect in the hotel yesterday. So I think Alliance gonna win. Alliance gonna win, dude. 
The Lions on top. Let's go. I love that. He's bringing the energy. He's bringing the noise. Thank you so much. Tiff and Dia, take it away. Thank you so much, Peeps and Restia. I was, I, when he got the first three jerseys off, I was like, I think I see more, but I didn't yeah. know where that was going. But I love the faith and alliance. And of course, the Fanatic jersey is so impressive. It was one of the jerseys that I myself was like, I need to go pick that up. And I, I, I will, I'll be out there tomorrow or today. I'm to gonna say, that. after that, Yuki has to reply to his Discord message. That too, man. Why, so why much you, Don't was leave put Restia that. on red. You can't do that. But I mean, obviously, Yuki's in the booth. It's a little important right there. Maybe he's replying right now. You could be, could be. I, uh, I imagine, I imagine that they're focusing just a bit on their last game on World's Edge because it is their last game on World's Edge for this group. And Alliance are a team that I'd expect to have a little bit of an advantage there. Well, they may not be the World's Edge dominant teams uh, that we would see in any other lobby. They're not bad on this map and they want to set themselves up for a position to take top five as we move into Storm Point. They're not quite there yet. Yeah, and it hasn't necessarily been maybe the toughest rotates coming out of Thermal Station, because that's their yeah. typical drop spot, but, but they haven't had anything pull towards them specifically yet. So yeah. hopefully maybe they can get a last little bit of luck here for World Edge. Yeah, I, I, so yeah, yes, and also, uh, you and I talked about it, but Tree Zone should have gone better it for should, them. And I, and I know that's going to weigh on them because when you are dropping Thermal, if things go to the south, that that is your that is your plan, that's your game. So seeing how they can, I guess, collect themselves moving into the future is going to be the biggest thing. It is a big adjustment. They are dealing with a lot right now, but the audience has faith. Restia, importantly, has faith, so we can't count them out. Well, you know, I've got a lot of faith, and I saw some really cool things out there on the floor. But one thing in particular was that Herman Miller chair that the champions get at the end. Herman Miller Gaming and Body Chairs are being used at today's event. Check out the new colorways on Embody Gaming Online, the new colors. They have a white face with galaxy and amethyst upholstery. Be sure to check out the custom Herman Miller Gaming Chairs. Embody Chairs created for this year's ALGS Champs winning team. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. It's out there. It's got gold. It's got the emblems that are attached to it. And I have an Embody at home, and they are so comfortable. And look at Z right there, just kind of like showing off another one as well. He's just like, yeah, you know, maybe I'll stand. He's super tall anyways. It's fine. He, he is really tall. Why, I, I, why I don't is know so what tall? it is. I don't, I don't, I really don't understand it. Like, pros don't need to be that tall. You can, like, you can keep the same gaming skill compacted, actually, and it, it'll work just as well. Less effort to move the arm over a smaller space, but I digress. This, for right now, is going to be where everyone's focusing up, that last match of World's Edge, the last match of the most storied map in Apex history is coming at us, and this is where you have to execute the strategies that you practiced, not just in the past year, but over the past four or five years. The people have been playing Apex Legends at the competitive level. Many of our players have been in the game for just that long. Last match, last Legend Select of World's Edge is in. LCDF popping in with the Watson and Valkyrie, interestingly enough. While still some of us are playing around with Bloodhound, this has been less of a dominant pick in this particular group matchup. Plenty of people running it, but I'm seeing a lot of teams just completely forego Bloodhound, instead opting into having a Bangalore and Horizon for a bit of verticality. Yeah, it's very different from what we were even seeing yesterday. We touched on that earlier, and you were even breaking out the race today. That was such a wild card pick, and the macro, the redesign of the ultimate ability with the portal, so impressive. But this is it, our final match on World's Edge for our first series. The, tr the plane line is going to go straight from northwest to southeast, ending at the dome. Lava Siphon, the hot zone, Dojo will benefit from that, but you know who else is going to benefit from a lot of things? Element 6 able to take trials with ease. X set having the entirety of the center of Skyhook and getting a ring console and crafter. Yeah, the, the ring console is the big difference maker here, and it's great that they've been able to roll it again because X set did not have a fantastic time last match. They got ring console and they were like, why is everyone here? That constant mirroring really was the thing that shut them down at the end of the match. And this time, they'll be able to 
to get a good read on where the future zones are going, what sort of area we'll be playing. And we're getting a very different ring this time around, as we'll be moving straight into the center of the map and just a little bit further to the north, over by Epicenter, where Complexity should have first dibs. It's going to be interesting, because you have Phase up in Climatizer, half a survey beacon, no ring console for them. Complexity, do they know that it will be coming to them? They'll see the zone, but there's two survey beacons in a vicinity. They do have crafting, so they'll hang out for a minute, but that could be another issue where Skyhook is the closest on that northern side, but Riddle hopefully maybe got something, but no, it's Monument, so start a fight, Esports, they'll be able to grab the ring console and know that they are where they need to be. And look out for Dark Zero as well. Harvester is a really nice POI in general because you're able to pick up consoles, but this time with Lava Siphon right next door having one, and I believe Staging having picked up a console as well, they should be able to make use of it. Epicenter does have one just kind of hidden under that survey beacon nice. in my sight, so that'll be good for them. But Area 310, this is where things started to get interesting. They're landing just the, the northern buildings of Lava Siphon and kind of separated out. They were originally set to go over towards Skyhook, and as the rotations come through, Dreamfire, known for their high one ground more, abilities, just no! able to grab a knock onto Saku, should be able to clean that up fairly easily. At that point, not even anything you can do, and the headshots just keep landing. Pita does have to take a respite, and I'm, I'm surprised he's still peeking it even. But the rest of his team is continuing to nade, and Dreamfire should be collecting another kill very soon. Ramsey has a good angle. The smoke is going to cover him on the way in, and while he doesn't have a Digi, closing the gap with an SMG is sure to, to get Dreamfire another KP. The passion exuding from him as they grab a knock and a full on to F-Chan. We need one more member of Polvrex who, like Case Winnie earlier, has already dipped out of dodge, but there is an issue with making so much noise so early on while teams are rotating because they're going to be looking to make their way in, and look who it is, North Eption, the third-party connoisseurs themselves making their way towards Dreamfire. That's why we get that really clean Dark Veil. Reset from Dreamfire is perfect just because of the expenditure that cooldown that gets them into a choke point without having to worry about what North Eption is doing. They're fully aware, as Dreamfire, that a team should be coming up behind them. North Eption are forced to take to the other choke, see if they can cut off Dreamfire or even chase down the last member of Pulverex. Meanwhile, however, the rotation ahead is what is being focused on, especially by Dreamfire, who are going for the win, a win that is largely going to be centered around how well you can play Fragment, Monument, and the escape for both. Well, a hundred thieves, you're talking about escaping, are not going to let TYK out of their sights. They will be the first team fully eliminated, but not before Area 310 has something to say about all of the chaos happening in Monument. We knew there was a ring console, we knew there was information here, and they are just pressuring straight into the building. It's so much aggression out of Area 310, but they have an advantage. Why not push it even through the smoke? We finally get a little bit of caustic gas laid down, and that's where Area 310 can really feel comfortable. They've got a great position in the in Monument, and now with the setup that Caustic is able to provide, should be able to hold on to it, grab a little bit more loot with Loba, make nice micro rotations with Wraith. This is Area 310's game to take control of. Exactly. I love that they're able to utilize the Caustic exponentially, and even DZ sitting on triple white in the center of zone navigating, trying to loot super quickly. And that's what's fun, right? We always talk about controller versus MK. Sometimes they'll send the MK player out to loot for the entirety of the team, especially having the knuckle clusters to be able to punish any of the teams immediately peaking. And just like a triple white a second ago, he's already leveled up to a blue. Now, the nice thing about Fuse is that it isn't just an aggressive pick that you can get offensive value out of running people down with the mother load. It's also fantastic for when you're in zone and don't have evos. Knuckle Cluster is going to help so much to make incremental improvements in the armor of Dark Zero. It's already something that we're seeing play out with Zero, and they're likely going to swap around the armor so that he can do that for everyone. Move elevate Dark Zero all the way up to blues substantially, and then continue that journey. Talk about swapping the shields around. We're seeing just that. Kishara will elect to have the blue, and he can level his up throughout the utilization of an EMP. And now making that way towards the no-name area, there's likely some sort of beacon here that a couple of teams will look for that information as the dojo have rotated throughout. Guys are kind of mirroring a send 
movement pattern, but there are still two other teams in the vicinity. Think of who lands Overlook. Think of all of that. And Riddle, the team, in fact, that lands over at Overlook, sitting in 19th at the moment. Got to play defensively, or rather that's the mentality that I'm sure they find themselves in. No Name is not a bad place to hold down, but it certainly isn't the most active, and unfortunately for them, they're mirrored by Geo once again. We saw these two fight out in uh, over by Landslide, the tunnel previously, just last game, in fact. And now that we're seeing them right next door to each other again, it cannot be comfortable for these two squads that played polar opposite games in split two playoffs to once again be face to face. In fact, they were even contesting each other for millage in the fi in, in split two playoffs rather during qualification into finals. And now that they're at this again, it just makes the game so much more complicated for both. I remember back when Geo was contesting Landslide as well, and that was just so wild. But you sort of think about it. Now we've got that next ring information for some of our teams that are looking to hit the rotation. Element 6 sitting on triple purple, making their way out of the Skyhook area. And Alliance kind of finally beginning to arrive from Thermal Station. They made their way over towards Lava Fissure to look for extra information. But the last standing member of Pulverex is still outside the ring, Dia. Ooh, see how well Pulver X are able to survive, because th that's actually probably been the biggest tragedy of these first three games. Pulver X have not had a good time, even though they were doing pretty well in scrims. They just haven't had the same success going into the second day of champs. And well, Alliance, they got ahead. They managed to find not just a few more meds, but also a delayed rotation that could bring them through landslide to even more. They got an evac tower as well. Pul Pulverex is sitting behind them going, man, why, why can't I, why can't my game be going that well? I just need a little bit. You hear the evac tower going out and immediately the shots come in. And from the map view, that is likely from Element 6 towards Alliance looking to poke and prod. But Gomberay, they've got their own issues going forward. Still electing to mirror that riddle rotation. But now they've made their way up towards Climatizer. And that is FaZe's homeland. So that's where they'll be positioning themselves for that next set of gameplay. Now, FaZe did not spawn in with a ring console right next to them. And so the way that they're playing this is interesting, but certainly explainable by the fact that they don't have next ring data to work with as easily. They had to jump over to Epicenter to grab it and are planning on doing that likely again as they've sat back in the macaroni building to take advantage of other teams that are rotating in and then later be able to grab a little bit more information to make a more perfect decision for zones five and beyond. Little poking, prodding, one point only on the board, nice. so they are going to need every bit of damage, every bit of Evo shield leveling up. But the issue is, we are so low on ammo, they have about 30 bullets for the Hemlock before we jump on over to Alliance, sitting on triple blue in 16th place with three points. So this is another game, but with our point sponges happening at the top, you had LG with 32, Ascend with 31, Complexity with 19. Those were your top three coming into the final match on World's Edge. So even after one good game, you just need at least north of 20 points and you'll be within the top five. It's funny that you mentioned the ammunition because we jump over and affect us 360 he ammo. Has so much. So much. Oh my god. Now in the meanwhile, we've got Pulverex who have managed to recuperate for now. This is a tough place to be, especially with the second round closing in. A lot more damage and as Graceful was saying yesterday, it's not that you can't pull off these same sort of ring stabilization strategies, but they are a lot more difficult to execute on, and it's not going to feel particularly good. FaZe do pick up a kill, which is nice for them. It is on to Gio, whose rotation up from No Name evidently has not gone smoothly, but it's also not the end of Geo. It's not a full push from FaZe. They're still very much focused on their rotation into Epicenter, their ability to gather more information, and that way lies Riddle Order. Yeah, and they already have used a Dark Veil. They've coupled it with a couple Bangalore Smoke. Snipedown does have one more available at the ready should he need it. But the grab lift going to the high ground and Frex is already engaging. You oh hear no. the flat hole in the distance. He's just trying to get into that pocket, find a good angle and clean up what is able. But what will Riddle Order do about this? There's still teams looking to engage in this once they need to clean it up. Now they have 2v1 advantage. Face thought about pushing for the rest of it. 
It's just one member left of Geo, but they're not going to be able to do too much. Meanwhile, Leica, however, takes down Jen Burton. That's a full thirst onto one of the members of Dark Zero, who were sat center monument. And FaZe just biding their time, also trying to keep an eye on what is happening behind them. They know they need to rotate. They have about 40 seconds left before that zone starts to pull them ever so further through Epicenter, through the train line. But LG Chivas carrying on that aggressive nature here on the underside of Monument. Miyato losing out of the shields will fall oh. down. That's going to be Dark Zero, but yeah, Juarez able to clutch up and the defensive Dark Veil to allow them to hit the res reset beautifully done. Especially because they didn't drop shields for Nizel, who, which is what you would normally do. As soon as you lose a member, you're picking up the res, drop your shield so they can pick it up and have a little bit more. You're healing while they're being resed. And this time, because that doesn't happen, Dark Veil is the much better option if you want to play this like slow, full reset game. It's a little bit odd to see in the situation. However, since LG Chivas weren't operating with full information, you gotta give them the benefit of the doubt, and they will have that cooldown back up before the time's through. I know we were talking about, as we see Element 6 waiting, trying to position themselves in a power position. Pulver X actually hit a full reset. They have all three of their members up and are looking to make a play to get further into zone. Oh. Meanwhile, FaZe, you, know, you just miss out on the platform sometimes. And, you know, the floor is lava, and it is. And now they've got to turn their tides to the center of the action. Really surprised to see FaZe taking the southern rotation into this zone. I expected them to go up to the north into a slightly worse spot, but one that didn't require them to be in the middle of so many teams. Instead, now they have to fight their way through what we know is LG in the area. And so they're sat in this corner, holding on for now, but I would not feel comfortable here as FaZe. Meanwhile, an entire war was breaking out on the north. Complexity was able to take down Riddle Order, but Exet immediately thirding that, looking to clean up the northern side out of zone. But FaZe, can they keep pushing Thor forward? You were talking about LG Chivas having that area of monument. Well, now they've positioned themselves up in that center spire, which is going to be so tough to push. LCDF, on the other hand, will likely run into phase, and LG will just pepper from above. You got to really appreciate the Bangalore smoke on the high ground as well. It puts more pressure on LG Chivas because they can no longer defend as effectively when they literally can't see you, can't fire down and harass on the phase. It is one directional now. And this whole situation monument is going to be cleared up because, well, we've got Dreamfire out here off to the north of the ring. Te check out your mini-maps and notice that not a whole lot of people are safe moving into the next zone. The pool is going to be absolutely atrocious, but speaking of safe, Jinx trying to clutch up. He's got a knock on a phony. That's a full as well. And Sleep, the ability for him alone to clutch up, and he's still up with a gold knockdown. Quick reset. LCDF is actually going to be able to clean up the rest of phase. So just like that, they will fall. But LCDF, the work is not over for them. Such an uncomfortable spot. And unfortunate to see phase is going out like that. We've still got a few struggles left in Monument. We do have a, a small bit of actual Monument still left. And uh, LCDF and North Eption share that area right now. LG Chivas with a bit of high ground of their own. But this Element 6 Dreamfire rotation is really difficult. Both teams are going to be mirroring each other and likely harassing on the way in. Exet's in the mix as well. With an evac tower in front of you, Element 6 realize there's nowhere to go that, where they aren't flanked on both sides. Ace Winnie pushing forward, doing what they have to do. Dreamfire leaving the comfort of their building with the Dark Veil as they go forward straight into wow. Exet. Fun no, no, already no. down, but Vita going at the hands of Sykes, able to hold the ground. Beast of the Hunt is activated, giving him a little bit of movement speed oh inside. My what are you doing? One more. We just need to connect it, but he will fall. Dreamfire, regardless, is eliminated and knocked. The glue holding that team together must play for his life. Now, we have with both members now down and full thirst that the smoke wasn't able to save them. And Element 6 
could get aggressive. Enter Force 36, go down. LCDF out. Element 6 start rotating over towards Exet, but Start Fight have already moved up to them where Dojo fight for their lives in Monument. We have three teams in a small vicinity, but you know who survives here. The Dojo, as a content creator, Timmy started off before diving into competitive. This was the playground, so I fully expect Dojo to excel here. They've already got a knock onto Haguaras, and Element 6 has been eliminated all the screen, but the reset coming in. Timmy has the bang, has an L star, and wants to find success. But North Epson will be that next team that they have to turn their sights to. But Designful isn't fully healed, but they're trying to rotate out. Timmy swapped to anchor so perfectly there, like instantly drops back behind a bit of cover, lays down fire with the L star to make sure that his team is safe. That was expertly played. And it's the only reason, the only reason the Dojo get to continue into the top seven, perhaps beyond. As you said, they're healing a bit slow, and time is up the essence. The ring is starting to close, and they are not the only ones that have to move. Dojo and North Epson will be going out alongside each other. North Epson do get a wall to separate themselves a little bit more. But in the ring, what awaits them in the ring? Alliance, Polverex still alive. Exet, the last member, and start a fight. Still have to make their way in. But everything to the left of this is fully open. You're just trying to play on the road. Any kind of head peek you can, and Ascend has been in their positioning from at least 10 minutes ago in yeah. this match and being able to fence it up. This is starting to look like the first match where they won. You can see the Dojo rotating around. Hackus is still up for Alliance as well as Yuki in effect trying their best. Grab lift to the oh sky. Black hole in between threading the needle of the two Dark Veils does get poked and prodded, but everything is connecting. You see the damage going out and it's a fight in the air. Everybody trying to get airborne, but the gravity lift finally expires. Effect goes down. Yuki's going to follow. And Alliance on the ropes have Dojo pushing up on them. This is going to be the end of Alliance. Dojo could take them out. Start a fight, fall, and Hack is last alive. You can see that it's going to be Effect stepping back in his chair. He knows he's fooled and must rely on Hackus to make something happen. But it is Ascend, it is Dojo, and Hackus last standing for the final three. And Timmy up in the rocks, but Ascend is so healthy. They already have a knock on enemy, a knock on design, and now we push to cover the distance. Yeah, it's just a matter of finishing the job. We've seen them do it before. And a little bit of sandwiching coming in. The last member of Alliance helping push the dojo out getting a bit of revenge for what happened earlier ascend are set to mark their second victory on world's edge and it just falls into their laps what a call from Kashera to put Ascend in that position to get them their second win in three matches. That is so impressive. What a turnaround from Ascend doing what they needed to do. Those circles, when they start to pull out west of Monument, tend to be incredibly difficult because of the congestion that happens in Monument. And for all the teams on the eastern side of World's Edge that have to go straight into that funnel. But Ascend, they were like, we're not even going to go into Monument. We're going to position ourselves under the road with the Watson fences and yet again post kill coming clutch. And the best thing about this, we talked about it earlier, is that Ascender playing their own game and what that means is because compositionally they're so different from any other team in the lobby, nobody else could even take that position. Nobody else could dream of holding that position without incurring so much more risk than Ascend were ever exposed to. Because they're running Watson Crypto, they're able to get away with plays like that that put them in game-winning positions that nobody else can hold. And you can see it smiles all around everything they needed to do. When Postkill told me he was nervous yesterday, it does not even look the slightest bit yeah. of it. They have shaken the nerves, they have locked it in, and with the first three matches of the day on board, they take two of them. And really importantly, Ascend's positioning is what we're focusing on because their fighting yes. hasn't, hasn't been on display. Fights are great to pick up KP, but importantly in Apex Legends, Fights are risks as well, and Ascend are participating in them from long range, not needing to commit fully like we saw, I think it was North Epson do in the last round. When they were able to pick up a win by Landslide, it was 50-50. Do they come out on top against Complexity? Or just 100 health separating them. Ascend are not in spots like that, and so what's giving them this consistency, the ability to pick up two wins in three matches, and I said it at the start, 
But being able to pick up two wins in a group set means so much because it's not just that you're preparing for groups. It's not just that you're getting a lot of points, which is important, but you're preparing for match point finals. Ooh, and that's where consistency really matters. Your ability to get as many points as possible to get to that 50 point threshold, and then you just need a match win. But I'm curious to hear what our desk has to say about Ascend's two match wins as well as North Epson. Take it away, Rain. Thank you so much, Tiff. Uh, terrible, that's all I have to say. I'm just kidding. Uh, good job, Asen and everyone else in this group because we have seen some lightning fast finishes and also some very congested and contested final circles, which have made things very interesting after three. We'll see what happens as we switch maps in just a moment. But here with our halftime break, we are going to get into it. And of course, I'm joined by Genome, Zephyr, and Bullet. Exciting to talk to you guys and get your thoughts on what we've seen so far after three. But I do want to start off with you, Bullet, and kind of give us your perspective coming in, having that pro background, and also looking at this final circle of how things developed for Ascend, not to get their first, but their second win overall after three. Yeah, look, I have to say, I bloody love their comp. You know, like, being able to play Watson, Crypto, like, that's that's not easy at all, you know, to make that work. I mentioned it yesterday when I was talking about Jaylings, but yeah, honestly, it's just such a nice comp, and it's not easy to play. You know, it takes time, it takes synergy, but once you get it right, like, you can hit amazing end zone games, like, like what we just saw, you know, so. With the final circle, you know, they just played their Watson fences. They had plenty of presence there. You know, it was difficult for teams to kind of push them because there's just so much presence from the Watson fences. And when you have the crypto scan through all the smoke, like look how much, look how much like stuff was going on. Like you had the bank smokes, you had like all the ults going down and they just had the scans going through that and they were just doing damage, putting pressure. Yeah. And one of the biggest threats, I would say, to the Watson playstyle is other Cryptos, but they're kind of the only team running that Crypto at the moment, right? So they don't have to worry about that so much. They can have those fences up there and not worry about their entire defensive perimeter just getting taken down in one swift blow at the in an end circle. Yeah, and in a meta right now that is completely accelerated and in a pace of pure aggression, something like that Watson in those primed end games, no one can touch it, whether it be ordnance or the assault that you just have to push forward through. Ascend are allowed free reign and the potential to pick and choose where they set themselves up. That passivity ends up being one of their biggest strengths, especially in this type of lobby where not everyone is being passive. And so you have that to kind of lean on as almost your, um, you know, light in the dark to speak of how to play this zone when other teams are maybe scrambling a little bit of trying to find that space to hold and play from as well. One thing I'm curious about though is if we're gonna see that end up challenging Ascend like it did in previous playoff situations where passivity is no longer enough. You have to actually be aggressive and I think Dark Zero, TSM still in my eyes are the kings of being able to see a moment, know that there's a chance for them to win, but then impact the game in a way that's a little bit different, you know. Yeah, I mean, Dark Zero, it feels like in uh, a little bit of difference to some of the other group stage play we've seen, they are ramping up very quickly here. You know, they are a team who can be aggressive, but they know when to pick and choose their moments, right? right? Um, and we saw in uh, their win at the, the split two playoffs where they were one of the only teams who were really feeling it and willing um, to be aggressive even in the finals lobby. So it feels like they're getting themselves, uh, you know, ready for that kind of play style right from the start here. Questions about Ascend, but questions about the entirety of the lobby as again, we head into the standings in our halftime recap presented by PlayStation Tournaments. Let's take us through what has happened after three. Ascend obviously coming off the back of a nice win, their second overall. Alliance getting some rhythm. Dojo, they had a good game one, a nice game three. They put themselves in the position to be able to play, especially from 20 to 28 points, which is where second to seventh in this lobby is actually playing from. But on the back side of this 20, I want to look at the teams that maybe whether it's this game or whether in general, you look at teams like FaZe, haven't showed up the way that we might have expected. And that's probably due to the contest that they're experiencing over in their climatizer, but it's still something that they need to solve. And we've seen other teams solve contests a little bit better than this so far. So maybe a legend change, we'll find out as it stands. Here after three, it is a set with 54 points. Wide away, Zephyr, I see you, you know, fist bump in here behind the scenes. Uh, Amia showing up really nice to kick off day two. I couldn't be more happy, especially after our start yesterday with Ascend down in the dumps, really trying to see how they could find their way to exude the play style that makes them sort of more passive in this current meta. The fact that we see them now with 
double wins on the day of still a fantastic kill line as well there at 25 almost yeah. half of their total points. I personally don't think they're slow at all. I mean, look at this too on the backside as well. You even look at Start a Fight, you look at Dark Zero, you look at Alliance. They've all gotten second, third, fourth places. It's not like these teams aren't staying competitive, Bullet. I mean, especially when you consider the fact that it just takes one big game probably to boost you into the position where you're in a top five, whether you continue to have a bad game or not, as long as you play pretty decently in the rest of the three. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. I mean, look at Dojo, you know, compared to where they were yesterday, yeah. they're starting strong here. You know, they, they know they needed some good games today, and look, they've, you know, set it up straight away. And the way they played against uh, Alliance there, you know, Alliance now with effect, looking strong as ever, like, come yeah. on. Yeah. That was an intense fight in the end to, to take that high ground. But yeah, Dojo pulling up, doing damage, taking out effect. That was just such a nice showing from them. You know, I was talking to Design yesterday. He had a bit of a mix up with his settings, but yeah, I mean, they're here and they're, they're going crazy, so. It does show what a big difference it can make if you're not contested though, right? That's probably the big difference between yeah. what we're seeing from Dojo today and what we're seeing from Dojo yesterday. Um, just frees up that early game and, you know, allows them to focus on, on their rotations and other people's rotations. Because when you've got those early contests, you can't always, uh, you know, have those, have that movement around the map. Uh, you know, you can't schedule it in quite as well as you can uh, when you are being contested. That's 100%, I mean, Speaking perfectly to the segue on screen, phase they've been contested earlier on, one point after two. I think they've gotten a little bit more. They're now at four points. So if you're looking at, a, you know, tripling your score in some essence like that, I mean, so far, so good. But they didn't start well. And that's the thing. I, I want to open the question and conversation to you guys. How do you feel about phase Is this really some, you know, kind of a performance that you they can suffer, essentially, in the position that they are? Maybe one of those teams that has still a little bit to prove, despite really performing well at Split 2. I mean, they, they are an excellent team, a lot of experience. I might have expected them to come out a little stronger today. Uh, I think finding their footing has been a struggle here, at least for the last two days, and seeing how they can finally adapt to this meta is something that is still yet answered, but we know this roster is star-studded. They have the background experience. We talked a lot about veterans when we discussed our day one, and this roster has plenty. If there's anyone who can figure it out, it has to be them. Uh, I also want to talk about Dreamfire because they've, they've played well. They haven't been the same Dreamfire of yesterday genome. And, and I don't know if this is, I mean, was yesterday more of an anomaly? And now we're seeing what we can expect from Dreamfire. You're, you're shaking your head, no? Yeah, no, I, I don't think it's a, it's a, it's certainly not a surprise for me. This is actually sort of the Dreamfire that, that we know and love in, in APAC South, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the kind of team that does just steamroll a lobby, that is their comfort zone, honestly. And I feel like over the, the past year or so, they have experimented with a few different styles. And I think it's, it's made them a more well-rounded team, mm. uh, but certainly they are at their best when they are just running straight at you and putting you down before you even know what's happening. That's the fun about these groups. Sometimes you get that lobby that allows you the space to do that. And sometimes you're a little bit more congested early game. And so you've got to work on the stuff that might be your sore points uh, to be able to get to the position where you can actually have the level of success that we've seen them have previously in yesterday's first showing. Now, as we head into our final three games, will Dreamfire continue to put on the star-studded performance that we've seen? We'll start a fight, find their way, climbing the ranks and representing South America. Will FaZe rise up or will Ascend continue staying at the top of the mountain? We'll find out.
Welcome back, everybody, to the ALGS Day 2 Champs action. We got groups B and C finishing off on World's Edge. Ascend having the two games of their life, double digit kills plus the dub on top of it. Now we're transcending into Storm Point. Can they continue that domination glitter? So far, the stats are looking a little against them, but I like to see other teams, LG, A's, needing to have a point difference in these next upcoming games. Dojo having a much better time this time around in this lobby. So many changes now that we get to see these groups perform once again since they only got to play once yesterday. And this is a lot of the stuff that we talked about before the show even started on the desk. I had said Dojo might have an opportunity to get some more points on the board now that they weren't dealing with those contests. They did exactly that. Two third place finishes in the first three matches of the day. That's not too shabby. I mean, Sen just popping off outside of the wins that you're talking about, a fourth place finish. So top four all day so far. But those stats you're talking about, they do get the majority of their points, or at least they did in the split two playoffs on World's Edge. Mm -hmm. Now we're moving into Storm Point, where some of the other squads that you mentioned had a little bit more even point differential as far as where they were getting those points from. It might be LG's time to shine. That would be fantastic to see, considering that they are having one heck of a fragging out game. But that's no stranger to LG. When I think about this team, this is a team that has no issue cleaning up some KP. Last split alone, we saw them finish with a 20 plus point difference. They finished earlier on with 17 KP in second place for game number two. You guys could see where our teams are going to be dropping coming into this game. Once again, going up to Storm Point, the difference from what we witnessed from World's Edge into Storm Point are some teams may go for comp swaps. Some teams have that strength going into Storm Point, or there's teams like Ascend that may struggle a lot more playing their usual composition on World's Edge into Storm Point, and the stats are against them, unfortunately, so maybe having some readjustments going into this champs. And we did see from those drop spots as well that it looks like we're only going to have one contest right now between Pulverex and North Epshin up there at Thunderwatch. So it should be really exciting to see how things play out here. First Storm Point match of the day, match number four coming your way as our teams are in the dropship and things are getting started. Love to talk about what we've also been seeing from the crafter. If we see any of those longbows, you gotta think about the skull piercer, the extended purple sniper stock as well. Dropping from the ship, we get to take a look at North Epshin, the team that took game number two with 5kp. We saw what happened after game three with Ascend, and we're not wasting any time. Let's get into it. He's got the longbow. He's got 14 bullets, nine in the reserve right now, and F-Chan already getting Slayer's Knocked. And that was the one contest we said might potentially happen. It looks like Pulverx want to try and push this, see if they can maybe clear out this area and secure some really early KP. First knock comes out. Both teams down to two now. Oh. The clutch coming out of Pulverx, and it's element six that goes down. E6, struggling a little bit where they wanted to land originally, trying to find the contention versus Pulverex and failing our first team to go down in this game four, our first time on Storm Point right now. Saw the crowd giving their support over here. The smiles as well from F-Chad. But that's actually a move from Pulverex, though. They were originally supposed to be up with North Epshin at Thunderwatch. They went down towards E6 and Jurassic, and now they ended up really successful in that area. So that could be where they end up staying. And let's talk about why we saw E6 land in Jurassic. They had actually opted to land either there or Antenna. They didn't want to take the 50-50 against 103. So instead, Pulverex said, well, we'll take the fight to you. And now they not only get to loot that 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 uh, vault, but also the rest of Jurassic Park. And if they have any information nearby, we get to take a look at where the circle is going to be pulling. Yes. So that's going to be nice too, because 100 Thieves being right alongside Pulverex in their own POI, they have a survey beacon, they have a crafter, and they've already called in an evac tower. I mean, this move from Pulverex was super clutch. Not only did they clear out the space around them, but now they're super safe for the next two rings. So they're not going to have to do a whole lot. 100 Thieves making a little bit of move. Are they going specifically? Four phase, or are they just getting out of antenna knowing it's going to be a little bit chaotic as teams start to move their way in? They definitely know that phase is going to be rotating away from here, but now if you take a look at where the map is, and I mean, right here, phase is split up, and wondering how that's going to play out considering oh, the fact Epshin. that 100 Thieves are running the Catalyst, Bang, and Gibby, so their goal is to try to play for that positioning. North Epson also getting involved in this fight with that similar rotation. Another team that we did talk about here for just a little bit, and I want to see how they play this, is LG, because we saw them play really conservatively yesterday when the zone played in their favor. They went straight to the nut building and held that for as long as possible, ended up in a top three scenario, and it boded really well for them when we typically see them being quite aggressive. Now they've got another zone that they can rotate into very easily based off of their drop, and I'm interested to see how they decide to play it out today. Dum Yung Koon, 
another squad that's already made the rotation. So talking about where the circle is going to be pulling and where it could end up, all these teams have already congregated on this side because in this no-name spot, sometimes we see the circle pool actually exactly where Dong Young Kung has already situated themselves by those rocks. If the buildings where you see 100 Thieves already taking up that space ends up pulling, yes, you have the high ground, but sometimes it pulls away from those buildings and you see a lot of chaotic fights happening from underneath or you see other teams sharing up that space from the low ground, but then they're exposed in different directions from the squads that will take a later rotation. When I think about squads like that, I think about LG that are going to be playing by the edge. You think about teams like Gambare Otosan that are going to be rotating from down beast. So a little bit more of some space that they have to cross. Taking a look at Exit, my team to take your eyes on. <laughs> the very beginning, all right? They said, don't give us so much attention. Maybe it's going to be bad luck. Look, I, I get that the Caster Curse exists, but they are already rocking the Kraber off the rip, and Nocta's already rocking the purple evil shield. So not stressing too hard here. They also have information on where that circle is going to be pulling. So a good position for them to make their next move, especially seeing how many teams have already made that rotation. We have Dreamfire, Dark Zero, Dum Young Kung, like we saw earlier, mm -hmm. 100 Thieves, Hoverex, or Northception are going to be making their way there as well as Lucy de Wants. I mean, things are already starting to get pretty congested. You can see LCDF trying to avoid a few shots here as they're making their rotation, trying to find a little bit of safe space to land. Hmm. Needing to heal up just a bit as they at least get a safe corner for now, but there's a potential push coming out. Popping the beast of the hunt, gets the scan, gets the information on the team that are trying to take height on that rock. Bang smokes ain't gonna help you out here when the beast of the hunt is activated by Satuki. See the cat wall also coming on. Forced to use that so that way they can rotate from the back end of this POI, but where can they rotate? If they want to try to take height and wrap around, it's gonna take too long, especially with how many teams are already on their way to that circle, exiting out of Stormcatcher. Looking to try to take this fight with the 30-30 shots ringing through. Ooh. Nice, didn't even miss one right there. Catches a knock at the psych up. Lucita their fonts after their rotation from the skies. Immediately gets sent back to the lobby by North Epson, who are on a terror right now. Let's not ignore the fact that they took game number two, and now they have a good amount of KP to work with here. And that was a little bit of a rough rotate for Lucita France. Obviously, a lot of these teams figuring out where the next zone's going to be shifting, trying to nail down whatever real estate they can, but a lot of it's going to be taken up by those mountains that are in the area. So there's only so much playable space. Lucita France didn't have as much time to even really work with where they were landing, and North Epsom wants to make sure that they can clear out the space around them. They have that edge pretty much to themselves now, with the exception of any of those teams that are rotating in a little bit later that had those farther away drops towards the north that they can now at least switch their focus to and have uninterrupted attention on them. It's a really good point, especially if you take a look at the compositions that we've been exposed to. Catalyst has a pick rate of 82.50% thus far after the action that we saw yesterday and continue on for today. That's why you're going to play for these positions, and that's why Dojo are also making a comeback after their performance. Lackluster performance starting off their day yesterday. Now starting off incredibly strong, top four. Calls in the cat wall as Timmy. Going to be able to hold shoulder to shoulder with enemy. Nice Hemi stats too that we see. He's got the purple extended heavy mag. They all got full purples, but so does the team right below them here in Mill. It's gonna be riddle order. And it's also the fight for the ring you have to consider. This, both of these teams want information on where the, team, uh, the circle is gonna be pulling, and that's why this fight is gonna ensure. That is a great point. All right, we've got Beast of the Hump popped for riddle order, trying to see if they can get some information, make an aggressive push up here onto the roof, going up against Dojo. They get a really solid off angle out of one tappy getting a nice shield crack in there, and now Dojo might be on the back foot. Tappy back and away. He had used already the Beast of the Hunt earlier on, too, so jumping down from the height for right now. Riddle Order taking split position, but with the Digi threat in the hands of Yukio, they get the trade-off. Enemy onto one Tappy, Yukio onto Designful. The cops are coming through, so are the pinks. Mikay in some trouble, too, gets knocked. Yukio's the only one alive, but it's Ooh. not going to be enough as Timmy is on the other side with the Hemi that we mentioned. Enemy is going to be able to get the res onto Design, and the reset comes in for Dojo. Now they get the extra loot at their feet, basically walking care packages on top of the fact that they have the ring console. Start a fight also in a lot of trouble. Timmy's been doing a really good job with those punches, but now SAF down to two as they're trying to mitigate whatever incoming damage that cat wall does go down, hopefully kind of blocking off the squad right now. You've got Exit in the area. Nice Kraber shot coming out of Nocturnal. That's got to feel good. <laughs> Puts up the, the cat wall specifically to, to block, block out the sight of the Kraber. <laughs> Oh man, that must have been the first shot that Nocturnal taken through at least the cracks of that window right there, because 
they ain't gonna know, but now they know. And especially with that cat wall, just to block up some sites, you can see the fighting continue on in the south buildings right here, right in front of Exit. Nocturnal could easily just hold the high ground on that building alongside Fun and still add in some extra pressure, but it's conserving some of those bullets depending on how they want to approach that next circle too. Dreamfire try to push into the bangle or smoke, but the 3-2-1 comes in from the other side. 3MZ gets taken out, they lose out on double shields, and Dreamfire, the other team that's going to be hanging out on the high ground here with the now the squad moving in from the bottom. So the Crypto Drone, that could be a set now getting involved in this fight. So much chaos in this area right now. You've got Dreamfire down to two, but there's still SAF, there's still XF. The, all right, the push is being made up in the Dreamfire. That was the perfect time for SAF to do it because they knew that they had the advantage there with them being down to two, but now they're going to have to heal up and make sure that no one's now turning their f attention on to SAF. It was safe in the moment. Exit also having backed off just a little bit. There was a moment where I think DZ was potentially looking for a third party. They kind of moved over and wanted to scope out the situation, but things have calmed down for now. I do really like this position from Exit strictly because depending on where the circle pulls, if it doesn't end up committing to that south side that we saw Dum Young Kung actually rotate early on alongside with 100 Thieves, and it continues pulling towards these buildings instead, Exit is not in as bad as a position when it comes to a 50-50 on their rotate. They can try to take the, either the choke point to the north if it does pull more to the south and there's too many teams there, or they can inch their way to the edge of the circle on where it's pulling. They're also, I believe, babysitting a either a survey beacon, it looks like, there in their building on the high ground, and that will allow them to get some more information and deny that information from other teams with that pressure. Let's jump into a listening right now with Exit to make their next move to hear what they're going to do as they're holding down the line of sight with a Kraber. Moving back now. He's running. 120! Uh, I missed my bullet. In here, in here, in here, Brennan, on the sword. Newcastle. Go, Marie! I knocked the, I knocked the caustic. Oh, fuck. I killed him with my kill. I, I thought I got the kill, man. <laughs> I was so hype. Coming off here. Okay. It's a purple armor Newcastle to our west. This team's gonna fucking uh, ruin our day. I can suck, man. Sliding down. Northeast. 60. This Newcastle's annoying. Newcastle bang. Newcastle team's going southwest. Bang 36 blue. Okay. You need Phoenix? Yeah, I do. Okay. I just got two bursted. All right, well, sounds like Xset is having as much fun as the crowd is right now, waiting for those Kraber shots to come through. Knock has been oh. ripping shields off of people. I, I thought he's about to get a haircut, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like he saw it and then <laughs> said, never mind, and then tip underneath the rock. He was about to get domed right there, holding back the patience from Nocturnal, and I just love the comms too. They were looking at Gambare originally, who was off to the side when they were making a comment about the Newcastle, saying, you know what, that Newcastle's annoying. That's Young Hee, by the way, who's now made that rotation <laughs> alongside the rest of his squad to the south side of the circle, trying to uh, take the edge side close to Dark Zero by Jurassic Park. Yes, he was also there by Jurassic Park. It's Dojo, and he, they're actually approaching Gambare and Dark Zero at the same time. Good position for a third party here as Dark Zero are engaging here. Zul also in the feed, engaged in the fight, getting that first knock. 16 squads left as Zainu using the tree for some natural cover, but they've used up the cat wall. Is it worth it here with two other teams in this area? Like you said, this could be a huge opportunity for Dojo to take out some heavy hitters in this lobby. Dark Zero realizing that it might be a little bit safer to play back just a bit behind oh, they know. this wall. Yeah, they are about to make sure, especially Jen going oh. down with the smoke launcher. Come on. No way. It was literally one. The smoke launcher is just enough to take down Jen. And this is the third party Ooh. that we were waiting for. Dojo taking you back to the dojo. It's time to get some training in because Designful's got some hands. Geo get eliminated in this confrontation. 15 squads left now. Catwalk going up as Dojo now want to fully send it on to Dark Zero. Nocturnal then finally gets the Kraber shot. Tayscown Lemon. And this is going to be the Dojo versus Dark Zero fight. This is the perfect play out of the Dojo. They pushed an opportunity when they had it. I don't know how that was what started it with the smoke launcher, but Dojo now on the edge. So much loot at their disposal, able to clear out the teams in the way, and all the while other squads going down 
in the kill feed. You've got 310 going down, and I think that Dojo is aware there's at least one more trio they have to be keeping their eyes on. Wrapping around from what we can see on the map, looks like it is Enter Force 36. And it's also just forces DZ to play this as a duo, and that's Complexity who are rotating from the outside of the circle to get involved in this fight. Enter Force 36, like you mentioned, also being one of the squads in this area. That's four teams approaching from the southwest side into where this next circle is pulling. And guess what, Squan? I'm that, so glad you said I that. I was going to say, that next, that one squad that has gotten such a good call on this circle, still running the same comp, by the way, with the Crypto, it's Ascent. Your double winners of World's Edge, who are leading the overall standings of Groups B and C, Alliance. Welcome back, Effect. We missed you. I know we keep repeating ourselves, but it's always so nice to see familiar faces make their way back to land. Mine's playing off the low ground here. This is the spot that we were mentioning earlier on in the game, where if the circle does pull here, mm -hmm. it gets chaotic very quickly. So holding down some space where you're out of line of sight of multiple teams that are going to be rotating from the different chokes into this no-name spot is going to be incredibly important. Or else you're going to end up like Phonyhead right here, who has to rat this out with white Evos. Oh, that's less than ideal. But there's so much chaos going on that Phony might be just able to survive for just a bit longer here. 100 Thieves down to two as they're trying to keep themselves alive. Going for that res. Gibby coming in clutch here. Able to get the squad back up. But they are getting pushed on Open by up. LG. Open up. Get ready. Throw in the fire. Gets the crack. Complexity eliminated from your feet as LG. Taking turns to then rotate on this fight, and guess who got a call that involved themselves? It's Alliance. They're trying to fight their way to maybe have some control over the space instead of having to play from the low ground. Smart opportunity, but it has to be a quick one at that, considering that the circle is going to be closing right behind them soon. This could be a really solid opportunity for Alliance to try and 3 be here, but they are going to have to move. We saw one of them kind of scouting out where they're going to have to rotate to for the next zone. 100 Thieves decide they want to dip and get out of dodge as early as possible. As then we were talking about their stats, how they were lower, and technically it was actually 79% of their points from Split 2 playoffs came from World Edge, and only 21% here on Stormpoint, but they are the only team that predicted this ring and has been holding center of that zone this whole time while everyone else is now fighting to get in. That's their comp, you know, they're running the Watson that can scan the ring console. They're running the crypto to see how many teams are around the area. They got the EMP ready. They get pushed on in 100 thieves with Ooh. the tracking and the beamage. North Lab should also in trouble. Link gets, takes an out, gets taken out, and so Satuki pops that shield back. See the different angle as the EMP rings out through their ears. That's going to be a send once again. Face finally get called out as Phony was the last one alive. Gets sent back to the lobby. 11 squads left, and it's getting so chaotic with this foot oh ring closing. Look how many teams get eliminated in your feed. Start a fight. LG Chivas, they can't rotate from the buildings. It was a send that called this out. And Edset, it's that rotation that we mentioned with a huge crack. Beautiful nades coming in. Literally the entire southern half of those teams done and dusted. Exit, like you said, Vicky, making the call early to move a little bit farther north. This is paying off for them. Dojo also finding themselves in that area, trying to navigate this engagement, knowing that they have to make it work. Only 45 seconds left before this shrink starts happening, and they don't want to have to fight through the Dojo to then go into Ascent. There is also the 100 Thieves Rat that could potentially pose a problem for them. My goodness. Timmy with any weapon. Not I anymore. was going to say the headlock at this. Not anymore. Happens through here, and Dojo, after their transition from Mill all the way over to where the circle's gonna be pulling here, look at where Ascent could be rotating right after this. They're engaging in a fight themselves, but is it worth it here? I think trying to call out one of, yes, Dark Zero on the other side here, too. Alliance get eliminated, but Dark Zero overlooking the fight happening that Ascent just took, and now they're gonna be able to breeze their way right back into the circle in the safety of the edge. Currently four squads left. It's Exet, Dojo, Ascend, and Dark Zero. Dark Zero playing this as just Zainu right now, staying alive for the rest of the team. Honestly, it was smart for Ascend to move out, clear out the first rat. They know that Zainu's also a solo. If they can get rid of both rats that were on the other edge, happens right there. Now Ascend have nothing to worry about from their backs. All they have to do is focus on who's coming in from the front, and there's a very real possibility that Dojo and Exit might run into each other first. Unless Dojo griefs Ascend in this situation, or Ascend wants to grief himself, if they engage in this fight first, that's going to be the green light for Dojo to go in for the third party. Full three-man squads left in this lobby. Our last three remaining teams, Dojo, Exit, and Ascend. Well, Ascend are safe in the south side of that circle. Timmy with these hemi shots. 
Gets the beam once again. He's got the digi threat on the R9 here too. And they have that slight high ground. Wondering if they have the catalyst wall on top of that. Because that's going to be so important for a circle like this. And this is why Ascend cleared out their backs. They saw what was going to happen. Backed off. And now it is Dojo and Exit battling it out. Ascend waiting in the wings for the perfect opportunity to strike. You see Timmy trying to deal a little bit of damage to Ascend to deter them from pushing up and making sort of sneaky moves. But now we're falling into a little bit of calm before the storm. Which squad will make the first push? Ooh, the calm. I'm just waiting. Oh, they destroyed the Crypto Drone. I was like, I was just waiting for an EMP to ring out. That's not going to happen here. Comes a mother load. The Fuse going to be able to also get some extra set of information. But the Ascend composition with the Valkyrie, with the Watson, they could send out the Jenny just in case, depending on those creeping barrages. Kashira with the EMP, if he gets that Crypto Drone online in time, He's got less than 25 seconds on the clock. He should be fine for right now, but Exit has them in their sights. They see that they were split up just a little bit. Saw that Fun was trying to put in some pressure with the 30-30 right now, but they also know that Dojo is to the right. Any of Dojo or Exit commit first, their backs will be exposed. Lufka having to be careful. Five seconds before they start shrinking, and someone's going to have to make a move first. Bow check in the hands of post kill. Design fill up in the sky as he tries to land an arc star. Hopefully looking for that initiate and make opens an opportunity for Dojo to push. On the other side too, taking it off angle. Design gets melted down. Enemy gets the knock on Nocturnal. But they can't overextend here. Even with that knock, it's exit that are gonna try to reset here. Which of these teams are going to capitalize? Timmy is dealing with Ascend himself, adding in pressure to the right. While the rest of his teammates are dealing with Exit, giving him suppressed fire if he's in their line of sight. Beautiful communication that we're currently seeing right now from Dojo, and they still have height advantage for right now. Timmy spots out Ascend, deciding to make their push, and he knows that he has to alert the rest of the squad to come and help them. Now Ascend are the ones that have the high ground. Timmy deciding to back off, play this a little bit safer within a limited amount of time, but post kill comes through and decimates with the R99. There's a Jenny coming in clutch too with a creeping barrage, helping out Ascend stay in this position by the rock, tries to set up the Watson fence, gets deleted just as quickly. Here comes that catalyst wall that they're awaiting for. Just that patience paying off for Dojo. See enemy just trying to restabilize. Not sure if he's got the meds. Okay, he pops the med kit real quick right alongside Timmy. They're dropping some ammo for Designful. Looks like they were lacking of some ammunition earlier on. And here comes the cap wall from Exit. Trying to match that, and he's about to get the mother load. That's going to be huge for this final circle right now, especially having a fuse. Massive call out, Vicky. Dojo also now out in the open. Exet able to kind of play this a little bit safer, waiting for the opportunity to use that additional damage for the win. Oh, they're isolating Dojo. They're isolating Dojo. They know that Ascent on the high ground here. Design takes an evac tower right in front of them. Where are they gonna land? They're gonna be playing by the tree. They lose on an enemy. They got pinched. They got gripped by both teams here. Here comes the EMP ringing through the mother load, controlling some space. Ascend get eliminated in third. Dojo in this 2v1. You play through the knockdown and they come through. Dojo take the dub that they've been working so hard for. Dojo got the mojo and they're here to show it. <laughs> I love it. I love these fans. That was played to perfection by Dojo, even with Exet trying to save up their extra damage and then focus Dojo down. I mean, the decision to go up on the evac tower saved them in that moment. And that was a massive clutch out of the trio. And it really was up to Timmy at the very end. One of the last members alive at the very end. Well, rather, Dojo was just feeling so much pressure taking that mm. evac tower that we saw what happened to enemy on the way up. So to play around that space, to play around the mother load, and to wait to have that catwall to utilize it, they're playing so well today. Who would have thought, you know, when your contests aren't going so great there, or you get Greek by Dark Zero at the very end, that now you get to have some room to breathe, the information that you fight for all the way by mill, and then you get to reap the benefits at the very end for the late game. I mean, how many clutches can Timmy really have? In my opinion, even the fact that he was solo Deterring Ascent for so long in that top three is equally a val as valuable a clutch as what he has done time and time again when it comes to handling his ones. I mean, they were in a 2-1 split, keeping two full squads away from them that entire time and somehow not becoming the focus of either one. It's beautiful too because this allows them to skyrocket overall. I believe this probably sets them up in second place right below Ascent, who already had double wins for the day. But with the KP that we also got to see earlier on from Enemy, the damage that was putting down after they took that first initial fight into carrying that into the very end, 
Timothy is Timothy for a reason. Let's take a look <laughs> at the final circle to take you guys through Exit's point of view. The patience between the double catwall that you saw in front of you. I believe the original catwall on the other side was from Dojo that had yeah. put, at, put them out earlier, and then that's when Exet put up their catwall into using the mother load. But it was the focus. Even when Dojo was in a bad spot, the call the evac tower so quick in a situation like this, this is what you love to see when it comes to land in the champs. Especially because you can see just how out in the open Dojo were. They, like you said, suffered the shield crack before they even got onto the evac tower. Somehow still escape all of this chaos down at the bottom, as well as the additional damage from the mother load. Exit is forced to then switch their focus to a because they're the only team left on that low ground all of the time was in Dojo's hands there. And you can see what happened to Exit once they realized that Dojo was gone and Ascend was coming down. They had to just change who they were pay paying attention to, but still, 11 kills for Dojo. Nine out of Exit. That's both squads. Aggressive. And six for Ascend, a team that stat-wise doesn't usually rack up points on Storm Point and usually has a better time on World's Edge, having a fantastic, consistent game in this series in general. You take two dubs with double-digit kills, you still get third place in our first game on Storm Point, and with 6kp, as we take a look at the second page, Wolverex did get that 4kp, yeah. but it was the chaos that we also saw in that no-name spot before the circle pulled closer to where Exit was holding that high ground building just in case it did end up pulling on that side of the rock. Some big brain plays out of Nocturnal there, setting the squad up for success and at this point they have to be feeling good they're having a really solid series and it's just about getting yourself to the next stage of the competition 11 kp look how much damage Not too shabby the damage that they put <laughs> down all together each and every one of the members of dojo having so much history going into this it's also just wonderful to see Timmy on the stage. He has been trying to compete in the Pro League going through the Challenger circuit for so long to make it through the LCQ, to hive up the crowd. He's got some supporters here. He's got his dad in the crowd. Are you winning, son? Well, I'm sure he's happy because he's definitely winning right now, sitting in second place after that performance in game number four in the overall standings for this group. And you know, I know we've talked about them a lot, but I feel like we should probably hype up Ascend as well, not only because of just today's performance, but because of a little bit of a comeback. I mean, they did not have a great showing in the split two playoffs, and to turn it around in such a short amount of time, this is the Ascend that we remember from the split one playoffs. They are now 54 points, first place for the series results here so far, followed by LG Chivas, but a pretty decent point disparity there. I mean, Ascend has just been so consistent. We talked about how they were top four the first three matches. Once again, find themselves in a top three position. That's insane. Yeah, it's actually crazy. It's crazy to see what they were able to put down on the board here. All in general, putting in so many of those points, looking all the way down, start a fight on the bottom. It's beautiful to see so many of these teams do the turnaround, coming in from World's Edge, going into Storm Point, and what you need to do differently, including the chaos that we got to see start off at the very beginning of the game. We saw many teams are quick to rotate to where that circle could have been pulled, but also teams like Exit that do the option coverage to cover where they could rotate just in case, worst case scenario, they could approach from a better position from the high to low ground disparity that Storm Point provides. We know on that north side of Storm Point, it allows you to transcend through so much more open ground. If you take an evac tower, if you have a Valkyrie on your team, you take the Skyward Dive, you cross so much more space, you get information while you're also able to fly down and find your own spot. If you don't have that scan character and you're not gonna be able to get that passive done, then you are able to secure a building and play into your strength. Also helps out that specifically Nox found an early purple Evo. He had the Kraber that he was putting on the work, the crowd was getting hyped for. Ascent had gotten a really good call where that circle was gonna be pulling, getting some KP of their own, but when you have two teams in a circle like that and a double catwalk comes in and it blocks out your vision, sometimes you have to be forced to play for a certain placement even if it isn't for the dub. And when we're talking about the clutch choice to go to the northern side on behalf of Exit. You saw just how scary and detrimental it was to stay on the southern side because while you were casting, all of a sudden, the kill feed lights up and we lose four to five teams in a matter of a minute. And that's what happens if you aren't making those reads just the right way at the right time. It is a night and day difference when it comes to your placements and then obviously the potential KP that's coming along with it. Ascend didn't have to do too much, but then they also did the really smart thing of knowing that there was still a few rats in the area and they weren't going to let the rats be the downfall from the back end of that zone. They went out of their way to go hunt them down and clear them out 
to ensure that they could try and wait it out as long as possible. Timing is everything, especially when it comes to falling in the evac tower, the comms that comes in for something like that in a circle like that, you could do that if your vision's blocked. You put down the evac tower and even then you saw the pressure. And I said, while they were focused on that, who was focused on Ascent? It was Exet. And then Exet put themselves on the low ground, on that hilltop, that you saw Dojo holding the high ground on those rocks for the start of time between those three teams at the very end of that circle. Love to see those type of end circles at the very end where you have the rocks, you have the natural cover of the land to work with. You're not having 10 teams in one building. At the very end, wait to get funneled out and then it's just chaos. Now going into game number five, usually my favorite games when it comes to series because at this point in time, teams know where they stand. Sure. Teams know what they have to go for if they want to play for kills, if they already are feeling comfortable with the current points that they hold, if there's a big gap in the overall standings with the bottom 10 teams. What more can they do to either grief those to other teams, maybe eagle check, maybe send them down mm -hmm. to lose it all purpose so that way you can yes. extend and delete the competition if you can start on the winner's side? Always so much planning that goes into effect for some of these teams in the future. And I'm glad that you brought up the griefing game for two different points. One, I'm interested to see what Pulverex does again. Will they keep that switch down to Jurassic and go for E6 one more time, considering it went well, or will they go back up to Thunderwatch? Want to see how that one plays out. But now you're talking about the next stage of the competition. The last two lands, the threshold for making it into that winner's bracket was 92 points. The one before that, it was 100. We've seen a couple squads that have already surpassed those numbers, starting to solidify their spaces in that winner's portion of the bracket. And like you're saying, if some of these squads feel comfortable, especially if they have another opportunity to get more points on the board in the next couple series, there is a very real possibility that someone will opt to grief someone if they can try to keep them out of that winner's bracket. I love how you bring that up. It's, it's true, it's, it's, that comes into play in the future. It's not just within the two groups that we're seeing perform in one lobby. It's about planning ahead and what you could do if you've already had the points necessary to sit comfy. Getting started here with game number five. We're gonna have to see if those contentions come out or if we're gonna see the respect instead. Overrex are landing north side of Jurassic Park, leaving Jurassic Park open here in this oh. situation. And it does look like we are seeing the fight get taken from E6 to 100 Thieves, where this was the original 50-50 that we were expecting coming in, and they already look like they're in trouble with Slayers going down first again. If it didn't work with one team, try contest somewhere else. But 100 Thieves have been getting contested all day yesterday. They struggled with it up against Go Next a couple times. 100 Thieves this time not looking like they're struggling, putting E6 on the back foot and holding some really solid angles, cornering them down in this one building. E6 are in a rough position. I just really like the mind games. Our Povorek says, we're not going to land Jurassic Park, and E6 probably thinking that they would get contested right. again. Did not land Jurassic Park, which makes it completely clear, which then forces E6 in this thought process of, well, we're going to take the 50-50 against 100 Thieves instead over here by Antenna. And with E6 playing this at a disadvantage and trying to take height right now, very limited loot to work with. Just picked up the vault for right now to try to take this fight. Gibby Bubble has already been called in here too. Depending on how long this fight lasts though, we know that phase lands, lands in launch pad. Mm -hmm. They'll be rotating to where the circle's going to be pulling. But I expect more of these teams nearby to maybe prioritize that next circle instead of trying to engage in a fight that's way too long here. On move with another crackle. Story comes in from the other side and gets the knock onto Tyler. That was a rough spot for Tyler because he didn't have a whole lot of loot. And now it's just easy cleanup for 100 Thieves on to E6. <laughs> the first squad out of match number five. And 100 Thieves have to feel good about holding down antenna, and they don't even know that they don't have to worry about anyone around them because Pulverex is nowhere in the vicinity. Exactly, and, and that goes into what teams prioritize first, right? Mm -hmm. So they hear the fights going on, but if they have the information on where the ring is going to be pulling, or rather, even if they don't have that information, they feel uncomfortable and instead want to get ahead of the curve, already start rotating to that circle where they could try to get that ring console first. Dark Zero. Also in that early fight, all the way over here by North Pad, you also have G.O. getting involved. There's four other teams. Dark Zero in a Ooh. lot of trouble, losing out on Zero themselves. Sign already had that purple too. With Young E also getting involved, taking down Mia K. Those are all the squads in the area. Dojo, your winners of game number wow. four. Get taken out in 19. This is to highlight how many teams that are so quick to rotate here on where the circle is going to be pulling. Because look at the minimap. They already have information on where that circle is. And this could be pulling towards the outskirts of North Plaid, close to that army, armory area where the Dragon Ball Z buildings sometimes are located. 
And you can see how many teams are up in the north right now trying to battle for that area. Tom Young-Kung, another team yesterday had fantastic performance that we were able to talk about a little bit here. One of the early rotators in their near SAF, they've got a send coming in on the backside. They could find themselves here in a pinch just in just a moment knowing that they want to kind of hold this area down. So those three buildings right there, that's what I was talking about. We've seen the circle pool on the outskirts of that last third building to the left side of the right of where you saw currently Dum Young Kung situated in. If it does pull towards there, there's a lot of open space between the armory and those buildings. Unless a team just rolls right in and comes in with a trident so that way they can block some space, get out of the line of sight of other teams, it's incredibly risky to go in for an early rotate if you don't have the proper composition to lock down those buildings. You're also denying yourself loot if you don't have the Loba and you are playing for those buildings right off the bat. We see that now a little bit of the fighting's died down. Dark Zero somehow escaping there. No one wanted to really push that, even though there was a slight advantage. We've got Geo up there. We've got Riddle Order. Enterforce making their rotation in right on the edge, potentially running into Riddle Order in the process of that. But right now, everyone has settled down just a bit and is trying to take a step back and not go out that early because we've already lost two squads. Man, if this ends up being over the water between North Pad into... Toxic. <laughs> I mean, but imagine the teams that have a Newcastle. Geo, in this case, that Newcastle wall is going to come in clutch. But then the Cat wall as well, in the same situation, a block outside, Dark Zero. But in that squad from inside with the Watson fences, this could be a sin, maybe. We have to see with the Catalyst, probably not. Trying to find the squad as well. They get post kill at the same time, and it was Ascend inside this building with post kill going down. Luf got to meet that right afterwards. Ascend, a team that have been having such a dominating performance in this lobby, go out in 18th. Now Dark Zero could get the extra loot that they need. They're still rocking the Digi, the 30 30 on top of that with the weapon load up for Zero, and some extra room to breathe here, too. Very, very confident push out of DZ in those moments as well. LCDF now down to two, finding themselves in a little bit of a scrap here in the area that Riddle Order was in, and they go down to Riddle Order, caught out on that rotation. We also had seen at least one or two other squads trying to rotate around that western edge, opting to go a little bit wider, a little bit safer, and LCDF might be wishing now that they'd done the same. Calm before the storm. Just not get to deleted, having to back away. Lack of cover, you're trying to shoot through the smokes and you know so many of these teams already have a digi threat. Enter Force 36, the other team that's playing off that slight lip, the low ground. Enemy, there. There's over seven teams in this north side of the circle, by the way. IOY having to pop the shield bat while aimbot with the gold evo is gonna be able to pop up that cat wall and this is the moment where the teams are going to start rotating in. The circle closing in right behind them. Again, this is north side that is going to be exposed. And the circle and where it's pulling. This is where it's going to be hanging out by. Sometimes it also pulls towards the buildings to the south side. But DC is in such a good spot. They can oppress the teams that are, that are going to be coming from north wall, from Gambare, Enter Force Complexity on that north pad side. Area 310, rocking the Caustic with Lemon being here. They want to secure one of these buildings. But fighting over here by the wall could be a tricky rotation depending on where they want to approach, especially if they want to approach from the building side of the wall. There's already two teams there. Tries to call in the Noxia. You saw the Black Hole activated on the high ground. And this is Alliance taking this fight. This is a fight that Alliance needs to take, though. They are currently not safe. They only have a certain amount of time to clear Area 310 out and then continue on their rotation and trying to find a safe area. Like you said, going through the wall, not the best option because you've got Tom Young Kung there as well as SAF. So Alliance just trying wow. to clean this one up. And Effect is back, and that's why he's here. Welcome the champs. Once again, Effect gets the beam. Follow-up attempt coming in. Yuki gets deleted on the other side, playing on the Cosmic Nasa. It's fine. We don't even care. Goodbye, Lemon. Goodbye, Area 310. 15 squads left. And we talk about the rotation exiting out from wall. They enter through the vault with so many teams already inside of those buildings. 
dropping down from that zip line. You could be exposed. There's three pills, I believe, on the bottom end of those zip lines that they could play around that space, but that's still not the best space to play around when you're out in the open in the line of sight of not just two teams in those buildings, but also the squad that has probably the roof of armory like Exet. Gambare Otosan right now, this is the squad that we mentioned earlier that has the Newcastle that can work benefits into where the circle is going to be pulling. They're definitely getting pushed right now. They're able to get the shield back off on Junghee, but looks like from the outside, it was DZ with too good of an angle right now. Really able to kind of be annoying with this poke damage from a safe, safe distance. A lot of damage. Look at that headlock. Burn took some of the ammo just to delete some extra cover that they could work with. They're literally pinched right now with complexity oh, on the other side. Dark Zero giving them the sandwich in the other side of the bread for them to work with here. G.O. literally fighting for the life before N.A. comes in to clean them up between Dark Zero and Complexity. Now both of these teams are going to be walking away. You know, got to give a little bit of love to Complexity, too, a squad that definitely struggled yesterday on the first day, and today it is a night and day difference when it comes to their performance. They had nine kills in the second match of the day, and now looking like they are much more confident starting to make this move. I watched them go very wide on that western edge, and now they're making the perfect time to push into the area. They've cleaned out everybody else around them other than DZ, who assisted them in that fight against Gambare Otosan, but Complexity are in a pretty solid spot. If we could take a look at where Exit is positioned, they do the very same game plan as what we saw in the last game. They set themselves up in a spot that in case the circle takes a drastic pull away from where you could expect it, they're still in a spot where their rotation won't be contested. They can have a safer spot, maybe engage for some third parties, depending on the teams that are inside some of these buildings. Taking a look at Exit right now, that is exactly what they're going to be doing. They're going to be trying to push into this building. They were on the roof of the armory right before this. You see the black hole being called in right to the window crack, and Nocturnal gets that first knock with the Arc Star. They're currently going up against Dreamfire. Nocturnal and Sykes looking for a way into the building to see if they can take this fight to them. Dreamfire down to just Roy with literally no shields and barely any health. Tries to go for the shield swap, isn't able to do it. Dreamfire now out at the hands of Exet, and they have set themselves up well in this building. Now they have extra loot too, especially since they had rotated just as quick. Taking a look on the other side, this is the rotation that we're talking about. They weren't going to take the vault. This is a smart spot here for them to rotate from the south side of Walt instead. And Alliance right now sharing this real estate with FaZe on the south side of that building. They already know. You can hear the pings too. Circle is going to be closing in a minute and less than 10 seconds here. And they're adding on some of the extra pressure. There's 12 squads left. But talking about their next game plan, whether it be Alliance or FaZe, there's a third mm -hmm. squad in the midst, and it's LG Chivas, who are on the other side of FaZe. But the one team that has circle advantage and could gatekeep all three is 100 Thieves, and they hear the fighting that's happening. There's another choke that either of these teams could rotate to if they don't want to deal with 100 Thieves, but then they would have to be in the line of sight of Exit, where really the only cover that you have is a big rock once you exit out of that choke point. And I think FaZe have seen LG out in the open. I know 100 Thieves was looking their direction as well, so LG going to have to decide how they want to handle this backing off just a bit, and FaZe is not going to overextend too much, but they are moving as a trio right now. FaZe might have decided that it's going to be easier for them to go through LG instead of worry about Alliance, and Alliance might take that opportunity to try and push through the choke and avoid all of it. And that, that would be so smart here too, but they also are getting a little aggressive playing by these by this edge, and it's because they feel that momentum after already taking another squad previously in the middle of that rotation. Seeing what Alliance wants to do here, if they maybe even want to contest, since FaZe had rotated away right behind LG, LG have now become the ham to the sandwich. 100 Thieves on the other side with FaZe on the other side from them. 100 Thieves are going to be able to engage on that fight while on the north side, there's that Trident blocking out some vision. You see the smoke on top of that. If the Trident isn't enough for Zero, looks like he called him the Creeping Barrage earlier on too to try to contest that team. Zero's doing a fantastic job right now. He's got six kills to his name. The follow-ups are there from Zainu and Jen Burden. But playing on the edge of where the circle is going to be pulling, which is going to be that water, Complexity were also very patient in holding the spot after they took care of G.O. They didn't want to overextend. They knew that there was another team on the other side. They didn't know it was Dark Zero and LG. This is the fight against 100 Thieves. Coming out on top, Pogwadis with the Thermite, the nemesis that they crafted. And they need to finish this fight just as fast because now FaZe is going to get involved. 
That was a huge Oh, they didn't even get the reset. No, they didn't. They had no time. Face tried to go for the third party, but somehow they are outplayed and barely, barely any damage taken by LG even after getting through a first fight with 100 Thieves. That was what we were looking for out of this squad. LG Chivas, the team that loves taking these fights back to back. A hundred thieves and Faze are the victims to their hand. An alliance holding that big rock that I had mentioned before. This is through that choke point once they made that rotation away from all that chaos. Let's jump into a listen in presented by WD Black to see what their next move is going to be. Open armory. We have okay. Andre, bro. Andre is better than the roof. Yeah, yeah. We can play Andre and the roof. Like, just fucking, we got to kill the team in army, but we got to walk this super slow. I think you just wall the right side. You, like, you wall from my rock. Yep. Cut off the left side and we play the right side and we pinch everyone. Okay, okay, okay. Bro, no, I don't think he even needs we'll have to fight Egg, you know? Egg is already in. Egg, we'll, we'll just get shot by Egg. Can we go early, bro? Can we go early no. there? Nobody's no, we, we can't go early. We can't go early. We cannot go early. We cannot go early. Why? Because we're gonna get wrapped and pinched. No. Where do you want to go early? Just under the army, bro. No, no, no it's not safe. Not safe. Not safe. Not safe. At all. Yeah, well, this team's gonna come soon. That's fine, we just shoot them. This we, egg is still in as we, well. We, we have to problem. gatekeep this team and force them into the building. No, egg is fighting, bro. Egg is fighting. We can take it early. Nobody's gonna shoot us. No, no, no. We need to clear back and then go at the fucking armory. Okay. We need to clear back first. Otherwise, we just mirror and pitch. Go on early, we just get focused by the entire server. Yeah, team shooting. Ar army team shooting left, yeah. That's fine. You want me to uh, wall uh, towards the right of armory? I can yes. over here. Wall yeah, yeah. towards the right wall, of the army wall, and we clear there. Yeah, and go yeah. right side of the wall. Team yes. evacuating from choke. Yeah. Yes, just make sure they don't land on us. Get the fuse. Careful. Hey, who's, 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 who's the fuse team? Uh, inside, inside here. The armory team. Still more damage in armory, still more damage in armory. They're landing on top of armory, they're landing on top of armory. No, 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 behind, no, behind. Okay, I think you won't okay. Nobody behind, nobody behind. Yeah, okay. whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna bang out the left side, bang out the left side. Look at right side. Break it, break it. Break it, nice. They're bang out left too. One on roof, one roof, shooting at roof. I got my scanning in roof, scanning in roof. Fuse 80, fuse 80, fuse 80. I'm queuing up on all teams. Come, 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 come. Yeah, yeah. Ah, 201, 200, I did 200 damage. Okay, 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 okay. Go down, go down, go down. We can fight this, fight the side, fight the side, fight the side. Fuse dead, fuse dead, let's go, let's go, let's go. On me, we're going. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Black them. Get inside, get inside, get inside. Come inside, come inside. Get inside. They he, he under, push under, under. Under. he up and get inside, he'll up and get inside, on me, uh, just here, just here. They're under, they're under. Cue this and reset, he's healing here. Yeah, I'm holding back, I'm holding back, I'm holding back. Heal up full, heal up full, heal up full, yes, I'm chilling. I'm cueing, I'm cueing, yeah, yeah. You're chilling like this. Rest off to heal, heal. rest off to heal, yes. Off the direct, off the direct thing, heal. Yeah. You guys, you guys, okay? Rezzing. Cover, cover. They're swinging, no, 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 you chill, 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 rest, 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 rest. Oh, what, what the fuck, man? Rest, 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 Roof, 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 careful. Yeah, they can pick your roof. They're both on the roof on the right side. I'm one in here, one in here. I'm one in here. You're by side, fuck. They're rising. I have no kill. Keep rest, keep rest, keep rest. Okay, okay, rest, 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 rest. Just watch. Yeah, I'm watching. They're shooting me, they're trying to kill me. They're crazy me. Use that, use that. Give me knock, give me knock, give me knock. Pushing you. I'm going out. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. They're getting shot by the team. Another team coming in, I guess. Another team coming in. Kill this guy, kill this guy, just on me. Kill this guy. I'm just trying, I'm just trying. He's going to kill me. Help myself. Awesome miscoms here, but Hoggies is still alive. The dream is still alive for effect. They dropped down. The reset happened. The fact that X had still survived that with Dark Zero trying to go in for a third party. The circle is completely pulling away from this armory where the team that was holding the Dragon Ball buildings have now made their rotation into God Spot. Dom Young Kung holding the north side. Complexity still by the edge. And the circle is now to the backs of Alliance, Dark Zero, and Exet. The chaos in this building has completely shifted all these players' focus. And Hack is trying to wreck. No way! Almost able to clutch that up for Alliance. But they go down. Exet go down. Everyone fighting in that building trying to escape to save area. And you know who did it early? LG. They flew over everyone and avoided that fight to get into this final zone. Smart choice. They cleared out Riddle Order while all that chaos was going on. Now they find themselves in a much better position to try to battle it out with complexity and Tommy Young Kung, like you said. Even the Trident wanted to get into Final Circle right there. You saw it dancing in the air on top of the gravity lift real quick. Dom Young Kung, we talked about them before, and now on that north side. I love how you highlighted LG, saying Asa La Vista all the way down below, said we want no business on that mess. We're able to go into the south side of that circle, and now LG get eliminated 
at the hands of Dum Young Kung to be able to finish off what was left of them with also some help from Complexity now moving in. Two squads left, Dum Young Kung versus Complexity here, and they are beaming from the rock. The team that took God's spot, that patiently waited in our circle buildings are your winners for game number five. Now we need to remind everyone that they were holding those Dragon Ball Z buildings with SAF. They had to fight through them first and they did it at the right time. They cleared them out when no one was even paying attention to that portion of the zone. Made sure that they also didn't have to be the first team to rotate out and give SAF their backs. Tom Young Kung played that perfectly, got in early to hold the northern edge of the zone and let everybody else come to them. Complexity, though, played that so, so smart as well. They were passive and they were patient at the right times, cleared out the people around them when they needed to, and then made their way slowly in to secure one of those top spots. Despite even playing so patiently, they still were also able to get 7 KP with the teams that had to funnel from that south side of that final circle into their line of sight at the hand of the 30-30 that you saw right there. The B with the R9 on top of that beautiful showcase. I believe before that game, they were sitting in 11th. This may have now put them up in 8th with their overall points. Getting that first place on top of it with those 12 extra points. You love to see the patience wear, paying off here for a lot of these teams, but it, that wasn't easy. I believe another team that was in those circle buildings that were neighboring alongside them, because we saw two teams there early on, yep. was start a fight. It was. If there was a fight happening in Armory, like we saw between Dark Zero, between what we saw from Alliance, Exet, while that fight was happening, that was the green light to take that fight as quickly as possible. They beat start a fight and then had the clear rotation to that god spot on the north side. Complexity were right there, but they were also dealing with LG, who had flew in on an evac tower, hanging out by the south side of that circle. This was a very, very tough zone for some of these teams to have to play, and they navigated it so, so well, especially when the names, the heavy hitters that got distracted in that massive fight on the southern edge at the end, Exet, DZ, and Alliance all battled, battling it out. Had the res been hit the first time they went for it and they didn't pull off, Alliance might have been able to survive the, the, the staggering of the push that was initially from the injured Exet. Alliance coming through, having to deal with that chaos. Let's take a look at a clip with Alliance here. We're so glad once again to see the gang reunited again with this initial push from the first place. We got to do a listen and we got to hear the comms. A bit of nerves too on top of that. Could have stuck the res honestly in the very first place. Called it off when Exit was restabilizing on the low ground. Yep. You saw the Phoenix Gate, you heard the comms, but effect is so insane with his shots. I mean, I just keep saying that just because it's always so exciting to see these young legends coming in and being able to frag out. There was the comps right there. He was trying to pop the Phoenix kit. He still gets the beam. And even when he got pushed on by two other players from the north side, or rather the high ground of this building, was Exit, he still was able to get the one clip. And here, this is the moment where had they stuck that res and look how yep. far through it they got. And that might it have been the saving grace. They had those few extra seconds to make sure it was done because you see that they were not healthy on the roof either. It was the perfect opportunity for Alliance, but I think they weren't sure what was going on with the push above them, and they tried to play it a little bit safer. But either way, effect has been melting since he got here, and they have got to feel good as a squad, like you said, being reunited. In a game like this, information is everything. He still got the one clip, by the way. That was oh, disgusting. Yeah. But in a game like this, let's say if Seer was still in the comp, right? Obviously, if we don't see him, thank goodness. But <laughs> let's say he was and you had an exhi exhibition. If you had the exhibit, rather, you would be able to see which of these teams are in that area to see if you could stick the res like that. Information is everything, but playing a much more defensive bunker down composition, being able to also run the cat, the bang on top of that, play into your strength with the digi threat. They had to play around the cover from inside the armory because they didn't know what the situation was on the north side on top of the roofs, what was happening with the team that still had to get the res on the fuse. So they were playing as a duo there while also giving them suppressed fire. Yeah, that was a tough call to make in the moment, especially when we were watching all that go down. It was just Exit and Alliance, but then when that camera pulled away, we saw that DZ had made a move in as well 
to try and see if they could third clear that area out. It just evolved into chaos, but now we're taking a look at the final circle, this time from Tom Young Kung's perspective, which he, we didn't get to see the last time around. We saw it at the very end here, and it was important because we did at least pay attention to what the rotation was supposed to look like, what fights they were forced to take no matter what. Let's say they went for an early rotation and didn't fight in those buildings. They, their backs would have been to start a fight, and they would have just gotten pinched regardless by complexity and then start a fight. They prioritized that first fight, moved into God spot, took this fight against complexity, even took hype first, not even with a Digi to work with here. When you have a Bangalore and the opposition also has a Bangalore with those smoke nades, then taking different off angles, being aware since there was such so much fighting happening by the armory that they had to clear both angles of what this final circle was going to look like. That was actually huge because they made the push over, realized that it wasn't necessarily about to hit in the way they wanted to when it comes to that engagement. Wrapped all the way back, which at the time DZ probably thought that half of the zone was safe at that point, was able to catch DZ out, give themselves enough space to recover, turn around, and then change their focus down onto Complexity. I mean, that was a solid, solid match. Beautiful. You can see Complexity coming in second place right after that. We saw earlier Complexity and DZ individually sandwiched GO inside of that underground building that neighbors the edge of where that circle was pulling. LG, who took an evac tower away from 100. So smart. The fact that they were also able to fight their way into that circle. We saw the Lions take a much passive, safer route through that north oh choke point. Oh my god, Dark but Zero. Dark Zero were fragging out. They were fragging out because that's where they get to rotate from Mill to North Pad. They were able to funnel Geo in between complexity like we saw, hold that circle, and we're also farming damage. We saw how much damage Zero was able to put down on the board. They still finished with 16 KP in fourth place. They got more points, 21 total points, than what you would have gotten for our first place team currently right there with the Young Kung. There's literally no more points available for any of the squads on this second page because between DZ and then the 10 KP onto LG, I believe we just saw, that is just the majority of what was available. Tom Young Kung at the seven, I mean, that was Insane. I didn't even realize DZ had that many kills. I knew they were farming, but that's almost tied for the highest amount of kills we've seen in the game so far. The end specifically, as chaotic as it was, and DZ getting involved in that fight too on the south side, you could see that Alliance were in the line of sight. LG was caught in that fray. Get to take a little pan out too with our gold Nessie. Nessie, which by the way has been cleared out. Our merch shop here is amazing, and the fact that they have the golden Nessies is even better. Even flexing the purple PS5 controller, okay. <laughs> oh, we can hear the Dreamfire yeah. chants in the crowd, giving them their energy. Wow. Unfortunately for Dreamfire, they didn't have as good of a game that time around, actually falling rather early, and that's caused them. Look at on the other side of the page, sitting in 11th place overall. These are the updated points, by the way. Beforehand, they were just a little outdated. Now we get to see Ascend still sitting in that first place spot with 67 points. But the fact that Ascend, LG have that gap between themselves and Dojo, that's a 10 point difference. This final game with as close as this top five is looking is going to get intense. Yeah, honestly, even the tie with Dojo and Exit, that the first six are relatively close, but right now, match number six, the last match of the series, last opportunity for these teams to get those points on the board before we change up which groups will be playing with each other. We'll have to see how this now plays out, especially after the little bit of a steamroll we've seen a send on, the KP coming out of DZ. That is what makes those teams that much more scary because they're a little unstoppable. What's funny is that in total so far, the amount of kills that we've seen from each of those top five squads currently, Ascend have 31 total kills across the board for these five games. LG have 38. They have the most than anybody else in the lobby. Even after that insane game from Dark Zero, they're sitting in top five with total of 27 kills throughout the course of the series. Once again, this sixth game with such a close overall leaderboard in this lobby is going to determine so much. And it's nice to see that our winners from game number five have access to a ring console right here. Tom Young Kung having command center all to themselves. I am keeping my eyes on Pulverex yet again. It looks like E6 has gone back to Jurassic. Pulverex still in the area. They were scouting out phase <laughs> just a little bit. They were quite spread out, but uh, it seems like everyone's decided for the last match of the day. Contests are no longer the option. My grieving brain cell was telling me, imagine if Pulverex just said the alley oop and then just ended up dropping a Jurassic Park just for this <laughs> last game, just for, for the heck of it, but no, no, no. We're gonna play it safe. 
as they should. Pulverex, we talked about some teams that could afford to try to grief others. Pulverex isn't in that situation just yet right now. So playing for where the circle is going to be pulling is going to beautifully benefit, as you can see right here, that exact play style. Playing by the edge here, 100 Thieves counting their blessings with the ring console that they have in Antenna and LG. We're going to have a much more clear rotation coming in from the south side, exiting out of Fish Farms and Gale Station. Have a good amount of loot on top of the fact that they really just have to worry about phase because most, at least of the circle, has those canyon rocks that you could use evac towers to get around, but it's the position that you want to sit in. Sometimes I've seen the circle end on the north choke point of where Antenna is, close to the buildings on the east side of where 100 Thieves is situated in. So we got to see where it could be pulling here as more of these teams have already gotten ahead of the curve to make that rotation, such as North Epson and Pulverex. Another opportunity here for FaZe and 100 Thieves to do something really, really solid when it comes to this zone. I mean, they've obviously got some serious priority positions here. 100 Thieves already making a move, trying to find the spot that they want to hold. And look how early the rotation comes in from Tom Young Kung. They are about to land in the thick of it with 100 Thieves and FaZe trying to hold down that position. But Dreamfar, you brought them up, having a little bit of a slower start to the day here today, hopping in that chart and going for a little bit of a drive making their rotation, knowing that they've got to get a move on here. But we have a fight breaking out already on that rotate. This is the building that I was wondering right here, too. Across the rock now that our LG could start rotating from the edge, but already there's three teams mm -hmm. in this area alone. If you want to go for an early rotate and be by the hillside north of where this building is too early, you're exposed. You have basically no cover to work with. Even if you're on the high ground, you're exposed from both angles, and you really only have grass to cover you. And with the 30-30 in the hands of Scurry, He's looking very scurry himself right now with those double docks, and they're not going to leave from this building. They're not even going to overextend. Why would they if they know that if they leave this building easily, another team like Le Cite de France or Dreamfire could just rotate around and actually try to contest them all over again once they get the reset? But that was Tom Young Kung, too. Obviously, a team that just won. They tried to make that early rotation in, and they go down. They pay for it. Dojo now finding themselves in a similar position to what we saw just moments ago. This time it's not EZX and Alliance. It's Riddle Order and JoJo battling yet again. Riddle Order down to two. Trying to see oh. if they can close this one. Down to one. Will one tap be able to clutch it up? The spikes. Look how much space these spikes clear. Having to go around, but it's it's just the fact that it wastes time when he doesn't have a shield bat. And it's going to be a 1v1. Ooh. He's got the gravity lift, the alley oop. It's a flying bloodhound. The Ravens don't grant him wings and designful with that final shot on the 30-30. Take out Riddle Order from this final game, from this lobby. That was a huge advantage, having those purple shields. That'll allow Dojo to get a nice reset for themselves and then continue on with the rotation, hopefully not running into any other squads along the way. Now checking in with Exet, who are also <laughs> trying to clear everyone out in front of them. Grab Cannon will not save you here as Exet are just mowing through everyone. So the fact that he got knocked, tried to take the Gravity Cannon to get away, <laughs> and then the Black Hole said, get over here. Pulls you from 10 meters all the way around. They're able to force him all the way back into the hands of Nocturno. Gambare heard the fighting that was happening over here by Armory, getting involved in a fight right before it looks like Dojo was able to reset. Free KP here for now, Gambare to actually profit from, being able to finish off design on top of that. See what's happening because at the moment Dojo still have height advantage, but the number advantage is in favor from Gambare Otosan and the Gravity Lift is coming in. You know, I wasn't oh sure if they were going to be fast enough to catch them out on that rotate. Gambare Otosan now down very low. Newcastle well. though, trying to save the day here. And it does. It actually does. Even if he goes down right here, it actually that gold knocked out unless Timmy. Oh, Ooh, the slow! Oh, he almost no. did it! He almost did it! The slow! Look, Look at, at him! Out. He's one! He is one! I was prepared for the clutch factor of Timmy yet again. That is about as close as it gets. Vicky cannot even function anymore. I just, I got, I'm deflated. <laughs> I'm deflated. I know we've all had moments like that in our own respective games. You saw his reaction too. Dude, if he didn't get slowed by the Newcastle wall, he was able to turn to slight bit faster. He already beamed him. He did like 156 at Earth, so he was literally one. Oh, I know Dojo are feeling that one. It's still an amazing performance from this team. Now we're in the top five. Lucita Fonts 
re-engaging in this fight. This is what I was expecting from them, especially since this is a really good building to hold in a circle like this, but they lose out on aimbot first. And now let's see their phones get annihilated by these art stars thrown out by Anmu. And when you hold buildings like this, holding so many grenades, it's not just like when you're playing Fuse, but holding these grenades are so important. So we go for some resets as Jen unleashes a clip on from the car. We're able to find some of these trades as Zero also has to reset. So right now it's Jen Verdi playing around the wall. 100 Thieves have done such a good job keeping people out of or away from this building so far, but DZ heard the shots, knew it was an opportunity to push in and land some real estate. 100 Thieves do go down. DZ playing that perfectly, backing off when they needed to, taking the time to heal. Jen was shredding on that push in, and now they have solidified a really solid spot. All right, Zarya, we see you. Gonna let them know. Light out their death box real quick. Now in a fantastic spot, taking that building. That's why we saw so many teams try to contest for that position. Once again, especially where the circle's gonna be pulling. This is one of the best spots to hold. I bet it, they could even pull right here on top of this building or on the outskirts if it wants to try to pull more so towards launch pad. They could try to clear out from the hillside here of these buildings into the dip into the water. And with their composition, seeing so many catalysts glitter, you are able to reinforce those doors. You'll still have the wall for a late game rotation but it's about making sure you put in some of the extra pressure to negate any teams from feeling comfortable to push into your building, even if you have a catalyst. Yeah, they've got a good opportunity to hold for now as effect. Clearing people out in their path as they are trying to make their way into the zone right now. Lemon going down. They're really always behind uh, Area 310. Right, just the, the slightest it, it, bit. We saw this happen in the last game. We're seeing it happen again, taking out Lemon. Forts are the first one to go down as E6, the team that has been struggling, at least getting some loot on the board after they were able to land Jurassic Park, have some room to breathe, no 50-50, but they're dealing with the gauntlet of a team, LG Chios, when it comes to these fights, feeling so confident. The reinforced doors here about Wagwadis putting in the beam himself. He gets a double knock, he needs some backup here as Yanya comes in, he's also right there with the red evil shield. They're playing off of the crate of a little head glitch. Goes in for the wall bounce here too. It's gonna be able to navigate away from the creeping barrage, leaving Nizel there just for right now, but it's the space being bought in to help with the reset. That was so important for E6 because LG needs to also be aware of a third party that could be inevitable in this circle. Yeah, between that smoke and then the ults, they cleared a lot of space, hopefully able to do something with it here. They are able to stick the res. Gagwad is back up, and now they're going to go for those heals. Meanwhile, you saw the injured E6 trying to decide if they want to back away. You see Swinney up on the top, booking it. They don't want to have to stay in this fight anymore, so now it's just down to enter fourth 36 with LG, and LG looks ready to take it back inside the building to close this one out. Enter Force 36 are playing this out as a duo. We saw what Alliance did to them earlier. Not too sure of LG has that information as they just back away, give them more space to loot those crates. Alliance effects held down from the other side, but it's okay, he's got backup from Alliance. You saw the catwalk getting pulled up here as Hawkins is trying to give him some press fire. He's also got the creeping barrage in his pocket, but they don't want to utilize too much here. They don't want to overextend because there's three other teams in this area that could easily come in for a third party. There are lots of Scary teams they have to worry about. Nice shot coming out. Hackus, though, they've got Ascend in the area. They have Phase in the area. And their Alliance looking like they want to try and make a move up off of the squad. They do get some decent damage down. Backing off for just a second here. However, Effect is having none of it. And Ascend is cleared out of that space, opening it up for Alliance. That was a beautiful approach, too, because Effect wrapped around to then start sandwiching them. So Hockey's had the front end to try to contest them. And then Effect went from the back and did it so quick that FaZe couldn't mm -hmm. engage. This was the other team that had slight height on the back end here on top of that platform. They wanted to go in for an opportunity, see that they're too late, and it may be a reset here. It looks like SmackDown may be checking out the map real quick because now the circle is already closed. The circle is already pulling in, and it is going to move to the south where Dark Zero fought for that building originally. This means this is going to be pulling towards one of the legs of, North, of Launchpad. Gabane Otosan Dogma in some trouble. They get the crack, but it's not gonna be enough. E6 showing signs of life after some difficulty taking out GO. 13 squads left in this final game. 
Making the choice to back off of that fight earlier has now paid off for E6. They've gotten the full squad back. They are reset and they get some KP on the board, clearing out space for the entire rotation through into that next zone, which they're going to have to make a decision on how they want to do that very soon. Just about 30 seconds left before we get this next shrink coming in. And there are a couple squads still on those outskirts that might want to uh, make things happen real soon. There's so much that could be said about this circle and where it's going to be moving. My eyes are on Dreamfire that have the mm -hmm. high advantage. Um, but depending on their positioning and how Dark Zero makes her rotate, Dark Zero will be on the low ground in comparison to Dreamfire. And if that's the case, the teams that are going to be fighting in the launch pad right here will be able to be distracted enough for Dark Zero to make their next move and Dreamfire to decide whether they just want to stay situated here, hold this high ground, deny that space from teams like LG that aren't in that next circle, who don't have that information on where that next circle is going to be pulling. They're forced to play by the edge. Dark Zero and LG Thagen could split the attention of Dreamfire. So much could happen here. But what I do know is that Complexity are hugging the edge of the circle. They got a bow check in their hand, and they're trying to gatekeep E6, who are trying to rotate on top of them. Let's jump into a listening with Complexity while they take this fight. 15 on you two. have to help me, Cody. Yeah, I know. He's on me. He's one HP. I just got fucked by Another team on the left. There's a full under I killed two. I killed two. I killed two. Careful, man. Careful, man. I'm trying to look for you. I'm trying to look for you. Look for me. Look for me. 16 over there. There's yep, another burn, team coming from scan. tree. Yep, burning scan. They're Popping landing on us. Can, can we consolidate on our build, please? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they land on top hill. Yeah, that's we fine. Just I don't want this team to reset. I don't want this team to reset. I killed him. That's fine. That's fine. I'm down to look up. I'm down to look up on them then. He's on the left side. One's on my left. Yeah. I'm with you. Taking his own. Yep. Dude, don't go for it. Okay, okay I'm yep. ready to look. Get him Careful. 60. I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there. That's all you two. Dead. Nice. nice. Getting our back right now. Wait, sliding down. Yep. I'm, I'm looking. He went back. No, he didn't. He's still there. He's going back now. Careful, Cody. Do yep. not get singled out. Yep. I'm pushing around left now. Kay. I have a bow. I'm going to hit his No scan here. for 12. No scan for 12. I'm going to shit on these fucking 57. guys. 57. One's here. Hit 57. Yep. I'm going to swing to the left on that guy. A little bit. I'm in a bad spot. I'm kind of in a not good spot. Yeah, right on this guy. I'm going to burn a nade on that guy. I'm do it, do it, do that it. guy in red. Do it. He's going to smoke and move. Yeah, he's moving. Somebody on him. Looking here. And for 15 perp. Can we, I need we a, have bang all? I need a pop No, no, no bang all. No bang all. Pop the uh, No hand all. No hand all. Because I can fly up here. I can fly here. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, I can smoke that off too. We need okay. to start working that. Okay. So. Yeah. I'm kind of. My goodness, complexity with very cluttered comms. Splitting their yeah. attention to two teams. They knew that a team was flying over them. That was Enter Force 36, by the way, playing this out as a duo, but they didn't have that information because they were busy with that fight that was in front of them. Now they can start rotating on the north side by that hilltop. DC, I saw on the map that they were taking some shots at LG while Dreamfire was doing exactly the same. So both teams currently have information and knowledge on where LG and Dreamfire are, or rather Dark Zero and Dreamfire know where LG are. So in this next rotation, since they were denied the information on where the circle is going to be pulling, we see it. It is going to have a little bit of launch pad, and it is going to benefit the team that has the height currently, which is where Dreamfire is. Not only that, but there are so many teams on that northeastern portion that are about to have to fight through each other. FaZe being one of them, SAF, Area 310, Pulverex, Alliance. It's going to be a bloodbath in a few moments. You can see FaZe already getting themselves into the action here, trying to keep themselves alive while also clearing out some space from behind because they don't want to have to get caught out by any of these teams. Yeah, the Catwall has already been called in and so has the Black Hole, but this is where, gonna, where, this is where the bloodbath is going to be. With the circle closing in on all their backs, this is not just three teams. This is five teams rotating from this north side circle area. 310 have been taken out. And now they're going to be funneled into the line of sight of Dark Zero, Complexity, LG, Dreamfire. They're all going to gauge and collapse on each other. Both for the Alliance finding themselves in a fight. Insane frag out of Zainu in the kill feed that is absolutely not helping Alliance right now. Oh. Exet going down. Alliance down to one. And this chaos on the north side is what we were waiting to see happen. Phase now down to two. Alliance out. In the process, down to Snipe down alone. Four phase and two on SAF. Everyone battling it out. And they're all just going to fall at the oh end. My God, zero. SAF that somehow comes out on top. Phase out. Zero's gotten a back-to-back. -back. 
Kraber shot has gotten two knocks. One of them looked like it could have been a hit fire because it was onto one of the members of Complexity in their building. And now are trying to take advantage of one pick onto Pulverex. Yanya from Luminosity creeping up onto Dreamfire. The last one alive from Luminosity right now. What is Yanya gonna do with Dreamfire rotating away? They have the double catwall to work with that they already used up earlier. But this is similar to what we saw Ascend do. Dreamfire want to clear out Yanya if they can't get rid of the rat at their backs, but they side. It's too much. They're gonna move back to safety because SAF now claiming a bit of real estate in He's that next alive. circle as well. Yanya has escaped and can at least try to get some points for LG in the process, but DZ need to leave the building. They need to push towards safety, and that will be right into Paul Varex that they will have to move through. Yanya looks like he's got too much practice off of last season. Let me tell you, that was a beautiful escape right there. The disengage from Dreamfire, who if they knew that that was a rat, if that was a solo, that could have been absolutely fantastic. But now with Yanya surviving, our last few squads, five squads left. He has to inch forward, and Dark Zero's in front of him. So he will be creeping up right behind them. This needs to be perfectly timed for DZ. We've got the full kit coming through. Kraber is ready to go in the hands of Zero. He's looking to try and sneak one of those shots through, get that opening for the team to make this push in and get themselves in a better spot. You do see some damage coming out here. This might be the opportunity for DZ. X marks the spot, and I don't think it's the one piece here. As Zero tries to go around, he tries Ooh. to get another hit fire shot with the Kraber. Backing away while Zainu gets the knock on the R9. Pulverix get eliminated. It is four squads left. Dark Zero from the skies, navigating through the catwall right now, but their backs are to the circle, Whoa! and Nyanya what? steals a knock, takes out Jen Burden for now, and the shield swap on top of it. How is he getting away with this? Dreamfire have the gods on height. And this is why you want to clear the rats out when you know where they are. He does finally go down, but now DC shortly follow. It is all Dreamfire at this moment. They clean it up, and the crowd is very happy with Dreamfire closing out match number six. The dream's alive. They struggled at the beginning to close out a series with the dub. Hyping up the crowd. Dreams in my heart, fires in my gut. And with that dub and the patience paying off, I believe they only secured 4K key. But with that dub and the 12 extra points, it was worth it here for this team. So many fans came out just to yes. give them that support, to give them that energy, especially Glitter after their performance yesterday. Talk about bringing it back as well. We talked about how Dreamfire had a little bit of a slower start in this series, closing it out strong, and that is going to bode well when it comes to just their mental in the next couple series. And what we talked about top of the show, they had only played once so far, the performance we're talking about yesterday. Now, coupled with this, they are in such a comfortable position in that overall. It's very true. I, when I think about comfortable teams right now in this lobby, at least, talking about points that were needed, Ascent comes to mind. Yeah. Ascent did not have the games that they wanted yesterday. I believe they only played once regardless, but it was the fact that they needed to really come out today, and they did. I believe that they're still sitting in first place. They may even be tied with Luminosity, but Luminosity didn't take a dub. They got second place. That was their best placement so far in this lobby. Ascend got two dubs, and they got, I believe, a third place on top of that on Storm Point. Mm -hmm. So even if they didn't have the best game in the final game and the second to last game, it was the fact that they were able to stay consistent on World's Edge with double-digit KP that probably has set them up in that first place spot pretty comfy. Another team that came to mind when it comes to having the results today, Dojo. Oh God, yeah. They're, after yesterday, yeah. They, they needed that performance. Dojo coming out, Dark Zero probably finishing off in third place after still having pretty heavy fragging gains, but still not being able to find that dub. Their best placement being third place thus far. But man, this is how we open up the day today. Day number two, day one was so exciting, Glitter. I honestly could not get enough of it. And I'm honestly so happy to see the action continue just as hardcore today.
Yeah, these were some fantastic Storm Point matches. I know you just listed a ton of teams, but once again, I have to shout out Complexity as well. They brought themselves up after yesterday, put themselves in a much more comfortable position with their performance here. They've got to feel good about that, give themselves a little bit of a steamroll. I know you highlighted Dojo, but the clutch factor out of Timmy cannot be overstated. This is the performance they needed to get themselves where they want to be heading into the final two series. I can't wait to see how the rest of it plays out because I think some squads have started to solidify their spot in that, that winner's bracket. Absolutely, that was just one lobby. We got two more today, mm -hmm. and some of these teams could carry on that momentum from this lobby going into the next one. Yeah, there's a little bit of a break. Eat some food, get the reset that you need. You know, they're not robots. We have to be able to give them some time, Thank too. You. But you, you would think, right? Maybe if you're like playing once. as efficiently as possible, get everything <laughs> framed perfect. But it was a beautiful performance, nonetheless, between our two groups. I'm going to toss it over to the desk. I want them to break down the action. Tell me, guys, did you enjoy what you saw? Oh, absolutely. I think everyone in the stands as well enjoyed what they saw. Six games of Apex to kick off our day number two here in our group stage in Birmingham, and I am so excited to talk about it, especially with these fellas right here, Genome, Zephyr, Bullet, joining me on the desk as well. Quick point from you, Genome, what did you see after six, kicking off day two? Obviously, a lot of teams in the mix, but uh, what was your quick takeaway? Yeah, a couple of big performances in that uh, in that series, I think was definitely something to think about. We had a 17-kill game from LG Shivas, and we also had a 14-kill win from Ascend as well. So, you know, the group stage, you do tend to see uh, you know, a couple of blowouts, a couple of uh, bigger performances there before we start tightening up more and more as the tournament goes on. Feels like that's what it is. Everyone's still finding that rhythm, getting tight on the screws of how they want to mechanically go about things as well. Bullet, walking through that final zone, a lot of things could have happened. You were talking about you know, Yanya causing trouble. He certainly did, kind of played spoiler for Dark Zero's chances there, but it was Dreamfire on Height who ended up making this happen. Go ahead and walk us through what you saw. Yeah, so obviously with DF here holding the high ground, you know, the prime spot, the god spot in zone, you know, they're sitting here, they're doing as much damage as they can, you know, they want to make sure that no teams are able to walk up, there's no opportunities, and they just force everyone to fight each other. You know, DZ decides to go in and, you know, play for the kills on low ground. As we've seen, they've been going crazy, just killing and snowballing, you know, fight after fight, and here they're doing the same thing. And then DF is just sitting here on top, on high, with their long range, you know, just doing damage, getting as many kills as possible. Yeah. You can see the cat walls that are used down the bottom there, right? They are to deal with the other teams, not Dreamfire. They've got perfect vision over the top of them. Those other teams down there, they're all playing for second, third, fourth place. They are barely even, uh, you know, bothering to think about that top spot on the podium. DF almost had that locked up just with those vantage points. And Zephyr, your thoughts on just Dreamfire's performance today, was it as much as you expected? I mean, obviously, they had a nice kind of back half of it, but pretty tame, I would say, after a 70 point start, 78 point start in their first group. And I think that's a result of our lobbies really starting to slow down just a little bit. We came out on fire here for some of our first series, and we've definitely seen the pace begin to adjust. Dreamfire, who's known for their tempo themselves, haven't quite been able to find that 78 lead as we talk about today's first results. I will say, kind of excited about Start a Fight and, and what they've shown throughout six. I think they've been rather impressive. Dark Zero as well, we expect that from them. They've given us that. It's always good when someone does what you expect, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and you can see the bottom of this in terms of our overall match six results. But in terms of who took it home, we were wondering who it would be. Well, we are about to find out our first series winner of the day. As we reveal, it is Ascend who take home the top spot in terms of points. Quick reaction to that bullet as well. Ascend, this is a team that in split one, they were, they were right there to being able to win. It could have been, you know, I don't know, not Lufka from the heavens, Lufka from, you know, the, the rock <laughs> on the side. But, uh, yeah. you know, he was right there in that moment. Are they back? with a chance here to claim some revenge in champs. Definitely, it looks like it. You know, as I was mentioning earlier, I'm so happy to see, you know, them playing the crypto comp. You know, they're one of very few teams to be running that and they're doing so well. You know, it's a comp that requires a lot of dedication and practice. You know, there's a lot more util. It takes a lot more time to, you know, get used to and there's a lot of kinks you need to iron out. And just to see them find their form so far has just been so nice to see and they're making the most of it. I mean, Ascend, talk to me, what, what's, what's the thoughts on that? Is this a team that we should be talking about more? Is that what they're telling us here at this point? Well, something I found interesting uh, 
uh, definitely talking about a sand and also uh, a couple of other storylines going throughout this tournament is just it kind of feels like split one playoffs again but yeah. definitely not like split two playoffs right, right. and right. I think that might be going back to the legend meta that we're seeing uh, we Great saw point. Sia was used quite heavily in both but it was a completely different version of Sia right it was the the scan uh, the wall hack meta for the first year and then it was the more aggressive focus of attention uh, Sia in the second meta and it seems like um, teams who thrived in that meta earlier on this year are coming back and sort of doing very well again, Ascend being one of those. One thing too to just mention, Split 2 in games, it was basically just the Prowler showcase, right? And now we're also seeing a lot of diversity. The R99 is back in there. We're seeing 30-30 repeaters in a lot of these engagements. I think the flexibility overall, as you have mentioned, has increased. One thing to tell you about is we get our overall series results so you can break it down by points. LG Chivas were tied, but the reason they got second instead of a sin is because of a big 23-point game. Essentially, these tiebreakers are broken down by who has the highest single game score. Ascent beating out LG Chivas there, but Dark Zero right behind them, Xset, and then Dojo, Zephyr, who, I mean, all the expectations, all the conversation in the world, they have performed really well here, and I, I love some of the in-game fights we oh, saw yeah. and the pop-offs from Design and Timmy. You cannot discuss this series without reminding everyone of that game for the ending where we see Dojo lift themselves into the sky with that last minute evac. And it just goes to show it's not just their first time here, right? There are plenty of experiences found within this roster that push them to the same tempo we see with some of the best of the best across the globe. Well, uh, one of the things I think as well is that you're seeing teams that are kind of having a resurgence in, in different ways. I love the point of this is more like split one than split two. We're seeing even teams like Complexity who are now kind of coming back into the forefront of teams that we're talking about as well. Monsoon joining us on the desk for split two and uh, kind of getting back into the mix of it. So one of the beautiful things about this Apex eSport is that things keep changing and that's partially due to the metas, partially it's due to the players and the way they take on the challenges. A new challenge at Champs, but a familiar name and a familiar team we're gonna be talking to who have been in the limelight. Let's send it down to Peeps. He's got Lufka standing by. Rain Day, thank you so much. We have Lufka here, an absolute animal in the game, one of the greatest players in the world. Uh, absolute insane series that you guys had there. How are you feeling? Good, confident. I love that, I love that. So from split one, you guys were seconds away from winning it all, yeah. right? Split two, wasn't that great. Now, what has been the difference that you guys are changing to make it so you guys can win ALGS Championship right here in the UK? We've worked on our communication, like overall confidence, like split two, we, we didn't work well together, like we had to work on it. On the bootcamp we fix it, and now it's time to show it. I love it, I love it. And so for all the people wondering at home, how can you work on your confidence? How can you work on your team building on that sense? It's like mostly personal thing, like I work uh, by myself, like on my confidence. I don't know how my teammates are doing it, but I'm just working by myself. I love it. Well, based on that series, I mean, you guys have all the confidence in the world, man. You guys were shooting left and right, going up and down. Um, so talk to me a little bit about your comp, because you guys are one of the few teams running a crypto and a Watson. Tell me about that. Like, for example, like if we don't have zone close, we, we take it slow. Like, we don't force to Valkult into the zone and just die on white shields. That's, that's what we did fifth game, and we died for it, so we just proved that it's not worth it. If the zone is really close, and we know we can take good spot that is, like, holdable, we just go for it, but if the zone is far, we just take it slow, we, take, we craft our shields to get stuck, and then with crypto, we take the scan and look for opening on the map. I love that. Slow and steady wins the race, right? What would winning the championship this week mean to you, mean to your teammates, mean to your family? The best feeling in the world, like release from all of this hard work, the happiest thing that can happen to us, yeah.
I love it, man. That's passion. I love it. Well, that's what we got here with Lufka here, one of the best in the world. Rain Day, take it away. The happiest place on earth, changing locations for a couple of days <laughs> if Ascend is able to take that one, Lufka says. I am certainly excited to see if they can continue to climb up the mountain. They've done a good job here, and congratulations on taking our first series of the day. But guess what? We've got two more coming up very shortly after this break. To keep in tune with what we have happening, make sure to Stay tuned to play Apex Esports. As you can see the schedule here, if you forget, we start at 2.30, and then our final series of the day, A and C, we will start at 7 p.m. But again, if you do not remember any of this, that is okay. Play Apex Esports on Twitter. Play Apex on Twitch. We will have you handled for all the information, all the show times for what we're doing here at the championship. When we come back after this short break, we are getting into the second part of the day, and you do not want to miss it because more Apex action, more ALGS and more chances for teams to shine here in Birmingham. The championships continue after this. Sleep! What? Sleep, what are you doing? He's awake. Complexity is eliminated. Getting all the damage and post kill, just throwing himself right into it. And then yeah! they are your winners of match number one. We're playing hide and seek here. Just like that, North Epson showing out on match number two. Ascend are set to mark their second victory on World's Edge, and it just falls into their laps. Dojo in this 2v1, you played through a knockdown, and they come through. Dojo take the dub, the team that took God's spot are your winners for game number five. Look, Look at him! Out. He's won! It is all dream fire at this moment. They clean it up, and the crowd is very happy with dream fire closing out match number six. Yeah. There maybe? I can't bring you. There's no way we can go. Zip line's free. Bottom zip line? We're gonna go right type of this. We're gonna right type of this. Oh, that one? Okay. We're gonna have okay. to run along the wall. Okay, right. ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, someone might be here. Is she no. Any? No. Yet. I'm gonna kill us into the zip line, alright? Is that right here? Yep. Scan above. Scan again. Scan. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Easy. We're good. I'm up, uh, how many souls? I have five. I have eight. Yeah. I'm just gonna sell them. <laughs> we have like down. the best one now. Yep. The left one's up. Is anyone high ground? No, 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 I'm not sure. Uh, this is good. Wait, this we can is craft. good. Is anyone crafting? Yeah, I do, I do. You can craft like no, I don't, I don't actually craft. Jen, do you have crafting? You will. Yeah, I, I have 20. Yeah, you can craft without getting shot. Okay, like kick here, this side. Here, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All sides are safe. All sides. Nothing but. I don't think there's anyone across. Yeah, I don't. I think we're good. Hide is hard stuff. We just need to hold our. our oh, actually, she's gonna try kill us. Yeah, this cross is cool. I mean, they, they really can't with the team under. What's up? I have four two. I'm I'm one five. Six one. If I get a juicer, it's actually huge. But. I don't want to use juicer. I wish you could be staring there. Are they looking? I can't break I'm that looking. trap. I can't break that trap. I'm, I'm, like not, looking. Can I get this? No, I'm looking. I'm not they're looking. They're looking. They're looking. I can't break this trap, by the way. It's impossible. I gotta like, Sorry, swing out. Yeah. The right pin is unlooted as well for later. No one's high ground. I don't think anyone's high ground at all, bro. Yeah, I think we're fine. I think they're fine on high ground. Enemy 
I mean, that's just the team just sitting in that back area, but that'd be stupid. They should be going out. That's a nice little rotate, or not? If Oxy doesn't enter, we, we we just control all the height and win the game. It's gonna be like a plus, plus, plus. Yeah, yeah fine. Look, 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 look. Just look, look. all the way though, yeah. You kill. That's a seer. Horizon, 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 horizon. Come on, run for bottom, maybe. I'm looking. I got big fire. They might try key up middle. Yeah, they're like low. Be ready for key up. Go wall, the wall, the wall. Yeah. Fuck. Did I run Bill? I mean, they're low ground though. They actually, oh, she monk us. I mean, if we play middle and left side, is it better? Uh, yeah, probably than this right. But if I actually get this side, I mean, me and Jack can just try to hold this. I can just wall, I can wall diagonally now and then we can just cross. You want to do it? Yeah, but I, I don't no, want I th them I think it's better if we can though, hold though. them there, right? I think it's better, I think it's better. Okay, I should use wall there now. There could then. be someone left zipline. There could be someone left zipline. We wouldn't oh, know. Okay. Oh, we're oh she's out. looking. They're looking. I, I think this is good if we can hold our sheep. It's really hard from this end you know? We'll see zone. Yeah, but left yeah. side doesn't get into it. Like, this side does get into it. Well, they're shooting at a drown. Well, we just hold height. We just hold height at this side. But we're gonna have to fight that left. Uh, that team just gonna queue up. I think they just zipped up. Cross side. Yeah, we're gonna have to fight that team in height. Here's some bad thing. It's just gonna be spam. Yeah. Well, we're just gonna have to kill this dude in height. And I hope you're gonna drop a fight to the team Swing, swing, swing! Swing, swing, swing! We're just at the wall in the next. You just have to wall to the corner. You have to wall to the corner, yeah. We have to do it from right here. Yes, we're gonna break your eyes now, alright? Nobody run away. We're gonna get our eyes off in the corner, you know what I mean? Yeah, do you have a heavy mag for my prowler? Yeah, yeah. What's that on? Fine. Don't let him cross this for you, alright? Yep. He should've gone. He's, uh, oh, he's in the middle, they're sitting in middle. Yeah, we should've gone left, not gonna lie. I could've walked, yeah. but it's alright. The sides are pretty even, but I think it's gonna pull more left. I mean, it might be this one, I don't know. Is Ochi looking? I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I, I can't run out this guy here. Right? Someone is going out, but thank you. Yeah, they're still looking. Someone dead. 42. Okay, they're they're gone. gone. Fine. I might get CQ. I might have to wall a little bit earlier than usual. Yeah. CQ. Well, how, I don't have my. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I don't even have much range. Yeah, okay, you don't? Okay. Maybe, maybe. Just Look, sit somebody, back somebody here. Sit, sit, like, sit like right here. They won't kill you on scan. Oh, she's looking. Sure. They should oh, evac. They should evac. Can you, can you break this CQ, Jen? When they evac? So I can look the bit. I can't yeah, they're evacing. Yeah. Yeah. Probably break it as soon as they get on it. Break it, break it. Alright. Okay, get ready to wall. Uh, after that. They might CQ me. Look, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna wall. Yeah, you're gonna have to do it soon. Alright, uh, now? Yeah, probably. Or soon. Alright, uh, doing it now. Still yeah. Going. Okay. Got a lot of nades. Look, killed. There we go. I know we tried to get the sweep on that. Give me 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 that. Give I think we just chill for a second. We jump. Yeah, we can get the fight. Test. We can worry about the 3v3s. Yeah. Jump wall jumping soon. Two oh, seconds. listen, I think if we nade them once, right, if we nade them once, they're gonna... Yeah, we okay. can just int them. Yeah, I have it in 14. I think we go for this fight. Okay, I, I, I'm nading it. Is there someone low ground? I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning. Oh, hang on, can you see you? Yeah, go, go, go. Can you see you? No, I have it in 3, I have it in 3. Just okay, see you that. No, go, 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 Fine, fine. Take it, take it. Where'd they go? Bottom left. They're down somewhere. here, down here. I think it might just be a solo horizon, bro. No, no, that's two at least. Two at least. Two at least. Two at least. I think it's a full team. I have to get my gun back. Somebody hold left. Somebody hold left. I'm holding left. I'm holding left. I have to get my gun uh, back. I'm going right. I'm going right, Jen. Yeah, I'm holding left. Where's my repeater? I don't know. Over here. I got it. Fighting bridge. They're blue armor. We, we played this corner, right? I'm a pink. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cannon team is the problem. Yeah, I'll wall that, I'll wall that. Then I get it. Team height too, like I'm dropping it. Yeah, look, look at this zero. 90. Where are you shooting? Right on this smoke, in that smoke. They're right They're fighting here. here. This is okay. Have you seen you see it around? No one's in there? I got it, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna see on top, I scanned everything but that. 
You're gonna have wall again. Uh, you're done. Good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm on 15. Never yeah, mind. Yo, who's going for that corner? We fully played low ground, we won the game. Look here, too. We have to worry about the team, I think, too. I have two nades left. 80. I'm gonna wolf on B. Running, right. Running, okay, I'm right. Looking, looking. I'm gonna Under jump here. down. I'm, I'm gonna step down the wall. They're running open. Up, up. You boys ready? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should I do it soon? We don't have to go soon. Yeah, we do. A little bit. Well, we wait for it. It should be in the open, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm doing it. Wall, yeah. wall left, wall left. Wall left, come. We I'm one cell. We need a hole. One cell, one bout. Here, take, take, take. I fight top. I fight. Looted this kid. There's light. I need energy. I need sniper. Last, I lost two. Chill, 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 guys. They're running, they're running. Chill here, chill here. Where are they? 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 In the crack, the cracked one. Okay, it's fine. Thanks, man. You can. There's like they're in the corner. They're in the corner. On the roof. We're safe here. We're safe here, guys. I don't okay, think they okay. can like peek us from that last side. We've... I'm three. They're holding the rock. They're holding the rock. Ah, going down. Going down. Going down. Stay safe. Just kidding. I'm on the roof. I'm on the roof. Can't talk, can't roof, shoot to you! Like, can't talk, it's so weak! We can shoot you! Yeah, we can cut it and shoot! They all died, they all died! They did, they did, they did! I have zero ammo, no, zero energy! I have no energy, fine, no energy! Fine, fine! Do you wanna take roof, or...? No, 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 we wanna sit low okay, okay, the entire okay, game. Yeah. Just hold the swing. Can we go fight for a little bit? No, it's too risky. We just gotta hold that corner. Yeah, They're yeah, out yeah. before us, alright? We can't let them yep, go rock. Yep, yep. They're going rock. That, that, that's not good. Uh, I need that. Any heavy? Well, you're gonna have wall, right? Yeah, I can give you heavy. Do you have any alter cells for him? I have 60%. I'll get it. I'll get okay, it. Okay. No, That's the only team that needs to die. They're not really gonna get picked though. They might though. We can't let them play in here, alright? In here. Yeah, we can't. Oh, yeah. You can play here, by the way. I'm, I'm off the wall right side. People are. Oh, we get free kills. You just got a wall left and we're gonna chill under, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can't hide shoot off. us? No, no, no. no, no you can chill under. You can chill under. You can chill under. Okay, I'm gonna wall off. They're playing high ground. They're playing high ground. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna wall off left. No, do it early. No, no, no. As, as late as possible. Fighting group. It's a very fighting group. I'm oh, above us! Above us. Team above us! Chill. I'm chilling, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'm eating this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you wall. Then you wall. Nothing. And I'm wall yet. 5%. 5% on wall. Someone's wall, yeah. Logan. Someone's wall, Logan. Right. Two seconds on wall. Yeah. Show I'm gonna wall in a second. There's someone, someone there. I'm walling. Hey, you, you can see the staircase, man. You can see the staircase, man. Okay, we're good left, dude. We're good left. Chill, chill. They killed on. They killed on. Nice, chill. There's someone here. That wall's good, zero. Huh? Left wall. Okay, I'm, I'm... I'm batting, I'm batting. Danny, I'm batting down here. I'm playing it, playing it. Might be someone next to me. Might be someone next to me. I think you do. Moving back. Wall's probably gonna go down. Okay, on me, on me. Yeah, we're on you. Play There's back, no one, no one on me, no one on me. Okay, okay. Okay, move my rigging on us. I'm in the corner. Right here, He's might corner. be next to us. Wall's dropping, he's wall dropping. Yeah, 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 jumping, 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 jumping. Running back, running back. I'm gonna take you. I don't right see them. They can see us. They can see us. They can see us. Tell them. Jump in there. Look at them. Right, 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 right. Just stare at them. Black on hill. They're gonna jump. They're gonna jump. They're gonna jump. Probably not. Probably not. Look at them. I'm no heal. No heal. We're good. We're good. I'm going to jump back side. Jump back side. I'm chilling on the wall. Jump, 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 jump. I'm on the wall. No, I can jump. I'll jump tails. I'm grabbing. I'm fine. Just chill, 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 Josh, chill. Shoot that guy. Shoot that guy. He died. He died. They're killing! Look in at the rock! He's red, I'm getting out! Follow us! Follow us! Follow us! Chill, Gio! Chill! Chill, chill, 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 chill! I'm taking the Q! I'm taking the Q! I won! Q1! I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead! Where's the wall? Behind you, behind you! No! is going to be going up in stocks, playing off the bunker doors here. You see the piercing spikes put down in front of them. That's going to be TSS looking for the opportunity to contest LG. They already get the first knock right here. Option now playing a lot more passive, putting themselves in a risky situation. They're not going to get involved here, but TSS versus LG will. Nice defensive gravity lift there, I believe. Is that that's blocking TSM out from going in, but he doesn't need it. Oh! has got way too much damage on the Prowler. Welcome, Big E. Let's jump into a listening with TSM after a bet gets the knock onto reps. I'm safe right here. Maybe not. Can you connect to you? Maybe, yes. Maybe later on. 
Evan. There. I don't have you gotta ball. shoot I don't that for him. You gotta kill me and you shoot yeah, Evan. I'm you have to shoot that. Okay. You can give me, you can give me. Go Rez, who has gold Rez? I'm shooting him, I'm shooting him. I got him. We need to Is there a guy inside, Evan? Is there not a guy? Not a guy. It's a solo inside. It's a solo. I'm gonna scan, I'm gonna scan. I need Omics over wall. Actually, nobody inside, nobody inside, nobody inside right now. Look at scan. I'm healing up, I'm healing up. Hey, we need to be here. We got to be here. Might swing inside, it might swing inside. Yep. There's three bats here if you need. I need, we need to look for ultic cells inside. inside. I got gold knock. I'm going outside right now. We need to look for ultic cells inside so we can get wall back. Play, yep. Put Q's on this doorway over here, Evan. Yeah, yeah. Someone's up. Close doorway. Up the bat. Are you good? Yeah, yeah. I'm only on my side right now. We have digits. Use the digits. I did. Yeah, I'm looking I got Kraber. I got Kraber. I got Kraber from the rooftop. Okay, okay. We have a Kraber on the rooftop. Like right building. I think we need to play for the kills on the, the rock out here. We, we play so we can win this game. We can win this game here. Okay. Yep. Okay. You want to walk out right side? Yeah, we're gonna play. We're gonna play on the front and shoot the team on the roof. Okay. They're right here. Can we shoot? Can we all peek this? Uh, one sec. One sec. Yeah. The solo's on the roof. He's killing all the. Crack the, crack the catalyst. Horizon has the framer. 74 on Seer, 74. Seer, crack Seer, get the kill. Get on, get on, get on, get on, dude. Nice. Right. Group is no cover, I don't think. No, they Who do cover. Who has the framer? Was that them? That was, that was them, yes, okay, that was okay, them. Okay. But the team's still inside, I think. How do you There's a team on the left frags. rock still. There's a team on the left what rock happened, still. What happened, what I have three frags, you need? Inside, oh. jumping down, jumping down. Shoot, yeah. shoot front. You're gonna cowboy straight across here, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna walk to the left and do it, I think. And then, and then walk to the right. Straight across here, I think. Okay? Yep. Look at scan, look at scan. There's a team right on our left, like really close to us. Playing the right side of our wall. Look at the kills. They're diving them. Shoot the gun to the right. Rising cracked. I cracked three, I cracked three. Made that, made that. I'm popping the wall. Rising on the right. Still on the right. Cat wall, cat wall. Yep. Cat wall. We should look for the kills on the right. We're in bagel, we're in bagel. We're safe on me, safe on me, safe on me, safe on me. Left side. Oh, he went down. He went down. To this. I'm picking the left. I'm picking the left. He's a soul on me. He's a soul on me. He's a soul on me. I don't know where he's at. I don't know where he's at. Resident one's up here. I killed him. I killed him. I killed him. I killed him already. It's 3v3v2. Where? Where? On the right. He's down on the right. He's down on the right. They have caustic. They have caustic. He's down on the right. Keep it 10. Keep it 10. Or most of them. We're going to have no cover. Let me get the eight this maybe. Should we right? Should we swing right? Keep swing right. Swing right. Left on this. In the day. Catch. I'm going to let him go. One. Yeah, nice. GSM take game number one. They stand up, they pop off, the crowd goes wild. Evac Tower's down. Here come Alliance now. This could be a fight for the ages because they're trying to approach on TSM. They're going to have to play under them for now. We've been talking about Verholst, we've been talking about effects. Well, this battle could be massive for the context of not just that little story, but where this tournament heads. TSM are right above them and they are grouping as well, as Alliance now are getting a little bit of grief from Dark Zero getting involved, but all the meanwhile, TSM can just look down from above here. Black hole. And they start to get involved! The black hole comes down, but that just invites Dark Zero to come and have a piece of this. Alliance, all of a sudden, find themselves in a little bit of a shambles. TSM don't let this opportunity slip. They slide in, they get a couple of kills, exit out in the meantime. Verholz has got to be careful, though. He's gone down. Verholz has gone down, but TSM are picking up kills. Five points off match point, but FC Destroy are in the area as Dark Zero will finish off Riddle Order. Seven squads remain. TSM still alive, but FC Destroy were griefing them. But TSM, it looks like they have have got back up to a full three and they've managed to get Verhost back on his feet. Dark Zero down on this low ground. Fire Beavers eliminated. Fire Beavers will not be partaking in this final fight that we're going to see. The solo was dismantled, taken apart as TSM marched forward once more. A little bit of loot to play with here for them as well. That's how the lay of the land is at the moment. Optic Gaming right in the middle of that truck. Next to them, sharing the carriage almost, is Pulverix. Phase of wrapped to the north side of this zone. And then on the other side, you can see FC Destroy overlooking the position of TSM. Pulverix and FC Destroy certainly in good spots right now, especially when you consider their compositions as well. Phase. Still a squad who can do some damage from this northern side. I like to play north in this zone because you can come from above, you can use the lips as a little bit of a head glitch and manage to just get some nice shots onto some teams and take that advantage. 
Six squads though remaining means you have to be very careful with where you try and push here because if you expose yourself from even the slightest angle, there could be several teams that will just destroy you as you move. Tough thing here is the rotate for TSM and Dark Zero. How do they try and approach it? Dark Zero are going to have to go through Optic and Phase. On the other side of things, TSM are going to have to be so aware of the position of FC Destroy. Yes, TSM have the high ground here, but they don't have the zone. That's going to be pulling towards Pulverex. Four points required for TSM to get onto match point, and now they're making their move towards FC Destroy. Dark Veil goes down just to give them that extra cover, and even though FC Destroy are going to post up and take this fight, TSM look like they know they have to go in this direction. They can't afford to go north. Kills might be enough here for TSM if they can get them, but there's the Newcastle Wall. The Castle Wall is a problem, but so is Verholz. He's going in, but can't quite get the knock. There's the move on shield, and TSM eliminated Newcastle, showing how valuable he is to FC Destroy. Dark Zero now using the Dark Veil that was put down to try and shadow their way in. Pulverix go down as well. Dark Zero now will push in and try to take this spot off of Pulverix. And Zynu starts to shred, but he's gone down as well. Jeb Burton now with with zero. Couple kills go down. It's FaZe who are feeling the pain right now. Jen trying to survive. Can he win this one? Jen Burton, can you get the armor swap? Or has that just opened the door for FC Destroy? They stop TSM in their tracks. They take them out of the game and they take game number and two. Dark Zero now find themselves five away from match point and not only that they now own the entirety of the western side of this circle they can hold off they can play patient and they should get an easy route into the top three here. i mean it's a fantastic view to show how much control dark zero have right now everybody else has to walk through each other to get to zone and then they have to go through oxygen who's up on the high ground who's on their own it's going to be Dark Zero. Pioneers fall in the meantime, we're down to five. It should be a Dark Zero or an Oxygen win with the positions that both of these teams currently hold. MLG are down to a two, so this is going to be a struggle, but they want to just get as much placement points as possible. The other squads, of course, LG Chivas and Exet, that you can see on your screen, they've got to arrive from the northern side. It's going to be the most difficult situation for those two squads, because not only have they got to fight each other, but then they're going to get griefed by Oxygen and NRG, and then eventually Dark Zero. Rolling Thunder coming down, you can see that on the right-hand side of your screen. LG trying to force their way forward. Exit just trapped inside of that bunker and trying to take this fight right now. Surprising. LG zone starts to close very, very soon, though. LG know what they're going to do. Just hold. Make sure that Exit cannot escape. And don't take too, da too much damage while you do it. However, they've had to expend now the exhibit from Seer. The Dark Veil goes down from Exit. They're trying to escape. Yeah, all these ults are being used to escape, which means if they even get into the final circle, it's going to be so difficult for them to win. But at the moment, it's about surviving. It's about moving on and trying to avoid this fight as best as you can. But then when you force it, when you are able to isolate it, then you have to dive on it. Because otherwise, you're just going to get thirded too easily. Digi's going to be important here for fun. Nocturnal sends in the smokes, LG are forced out their little hidey hole up into the thinner air above them. The Q is going to be good, and it gets them safe for now. They get that opening knock, but send in Sykes. He'll exchange things, LG eliminated, another black hole comes in. But in, while all this fighting's going down, Dan, you've got to think Dark Zero. They're able to just hold on to their ultimates for this endgame. Dark Zero just sit pretty, they wait, they're patient. Exit eliminated as Dark Zero now find themselves one point. No, Dark Zero have done it. They will be on match point, but what a big fight this is to try and win this game. As Oxygen Esports, they need these points. It's a straight 3v3. Vayne is desperately trying to pop that ult, ult excel, but 99% turns to 100. He is going to be able to throw that rolling thunder down. Oxygen do have zone here. Dark Zero will have to move, but the damage from Dark Zero might be enough for them to have to make the move without too much risk here. Also, if Dark Zero have been doing their math, they know they're on match point, they can play this one a little bit more fearless, but a win going into the next map would do wonders for their confidence. At the moment, it's ring around the rosies from these Dark Veils. Where are you gonna go? Is it gonna be left or right? It's height versus zone at the moment. Dark Zero do not want to give up this height without give, giving out some damage before they do so. But as soon as these Dark Veils expire, that's going to be the signal maybe to push. Here we go. The Black Hole goes down. Zainu's going to swing. They're going to go left. They're going to look to tough oh them up. My. They're going to look to put them to bed. Zainu moves in. It's a 2v2. 
2v1. It's a 2v1 and it should just be easy from here, but the knockdown shield makes things a lot more difficult. Zainu goes up onto high, Vayne left on his own, trying to do what he can. It would be a mesmerizing play if he could pull this off, but Jen's had time now to pop that battery. Send in Zainu, send in Jen Burden. Send the victory screen towards Dark Zero and Jen's up on the desk. Match point achieved for Dark Zero alongside a champion banner. Let's jump into a listening with Dark Zero to see how they rotate from this. They're done. 16. They're, they're in, they're in, guys. They're right here, right here. Okay, chill, chill, chill. I'm gonna chill, all right? I can hold. Is this team being crossed? They're crossing, crossing. 81 on one. Blue. They're heavy. They're blue, they're blue, they're blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... Yeah, I'm, I'm playing, playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. 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 I'm playing, I'm
Let's see if he can pump the shield back. He's gonna start it right now. The archers are getting hurtled. Currently in Aiden's direction, the gravity lift. Alliance are in the best position to oh. take care of this. They are just waiting for this to play out, but Pioneers have some high ground. And the arc starts nasty with these nades. Tap in on another level. Currently KCP holding the high ground means the gravity lift is what this squad's gonna do to try to contest them. Alliance lose out on Yuki in effect. This is looking to be KCP's game. From the high ground, is apparently it's just too much of an advantage. Oxygen stayed alive this whole time. Wow, the Rathlay does work out to grab them some points. But KCP and Nasky take center stage here in game four. That M club, he is hyped. We're doing it, boys. You can already hear it in the Nasky comes. Lifting his team up in the air as the pop-off comes in. KCP, game number four are your winners. Alliance, north of 100 Thieves, tricky for 100 Thieves. They don't have the natural cover of the rocks unless they go to the right. Oh, both of the teams might struggle to get out of this one. As you can see, Alliance try and stay ahead of the zone and ahead of the game. Whoever wins this should be able to make it to the train cars just to the northwest of them, oh, no. but they've lost effect. The circle doing so much damage, bringing tears to the eyes of Alliance. Nice for the Wallhawk here. Hockey's! Oh, so much damage, but in the distance, gets taken out by the teams that have them in their sight. Bulbrick still in circle position. FC Destroy on the other side. Moist Esports taking a chunk out of the squad that had to rotate out from Alliance. Moist has been a little bit quiet today so far, Vicky, in stark contrast to what we saw out of them yesterday. They looked like the best team in the lobby. Indeed, they were, but they are currently 23 points away from being match point. Now, if we have a look at this zone, Damn, if I couldn't have called that any better, that is pixels <laughs> away from the weather station I was talking about. Of course, that very small circle there to the left of Optic Gaming is uh, where it will be ending up. Now, Pulverex have been eliminated. You can see some of the remnants of their amped cover still on that map feed there, but Fnatic have a lot of space to themselves. Even more beautiful. Fnatic with the Crypto, the Bangalore, the Valkyrie composition. Playing this from the fence line. Seeing if they can get the EMP for an engagement if a squad tries to contest them for this space, but I'm not expecting that to happen until this circle starts closing in. Thinking about Optic gaining, holding the edge. FC Destroy that have not left their positioning this entire game. Closest team right now to match point in this lobby is KCP with 44 points. All right, it's about to go down here on the south side. Vicky Faze, TSM, Exit, and Pioneers all coming out of the building at the same time. Moisture on the west of this and should be able to pick up some free points here. They are going to look on with glee as Arkstar's alt days oh. everything come out from these four teams. <laughs> oh, TSM reps getting double knot, taking out Faze alongside Imperial Hal. The Black Hole gets called in. He's trying to dance around. He's forced to go into the circle, the gravity lift, to take him up. He's taking so much damage off the health alone. Can't walk behind him, but you can't get out of the line of sight. Anyone feel like a game six? We're going again here. FC Destroy are the ones who come out of that alive. Moist also do very well. Both of our match point teams now are gone. Optic. They played this really well, hit in a corner essentially on the right side of the map and now have decided to make their move. They've got FC Destroy locked in behind that wall. But XM are right next to them. Five squads left. Let's jump into a listening with Optic Gaming holding circle advantage. Just think from us. Yeah. I'm safe. I'm really safe here. Make here, drop, 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 drop. Stare, stare at my ping. Yeah, they they moved to us. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bang on knock. On me, Horizon. On me. Tribe, okay. one. Dead. Nice. Another one to let I think. Uh, I'm climbing, I'm still a duo on the fence. Still yep. a duo okay, on okay, the okay. fence. Yo, gold helmet in this box. Need light. I got light. I'm holding it right. Dropping swap. Do you have ult? They're I playing horizon ult. Okay, you're gonna horizon ult the duo. You're gonna horizon ult the duo. I, well, it's free kills, I should say. Okay, okay, fine. They climbed up. They have to move. They're gonna put their just spray down. I'm playing on low ground here. Get their wall yeah, out. Yeah, wall. Shoot, shoot their wall out. Yeah, just, just watching, just watching. Flash, 50 flash, 60 flash, he's one. Got him. 
Nice. Yeah, queuing up, queuing up towards us. Yeah, I'm holding these guys. Oh, Kai, shoot on, Kai, shoot on, one, one. Kai, two. Kai, right, two, two. Zero, zero, one. Kai is one. Nading our other side, guys. Nice. Nice. Right, they're swinging, they're swinging. I'm not behind them. 60, 70 on, 70 on bow. You got the flash. Go crazy, knock. I got the bow. Nice, nice, nice. Play aggro. Crack crypto, crack crypto. I have the knock for you. Not for you. 1v2, 1v2. There's a gold swap on the ground. You can climb, climb up, up to left. Me. Yes, climb up left. He just got a battle left. Down at the hands of Fnatic. The sigh of relief from this team. As they were able to approach Optic from the back angle, crossing that open ground that Optic was holding for the longest. So close here, and Fnatic putting themselves on the board to pop out from the crowd. Thieves can hold out TSM in this building, and if they've got grenades, 100 Thieves could stop TSM from winning this one. And look, I love this from TSM. Get some setup already. Get the ability to be able to just push out. The Dark Veil will give oh, them cover tough. from 100 Thieves, but it's about where you go. Oh, as soon as you're on that platform for TSM, you're going to be so vulnerable. Vaxxon's got a Kraber, though, and if TSM poke, if TSM prod, then surely he's just going to take a head off. Niazul now trying to hold on here for LG. We'll find one, now has to move behind the Newcastle and eliminates FC, destroy it. LG stay alive here, Yanya should be able to get rezzed as we're down to just nine. This next circle is going to be everything, this could define Sunday here at the AOGS Split 2 playoffs. Where did TSM go? Black Hole goes down, Dark Veil's also down as they take the space, they're protected for now, but when these walls fall, they're going to be very vulnerable indeed. TSM trying to force a back-to-back, -back, looking to become champions once more. Let's jump into a listening with TSM. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Loot up, loot up, loot up. We got one on here, one left. Loot up, wait, we might get cheated up on. Just chill, chill up, chill, chill. Peek up, I'm, chilling, I'm chilling, I'm chilling, I'm chilling. There's a guy in the smoke here. Guy There's a guy in the smoke. In the smoke, in the smoke. Both team in the smoke. There's a guy right underneath us. I'm, I'm gonna throw my back. Can we I have 60 this? energy. I'm looking at that. I saw a tunnel on that. Yeah. They're fighting underneath. They're coming back up. They're anything on height. Maybe we can go yeah. that. I don't have cat while I'm down though. Come, come here. Come over here. Come over here. Coming, coming, yeah. coming. They're, they're, yeah, they're dying. They're dying. Come over here. Come on, follow coming me. Up. Follow me. Nading that. Scanning that. Scanning that. Don't be lost. Something. Nice, swap, 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 swap. I'm batting right now, I'm batting right now, I'm batting right now. Yep. It's 5 with 12, guys. I got a loot. I have zone. Yep. We have zone. We have zone. We have zone. Grab nades. Grab nades. Yep. Hold, hold, hold. Can what do you hold? I need heavy ammo, bad. I have 30 heavy, that's it. I'm, I'm looting right now. 50. I have 50. I have 60 energy, that's it. TSM, top five. Optic Gaming eliminated, making the top four here as Howe spots out Scurry. You can feel the tension in the arena. TSM have to move first. They have a 40% conversion rate on World's Edge from top fives in the regular season. That increases to 60% if they get to top three. At the moment, they have the high ground. They move up. Do the other teams know? Have they been watching that kill feed? Are they aware that TSM are in this final circle? Big damage coming in as well from Verholst. The piercing spikes down is going to force. 100 Thieves to be a little bit split here. You can see the scurry is pretty much the last alive for 100 Thieves. Phase down on the low ground though, and don't forget about Exet. Phase for a full three, 100 Thieves are a solo, Exet a full three as well as TSM. It's a battle of North America in the final circle, and someone's gonna have to take down one of their regional friends if they want this tournament to keep going. Now TSM will be forced off a fight, and they might get pushed here because there will be a ground lift behind them. They're gonna get killed behind, and it's Exet! It's Exet! What an insane grab lift behind TSM, catching them off guard. 
And who'd have thought it's Eric Rona on phase, the previous <laughs> TSM member who gets the victory to deny TSM the trophy in match six. Phase up, you know what that means. We're going to match seven. What a story this would be. It looked like they wouldn't be here. It wouldn't like they looked like it wouldn't make the grand finals. And now it's looking like they might just win the whole thing. Oh no. Pioneers take phase out and Pioneers hit match point. So three teams remain who were already on match point and could still win. As for Pioneers, they have to go into the next game for their chance to be called champion. So now it's about disrupting. Now it's about killing. Now it's about being cynical and taking the game out of the hands of the other teams. Oxygen are inside of the building, inside a zone, sharing it with Optic Gaming. Taking damage as we jump over to their POV. They're trying to assault this building. This fight is potentially a tournament winning fight if they come out on top, but Aiden cannot go down. If they can hold this building, if they can get inside of this building, then they will be in prime position, but look how they're being held out. Because there is not just one team in that building on set, both Fnatic and Optic reside in there, so it is not an easy push. Nocturnal taking damage as well, having a smoke, having to use all the utility in the world. Sykes is gonna peek, Sykes is gonna fry! The Jaguars is taken down from LG. Exec can hold this southeast zone. This is perfect. If they take down LG Chivas, then they should have a comfortable rotation in. A lot of damage is taken on to fun, but this is going to be okay. Shield swap! Surely shield swap! Oh my goodness! But it's okay. Teammates are there oh. to save the day, but oh no! The grief! Moist Esports are in the area! But the shield swap changed the dynamic of that fight. It could have been done three seconds earlier. Three seconds more efficient. But the delay on the fight being clean means that Xset lose Sykes. So now Xset's chances of winning here is also very much lowered. And it was Moist who were able to do so. Moist, by the way, seven points off match point. They're not far off either. But look at that circle. Look at the amount of teams that have found their way to that building. 100 Thieves, Optic, Fnatic, and most importantly, Oxygen. Now, Dark Zero have to move here from the southern side. They're, tr they're trying to create some space here with a lot of these shots. They're poking, they're prodding, but then when they have to move, they need to oh. find somewhere to live. Oh, Vayne gets the barrier off, but this is the problem now for Oxygen. Everybody's having to move in, everybody's focusing them as they're trying to output damage, not only to keep themselves alive, but stop teams rotating into their position. Nice shots coming in, and I think that's Exit who we're going to be trying to cross at the moment. Aiden the Destroyer, he's down the sky nade! Decimates them on height, and Vayne is left on his own. Vayne left to try and just pull this one off for Oxygen. Dark Zero made it in, Dark they've made Zero. it into zone! They have, they found a position just on the southern side, and remember, Dark Zero are the healthiest squad we have now, who are on match point. They are going to hide away by that rock. They used the Dark Veil, they avoided all the damage, and now they just want to slow this one down. 11 squads remain. Dark Zero with the biggest chance of winning this one in this match number seven. Shots coming in from Jim Burton. All of Australia watching right now. As Vayne, the last hope for Oxygen Esports of one of the greatest underdog stories that we've seen in Apex Legends. Exit or a two, Oxygen just won. It's Dark Zero as a full three. We also saw Pioneers eliminated, but they've got the job done. They will be on match point if we go into match eight. Except still here. Except, except taking height. I will say, Except also do have that banner. So if they have a mobile res, there could still be a chance they can get back up to a three, but you'd imagine it probably would have been popped had they had one. So it may just be an attempt to win the championship here with two. Little roof over their heads is going to keep them pretty safe for now. Ten squads remaining in the final circle, by the way. And now the fights break out. Exit as a solo. Nocturnal finds fun. Taken down, trying to survive. Trying to avoid the piercing spikes, but with just five HP exit, they will fall. At the hands of Moist Esports, we're down to just nine. And Dark Zero is still alive. Fire Beaver's eliminated too. And look at this, Vayne's still alive. Vayne's still alive. Smoke's going.
down, but it's Dark Zero who push on in from this southern side. They're working together. They have so much cover from these Dark Veils, but there will be eyes. NRG have a great angle on Dark Zero as they move towards center zone. Vayne's still alive, though. Vayne's still alive here and will be alive for as long as he can. Dark Zero creeping up slowly. Oh God. Trying to avoid all of the carnage that's going down around them, but look at what's happening elsewhere. You've got FC Destroy taking on 100 Thieves. FC Destroy getting taken down. Moist Esports fighting as well. Optic Gaming watching all of this going down, as are NRG. If you are in this final circle, you cannot blink. Otherwise, you might miss a kill, you might miss the damage. Dark Zero are still center zone. They still hold the position. There is absolute carnage around them. Vayne! No way. There's absolutely no way. No way. He's still alive for Oxygen Esports. He's going to have to take zone damage. Can he get lucky here? Can he find somewhere to play? There's a player behind him. Now he goes on the ground lift. 100 Thieves out. Fnatic out. Vayne. He's out as well. But what an effort. As Dark Zero now moving. Dark Zero. Optic Gaming and NRG. But Dark Zero are losing. They're taking damage. But no. just to try and buy themselves a little bit of time. But you can see in Tropic, they know exactly where they are. They're just waiting for him to pop up. And Whack-A-Mole is going to be what they are playing. The ults are going to go down. The Black Hole followed by the Arkstar. The Wombo combo, but does it hit? It does, but not enough. And now, Zacco's got to think about staying alive instead of picking up KP. I remember, and Tropic started on seven points after finishing fourth in the winner's bracket round two. So they already have a good lead when it comes to trying to get to that threshold. A victory here would do them wonders for just edging even even closer to that 50 points as now. Speaking of edging, the circle starting to close in and forcing these teams together. Now, Danish can make a big impact on this final circle, and I think that's why we're seeing V2 just trying to eliminate them from the factor, saying, look, if we can get the damage, if we can just force them into EQ here, and maybe we can get the job done early. But this is just so tough when you're a two at deciding who you want to try and push. And Tropic are going to be hit by all sorts of problems, one of them being the mother load coming in from Fuse. Yolu doing what he can with the ult to slow them down. And now the decision is made from V2. They want to try and push up. They want to try and command the high ground. And that's exactly what they are going to do. Zidane gets that first knock. There's the knuckle cluster. There's the spray coming in from Yolu. He's trying to finish this off himself. Two squads yeah. remain. We're Careful good. over here. We... Let's... 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 Don't focus too much. I'm going to play other side. We're in the zone and we just... Guys, if you have an 8 4 down here, guys, if you have an 8 4 down here, there will be free kills in like 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah, they have, okay, they have no that's cover. just here because if they walk up, you need. We'll watch yeah, the climb up. I anyone got an ultimate cellar? Anyone got a cellar? No no no, 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 no. You guys both focus that, okay? All right. I we'll focus in front. Up. Watch okay, the climb up. Yeah. Here. There's no one here. I've got. I'm gonna no there is a guy. Focus that, both of you focus that. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a there's a drone there as well. Careful. If you have ult, use it for this unlucky. Look, look, ramp, look, ramp, open. Okay. Focus okay, no, focus no, 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 the wall. Shoot, wall, shoot, wall, shoot, wall shoot. Okay. Last one, the last guy's one, the last guy's one. Dead, dead. Nice, nice. nice. Dead, dead. Watch climb up, watch climb up. Watch, watch, watch the stairway now, watch the stairway now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flash, I think the job, I think the job, I think the job. Okay. Gang, gang. Need, okay. Can, you get, can you get space on this team? Uh, why? I'm gonna shoot that, I shot the pylon, pylon set. My bangles, my bangles, my bangles. Look at the guy in the open, Fatty. I need heavy ammo right now if you have it. I dropped 60, drop 60, drop 60 right there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I okay, can't on, the the on the fence, on the fence! Two ones, two ones, two ones! Dead! Dead, dead, dead. Still on the fence three. inside. Kill the fence together with the inside team. Okay? Let's try to kill that. Then three, I'm shooting ammo. Yeah, good ult, good ult, huge ult. Nate! They got both TP stock, both TP. Yeah. Another one, one TP. You're alone. I'm lucky you're alone. Shoot this pylon, shoot the pylon. That's the one. I'm dropping, I'm dropping. What's the one? Dead. In the ult, in the ult. C1, C1! Nice. He's inside. Wait, nice. Down, but unfortunately, one of them's already fallen, and it's going to be the end for Go Next, but oh. not without going down with a fight.
They got a lot of KP there. Did they get the placement points to force themselves towards match point? A very, very impressive game in the kills category for Go Next. But Maestro Gaming now, they've been in this position for the entirety of this game as we find ourselves now down to our final three. It's Blue White, Dan. Blue Whites have made it into top three from that horrible position they were in. It might just be a top three as Maestro make their move. But Dan, who's the team who's going to move in here and clean up the pieces? Two who John are on their way yeah, to try and get the victory, but they are taking their time. They back off. They do not get there quick enough. So Maestro now have a chance to reset, which means we're going to get a proper 3v3. But Tuhu Tonta do hold the better position. They have got the zone on their side and they've got all of this utility to work with as Black Hole goes down. So are all going to be used as well. They do have zone control, so they should be able to find a place to play. You know, up on that rock, he's going to be able to do damage onto Maestro. Akuma going to come and join him as well. The Dark Veil wasn't enough for Maestro to cut the zone in a way that they could rotate. This rock is everything at the moment, and Maestro is struggling to find a way through it. The good news for Maestro, they fully tanked up with red evos so in this fight they do have a hp advantage and they're hitting some good shots as well and maybe there's a confidence issue here as Tuhu Tonta are reluctant oh, oh, to push oh. in and now the damage comes in from maestro as they continue on their way yeah this is looking like a maestro win all of a sudden my tax is gonna go down zero nothing trying to move in to clean things up and all of a sudden this is a jenny ready to put down if that's the case some fireworks for the sky as a double evac tower is called in just a distraction here too none of these teams want to possibly take this unless they want to try to reposition off the zipline carry that jump momentum forward these are going to take their time as you finally get called out as the solo we saw sonya live for as long as he can op now starting the engagement while foot now take onto the roof bang all does go down everybody just trying to wait it out but still alive as well and like you're saying i think their play is to take the roof the problem is everyone's going to see them so they're trying to leave it as late as possible to show presence life and has to jump up there now alongside his two teammates as they have no other option now they try and cut the zone in half this is so no smart way. from for esports take the majority of players out of your eyesight now you can focus on one target in front of you it's a brilliant play call but they have to be aware of horizon behind them they know that they're right there, so they want to try to fully send this here, but the Rolling Thunder, rather, the barrage coming in here for them to worry about. Life in literally one, tries to duke it out, gets eliminated. Horizon now make their way. The green light has been activated. Young Hong Kong is out of this lobby. We got outplayed now, playing from underneath down beast. Horizon Union in a great position, while the Cito Fonts are still fighting for their lives. Danish eliminated as well as so we're down to just three and ANC outplayed try to hold on and see the France will go down and Horizon Union who were using the Dark Veil to survive the longest look like they might be the last team standing but no Horizon Union suddenly on the back no. foot can they no way up? are they gonna throw this one away it's Annie Jackson who goes in here for ends it started here in terms of that engagement Lacite de France and Maestro playing zone going back to what we've said it has worked so well for these teams can they get a result though here Maestro Gaming probably doesn't have enough to finally find themselves on match point after this, but Lacite de France, could they maybe play spoiler and somehow take over the high ground? The question is, can you topple the king of the castle who has not moved from the beginning? That will be a win for any of these teams, especially the likes of Aurora, who have so much to prove and do not want to miss out oh on goodness. an opportunity of getting the championships. Three squads left. They're climbing, Vicky, but what are they going to find at the top? Just bullets. Oh, is this the Halloween event going on right now? They're just trying to claw their way to force Maestro off this high ground here. Playing around zombies, just forcing them off their backs. Looking right, looking left here. Putting in the extra pressure to Aurora. They do get the knock off the art star, but they are not going to give up this spot. They need to hold this down. Yeah, you hear the catwall right behind them too, and the piercing spikes, but they're just going to stay here, and Lucito Fonts are going to suffer for it. I mean, you've got smokes. Can the catwall do anything for you here? I'm not sure if he's got the ability to play it right now. They've got the Loba Rampart and Path, so that's why they have this accessibility. It's going to be very hard to beat it, so you may just have to both, as two teams, jump up at the same time and find your spot, even if it's a little wonky. What? Maestro, they're feeling the pressure. Denze <gasps> almost goes down. Zero, nothing goes down as well. This is Aurora. Sunset just made the move. Maestro somehow get taken down after what having looked like God's spot for sure. And it's the seat the front and Aurora who will fight it out for first place. Oh. It looks like Aimbot is they can hold the bottom of this building. Vortex have the middle. And on the outside, there's definitely going to be a lot of ruckus as all these teams start to approach. I think Blue Whites are going to have the uh, toughest rotate here. You can see they're on the southern side of zone. 
They might be able to move up, and their backs are clear. So if they can get to this big rock in front of them, has been frantically pinged and cut off line of sight by swinging right and maybe trying to just disguise themselves behind that dark veil. It might have a chance here to steal not only this game away, but a chance at match point as well. So really, really interesting moments for the team who has dominated the challenger circuit to try and poo prove here that they can do it on the biggest of stages in Tropic though. They need six points here, Dan, but my goodness, this is looking like a, a horrid position to be in. They've got ultimates, they've got nades, they've got everything being thrown at them. Yeah, Blue Whites have got eyes on them. Everyone seems to have eyes on them. On that west side in Tropic are getting absolutely demolished by grenades, by ultimates and by bullets as now the zone starts to force all these squads together. Whether you've got room in a building, on top of a building or under a building, you need to at least cut off some of those sight lines so you are not being kind of griefed by several teams as we're going to see another member of Entropic go down and Blue Whites are starting to push up. We certainly are indeed surviving for now, having to just be singed but not burned. Nice spray coming in. We'll get one for Synetic. Dropping down to try and finish off the second as well. The knockdown shield a problem. They will start to fall as Flash is now left on his own. Smokes himself into a corner. Can take a little bit of zone damage here as six squads now remaining. But surely this is the end of his game. But no, with just about 10 HP left, he's managed to kind of avoid everyone here inside his zone. And Blue Whites are surviving. I'm not even sure he knows where he is right now, but he is surviving. That's what's important. Foot go down. They're into the top five. Our Blue Whites. Voltage are now using the portal to go in and out of this building to try and stay out of action as now we see tt go down as well four squads remain one team is still alive is blue whites by the way Entropic, they're here too. Vortex, they're going to be eliminated in the meantime. Entropic, they will hit match point here with this performance as well. The team who are so impressive at the split two
Herman Miller, the official chair of the Apex Legends Global Series. Global Series Championship. We are live here in Birmingham, UK, and it is day two of our competition, which is off to a very strong start. We're live here in the Resorts World Arena, and as the day continues on, we get closer and closer to finding out just exactly how all of our teams will be continuing their way through the competition, whether that is in our winner's bracket or in our elimination bracket. My name is Glitter Explosion, and I am joined on the desk by two of the biggest brains we have to give you guys, Genome and Dia. How are you feeling so far? I'm feeling good. It's, uh, it's been a fantastic day. I got to catch the first couple of games on World's Edge, and it was cerebral yet uh, bloody. Yet bloody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bloody was kind of the name of the game. We saw insane fights in that entire first series. Really strong performances too, Genome. Yeah, a couple of teams coming out strong, especially uh, some off-meta picks as well, which uh, we love to see. Or at least maybe not off-meta, but certainly uh, you know lesser picked in this particular tournament. So I'm always a big fan when you see you know oh Valkyrie, she's back in the meta. Watson, uh, you know, doing well where other teams can't make her work. So that really excited me. Yeah, it's been a really, really fun day so far. We'll take a look at the schedule to kick things off so you guys know where we're at in the competition. Like I said, first series done, that was groups B and C. They did a great job. But B, back at it again, now going with group D to start off this next series. And then to close out the group stage, groups A and C will battle it out at 7 p.m. BST. And these overall standings have been up and down, but if you guys missed it, you weren't here for that first series, let's talk everybody through the action that we are hyping up right now, Gino. Yeah, Ascend obviously starting out very strong and not really slowing down. These guys had a monster of a series that will most likely get them through to that winner's bracket final. It's no question why either. They position really well, and that's the biggest thing about Ascend. And even further than that, Genome, you were talking about interesting, perhaps off-meta compositions, and their use of specifically Watson Crypto is allowing this team to play otherwise uncontestable positions. It's one of the great things about the flexibility of Defensive Legends. We see Rampart and Newcastle do very specific things in how they allow you to play, and Watson just brings some a wholly other set of abilities to the table that has really benefited the Ascent playstyle. Yeah, I mean, that game three finish we saw there was one of the coolest we have seen. It, you rarely see three teams in such equal positions going into that end game, and it was just fascinating how they had to juggle their ultimates, their utility usage, with, in the end, the EVAC tower play uh, being the difference maker there for the dojo. Yeah, dojo, so creative. <laughs> I love I love watching them play, and, I, you know, jumping in throughout the rest of the series, their fight even over by North Pass, of the IMC Armory yes. was so exciting to watch. This team has brought us so much content so far because they, they do limit touch. They will go for the fight, and honestly, they will almost win even low percentage engagements. It does still put them in a difficult position in terms of contesting top teams. I haven't seen them pick up as many wins as I'd like just yet, but they're absolutely getting there, and experience on LAN is something they're learning from so quickly. Yeah, you guys can see where this series currently stands. Ascend at the top, but tied with LG Chivas, another team that actually did a really good job in the last series. Storm Point matches, they played a little bit more conservatively than what we're used to seeing out of them on Storm Point. And in some moments, it paid off really, really well for them. They made an option or choice to go past fights on the edge and try to get position in zone on that match number five. And it's just something that we were looking to see out of them when it comes to the championship. But now that you guys know where everything stands and how all of our teams have done so far, we're looking forward to this next matchup. Like we said, when we saw the schedule, it is groups B and D that will now be battling it out for some more points when it comes to those overall standings. And there are some big names in this lobby, Genome. 
Yeah, we've got quite a few, don't we? I mean, uh, you know, Moist having a, a very good first day there. X said to have been looking very scary at times, uh, but I think when things start to slow down towards the end of the tournament, they'll look even better. And then, of course, Ascend, I mean, they're going to be flying high after such a phenomenal performance earlier here today. And especially after the earlier performances, specifically Ascend, I'm sure Element 6 have a lot to say about that. When thinking of veteran EMEA IGLs, Swinney's absolutely in that conversation, and he's the one who has a lot of pressure coming into this land to now measure up and even go further than what Kashara has already done in group stage alone. All right, well, we know who's playing in the groups, but we always have to narrow it down a little bit before we dive into the next series. Talk about some teams on a more individual level. We have some really solid picks this time around. So, Genome, I'm going to be starting with you. Tell me who you chose and why. Okay, so I'm having a look at Ascend. I mean, we've talked about them uh, a little bit just here, right? They have been uh, looking so good today. A couple of wins under the belt, uh, particularly on World's Edge. They've looked fantastic, right? Um, they've got more than double the KD on World's Edge than they've got on Storm Point with 2.21. Uh, so they are really winning so many of their fights there uh, and putting up more than 1,500 damage, but over 2,000 um, per game on average on World's Edge so far. It's uh, It's been uh, a really cool way to see them bringing back Valkyrie. Obviously, since the EVAC Tower introduction into competitive play, we've seen a lot less of that, uh, but they're putting it back to good use as well um, as the Watson. And I don't know if we've actually seen a Watson meta before or, or the character used when there hasn't been a significant amount of crypto in the lobby. And it just means if you've got an experienced Watson player like uh, we do here on Ascend, um, they know a lot of spots. You can put the fences down in places where they're actually quite hard to break. And so the people, uh, would rely essentially on the EMP as a bit of a crutch to get in there and remove some of those fortifications. They can no longer do that in this meta. Yeah, and you have to wonder if them coming off of an insanely strong series will continue a snowball into this next one. Love the choice of Ascend, but Dia, I want to hear from you as well. Which team do you have your eyes on? Well, I have changed my tune, Glitter, because oh. I came <laughs> in thinking, eh, NRG, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do, and honestly, thinking that they would underperform again. And yet, as he, as he so often tends to, Sweet has very much changed the way that I think about NRG and now are looking like one of the, one of the favored teams to go into the winner's bracket coming up on tomorrow. Or the exciting thing about this squad as well is actually been revealed to me by Command Center as jumping into their own comms. I'm noticing that Sweet is already coming in such a way that factors in not just what they need to do as a team, but how they can influence other squads to do the dirty work for them. And to me, that's what separates good IGLing, good game plans from great game-winning environment creation. It's what NRG have been focusing on so far, and what they've still got a little ways to go, I think that they're going to get even better than what we saw yesterday. See some smiles on the faces of NRG down there. Very comfortable when it comes to those standings. Another really solid pick. Do agree they've had a phenomenal first day when it comes to that performance. Can't say enough about them. But for me, I had to make a choice as well. And I really want to talk about KCP. OK, for me, the Pioneers have shown something yesterday that I was very excited about. It seemed like they were really finding their groove, not only in the both of their series, but just in their rotations in general. They were finding themselves consistently in top positions, and that was mostly due to their macro. They were winning their contests, and they just looked strong overall. They're currently in a spot where they only need about 20 points to that threshold that Vicky and I were talking about in the last series mm. to at least break into that top 20 based off of the last two events. and. In the last two s events, the, the Split 2 lane and then Split 2 s uh, online league series, I can't talk right now, I'm so excited about this, they were <laughs> evenly split when it comes to where their points were coming from based off of each map. And that is being literally duplicated here in this land now. They found themselves a top three finish on both maps in both series with really strong KP. And that type of consistency is the mark of a really solid squad. You combine that with the fact Nasky, obviously, the IGL. I mean, we love a team that knows how to have a good time, but Nasky said that he's also 
not afraid to use his teammate as a shield. They're just gonna throw <laughs> Zane at everything and know that Zane's gonna come back successful here. So for me, I'm gonna be keeping my eyes on KCP. He strikes me as more of a battering ram than a shield, <laughs> yeah, frankly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, look, interesting that uh, you know Nasky wants to take that route. Fair enough. It, it's been working so far. So I'll really, really solid picks. Excited to see what any of these teams can do in the next series. But now that you guys know who we're looking at, let's take a look at the overall standings. This is everything that has happened here so far in the group stage. And I mean, the domination of DZ followed very closely by Dreamfire. Some of these teams have just had incredible pop-off performances. Yeah, look, Dark Zero haven't been taking a huge amount of wins, right? But they have been racking up the kills more than any other team. I think they were up to something like five 5.8 kills in average uh, per game. It's just nuts. These guys are so aggressive. And, you know, that's probably part of the reason why they're not making it all the way to the end of the game. But they are getting there uh, with a swagger points every single time. And I think part of that is due to Zero being enabled on Bang now. And this is uh, something he'd given up to Zainu in the past. I think, personally, Horizon, a better pick for the controller players. And now that they've got Zero, who I, I genuinely think is probably one of, if not the best Bang player in the world, the team is sort of working as it should be. Hey, absolutely. They, and they punish mistakes so well at, at every point. But they're not the only ones, of course, that have given us something to look forward to. In fact, one of the teams I was looking forward to coming into the competition currently sits at 24th. Go next. And right above them, DSG. I've had moments of brilliance. I'll say go next. Haven't quite found the success that I'd expected after split two playoffs. And if they want to crack into the top 20, if they want to secure a spot in the winner's bracket, today is the day to do it. Yeah, and you saw that it was Alliance right there on the bubble, followed closely by Fnatic for the top 20, bottom 20. Split. So they've got two more series to try and get those points on the board as we see where everybody else is currently shaking out. Now I know we talked about the teams that we're going to be keeping our eyes on, but it's time for talent predictions. Which teams do we think are going to be taking this next series home? And I'm excited to see what you guys chose for this one. I know what I said. We'll get them pulled up here. Talk to me through your choice first, Gino. Well, you saw them right up there at the top of the scoreboard. It's no surprise. Uh, I'm going with the Chinese team, of course, Dreamfire. They have been just absolutely dominating these lobbies, and I think this could be uh, another one. It looks like I'm not alone in that prediction. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, I, I went with Xset, and for similar reasons, albeit they haven't been as dominant as Dreamfire during the competition this week, and yet I don't feel that Xset have really fully reached their potential as, as of so far. Glimpses of brilliance I've seen Glimpses. Out of them. That's, sure. a, that's a great way to put it. We, we have moments where it's clear that they're playing the macro really well, and yet they, they, are, they haven't really been in positions that I call god spots so far. And that's what Xset have really relied on, is just out positioning their opponents. Maybe it's something about the ring reads, maybe they're getting warmed up, but they've already separated themselves by a good margin from how shaky they were during split two playoffs, and they'll go a bit further. All right, well, it looks like there's some more uh, uh, casters in agreement wow. with you guys. Dreamfire, Xset, Moist, and Ironblood Gaming on the side. For myself, I chose NRG. They, they were your team to watch, nice. but for me, I mean, a 20 kill game right out the gate when we got to see them in their C and D grouping. I mean, like we've said, overall, their performance has just had such an insane uptick that I think if they can carry that into today, would not be surprised in the least if they were able to take the series home. Well, I think it's really important for NRG that all three of them are showing up, right? Because yes. in the past, I feel like it's, uh, you know, no surprise uh, to anybody, really, that Guild was really the frag of that team. And it felt like at times, uh, Sweet and Nathan were falling behind. But if at points throughout this tournament so far, we've seen all three of them in the top kill leaders for the tournament. And that, I think, means that NRG uh, here with a very good chance here at the champs. We've seen a lot of uh, central zones recently as well, specifically on Stormpoint. And since that's, since that's where we're starting, I think it's worth noting how NRG are going to interact with the rest of the map. Because landing over by checkpoint, they aren't sharing space with Optic anymore. They've got a contest off in North Pad, so they don't have to deal with that. There's Xset and Cascade that don't typically rotate out aggressively, and so it should give NRG a lot more flexibility and options to position themselves well as long as we're going uh, up to the north or even to the east. As soon as they go south, they have to run into KCP over by Mill, and that's where I could see them running into a bit of trouble. 
I mean, obviously, there's far too many teams for us to talk about individually. We even saw all of the E6 fans in the crowd getting hyped to watch Element 6 in this next series. But if there's any other team that you at home or in the stream want to be keeping your eyes on, make sure that you are checking out our award-winning multi-view tool. It'll be exactly what you need to do just that. You can go to the command center down below on your page and choose which perspectives you want to see, which in-game comms you want to hear, or which storylines you want to follow so that you can watch ALGS your way. Make sure to check it out because there's been so much action in all of our matches here so far that it is hard to keep up with everything. I'll even jump on that and say you should be watching through multi-view because of the amount of information that you can gather via comms. Mm -hmm. If you want to pick up on exactly, not just, oh, a team is winning, but how they're making it happen, there's incredible stuff to be found there. He is not wrong. And while all of you at home are getting your multi-view set up and ready to go, it is time for us to send it on over to the casters on Set and Gasking to get us into the next series. Thank you very much, Lauren. Thank you to everyone on the desk. And now it's time for us to get back in some good old Apex action. We've got B and D matching up against each other now, Dan. And we've got to start turning the conversation from who's playing well, who's not playing so well, to who's going to go through to the winner's side of the bracket and who might be falling down to the elimination. Yeah, back at split two playoffs, the cutoff was 92 points. At split one playoffs, it was 100 points. So for me, uh, 95 seems about safe. If I was a team, if I was players, I would probably hedge my bets anywhere between those two numbers. So we've got a few teams that are kind of just on the bubble that we'll talk about in a minute. But of course, we are starting off with Stormpoint here in this series, because a lot of the sets we've been starting with World's Edge, but it's going to be different. It's going to be a little bit of a change around. And let me tell you, it's getting loud here in Birmingham. All of a sudden, the fans are starting to pick up the noise because they know that we are getting to that stage of groups now where you kind of have to perform. This is going to be the last chance for these two groups to perform on this main stage before we head into bracket play. A couple of teams to keep an eye on down. Some of those teams in and around the bubble. Talk to me about them. KCP at the moment in 14th on 77 points. If they can have an average performance, they should do a good job. Moist in 16th on 73 points. They'll be looking for around 20. Some of the big things to keep your eye on when we're dropping onto Stormpoint. Dreamfire, at the moment, they are in second place. They have the chance to be on top and take over Dark Zero, but could the Kick Curse start to play into effect? We saw what Kick could do. They kind of hassle and they threaten. They haven't really been able to punish, but they deplete those points of the big teams and they will be contesting Dreamfire. Some of the big names to keep an eye on as well. You've got 100 Thieves down in 28 on the overall standards at the moment. They're on 50 points. They will need a banger of a series and they will be also kind of sharing antenna off the drop, which you did see not go too well for them in the previous time. Yeah, a contest is not going to help them and they need to be careful about that one. Uh, another team that is maybe in and around that area on a eSports. You just saw them on your screens briefly. 61 points in the moment, down in 22nd. Still need a somewhat large performance if they are going to find themselves in that winner's bracket. Because remember, this is the last time these teams will get to play in group stages. Well, here is the Legend Select. You'll be able to see what the compositions the teams are playing. And just to kind of round out the teams that we've got our eyes on heading into this set of games, J-Links, 26th place at the moment, 53 points for them. And again, that magic number we're thinking and kind of speculating about 95 will be enough to guarantee you going through to that winner's side of the bracket. Keep your eyes here to see if there's anything uh, out of the ordinary, shall we say, but wouldn't surprise me to see the old trustees coming out in the comps. And it is always terrifying if you are the first set that do finish, because you can put yourself on a benchmark. You can say, OK, we assume we'll be good for 95, but then you're allowing now the other teams that are coming into the equation for those final set to maybe overtake you. It almost feels a little bit more comfortable when you know what you're chasing. It's a little bit easier to predict when you're in that final set. But all of these teams, of course, it's just about getting those victories, getting the big points. Don't think too much about the cutoff right now. Instead, focus on your game and try and have those massive, massive totals that can really send you up the table. Well, as we head into Storm Point then, a lot of Bangalore being picked, as you would expect at this stage. If you find yourself a DG threat, maybe that's going to be enough to see you through some of these games. But for now, it's time to focus for these teams. Time to focus for these groups as we head into Storm Point for our first match in the and series. Of, of course, I, I jest and I talk about Kick and their contest that they went through, but they really did frustrate TSM yesterday as the Dreamfire chants echoing around the arena. And we'll have to see whether they can find as much success as they have been having so far in this tournament. They have been one of the surprise packages, it has to be said. We'll sign off with a little bit of KCP. 
And we're gonna watch this one through the eyes of Zane, but the cam of the IGL of the team, Naski. They're gonna be dropping over towards the mill, should be pretty much uncontested on their way down. Ironblood gonna be their nearest competitors, but they're going all the way out towards Sonote, the backside of that. Keeping our eyes on where that zone's gonna be going as well. Such a huge influence in these lobbies about how teams are gonna rotate and who's gonna be in those prime positions, who's gonna have Bryo. We'll see where that's gonna be when it pops. And it looks like Dreamfire and Kick not contesting as well. They are going to be split, and it seems like everyone has found a safe home here on Stormpoint. There are gonna be a few that are close enough to have a few pop shots, but it's gonna be a comfortable old looting situation as we can start to look at where that zone is going to be heading. Now, the biggest surprise for me is Ascend maybe not dropping down towards Sonote Cave that they're used to, so perhaps they found something that they feel like they can call more familiar and more home, and it will be a little bit of a ruckus here, actually. So we do get one fight of the break. It's gonna be because of Ascend. Red Lord are gonna be the team on the other side of this. Ascend choosing to loot the majority of the big building. You can see the Lufkas trying to take height away, and there's going to be one Tappy who does go down. So Riddle Order find themselves in a uh, back foot based position at the moment. However, one shot with a charge up Sentinel could change that very, very quickly, especially if you can connect with a headshot. And this may be a conscious decision from Ascend. Riddle Order at the moment down in 39th position. They may well be targeted by this Ascend roster who said, well, if we're being threatened at our location by Dreamfire, we don't really want to be fighting the number one oh my team. Goodness. Well, hold on, there's still a chance for this one. Look at that flank coming in. That is beautiful stuff. And now the 2v3 turns into a 2v1. Lufka left on his own on the Valkyrie. He's going to fall as well and Ascend fall. And Red Lord will turn this fight on its head. Unbelievable from Red Lord, who I tell you what, when you're challenged and someone tries to take your drop, that's the perfect way to respond and to stick it in their face. And Ascend maybe will start to rethink their plans for Storm Point here. Riddle Order should be able to get back up to a full three, but in terms of where we're heading, we're going to be going far east over towards the likes of Stormcatcher, if not even further than that. And we've already got about five teams setting up in this area, Black Hand being one of them, already laying down the foundations to make sure that they're going to be nice and comfortable in this building. You've also got Moist Esports, Jaylings in the facility as well. They usually are quicker rotating teams, so it gives you a great indication of where you expect their end game to be going. Also, when you're looking at Loophole, it gives you a good idea of who's taking the opportunity to rotate as quickly as possible. You can see a little bit of loot being shared out here by Blackhand to make sure that everyone is equipped to fight and hold down that position. 100 Thieves also on their way, and you can see Vaxlon still with the white armor. It's going to be a little bit weaker than his two teammates, but they're going to be able to get a good priority position here on this zone. And one thing we were talking about was the teams who, you know, need points to qualify for that winner's bracket, but there are uh, several teams that have probably guaranteed themselves there already. Dreamfire on 116, that should easily beat the cutoff. Exit at 112, they should be through to the winner's bracket. Ascend at 101 should also be clear and into that winner's bracket. And perhaps that's why Ascend were happy to kind of take that risk and take that fight off of the drop. As we take a look here at Command Center, Pioneers forcing Exet away. And Exet now, having set that balloon down, will be able to take their rotate path. And they're going to be followed and shadowed here by Pioneers. So Exet are going to have to keep their eyes on exactly what's happening because Natsuki and crew certainly have eyes on where they're going. And it would be a more important fight for the Pioneers over Exet, but it's also why these lobbies get a little bit difficult to try and manage because if you've got teams that are already pretty much set in that winner's bracket they can play a little bit more loose they can take some more risks they can have a bit more fun you can see in the kill feed suddenly exit are in a little bit of trouble this is a really important thing for pioneers right they shadowed them they followed them through the skies and by doing so exit being involved in this fight means that they might be able to take the position away that Exit were trying to hold down on their rotate so pioneers just looking to pick up the pieces of this fight that's gone down it's FC Destroy as well in the kill feed, and all these teams that have flown very far east to kick off this set. Just trying to poke and prod at one another as Zane finds the head of K Swinney. So E6 also amongst all this ruckus, and no one can really find anywhere to call home because they, they came over on the eastern side, the buildings were already taken, and then you've already just got, what, the walls to play with? Zane is hitting some shots at the moment. He was the player who got that first knock, and you can see he's getting hyped up by Naski as well to keep pushing forward, to keep doing damage, and Zane doesn't even need to be asked twice. That 30-30 gets brought out of the back pocket. No, someone's there. He's going to flush him out with an arc star, but can he connect with the shots after? E6 eliminated. Nax gets the kill for Jaylings. 
No KP here for Pioneers. Element 6 going down is always a shame for the crowd, considering the E6 fans were the ones matching the sound of the Dreamfire. It means that the Dreamfire fans can live on and reign supreme here in Birmingham, but KCP have done very well to assert their dominance on this eastern side. As things start to slow down a little bit, it's Jaylings on the other side. Both these teams can happily reside next to one another as well. They don't have to force any sort of fight. They just need to kind of clear out those other teams that were nearby, and it seems like they did work hand in hand to ensure that happened. Noise is trying to pick up the scraps off these boxes as well, bringing back a purple mag and an alt excel, which is certainly going to help out in the long run. But just looking across the economy of the team at the moment, you know, not a huge amount of energy ammo in that vault. Double SMG is going to be good for them as well because they can just hold down this position towards the end game. But not being able to output a huge amount of damage, but they also don't really have the LOS to do that. They can't play the height because there's a building across from them. They're going to take unnecessary damage by doing so. And with so many teams in the vicinity at the moment on that building we're looking at, you know that if you get chip damage, if a team hits a few shots into your back and breaks those shields, another team is so aware that of that being the priority building, they're going to push you and try and take it. And this is one of those zones that is quite predictable, and that's why we see so many teams have already made their way over to this eastern side. We've only got, what, four teams outside of this current circle with a lot of, you know, a lot of distance to travel for Le Cite de France and for Kick, but they're going to be happy to just be in the game at the moment, whereas everyone else has found somewhere to call home, and you can see how clustered it is to the eastern side of Stormcatcher. There's always that worry that maybe it will pull away from you if you've committed that early, but you kind of have to in a zone like this as some damage coming out of LG Chivas. Yeah, when it's going to this fight, great job from our observing team in the back to catch this, because LG at the moment are having a fight with Red Lorda. Dreamfire are in the vicinity, holding down the choke just to the north of them. So if this starts to get a little bit messy and takes a little bit longer with Nox not being exchanged and a kill turning into a squad wipe almost immediately, then they will be in position here, Dreamfire, to clean up the pieces and not only that, completely clear the southern side of this zone. Well, Haji Chivas con constantly moving forward to try and push it. They're considering how they're going to be able to break this. And I tell you what, the Vault doing damage will at least give the chance to push here if they want to go forward. Yanya takes a huge amount of damage, though. And Yanya will go down. And once again, it's Riddle Order, who seem to turn a fight around when they seem like they're on the back foot. Chance maybe to go for a little quick res. Get the blockades down onto the door. Dark Veil also for extra cover. Now that's when you need to have ears to the ground. Hope you don't hear any footsteps behind you. Back has a full three now, LG Chivas. He's all trying to stay alive here. He was the bait, and he manages to do so. And I'll tell you what, Jaguarez has now turned this fight around. He gets the kill. He gets two. And all of a sudden, it's a 1v3. The first knock did go down to Riddle Order, but now they know how Ascend to feel. They know how they were made to feel. As Riddle Order will fall, and it's Nizel who picks up the final kill. Great stuff from Jaguarez Yagar to make sure that he closed down any sort of gap and instantly was on his teammates to get the revive as Exet also will fall. We saw members of Exet going down earlier, but finally fun, the last remaining player is eliminated. And Dreamfire just having a little scout around to see if anyone's going to be joining them from the south because they would have heard that commotion coming from LG Chivas. So they know someone will be arriving sooner or later. So they'll be more than happy to hold this choke because they can't really push any further north because they're being held out by Moist Esports. That fight will break out eventually, you would imagine. LG very unlikely ro to rotate up towards Stormcatcher just because of the fact that there's so many teams, as you would imagine, going to be around that POI having to rotate from the western side of Stormpoint here. This is a look again at the map overhead. You can see KCP holding down that little compound outside of the building. Jailing still holding down the main building that everybody would want to be a part of. And this is the, what we were talking about a few moments ago. Moist Esports in this egg building holding out Dreamfire. And Dreamfire at the moment kind of sandwiched between LG Shivas, who are trying to work their way up north, and Moist, who are holding them out. And Moist were very consistent to end the day yesterday with 55 points across their second set compared to the 18 points in their first. If they can find somewhere in between just for this set three, then they should find themselves in the winner's bracket. But if they were to have a similar performance, only get around 18, you do find yourself kind of in that risky zone. It's very interesting to see here. You saw the scan came in on the care package and they know there's a Kraber down there. And so do Moist Esports. Now, this is a problem for both teams if they have to rotate in a little bit longer, right? You can see, I think there's definitely a thought that they want to try and take control of that if they could. It'd be such a useful thing to have in the armory to hold down any teams rotating in. But as we move back towards the zone, bang in the center of it, you can see Blackhand under a little bit of pressure here. Yeah, Blackhand just trying to assert their dominance in the center zone, as you mentioned. 
You don't want anyone to really be pushing up on you and taking this away from you. But it's just about getting rid of what is a smelly old caustic that was uh, there with you. Area 310 go down. And Black Cat will hold on. Yeah, dominating that building. Moist Esports do try and move up. You can see on our map overhead, but also we can see the dream fire fight that we were talking about starting to break out. And it's going to be Sandwich who gets the first knock. 3MZ taking down Nizor, and now Dreamfire looks to clean up the pieces. Yeah, LG Chivas maybe were caught unaware here. Dreamfire just waiting, ambushing, and now they've got that first knock. There is no way that LG Chivas will be able to win this one, two versus three. And it wouldn't surprise me if they retreat, which they do. They're going to try and make a different rotation, which might mean they run into another squad, but Dreamfire will just be happy that they hold the southern side. Yeah, they've done a great job here. I mean, they could kind of forget about LG for a minute. If LG got the banner, they can get out. There is a res beacon available to them that they can go back to. But Dreamfire also might be aware that Moist Esports have moved up as well. We saw the fight in the building with Black Hand. Well, that kind of created a vacancy. And you can see on your screen right now on the left-hand side, they did not have to be asked twice, Moist. And I tell you what, Moist want to keep pushing here. They want to be aggressive and they want to take on Black Hand. Well, Moist want this building. They want to take it off them. They see this as prime real estate and say, hey, if we can grab this, this is a potential win for us now. Taking control of the doors is Fussy. Barricading them from the outside. And having decided that maybe this isn't quite going the way they wanted as quickly as they would have wanted. Now they have to retreat back to their building. Black Hand do a good job there of holding, doing a little bit of damage to make them retreat. But Moist Force, I like the proactiveness of that. However, one thing you can't account for is a Kraber. And all of a sudden, Black Hand lose one. Over to Lacita France. Elsewhere, Stormcatcher is going to be where all the action is going down. Lacita France versus SAF as SAF will try and get the better here, but it's a trade two for two. Iron Blood Gaming go down, Lucita France are out, so SAF do very well to ensure they win that one. Black Hole goes down as a last resort to try and stay alive. Sleep trying to do what he can, but you can see he's under so much pressure. Has to play the knockdown shield, does have the Prowler from the package. So he might be able to win a little close 1v1 if someone does push, but this isn't looking like a 1v1. This is looking like a lobby versus one. It's 100 Thieves who are rapping to clean up the pieces. You also have FD, FC Destroy overlooking this. Start a fight eliminated. As now 100 Thieves have to deal with FC Kicker Destroy. also there. Singularity also there. LG Chivas now arriving as a two. This Western side is full of teams right now, and you want to be the last team to win this if you can, but great damage from 100 Thieves. Really important that the Digi's in the hands of Vaxalon here. He's sure he smoked in on the Bangalore, and he's got all the vision you could possibly want. They don't get the clean wipe, but they create enough space and time for them to move forward. But now here comes Kick as well. Can they surprise them? Because FC Destroy is still distracting 100 Thieves here. Even though they go down, how much damage has 100 Thieves taken? It's enough for Kick to walk on in and say, we'll clean that up. Thank you very much. 100 Thieves will be eliminated. So as you say, Kick move in. And who would have thought, right, if you're not contesting off drop, maybe you can put a game together here. And Kick Esports re-evaluating the game plan from day one and changing it up in game two. But the question is, now can they survive? Because there's pressure coming in, but they do get the knock. Yeah, LG Chivas coming in as a two, but Team Singularity are watching on from a distance. This is a nightmare for Kick. They thought they were the ones doing the third party, but unfortunately, they're going to be the ones getting third party as Kick go down, as well as LG Chivas. And it's Team Singularity, the last ones to the party on the western side, that will survive. And how important is that? for Singularity. 19th place coming into this lobby, 68 points overall. As we go back over to the point of view of Dreamfire. Peter has gone down though. So with eight squads remaining, we are gonna see NRG trying to finish off the pieces. Big damage coming in for Roy though. This isn't as comfortable as he would have wanted, but the shots from the teams inside of the rings even more uncomfortable. Saving Grace though for Dreamfire here. It's Team Singularity now arriving from the backside of NRG and will be able to put down damage and will eliminate NRG. So Dreamfire might be able to escape as a solo, but it's still Singularity swooping on in from this western side, almost like a hurricane in the moment, blowing everything in their wake. As Dream Dreamfire, the next team to get eliminated. Oh. Now Moist, hold this building with this Kraber that you were speaking of earlier. That's certainly going to leave a bruise from MT. That shot coming out of the Kraber is not a headshot. It's not the sleeping pill, but it certainly is going to be doing a huge amount of damage just to warn off Team Singularity. But Team Singularity, I don't think they're too put off by that. They know they're going to have to move in on this building, and yes, indeed, there they are, sneaking up behind them. And you have to say, range for that Kraber is fantastic, but in the close range quarters, if you can't hit the no-scope, it doesn't quite become as impactful as a weapon as it would have been.
Well, as round four closes, the two winners from this circle pool, J-Lings and Pioneers. Remember, we saw Pioneers traverse the map all the way to that eastern side right at the start of the game where they were holding it with J-Lings. Circle's coming their way. So Blackhand, Onik, Singularity, they're all going to be on this left side with Moist Esports and they're going to have to push over to the east. What's fascinating about this final zone, right? We were talking about the bubble teams. Who are those bubble teams? We mentioned KCP, we mentioned Onik, we mentioned Singularity, we mentioned 100 Thieves. They are all involved in this top six position. So this is a huge game for them. If they get in this great position, they fought for it early on and they can convert, so much pressure is off their shoulders. And a lot of those teams we were saying need maybe 20, 30 points in this set. And you could achieve that with a victory. We've seen those big games and how important they could be. Think of Sentinels yesterday when they got that one win. There's now Singularity will push in and get the first knock here. This is the team that could upset things, right? Elysium's back and he's looking to take over the lobbies once more. Moist Esports will be eliminated as Team Singularity continue to scrap here with Blackhand. They did get some good damage down initially. They did get a first knock, but now Bing goes in. Can he finish off the kills, though? It's looking a bit messy here. It's all up to Elysium. Well, you said Elysium's back. Can he do the unthinkable here? It's a one versus three. Onyx still not getting involved just yet. And maybe Blackhand recognizing they need to reset ever so slightly. They can't allow a solo to just ruin their day because they need these 15 seconds to get their shields back up, get any extra utility they might find in the death boxes, and then start to make their way over to that eastern side. Whilst the remaining one player from Singularity has moved over to the eastern side, and it's kind of created a little bit of scared nature from J-Lings as pioneers. They both kind of panic, take some shots at one another because they heard the commotion. Well, Pioneers have been forced into this play. I think they thought the zone might pull out a little bit more towards the open field away from the building towards them. It didn't, and therefore they've had to reposition. And Jaylings off the back of that information as well, seeing where the zone is going to be pulling. They've decided now, with the height going to be taken out of those other buildings, across from them, you can see Onik Esports shooting at right now, that they can take the height, they can play it for the late game. Jaylings certainly in prime position right now. Black Hand are going to be arriving from the south and could just pinch the Pioneers, and that isn't going to be fun for them. Blackhand still being one of these teams that has ran through the lobby. Remember, they were holding that building from an early, early stage, and they were comfortable in their fights. They were confident in their fights, and they need to wait for all of these Dark Veils to dissipate. Might have to heat up this bang ult as well. We'll be able to survive, though. Smokes go out as well. They do get the gen down right on the edge of zone, which is going to stop any more barrages coming in, any more grenades being thrown at them, and it's also going to heat up those cues from Catalyst. So, Blackhand. Full Evo shields for them. It's only a corner they have to play, but you're in a corner. If you've got a gen, it becomes a much more playable spot. You saw Elysium there on the map overhead. The last remaining player from Singularity just trying to rat away right below the Pioneers. And Pioneers in the moment, their biggest worry is Blackhand. Elysium just saying, I am Butterbush. Please ignore me. J-Lings now. Trying to take a command as much space as they can. Look at the kill feed, though. Strafing Flame with that Kraber has taken down Nasty from KCP. And now Blackhand see that as the trigger to push forward. Zane goes down as well. KCP starting to potentially fall here. And the Pioneers will find Singularity. So unfortunately, the final member goes down. Four squads remain. Make it three, because the Pioneers eventually do get eliminated. So Onik Esports, Blackhand, and Jay Lings. Now, Jay Lings hold the height. They've got the Watson fences down. They have made their fortress. And they say, catch us if you can. Get up here. We will hold this for as long as possible. And the circle is pulling towards them. One thing that's very good, Jay Lings. They're so good at closing out these end games. They know they have the priority position and they are very, very adept in making sure they aren't the team to make that first mistake. They can also try and force Blackhand and Onik into each other because they're going to be close together by the circle. It's about just doing damage and forcing them to fight. Well, the corner that Noises was just on, just outside of this building, that's where the circle is going to be finishing. So J-Links, they can wait, they can force that damage between Onik and Blackhand and it should be as simple as arriving to the fight last. As now you see Onik and Blackhand taking the fight against one another. Blackhand taking damage. Strafing Flame's going to be there. JMW getting involved still. Picking up a few kills with a triple take. J-Ling's in a premium position to surely close this game out. They pick up yet more kills as they take to the high ground. The flank comes in from Nags. He's just going to be shooting fish in a barrel. Onyx Esports eliminated, and now it's just about closing out. Black kind of done well, though, to stay as a full three. If they can reset, this is still winnable. There's the EMP coming in, though. 
the EMP is a problem for Black Hand. They're down to just two. And look at the shields. Look at the health here for Jaylings. It's the perfect game if they can convert. It should be a simple job. Send in Nax, get the damage done, and call yourself the champions. Was it ever in doubt for Jaylings with a position like that? Maybe a small amount of worry when they saw that three members of Black Camp were still alive, but the damage that they'd already been taken, Jaylings quickly made sure they capitalized off that damage. And it was a very early move from Jaylings to ensure they were on that far eastern side. They were joined for quite some time by the Pioneers, but unfortunately for the Pioneers, they never really had that roof like Jaylings did. And also, we saw how much composition really counted there, just having those Watson fences down to keep any team at bay. Big result for Jaylings, you mentioned them as one of the bubble teams coming into this set of games. Well, they were 26th overall coming in with 53 points. You would imagine there's probably around 20 to be added to that total. We'll obviously check those standings in a few moments to see how that has influenced things. But we mentioned pressure, that's going to relieve a lot of it, Dan, as we take a look at the final circle. And I think Jaylings, when they're in a position like this, they know that everything is on their side. As long as both teams on the lower side of the map are fighting one another, you should always win a final circle like this. It would need to be a colossal mistake to throw something like this away. So I'm glad that they didn't, because otherwise we'd be talking about them for an entirely different reason. Well, one thing that I love about Jaylings is they never kind of risk adverse. They put themselves in a position at the right time to collapse. And you can see here, they're not overcommitting to the fight. They know that they are going to win this game. The only way that they don't win this game is if someone drops, if someone throws, essentially, and puts themselves in a position where all of a sudden you feel the other team with a belief because they've got that first knock, and they can maybe isolate someone off the back of it, but the EMP just slowed things down once again. JMW flies in, and I think what was almost as important for Jaylings in that final circle was not just the win down, but they also got a few KP from the team scrapping on that low ground. Yeah, they made sure that they took advantage of a circle that was close enough to their drop spot of high point, quickly rotated to get in what they felt was one of the prime positions and the circle kept pulling towards them so they were rewarded for their early move. I'm still impressed that the Pioneers were able to get all the way east considering they drop over towards Mill by the way so they should still be happy with a top five finish considering how far they had to go. Yeah, nothing quite like a evac tower from command center to get across the map. Very, very impressive stuff coming out of that rotate and I'm sure they want to thank Exit as well, because I'm not sure if that, that was their evac tower that they kind of followed them on, but it certainly worked for them and they managed to get in a pretty good position. But it's a very interesting game, isn't it? Because that's going to change the leaderboards significantly. And we talked about pressure, how things are going to change up. Well, before we get into overalls, let's check out match one results. And it is Jaylings with 19 points on the board. So important to get those points early. Seven kills, I think a big contributor. We talked about Jaylings are good at winning games, but sometimes you don't see the KP alongside it. That is not the case here in this first game. And we, uh, we mentioned right at the top of the show, 53 points is what they were on. So now they're on 72. Again, still a little bit off that kind of bubble amount that we were talking of, of 92 to 100. But with more games like that, J-Lings could still find themselves in the winner's bracket. Blackhand, 18 points they were able to pick up. Onik getting 10, Singularity getting 10, and Pioneers getting 7. And also, shout out, Kick Esports getting 9 points, not being contested right at the start, and they were able to play the game of Apex Legends. They certainly were, and they picked up 7 KP alongside it. At the bottom side, though, you can see Ascent, they lost that contest, even though they got the one point for one of those Alims. E6, very quiet game for them, and it's been a quiet tournament so far, but the crowd certainly aren't quiet when they come on our screens. Except as well, zero points for them. We saw them getting pinched a little bit earlier on as they were kind of shadowed through the skies by Pioneers on their rotate. And then you've got the likes of 100 Thieves, who might be starting to think this game to a little bit of a worrying moment for them. They want to be in the eliminate, uh, sorry, in the winner's side of the bracket. They don't want to be in the elimination side of it and have to fight their way through that. They're going to have to step up here as we head into game number two. Yeah, I think that when you look at how far you are beyond that points total that we were trying to look at, it's always easy to worry, but I think for a lot of these teams, they can maybe say, all right, well, we're not as good at Stormpoint, we can be good at World's Edge. There's still lots of games here. It's not too much of a worry after map number one. You can see Jay Lings and the damage they were able to put down. This is what I expect from Jay Lings, right? I mean, I know I mentioned it all the time, how they used to be such a good World's Edge team, and they're very good at playing zone and holding on to the circles when they are able to get them coming their way. But they were able to get the kills as well. I think it's the right big thing that you highlighted that. Yeah, it's the big thing. It's always been the big thing for me in Jay Lings. It's like, they read zones brilliantly. They always find themselves in great positions. They rotate so, so well, but I just feel like Sometimes they're not willing to take a little bit more of a risk to clear space around them. 
but the way they controlled that building was was perfect, right? They controlled the route, they held off the push coming in from KCP, and then they were able to clean up that end game. And that's what you got to do. It's not just about getting a position. It's not just about hunkering down in a building. You have to try and control the space around it and force other teams to fight away from the position that you are holding. Now, if I'm E6, if I'm 310, I'm asking myself, how did I let Jay Lings get past us and get to that position before us? Definitely something that these teams need to be looking at when it comes to circles that are pulling their way. But I think that is credit to Jay Lings knowing these ring pulls, knowing these circles, and knowing which areas to be heading towards when they see a pull start to happen. So Jay Lings take match number one. Blackhand, though, we saw they were in a building for quite some time, and they really asserted their dominance. They certainly did. We saw some of the stats coming in, like you're saying. They're actually ninth place in the overall standings coming into game one as well. So Blackhand kind of going under the radar a bit, and I think it's about time that we give them the spotlight because they are performing so, so well so far here in Birmingham, and who knows, maybe they could be a little bit of a sleeper team, an underdog going into the later days. I mean, certainly, even with the points they just got in match number one, that should be enough to get them into the winner's bracket, most likely, but they still want to be consistent, they still want to be finding themselves in those final circles, not just for the points, but it's about getting those reps in, right? It's getting as many final circles as possible, so that when you do get into the winner's bracket, when you do get into the grand finals, you have those reps, you understand how the lobbies are playing, and you know how to navigate them. Well, game one is done and dusted, a lot more Apex Legends to come. Your way though, game two coming up on Stormpoint right after the break. WD Black, the official storage partner of the Apex Legends Global Series. Welcome back to Birmingham, everyone, and welcome back to the ALGS Championships. This week, there'll be $2 million in prizing given out, Dan. What a time Woo! to be alive. Game one done on Stormpoint here. As we saw, the two groups going up against each other, and now we have the opportunity to go back to Stormpoint and see if we can have a repeat winner or if things are going to change up a little bit. Yeah, a few things we need to look out for is, are we going to see the consistency from these bubble teams that we were mentioning earlier, the likes of KCP, Moist, Singularity, Onik, or are we going to see some of the teams who are a little bit lower down in those tables, 100 Thieves and Jay Lings, who were the winners of match number one? Can they suddenly propel themselves up the leaderboards and find themselves in that winner's bracket? We'll have to find out if that is going to be the case. There's also a team, a couple of teams who are kind of lingering down the bottom who are going to start to worry for just a second, I think, knowing that there's five games left in groups for them to get the job done and get themselves into the winner's side of that bracket. I want to talk about one of those teams because I can certainly see over there in the crowd they've got a lot of fans. That's going to be E6. E6 need to put in a performance now, Dan. And the big thing for E6 for me is they can be a little bit hot and cold, right? They can go through these periods where it's like, oh, they have a couple of very low point games that all of a sudden 
they just burst into life. Momentum, adrenaline, I don't know what it is about them, but you can never count them out on one big game here for them, and they can start to take over. Well, you've got the U6 Ultras chanting, and maybe that can give them the confidence in this match number two, because we're in the drop ship, and we are ready to go for match number two. And if you are E6, if you're any of those teams who are around that northeast area, you're asking and you're scratching your head saying, how did we let teams get there first? Rotations and quick moving is everything in this current meta. You want to be the first team to lock down one of those buildings. Be confident in your belief of where that zone is going to go because it can be the difference maker. It certainly can indeed. Dreamfire fans getting loud as well, which is what we love to hear. And let me tell you, the volume is turning up day by day here in Birmingham. The crowd have been amazing so far, and you know it's only going to get better as we get into the juicier part of the tournament. But speaking about flight path, it's going to be north to south, straight down the middle of the map. And for a team who just won things, j -Links, that's going to be great news. But for Ascend, they're looking for a different result from this contest. Yeah, Ascend contesting again down at Launchpad with Riddle Order. But as you mentioned, it didn't go their way the first time. And for Riddle Order, it was massive because they were down in 39th position and really need some points on the board if they are going to find themselves in the winner's bracket. This has to be a miraculous run here in set number three for them. But they were able to get the victory last time, but nothing really snowballed after that. They still went down shortly after. But they're well aware now that Ascend are going to be there as all. It's a little lineup with the Sentinel, but not enough to get a shot. I think Ascend will be fuming, to say the least, about how the last contest went down. They got that first knot, and then one player, I think it was Miak, managed to just flank, get up on height and drop down behind two Ascend players and essentially take them out single-handedly. So Ascend playing a little bit tighter this time around. They're going to be able to hit the ring console as well to get a bit of info, but I think it's, you know, one of those games that certainly refocuses you uh, if you're Ascend, but also frustrates you more than anything with how things went down. Well, I think Ascend in general feel like they are disrespected in the Apex scene, even though they've had great achievements, second place at the split one playoffs, and what could have been, the, well, certainly it could have been a first place. I guess they were in the fight, weren't they? They technically did not get second place, but they had the chance to win at split two playoffs, losing out to TSM. And we'll have to see now whether Ascend can kind of replicate that success that they had. Because at Split 2, they really struggled. They looked like a different team compared to Split 1. They got to the finals, but we know how tough the finals lobbies can be. It just seems like there's just a step up. And for Ascend, maybe just wasn't their day. But for now, it looks like this contest is going to be kind of... Shall we say, there's a gentleman's agreement going down between the two. A few pop shots, but... Ascend, I think, happy enough with their loot to start their rotate. And for a team like Ascend, who are so dependent upon their rotations and how they get to zone early, this kind of thing really does hurt them down. It really does. And I think that they've always been a team who is happy to move quickly, and sometimes they get targeted because of that. Uh, but I think they were the ones targeting Riddle Order in this particular instance, but they don't take the fight now as NRG are making their move. But as we start to look at the zone, we are heading up to the wall for this circle. Exeter are already making their move, and they're already trying to take down some players as Fussy has fallen. And unfortunately for Moist, it looks like they might be pushed here. Oh, Nocturnal got a little bit of a shock there, but the Knuckle Cluster will clear the way for Noct to move in. They know this is a 3v2. They know they want to clear this up. However, they also know that they can't make too much of a mess of this because there are teams already stacking up inside of the wall. You have Area 310, you have Black Hand playing the tunnel, start a fight at their kicker there, Jaylings are already there as well. So if you're gonna fight, you gotta make it quick. And that's exactly what Exet are doing. Yeah, Waltzy is gonna be the next player and it should be three for three here for Exet. It's gonna be relatively comfortable. A white knockdown shield is not really gonna help you in this scenario. Ooh. And there we go. Moist eliminated in 20th position. And again, it starts to get a little bit worrying, even though Moist are doing pretty well and they're closing in on that total they'd like to get to find themselves in winner's bracket. The more losses and the more points that you kind of throw away in these games, it makes it more difficult for you in the later matches. NRG have managed to move all the way around to the northern side here, just above J Ling's. And they're gonna be happy to reside here. And you can see, Ears to the ground, they're trying to listen, they're trying to sneak up. This could be a potential ambush. This is where if you're inside of the building, you've got to be aware. You've got to make sure that you're watching every angle. As the smoke comes in, I'm not sure if that was an NRG smoke or if that was one coming out of the wall to say, hey, we see you. Don't you think about doing anything funny? Well, I think Nathan probably put that smoke down because you saw Sweet's face. As soon as he had a look into that building, he felt his eyes lock with someone else and he instantly turned around and said, don't fancy it. This is not a fun fight to try and take. And now it's 
about what do you want to do here from NRG? Because this tunnel is not where you want to play. It's too much of a choke point where you will be focused. So you need to try and force your way in to the wall at some point. Well, Exit at the moment just controlling a lot of space within the wall. Picking up some loot on their way as well. SE Destroy holding down this area outside the command center. This is uh, on the southeastern side of the zone where it's going to be going. Elsewhere, 100 Thieves making their way through Jurassic at the moment. LG taking their time. It's going to be a really tough zone for LG to try and access. As we jump on board with Pioneers, who had a pretty good result in that first game. Smiles on the faces, understandably so. But they will want to convert into a win here. A win just feels so much of what you want to do as a team, right? It just feels a confidence. And we've always got in the back of our minds as commentators as well, match point arriving on Sunday. And if you yeah. go into match point and you haven't won a game or tournament, even though you might be in those finals, you might be thinking, maybe this isn't the format for us. Yeah, we know that Apex Legends and any eSport really, a lot of mentors involved and just having that extra little bit of confidence will do you wonders. Speaking of, element six on the struggle bus at the moment in this tournament. The new addition of Tyler coming in and there's a lot of hope of how this roster might do. We'll have to see whether they can find something in these next five matches to keep their chances alive of being in that winner's bracket. Otherwise, it will have to be an elimination run for them, which is still very achievable. Sometimes when you make a change, it's not the worst thing to play more games of Apex Legends to give yourself that extra little bit of time to build that chemistry and make sure you're ready when you do find yourself in Elim 2 and then maybe into the grand finals. Well, great job from our observing team once again here in the back. We jumped over to the POV of Onyx Esports, and I was just thinking, hey, this isn't NRG. Where are NRG? Well, that's exactly where they are. They've crept their way into wall, trying to get ahead of the traffic. Gold charge rival here for Raki, and let me tell you, even though I would say not the most consistent output of damage these days from the charge rifle, after it was retuned completely, if you hit a shot from distance and you connect with a headshot, it's game over for the other player, quite simply. I mean, it's still bloody annoying, isn't it? It's oh, just yeah. one of those guns when you get shot by it, you don't really fancy the team that is doing it from a distance and actually it aggravates me a little bit. It makes me want to push that team. I feel like I've just unlocked some sort of anger in you. Yeah, he's just, yeah. You've really don't worry, just it's the first, the first one we've seen it's in fine. No, it's Calm not. Down. It's fine. Keep yourself composed. <sighs> Breathe. Well, NRG just playing the backside of the concrete structure that you can see at the top of your screen, a couple of teams inside of the wall building itself. Let's see the France are making a really big zone wrap as well to the north, which is interesting for the likes of NRG, start a fight. Who are going to be having to keep their heads on swivels, so to speak, to watch that zone wrap coming in. So only five teams outside of this next circle. It's going to be the late rotation again from LG Chivas. Red Lord are going to be arriving late. 100 Thieves have just gone up to Thunderwatch, by the way. But Onyx seem like they're happy here for now, and they're well aware that as they wrapped on the northern side, they could certainly be joined by other teams. And, well, it could happen. Here's the Cite de France, who are taking a very northern route and will be potentially arriving in a very similar position. Interesting to see if this pays off for the Cite, for the Cite de France. This is kind of a all eggs in one basket play, right? Because if the meds aren't there and they have to rewrap through zone, they might be taken down by that zone. Onyx Esports taking damage oh at just the wrong time here as well. And you can see that the Cite de France are probably popping those last meds yep. and getting ready to re-engage here. Or should I say, engage and pop up behind them. It was a coordinated all three med kits at the same time. They maybe sense there's a team around this corner. Uh, no. and now they've got that info. Uh, no. And now suddenly you want to push up, but Psychop's taking so much damage. Psychop will be down as well, and that was the worry for me about this play. The longer they're in zone, the longer this fight takes, then the longer and the more likely it is that this will be the end of the game for Lecite de France. Onyx Esports look pretty frustrated, but all of a sudden, look how this game is changing. Crusader's down, Shady's down, Racky's left on his own. That was an Uno reversal card, played onto an Uno reversal card there from Lecite de France as they managed to stay alive. Psychop back on his feet, Exet eliminated over towards the wall. So all this commotion started to happen as all these teams arrive a little bit late and force teams into one another. They have to go here though, the meds are so low for Lecite de France, they have to get inside of that zone and the zone is going to start shifting away from them in the next few moments as well. They have to get this KP, they have to push in, they will be safe. But do they know? Oh my do they know? Oh, yeah. They know now! But all the better for NRG, who have 
been pleasantly waiting at the other end of the tunnel, but this will draw attention towards them, so they have to be careful. This is good from NRG. You don't want to overcommit to this fight. They do know they have them trapped. However, they did use the Horizon ult, so they're not going to have that available. But the de France aren't going to have much utility either. They did get that knock, which means now they can move in to clean up the damage. NRG doing a great job of clearing their back here. And I think the decision to move through that tunnel, get into wall, and ahead of the expected traffic from the northern side, which is what puts them in such a good position. All the meanwhile, the teams that arrived here early have just been kind of watching peeking out of their curtains, checking on their neighbors every now and then. Have they put the bins out? Yes, they have. We'll do that later. Jaylings, they arrived early. 100 Thieves are there. SAF also in a building as well. All these teams should be comfortable for now, but we mentioned E6 earlier. They're trying to stay alive on the opposite side of NRG. Pioneers eliminated in the meantime. They will not be participating in the end of game number two. Element 6 had to use a lot of utility to get into this position. You saw Case winning on the fuse, hitting the ult, just to give them enough space to retreat. And even though they are safe, and will be safe for quite some time, they have to be worried about the likes of Ascend in this building being able to roll a few grenades their way. On this southern side, there are about six teams that are all going to be moving at a very similar time. And I tell you what, it's going to be carnage when they all do. The last team to enter that fight might be able to hold the southern side and threaten They're Black Tank, but it looks like, yeah, E6 fancy him. E6 are going to go in, and I talked about momentum. I talked about adrenaline. Well, E6, maybe they're feeling it right now as Tyler goes in. He'll do so much damage, the Peacekeeper's going to be a problem, but so is Tyler. It's all up to Slayers and Case Winnie to clean up the pieces here. They will win the fight against Ascend, but can they hold off the third party? It's going to be 100 Thieves. Oh, oh my god, get out of here. You just got to be aggressive as Slayers denies any sort of push and will allow E6 to just about hold on. But Slayers got more work to do here. You can see he's doing so much of it himself. Case Winnie still alive. Can he get the shield swap here, Slayers? He does get the pub, but Tyler is still down. As it's going to be another team flushing themselves into this building, and now you can see the E6 are in a pinch. Slayer's just trying to make himself as big as possible, and I tell you what, he is a very big man, very tall man, but he will fall as K Swinney now tries to escape. E6 was stuck between a rock and a hard place, but it looks like K Swinney may just be able to get this Phoenix off and at least re engage if he wants to or rat out, because it was two teams that were pressing them. NRG under a little bit of pressure themselves as well but able to survive. Now, if I was not mistaken, the Cita France have somehow managed to get them back up themselves up to a 4-3. But the Digi being dropped off here would suggest that NRG want to send Nathan in through the smoke to try and deal with that. Nathan gets the cover. Sets the ping and sets his teammates on to the Cita France, but they are still residing in that corner. And this is frustrating for NRG. NRG are desperate to clear this northern side because then they can be far more comfortable in the area they currently reside in. They just can't get out the pesky Le Cite de France. I'm um, not quite sure how this has happened, by the way, but E6, I'm pretty sure that they've managed to get everyone back in the game. Elsewhere, though, down on the southern side of zone, these are the teams who have had to traverse across Stormpoint, and now they are running into each other. FC Destroying going to be the first ones to fall, as here come Dreamfire. Yeah, this was the southern side scrap that I was talking about, but I tell you what, there is damage coming out from everyone at the moment who are on the south. Dreamfire trying to rescue and will rescue, because Roy going hard oh with God. the R301 and make sure he helps his teammates as best as he can. Team Singularity eliminated, deleted, but now Roy and 3MZ have to do what they can to try and survive the onslaught. The fight breaks out finally between Le Cite de France and NRG. Nathan, through the smoke, through the flames, manages to survive. Area 310 in the meantime, gone. Dreamfire have been eliminated as well on that southern side, but NRG still having to deal with Le Cite de France. Well, and also we see Jay Ling's getting involved as well. Oh, Nathan's gone down. Finally, Le Cite de France will fall. Gold Rares will be good enough, though, for NRG to get up and be ready to fight. They have the Dark Veil down as well, which means that they won't be able to be pushed. As LG now on this southern side find themselves under a little bit of pressure. Yanya has fallen, but Riddle Order will be eliminated. We're down to our final nine teams now as everybody tries to enter the wall. Yeah, not over yet on the southern side, but also still scraps happening on the northern side. NRG down to two. Jay Lings are involved in this one. J and W with noises have gone down into two versus one. Oh! Making it a one versus one. Nathan still alive. Nathan, all up to you for NRG fans here. Trying to escape, trying to survive. LG Shivas have gone down in the meantime.
we have eight squads remaining as Jaylings fall as well. SAF down to one, could be going back up to two though. This is NRG's chance to get a res as well if they would like. There's been a lot of reses that have happened, maybe under people's noses at times. Well, this is the southern side. This is Black Hand and Iron Blood Gaming, but I want to talk about 100 Thieves. We set it up perfectly. The story is there for them. They need a win more than anyone in this lobby at the moment. They are bang center zone. They have the only building in where this zone is going to be ending. Coming all the way from Antana as well. They've done very well to ensure that they hold the building. There they are. And they're on top of it as well. It's always nice to be on top of it and have that confidence that you don't feel like teams are going to push up on you enough. If you kind of hunker down and you hold the bottom of the building, it can be a little bit frustrating. Teams can walk up on you, but now Iron Blood Gaming are getting in this fight versus Black Hat. This is the southern side once again, just outside of the wall. Can't get the Barry Potter sick. He has to go in now, but you think it's just a matter of time for Iron Blood. They will be eliminated. And surprise, surprise, it's Black Hat back in the fight once again and back into the top six. Black Hat with 30 points. I mean, they're really putting themselves in the perfect position for that winner's bracket. An incredible opening two games from them. Now we look back towards where 100 Thieves are, holding center zone, trying to keep out the likes of SAF and the remainder of NRG. But the real threat to 100 Thieves is Black Hand and, I'll say it, Kick, still alive on the northwest side of Wall. Interesting thing for 100 Thieves is almost carbon copy of what we were talking about in the last game. They control the height at just the right time. All of the other buildings are now going to be eliminated. The height from those as that zone starts to close. Finally, NRG are eliminated. Nathan managed to rat out to a top sixth position as now we see 100 Thieves with the L-Star in the hands of Onmu looking to pick up some kills off of the respawners. Well, welcome back to the game and welcome back from the skies, but can you get anything to work with? No one desperate to jump on it in the moment because those who are still alive, either they are down to just a two or they're in one of the commanding positions in this final circle. In 23 seconds, ring five closes and that means E6, Kick and SAF all have to move. The calm before the storm here. All of the southern side has now been dealt with. Black Hand were the last survivors from that scuffle that went down. I say scuffle. It's kind of like an underselling of it. It was about 10 teams who tried to force their way into zone. Black Hand are the winners, and now they take the building below 100 Thieves. But you can also hear the E6 fans starting to pick up the volume a little bit here in Birmingham, because Slayers and K Swinney are still involved in this endgame. Oh, but E6 did excellently to hold this building earlier and then still escape with their lives, at least two of them which gives them still a chance, a slim chance at that in this final circle. But we've seen games being won by two players plenty of times before and even at this tournament. Remember, NRG did it earlier on yesterday. But 100 Thieves still hold one of the prime positions. Kick now arriving from the northwest. SAF are also pushing in as E6 are forcing themselves up this ramp. Looking across the composition, 100 Thieves scoring on the Gibby. This could be big as the zone maybe starts to pull away from the building. We go back to the old Gibby meta. If you can be the one team to throw your bubble out and create some false cover, then you can survive a little bit longer. Case Winnie doing damage with that Kraber. Nine shots to work with. He can influence this final lobby hugely. And we've seen plenty of highlight reels with Case Winnie popping off with the Kraber as well. So that kind of adds an extra half a player to E6 here. So maybe it's not a two man, but it suddenly becomes two and a half. 100 Thieves, though, they just need to make sure that they are checking every angle, trying to be as big as possible, laying down damage when they're able to. As I say that, Scurry does spot one underneath them. You mentioned the calm before the storm. It's all going to explode in about 30 seconds when suddenly E6 are going to be forced in. Kick are going to be forced in. Kick Black Hand and 100 Thieves will have to leave this building as well. It's going to end just outside of the building on top of the ledge. You can see here the kicker aware of the E6 players' positions as well. They're trying to swing out. They're trying to do some damage on the cross to make them easy kills for the likes of Black Hand and Hunter Thieves up on that high ground. That will then clear the space for them to be center zone. And it looks like they want to take this fight kick. You can see they're thinking about throwing the Dark Veil down, cutting the zone in half and taking this fight early to then allow the rest of the lobby to do the damage, them to reset and then be involved in that end game. I mean, when you look at where the circle's finishing, Kick are closest to it at the moment. And I like the position. They've got the wall to work with. They can kind of use it as a head glitch as well if they get pushed. A longbow just to try and take out any players that are going to be arriving from a distance. Kick in a fantastic position at the moment, but 100 Thieves still have that height. Views of not having too much of an impact, you can see. Now E6 are going to be forced by the zone. They're going to be flushed out. But if Case Winnie can hit one shot, 
with the Kraber in his hands after popping this battery. Maybe he can find somewhere to play, or maybe it's going to be a respawn beacon and a little bit of concrete that keeps E6 alive here. E6 just desperate to draw attention elsewhere, as we see in the kill feed. Suddenly that attention has been dragged away from them. Vaxlon gets the open. There are 100 thieves showing what they can do from that high ground. And now here comes all the ultimates. Black Hole goes down to try and catch out E6, but they are able to destroy it. Still a two here, E6. Hakus going down might force them out from the high ground, but they return to their little hidey hole once more. Parkour. K Sweeney now popping a few cells to see if he can be full shields. Black Hand still fully alive, by the way. Peace and Spikes are going to chip away at the armor, but that one's not going to quite connect. You can see the Black Hand are more than aware of the position coming in. Jinx just trying to stay alive as well, as eventually 100 Thieves are going to have to leave this building. But Black Hand are right underneath them. They're very conscious of where they might be, and the Watson fences could prove to be annoying to them. Here's the bubble. The bubble goes down. That's going to protect them from the bombardment. And also, Scurry on the MK. He's got the PK, and he might be saying goodnight to some of these players in front of him. One, two, three shots connect, and now here comes the bombardment. will go down. There's 100 Thieves. They have taken a lot of damage here. E6 get eliminated. Kick and Black Hand are the two favorites here. Oh, look at the damage coming in from the defensive bombardment. It's huge. It's almost game changing. Here. 100 Thieves saying that Jimmy still lives here. Kick eliminated. Scurry and Vaxalon to close things out to 1v1. Vaxalon will win it. Black Hand come out on top. And Black Hand steal it away. They were underneath 100 Thieves for so long and they were just trying to take space. Watson fences down. Walk forward a little bit, more Watson fences down, we walk a little bit more, and then suddenly they use that gen to keep any sort of grenades away, and then when the Dark Veil arrived, Black Hand just hid themselves away for long enough where they could engage a little bit later than everyone else. I've got to say, it was almost a surprise to me to see Black Hand jumping up with that Champion's Banner. It felt like 100 Thieves had it, they had armor, they looked like they were going to take it home. We'll have to, of course, see what happened from the Black Hand point of view, but what a run this has been by Black Hand. We talked about how they won that battle of the south side of the zone. They had no right almost to get into wall with how many teams were stacked up, but they came out of it. They were the sole survivors, having got into that building as well. Wow, 13 kills to go alongside it. Black Hand had to work hard. It was really a difficult final circle to navigate, especially with, I think it was a member of SAF that was still alive ratting out in the corner that caught the two teams coming out of the building a little bit off guard there because bubble goes down and 100 thieves are looking out and saying why can we see four people looking at us here what if they got an extra player to work with well that's what happens with a sealess meta you can rat out you can have a player that survives and they can make a big difference well this is going to be the final circle from the pov of black hand so we can see exactly how they played it and we were talking about the defensive bombardment how it did so much damage well maybe that watson gen was a big part of why they survived so long. Yeah, when we saw the Rolling Thunder and the Bombardment go down, you just assume everyone is taking a lot of damage, but the Gen protected them for so long. They see the bubble. They've got this wall to work with here, and this is when I think the solo from SAF at least distracted 100 Thieves for a short amount of time, and it allowed Black Hand to move into the circle and gain a position. But also, look at the damage that is not being taken by K. Avoiding as much as he can and then getting into the fight late. Yeah, you can see, though, they're down to two at this point. Strafing Flame is down. And 100 Thieves at this point, they were still in a pretty good position. So we'll have to see what happens. And yes, look at this. It's Flaskit who stays alive in that end game and somehow or other manages to sneak up behind the remaining players of 100 Thieves to clean them up. And a 25-point bomb coming in for Blackhand. I mean, we were talking about how they've had an impressive performance, Dan. That might actually push them into a points position where they might be in that winner's side of the bracket. Oh, yeah, they will be in the winner's bracket for sure. That guarantees it. What we're looking at now with Black Hand is, can they be at the very top when we get into the winner's bracket? They're looking at trying to top this whole thing, let alone just try and qualify, right? They're looking to try and be up there with the Dizzy Heights, where Dark Zero were residing, where Dreamfire have been as well. And even though you're not going to get you know, a huge advantage from being that first place team moving into the winner's bracket, think about that confidence to say we were the best team in the group stages. Other notable performances coming in in that match we just saw. 100 Thieves, 14 points for them. We also saw E6 get a good amount of eliminations, being in a position to pick up some placement points as well. At the other end of the tables, once again, quiet for Exit, quiet for Pioneers, and even more quiet for Ascend. Yeah, for Ascend, uh... Clearly, contesting isn't going particularly well for them. They moved very quickly, so they didn't have much to work with. 
and Moist. I mentioned it right when they got eliminated first. They are still searching for those points to try and get into that area of confidence of around 90 plus points. They started the day on 73, so they're still looking for a game to try and work with here. Yeah, coming into this group, Moist were in 16th position, holding down one of those winner's bracket places. But if they go slow through this group, they're going to have to watch the final two groups going against each other. With, shall we say, some trepidation and nerves for sure. Match two results on your screen. Here's some of the stats. So Black Hand, after a second place finish in match number one, now find themselves on top instead. But it was the two teams who were holding on to that building for quite some time. It was 100 Thieves who were on top of it. Black Hand then arrived and went underneath them. And they just were able to wait things out. But in what was a very bizarre final circle, really, that last fight, I'm not even sure he did any damage to that final player. I think it might have been ring damage that finished off 100 Thieves in the end. But I'll have to see it back from 100 Thieves' point of view yet again. But Black Hand proving that they are real competitors here in Birmingham. Just as people start to feel comfortable, it's one more map of Stormpoint to go through before we change things up once more and head over to World's Edge, where I'm sure some teams, as we always know, would prefer to see. Some teams would be like, hey, can we just play the last three on Stormpoint? Because we're feeling pretty good. But I want to give the spotlight, quite rightly so, to the winners of our last game, Black Hand, because that was not only an impressive final zone from them, a final circle, how they managed to navigate it, but my goodness, did they have a tough rotate, and this is what it looks like after two games. Yeah, Black Hand with 43, uh, just everything they could have asked for. They didn't even need much to get into the winner's bracket after their performances yesterday, but I think showing this consistency in every single set puts them up there in that conversation as well. A team that not only can get to winner's bracket, but start to even think about the Dizzy Heights of Grand Finals. So hats off to Black Hand and how they've been. They just can't allow this performance to start dropping, right? You don't want to peak too early, so you need to make sure you match this now. Yeah, I agree with you on that 100%. And now you're looking down the leaderboards a little bit. LG Shivas going about picking up some consistent points. Been some pretty rough zones for them, you would have to say, as they drop down at Fish Farms on Storepoint. Had to rotate up to the north twice in two games. Kick Esports, 18 points for them, which certainly is going to boost their points so well after day number one. Elsewhere, you're looking at the likes of Jaylings, not able to put together as good a second game as the first, but that first game certainly carried them over here. Yeah, and I mean, Kick actually getting a chance now because they're not contesting. They are getting to these final circles and all right, 18 points across two, double that 36, uh, there's still a chance, right? Even though Kick are dead last at the moment coming into this set, if they were to find, you know, 60 odd points after these six matches, there's no reason why they couldn't call themselves a winner's bracket team. That's how close everything kind of is from like 15th down all the way to the bottom. Yeah, it really is so tight on the, uh, the overall leaderboards at the moment. And we'll try our best to kind of follow those stories of the bubble teams, who's gonna be on the verge of qualifying for that winner's side of the bracket as we head into bracket play tomorrow. And of course, who's gonna have to fight their way through that elimination side, Dan? Because we know better than anyone how tough it is to play match after match after match to fall Force your way into Sunday and the pressure that just ramps up every single series and game that goes past. Yeah, you're going to have to play a lot of Apex Legends if you find yourself in that elimination bracket and want to be in the grand finals on Sunday, which of course everyone wants to be. You want to have that chance to play on the main stage at the biggest tournament of the year, the biggest tournament of Apex Legends so far. Two million dollars up for grabs. Incredible prize pool. Yeah, it's going to be so many people watching and understandably so when we get to that finals on Sunday. But of course, we've got to find out who the 20 teams are going to be in that finals lobby. I can't answer that question for you. That's all I'm going to say to that. Did he say, can I have a date with Fun FPS or I have I a date? I combined the two signs there and I just thought he said, can I have a beer? Yes, it looked can. like it said, I have a date with Fun FPS. And I'll tell you what, fair enough to you. Fun is a funny man. We learned that as well That's yesterday. True. I also feel like this is a conversation I'm uncomfortable having. <laughs> And that's okay. Sometimes you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone, Mark. But we're almost ready to get into the next match here. The players have loaded. They are locked. Usually you would say locked and loaded, but I figured I'd go for it the other way. Oh, you cheeky boy. Yeah, a little bit of a cheeky, cheeky boy. One. Anyway, let's talk about this final game then. Let's talk about the leaderboards. Let's talk about who we need to see performing. Except in quiet so far. We just had a little scan over them. They don't look too worried about what's going on so far in the first two maps because you would say a lot of their heavy lifting was done yesterday with their performance down. it was they already guaranteed themselves winners bracket it, there's no chance that they would fall out of it now so i think they can kind of relax they can take it easy uh, i do think they were unlucky to be eliminated in that match number two i think they were caught off guard by another rat again lack of seer means rats are going to exist and they can very much ruin your game 
but I'm all for it. I'm all for rats in the LGS. It makes it very exciting when you do see a player just come out of nowhere who's hiding in one of those nooks and crannies. You saw the legend select going down. I mean, pretty similar compositions across the board. No one going for any drastic changes at the moment. The key differences that I'm seeing across compositions in general is just having that Bloodhound. Because we don't have Seer, teams are not using the Survey Beacons, but a Bloodhound will allow you to use that Survey Beacon, which just gives you that extra bit of information if you don't have a ring console to work with. Yeah, also no Digi in the Crafter until Saturday, I believe. So you can kind of use the, the scan to be the aggressor when you see those Bangalore smokes going down, as we see Bangalore being pretty much the one pick that everyone has kind of relied on as that entry fragger for their teams here on Stormpoint. But speaking of Stormpoint, the last time we're going to see it between these two groups. We'll drop it back in. Let's get this game out of the way. Do Ascend still continue to go over towards Launchpad? I mean, I guess at this point, your stubborn, your stubbornness and your ego might be the reason why you go down there. Also for Ascend, because they're pretty much guaranteed to be in that winner's bracket, they might just want to get some early fights. They might want some contests just in case they're going to be happening when they get into the winner's bracket. Get used to fighting early. Well, it is going to be the fight once more. And I'll tell you what, in a contest, if you hit a big shot with a no-sight charge rifle, nothing but vibes. You know what really grinds my gears? <laughs> Go on. When someone with... No scope hits me with a charge rifle in a contest, but... I forgot that you hate... I really it do. It really, like, really, gets under really your skin. Really, really grinds my gear. There you go, I'm in 78. That's one way to open things up. Tries to line it up, but does not connect with the second. So Riddle Order, remember, Ascend retreated from this contest in the previous game after losing the first. They just walked, they got in, they got their weapons, and they got out. Interesting to see what the plan of attack is going to be this time around. Lufka's going to collect... The purple armor that was picked up of his teammate Kishera. Kishera is saying, hey, Lufka, you're our roller fragger. You go in and get that purple armor, and you maybe be the one to contest initially and get that entry damage here. But for now, it looks like both teams just kind of calming themselves down, taking their time. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to really take this contest when you don't have to. It's just about taking your time to see if you've got enough loot to progress in the game. But it really does show you how contests can change things. I mean, Ascend just won the previous set, yeah. and now they're on one point after two matches. And, you know, if they were to get eliminated here in match number three, they would be dead last. So it can very much change quickly your fortunes here in the ALGS, and you need to make sure you are prepared for anything. And even though contests sometimes are horrible to watch, but also very fun to watch at times, you need to be prepared for it. But Ascend, as they so often do when they feel like the fight is not going their way or they are at a slight disadvantage, they will make sure they just continue on their rotation. It's intelligent and smart play. Yeah, I mean, you're just going to burn through meds if the fight takes this long. It's just pointless to be involved with it. You see the Kashera, a little bit of a sigh, a little bit of a shake of the head. I think he's, he's as frustrated as anyone if you're an Ascend fan of this uh, contest going down, but they do get to continue on their merry way. But Nick does give us an opportunity now to talk about Zone Dam, where we're expecting to go here on Stormpoint. Yeah, so we're going to see a pretty central zone, as you can see on your screen. 100 Thieves, except Blackhand, have already found their way in. This is a difficult one to predict if you don't have a ring console, though. We saw this in the previous set. A lot of kind of similar big circles that people were really struggling to try and find out where it's going to be. But if you do have ring console information, it's far easier to try and make your rotation. 100 Thieves in a pretty good spot as well, although NRG are overlooking them at the moment. It might be interesting to see if NRG and 100 Thieves have a little bit of a scuffle here, but look how quickly everyone is rotating. It was a perfect image of the overhead to just show how quickly people were arriving. It felt like five, six, seven teams almost arrived at the exact same moment. Yeah, a lot of the POIs had ring consoles to work with. You just hope if you're one of the Bloodhound teams, that if you didn't get a ring console, you've got a survey beacon at least, so you can get that info a little bit later. As you can see now, maybe a push coming in from the Pioneers over towards NRG. NRG get good damage though, you can see that already. And NRG want to hold, they want to hold the line. I tell you what, that Horizon mark, oh, must be so good, but no, they destroy it almost immediately. So NRG have inve invested into their ultimates, into their abilities, cannot pre prevent KCP from taking that bottom floor. And with the amount of teams that have made their way to these buildings, you can see what a priority is going to be and how big this fight could be for either team if they're able to win it over the other. NRG will still look to try and poke and prod, try and gain that information. Nathan just sliding out there to check that no one was trying to push them from the stairs. But it looks like maybe they might be able to reside together. You can see 100 Thieves also there. I did see in the kill feed as well, Jade Lings might have lost one. There were a couple 
players that were having a fight against each other, and this is the fight I was talking about. So Jay Lynx with a two. Unfortunately, go down to just a one, and it's very quickly could turn into a zero. 2v1 at the moment. It's going to be, like you say, a 2v0. It's Jay Lynx after a immaculate game number one. Barely pick up a point in the next two. FC Destroy, though, you can see this third party's on the horizon. It's going to be difficult to get a res at this point, but they do have the Newcastle who could just drag them back to their feet if required. Just so many teams in this area that rotated quickly. They're all fighting for prime positions at the moment. The kill feed again is starting to pop off as Pioneers did eventually go down. It was 100 Thieves in the end who took them. So they did NRG a favor, oh. but are they going to continue running through this? Oh, yes, they are. They want to send this. They want to con take control of the building completely. Nathan will be eliminated. Sweet will go down as well. And NRG find themselves as a one and struggling after such a quick rotate. And even though that's frustrating for NLG, they were in a relatively good position at 91 points coming into this, so they probably only need a few to put themselves in that winner's bracket, we think. For 100 Thieves, though, it has to be a really big set. And getting into that final circle last time, finishing in second place, it does poise them in a position where they can start to believe now that, okay, this is achievable in this set. Well, look at this, exit. They're involved in this fight once more as well. FC destroyed, will we take it out from behind, though? And that will be them eliminated too. Now Ascend, who have had a rough start with this contest, find themselves having to find themselves. Big damage coming in, but not enough for Kashira to stay on his feet. Lufgar looking to clean things up at the moment, but he will go down as well. And Ascend will fall once more early on in the game here on Stormpoint. I mean, LG Chivas are such a good fighting team. I love being able to watch their POV, and they held so strong there against Ascend. The angles they took were perfect. The bait and switch, like Ascend got so much damage on one player, but then that player would disappear, and suddenly two more would appear from LG Chivas to make sure that they followed up with the damage. Kick gets eliminated. We're now down to 15 squads. Well, news on where that zone's going to be going. It is pulling a little bit more south than what we just saw a few moments ago. LG are going to be approaching it from the eastern side of the zone. Team Singularity, by the way, is still over at Barometer, well outside of where the action is going down. And this is kind of the remnants of the scrap we saw taking place a little bit earlier. FC Destroy, we saw fall here. Of course, we saw Jaylings fall and Exit moving in to pick up those positions. NRG are eliminated as Onyx Esports will find the final kill onto Guild. So Dreamfire arriving from the west here, and they're not the only teams. There's a lot of trouble. Just oh, pass, that's a banger! Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, as now we can see Dreamfire push it. Send in the sandwich! The juice of grenade, Black Hand eliminated in the meantime, but can Dreamfire clutch up now? That's the question, oh. breaks the shield. It's all up to Roy, can you clutch up for your team? Yes, he can! Dreamfire win the fight, and it was all down to the juice of nade. Just being careful now, our Dreamfire. Roy just checking his surroundings. Are we okay? Can I get the revives? Yes, you can. It was the grenade that teed them up, but it was Roy that finished them off. And now we're going to see Dreamfire carry on through here. And they should be able to reset comfortably. Iron Blood Gaming, oh. no! I said they might be able to, but Iron Blood Gaming, they're in the area now. This is terrible news for Dreamfire. They're having a look. They're having a poke and a prod. It was Exit actually who got that initial knock from a distance. Peter has gone down once more. As you can see, Iron Blood Gaming, they smell blood in the water at the moment. They'll be able to finish off the knock, and after a very, very strong team fight initially, they just couldn't reset in time. By the way, that was a ridiculous distance, which X had just got the knock onto Dreamfire. That was an angle of all angles, and that is going to really annoy Dreamfire. But that's what we love. We love teams annoying one another because that just sets us up when we get into winner's bracket. When you get into teams finding themselves on rotations, you might start to see some uh, death boxes being shot a little bit later on. But Onik, they've got that charge rifle to just try and be a nuisance from a distance as well. As we say in England, Dan, we love a bit of beef. We do love a little bit of beef. We love a bit of beef between the teams. Onik Esports, northern side of the zone at the moment. Charge rifle not quite connecting, but as I have previously stated, I'm not going to get your opinion on it, Dan, because I know it makes you feel extremely anxious when you see this weapon. You only have to hit one, and all of a sudden, it's over. Just get red faced all right, okay, thinking about it. it. Blood rushes, sorry. You also said, okay, just leave as it. we say in England, like we're not in England, by the way. Did you forget that we were in England? We're a worldwide audience That's these true. days. That's true. We're in Birmingham. The heart of I know, England. I know where we are, <laughs> don't worry. Birmingham, right? The cool. heart of All right, England. Let's talk about the zone. It has shifted a little bit to the south here. Riddle order bang inside of it at the moment. 100 Thieves will be safe inside of the compound. And having won that fight a little bit earlier on against NRG, 
and cleaning up KCP as well. They can now split hold these two buildings. So they have so much real estate to play with, but you know the likes of Exit and Onik are gonna see that as well. If they can get the information somehow or other by scouting what 100 Thieves are doing right now, they will be able to maybe press one of those buildings to take it off them. Quite like the position of LG Chivas as well, arriving from the Southeast. They now will hold the, the entirety of the Southeast side. As long as they don't get pressed by the likes of E6 and Area 310 when they arrive from the North, if they can hold them out and force them the other way around that mountain, then LG Chivas, will be, they'll be in a really good position with where this circle's pulling. You also saw Riddle Order and 100 Thieves were kind of center zone they should be able to hold out the teams that are arriving from the north. So those will be the three teams I'd be looking out for. Yeah. Run, Roy. Run, Roy. Run, Roy. Keep going. Oh, yeah, you need to keep going. They're on the hunt. Dark Veil goes down to give run, them that Roy. extra little bit of protection. Run, Roy, run. The next title of the ALGS Global Series. Oh, no. Um, you are grass, Roy. That's... I believe you are grass. It's not the easiest grass to blend in with, I will say. Purple armor will help. <laughs> but it looks like maybe they've given up on the chase, and you don't really want to go th chasing through Jurassic Park. For you don't want to chase reasons. Roy, because he'll just one clip you. That is also a concern. But Dreamfire staying alive. Remember, they were second overall coming into this set. And even though they haven't really caught fire as of yet, they only need an average amount of points to put them really at the top of the leaderboard going into the final set of the day. Oh no. Leave him alone, Prowlers. Leave him alone! Oh, they give it away Leave position. him alone! Just let Roy live. We'll check back in later, make sure he's okay, but at the moment he's, he's not a, okay. He's having an adventure over at Jurassic Park. He's just been eliminated, unfortunately, and those... It's not his fault. It's the, it's the Prowler's fault. The Prowlers were hungry, what can we say? So Dreamfire, go down. As again, it's very calm across Stormpoint. I remember once upon a time when Stormpoint was constant, hectic action. But now in this final match here on Stormpoint, in match number three, points so important to try and pick up. SAF, they're gonna have to move in 10 seconds. And it's about where you wanna go here. They know there's one team ahead of them, that's Xset. But if they go to the left, Element 6 are also gonna be waiting. Midlord are the only team within zone at this point. Under Thieves closest to it. And when I say zone, I mean where the end zone is going to be. But for now, LG are going to sneak their way in. Iron Blood Gaming, they have to fight their way through, though, and it's going to be Team Singularity who are on the other side of this wall. They will be able to coexist for some time. But for Iron Blood Gaming, opening damage here, you have to take advantage of it. If you get damage down and you have the chance to push them back, you need to take it. I think Iron Blood Gaming have been another surprise this tournament. And we've seen a few teams that maybe were lackluster at previous playoffs, but the World Championship seem to be stepping up when you would at least expect it. They were dominating yesterday, and they're looking to try and do more of the same here just outside of Jurassic Park. Iron Blood Gaming trying to keep that pressure on. Smokes are going down as well. No scan for the moment for the Bloodhound. Looking at the kill feed though, and you can see that LG are taking a little bit of a fight, and also you can see that Exer have been joined by E6 on the low ground. Scan comes in, LG Shivas have been eliminated in the meantime. Oh, oh Slayers! Answering prayers here with these sprays. Exer go down. E6 show why they're still competitors, but unfortunately, out of the frying pan, into the fire. You've got to try and hold. It's a two versus three. It's Riddle Order getting aggressive on them. And surely there's no way that E6 survive this, even though try as they might, Red Lord just have too much players. Pretty sure his case when he's left on his own on the fuse. One tappy. Should be another kill for him. Element six are eliminated, even with Slayers pulling off a pretty wild solo play, it felt like to take Exit out of this game. The winners of the Northern Battle present themselves to us all. Iron Blood Gaming now being forced to make this push through the Jurassic. This is what we talked about at the moment, or well, just a few moments ago, I should say. Yuku's going to go in here. They're trying to sneak that res, maybe trying to fake it out a little bit. And all of a sudden, Team Singularity rely on Elysium, and he can't get the job done. But SAF are there as well, so Iron Blood Gaming go down, and SAF win the battle of Jurassic Park. So we're down to six squads. And I tell you what, you know we were mentioning that central zone, and we were talking about the teams that were there. Well, it's actually Area 310 that now find themselves in the best position on the map. Riddle Order at 100 Thieves had to push somewhat north. 
on Inc Esports and Moist also in the area to try and steal away a victory, maybe. But in seven seconds, this round's going to close, and there's only one team in that circle, so all the other five are going to be scrapping against one another as they move. One team who's got a really good walk-in is Starfire Esports. Having won that battle of Jurassic, though, they're going to have a pretty much a free walk-in on Esports. The solo is eliminated as we find ourselves now with just five squads remaining in this lobby. I mean, I struggle to walk and talk, let alone run and gun, but that's what all of these teams are going to have to do here. Slide down any hill you can to try and get a little bit of a speed boost as you input any damage possible to anyone you can see, but this is where the Dark Veils now come in handy. Ultimates, you kind of want to save them for the final circle, but because this is so unpredictable, anyone's using everything at the moment just to try and get into this circle. Moist Esports trying to force their way in. Start a fight, going to be their closest competition, though. Disruptor rounds are going to be on that alternator, no, and that's going to shred away at shields and certainly create opening damage. Look, 100 Thieves, though, they're stuck behind this tree and they are being focus fired, but they do have the Gibraltar. That's going to allow them momentarily to reset, but can they get into a position here to escape the bubble afterwards? The black hole's going to go down on the outside of it, and now 100 Thieves are just meeting the grinder. What a big moment this could be for Moist. Remember, they are so close to getting towards a toe order. They consider themselves a chance for the winner's bracket, but now Wopsy, the last remaining player, 100 Thieves go down, four squads remaining, but remember there are weak squads as Moister down to just one. I talked about the walk-in for start of fight, they have this side of the zone to themselves and now they're in a position to clean up some kills, clean up some damage and most importantly command space in this final zone. This could be a big win for them if they could keep their cool, keep their composure and convert. Well they still have to go across the water though and Area 310 are holding the beachfront as it were. Riddle Order are the other team that could maybe compete from this northern side because Moist, as a one, you'd imagine, will get sniffed out eventually. Ulti would do as best as he can to try and survive and avoid any sort of action. Look at the position here of Area 310, like, right on top of that rock. They're going to have the height for the longest time. Uh oh. We'll see. Will be eliminated as Jinxie takes him down. Three squads remaining now, the solo is dealt with. Well, at least now we get a straight three versus three versus uh -oh. three. No rats to be a pain in the backside here, but Area 310, not only have they got the position on the map, but they also have this Kraber. Lemon as a caustic as well, could be a huge influence in this final circle. As soon as that Nox grenade goes down, everyone's going to struggle not only to keep their health healthy, but also struggle to see. Well, when life gives you Lemon and a Kraber, we're going to have to see if he can make lemonade out of the rest of the lobby. For now, though, it's going to be the vault. Frag grenade's going to be rolled forward. Dark Veil goes down and still come on in this side of the zone is Area 310. They have the Caustic, and we all know that Caustic in end zone can be so, so devastating. Area 310, we're in 34th position coming into this one on 32 points. So they need a big old game here to give themselves any chance of getting into that winner's bracket. But this is their best chance, if ever, Rid Lord are playing the height very well here and also avoiding SAF at the moment. It really depends where SAF go here. If SAF jump on Area 310, then maybe there's a chance for Rid Lord. I don't think they have a chance here. Unfortunately, SAF, they just get sandwiched into a corner. They're going to be cleaned up pretty much without taking damage here, Area 310, but they have given up the height and now you're seeing they lose one player. Starfight still have one player alive as well and Lemon with the Craven needs to hit the shot, but he whiffs. What an opportunity that was to kind of maybe set things straight and keep things alive for Area 310. Still a chance with the nose scope. Misses that one. Lemon surely going to get pressed and surely will go down here as Rid Lauder now dominate this final circle. It's Miak now who at least gets them into a top two position. Rid Lauder now should be able to clean this game up. They are dressed in red and they also could call themselves champions. Commanding that high ground in the end game. And we're going to see a few moves on the main stage. The Riddle win comes through, and we had a team who was in 39th in Riddle order, and 34th in 310 going up against each other in that final circle, which just proves it's not over until it's over. As the Riddle order wave comes through, and Riddle order now give themselves a chance. It's still, this is the crazy thing, yeah. right? Is that they can still find themselves in the winner's bracket. If they can replicate that game again on World's Edge, they might just find themselves doing the unthinkable with a comeback here in their final set. Still three games of Apex to go for them. And that's a lot of Apex and that's a lot of points to be picked up by Riddle Order. Getting that win halfway through a set is massive for them.
just to show that they can do it, just to show that they can put big games on the board. And we'll have to see if they can continue with that momentum as we head over to World's Edge. And as I, uh, I mean, I thought it was going to happen in that final circle. Kills. It wow. was all down to what SAF did. And because SAF rotated around towards 310, it meant that Riddle Order just kind of waited for that damage to happen. But they chose the high ground. Riddle Order were very particular about the position that they played. Sorry, I was just, I, I got locked in then. It felt like it was, a, it was a staring contest for a short while. But I think that we will be delighted to see any team, especially those who are down at the bottom half of the leaderboards, just showing that things are going to be a little bit different in this set and they're not going to be pushovers and they are going to give themselves a chance to maybe get in that winner's bracket. What's very interesting is that the first three games that we've seen, you know, you look at the top of the leaderboards, you look at some of the big names in this lobby, been pretty quiet. However, the teams who are maybe have something more to play for are really starting to come out of the woodwork here and put those points on the board. I'm looking across, you know, we, we wrote down a list of teams we're keeping our eyes on throughout this. You look at Onyx, they've had some pretty good performances. 100 Thieves, that game that they got second place in. Jaylings with a win. KCP with some good placings. It kind of just makes it more interesting as we head over to World's Edge. That it's not just one of the bubble teams who's stepping forward and saying, hey, we want to go through to the winner side of this bracket. It's all of them who have had their moments. Yeah, and the scary thing is, even though we can have a rough number in our head, as can the players of, you know what, 92 to 100, it's not guaranteed. It's not mathematically guaranteed until we get into that final set and we know where people are. Well, one team who's actually watching at the moment and not involved in this group is Alliance. And Peeps is down at the Alliance booth. What have you got for us? What up, everybody? I'm We The People. We are live here in Birmingham, UK, at the Alliance booth at Resorts World Arena, all right? So we got a lot of team booths here, but Alliance might have one of the coolest ones here. So you got all sorts of merch, jerseys, T-shirts, but one of the sickest things, they have exclusive ALGS merch that you can't get anywhere else, all right? So if you got some Alliance fans that are friends at home, you got to get them some merch or they're not going to be your friend anymore, all right? But one of the coolest things that you could do here at the booth is you could actually 1v1 Wives, who is one of the greatest players of Apex in the entire world, all right? And if you win, and that's a big if, you get to, wait, you get to walk away with some of these Razer products here. So I'm going to 1v1 them right now. Let's see what happens. Yeah, let's go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, my. GG's, man. And listen, that's what happens when you're a season 17 number one pred going up against one of the best in the world. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but you'll never know if you don't come check out the Alliance booth here at ALGS Championship in Birmingham, UK. we need to go walk around the floor a little bit and check out some of those booths because that looked like way too much fun, Tiff. I don't want to go over there and try to <laughs> chow any of those players. I know my space is right here with my glorious Nessies. This is where I will remain. I guess smoked. That's like... <laughs> okay, but, but maybe, maybe Bullet can save all of us. Then. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see how we go. <laughs> Well, no, give faith. It a try. no faith. We'll get him up there eventually <laughs> and see how that goes. But of course, make sure you guys are checking out all the cool stuff that you can do here at the Resorts World Arena. We're now halfway through our second to last series of the day. Some really, really strong performances coming out of the first half. And we've got to talk about the final circle because this was a massive moment for Riddle Order here, Bullet. Yeah, look, the way that Riddle played was like super smart. You can kind of see they're sitting up here on the high ground. They're doing damage, but they're not going over, like they're not playing over aggressively. Like you can see they're doing damage, they're putting pressure. They're trying to force the teams into each other without over committing. And you can see this bang ult goes out here and that just forces them into each other. This wrap here was so, so perfect because they managed to capitalize off the damage that they were doing. Like, look, you can see here, Valk does the damage, they get the knock and then they swing in. And this was perfect play. Like they're all coordinated, they're all pushing together and they just jump on that team and kill them straight away. 
You know, it's funny watching how impactful things like Bangalore ult are in these moments, because I remember back when I started playing Apex Legends, I was like, well, I'm just going to play Gibby, because you get instant value out of that ult. And seeing how pros are able to utilize the added pressure that Bangalore ult puts on a team, and how much space you can own for just a few seconds is so impactful. So much so that it turns into a 24-point game. Not bad. Not bad at all. That is the impact that Riddle Order needs here. Now, I saw a little bit of scuffle on the time. Line, not only between Riddle Order and Kashera from Ascend, mm -hmm. because Ooh. Ascend decided to switch up their drop spot thinking of the bracket stages, right? Leaving Sonote Cave and dropping on Launchpad where Riddle Order goes. So Riddle Order's like, hey, yo, and, he's, and Kashera goes, it's nothing personal. But the thing is, Riddle Order came out of a contest to a win with not only that 12 eliminations of 24 points, they could find themselves in the winner's bracket if they keep this up. Yeah, that is a performance that we were looking from them, looking for from them for a while, and they just showed everyone what they are capable of. We heard the casters talking about it as well. That's gonna be a huge boon to their momentum now heading into the next map. Hopefully they're able to maintain that as we see where the rest of our teams fell here. I mean, Jaylings down there at the bottom, but that's not even counting for the fact that heading into that match, they were in seventh, had a really strong start to their World Edge performance here, Dia. And are there any other surprises, though, that jump out at you? Uh, surprises for me, definitely Dreamfire and Black Hand, more because of the way that it happened mm. than anything else. And it was due to some really smart play from other teams that we can talk about a little bit later, I suppose. But uh, Dreamfire getting taken out on a southern rotation from a couple of other squads, Iron Blood, Gla Iron Blood Gaming, as well as Team Singularity. And then Black Hand yeah. getting ooped. They, they, they got jumped on from Area 310, who played this game fantastically. So I, I don't know if we have time, we'll talk more about 310. <laughs> I mean, Black Hand gave themselves a little bit of a cushion, though, mm -hmm. with their first two games worth of a performance. And we'll check where all of the teams are now standing that we've made it through the halfway point of our series. Like we've been saying, obviously, that was the first half. We're going to be switching our maps on over from here. And that could potentially have some implications as far as their performances go as well, Bullet. But like we said, Black Hand at the top, 44 points. Look, we have to talk about Black Hand and their comp. Like, I mean, we were talking about it earlier. They were playing like such a crazy comp, you know. I, they might be one of the only teams to be running. Um, what were they playing? They had uh, Catalyst and who else was? Um, I, I'm, I'm lost. I saw them get ooped and I was watching 3 yeah, they, Sorry, they were playing double controller. And I mean, like, they, I think they're one of Watson. the only teams to be running double controller. Uh. Yes, Cat, Watson, Bang. Yep. Cat, Cat, Watson, Watson Bang. Bang. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, just the way that they're playing with such an off meta comp, like, it's, it's so nice to see. Yeah, and I would love to touch on that, because you think of the wall ending. Specifically, this is the same zone that we had witnessed start a fight esports winning from the rooftop. And unfortunately, Black Hand was down below inside the building, but utilizing the double controller legends. Not only was Catalyst able to reinforce the doors, but they doubled down through the Jenny and fenced it up as well. And, and if you don't have two, of those legends, the, both the Catalyst and the Watson, this doesn't work because they're not only able to prevent getting naded and Gibby ulted, but they're also able to create so much space in an end zone. And it's interesting that we see it play out that yeah. way just because of the impact that cooldowns can have on your late game and how flexible some of these controller legends are. All right, well, now that we saw what happened here, let's give a little bit of love to Riddle Order because obviously they took home the dub, but they took home the dub in style. Like you said, Tiff, they had 12 kills to close this thing out on top of having to deal with that start of the game. So they had a phenomenal performance. A phenomenal performance indeed. I stopped by their merch booth just yesterday and snagged one of the free fans. <laughs> and I was like sitting on it in the green room. I was like, I'm going to bring this up if they win this. And I was like, well, I don't want to jinx them or anything. And then, of course, I forget it here on the desk and what happens, Riddle Order wins. I know a little reverse curse. It was nice watching the way that they approached this game as well, because this game, more than any that we've had so far on Stormpoint, was fully dictated by information. This contest is really exciting, but it turns into getting a beacon scan for Riddle, because they're the ones that actually push Ascend all the way out. That beacon scan turns into a great zone prediction, because the spot that they were in at the end bullet yeah. is only really good if that's where the zone is ending. Otherwise, you have to exit us all the way with the other teams. Yeah, no, and it's, it's crazy how they managed to recover their game, considering they're contested, you know. Yeah. Having a team just randomly jump on you completely throws all your plans out the window and to be able to just come back and kind of reassess the situation and just navigate the game like that it's really impressive to see all right well 
We still have half of the series left to go, obviously. If you guys haven't been following along with us on all of our social media platforms or in our live stream, make sure you're doing that because we have so many more days of competition left in our entire championship, and you don't want to miss a single second of all of that action at Play Apex Esports across our social media. And of course, we've been talking about regional dominance, and we've seen so many of these other regions stepping up to the plate, specifically APAC. They have been dominating. APAC South has been a force to be reckoned with. And we actually had Gino get a chance to sit down with one of our Apex South teams in Moist and see what they attribute their success to. My name is MT. My name is Waltzy. My name is Fussy, and I play for Moist Esports. The main thing that Fussy brings to the team is like confidence. Like controller players are just so confident and having a second one makes me and Waltzy both more confident because we know no matter what fight we take, he's just gonna do damage or just he might just one, open the fight by one clipping someone or something like that. And it's just so easy to be confident with that extra firepower on the team. Fussy comes in, just another top tier controller player and can hold his own. He's like shown it at previous lands. The boys offered me an opportunity and I said, I'm gonna take it. Uh, they've got a very high chance of winning with this team. Dark Zero gonna dare to push his face now. Here and Dark Moist. Zero, they take each other on head to head. Moist come down from the skies. Are they gonna be able to capitalize on this damage? Zero is the last alive. He will go down. Face trying to hold. Moist just have Waltzy. And all of a sudden, that's all they need. I would say the biggest thing I would bring would be my mental, my confidence and just my overall mental fortitude. I've had to like figure out my role in the team going from like a main fragger on Onik to a support player and like a refragger on Moist. It's just it's been a bit rough, but I mean like we've figured it out. I think we I think we know what we're doing now. You get the other knock on the other side of Bang. Oh! oh called in, the beam coming in from MT. Probably I'd say the discipline gets us to where we are. And that comes mainly from MT, so it's like I feel like if you're disciplined and you like consistently practice and you play the same all the time, then that translates into game. Just by a hair, but it's gonna be up to Kings to do it. It's one worse now with the shield swap. Can he 1v1 on the Waltzy? No, it's Moist who cleans it up. Me personally, I didn't ever get like play different at LAN. I didn't get nervous. I don't know for LAN's like never been different to online tournaments to me. So I don't think it's really factored into it at all. LAN definitely just brings out kind of like a different emotion, different like confidence for me. Online's like cool and all, but being in front of like an audience in like the setting that it is, just that live audience is just something else and just gets me even more locked in. Get hyped, let's make a little bit of noise. We might just have ourselves a winner here. The sixth felt a lot better than the seventh. Going into a finals where you've got 10 seeding points and not making match point is, you know, never, never a good look. So we're still happy, but you know, obviously winning is the goal. So it's like we're never complacent, I guess. We go into it with the idea that we are one of the best teams in the world, we can win, and especially if things go our way, we will win. It's definitely definitely a good feeling to be on like the best team in Apex South, but end of the day, they want the same thing, I want the same thing, is to like win land. Winning Apex South is nice, but I want to win the world. Esports, they need the energy right now. They are sitting in the bubble for our top 20 teams to be able to go forward through the it's winners time to bracket for these teams. Genome. It is beautiful to be able to see that passion, but they need to be able to try to continue that going into World's Edge now that we're done with Storm Point. I mean, yeah, Moist want to come into this looking scarier than ever with the double roller set up right. You can actually see uh, Fussy's flexing that uh, snake tattoo for there. I was having a little bit of a chat to him about snakes. Apparently, uh, he kept some snakes at home oh, okay. uh, with his dad up to 10 feet long. So uh, just for any of you out there who are like, no, that doesn't happen in Australia. No, we actually do keep them as snakes occasionally, uh, as pets occasionally. Honestly, that is terrifying, but I respect it. I know I know. sometimes people like to collect like the shed skin too, hang them up mm -hmm. as a trophy. Yep. You know, respect, you know, respect. Not for me personally, I'd be terrified. <laughs> but what I am terrified at the moment is Black Hand after those first two games and their performances, taking the dub on game number two and the double digit KP on top of that. Yeah, they got maybe a little too comfy. And on the other hand, you also love to see a story like Riddle Order where Ascend says, you know what, no disrespect, but we're gonna land on you, give up Cenote Cave, so that way Kick could get a kick out of that one, get some space to work for it, and then end up losing the contest where Riddle Order not only took them out, but mm. took the game on top of it. 
It's the consistency, though, that's important as we transition into World's Edge. Think about some heavy fragging teams, actually. When you talk about team fighting, or rather, teams that are very good at fighting, Moist comes to mind here, and they're struggling a little bit, Gino. What do you think is going on here that Moist could do a little different as we transition into World's Edge? Yeah, I mean, it has been a tough start to the series for them, Vicky. Will they feel more confident uh, over at Overlook than they did it at Command Center? I don't know, honestly. I, I would actually say the Command Center is probably a better POI from them to play from. Uh, and then, you know, you're talking about the other heavy hitting teams there, like Black Hand. Again, they probably want to be getting the majority of their points while they do have access um, to their Storm Point POI dropping over at Stormcatcher. Uh, you know, they really just have to go full on fast rotate now that they're playing from Landslide here. Taking a look at the overhead and where our teams are going to be landing. FC Destroy, Le Chic de France. Mm. That's going to be a 50-50. That's going to be fun to watch off the rip from the dropship. But then overlooking everything else, things seem situated here for now. But things can change like we had seen going into Stormpoint. It was something that had changed right before jumping into that group stage. Yeah, well, I mean, just thinking about the, the sort of stacks and big Mord interaction there. You know, we saw some teams going at it with uh, Optic there. The, uh, yesterday it was. But, you know, I don't think we've had two teams contest while another team's over at stacks as well. So that could create even further chaos here on World's Edge. That'd be nice, because I believe IBG actually ends up landing over by stack. So, you don't end that fight yep. fast enough. Well, that's going to be the inevitable third party that's going to meet you on the other side. And Asia, you know, he was the kill leader going into yesterday, right? Uh, looking to add to those tallies if they can. And we've seen teams be ruthless about that so far at this tournament. If there is a third party within the earshot, they will just barrel over there and try and get in there immediately, which is fun, right? Because when you think about scrims, where a lot of these contests happen for the, the teams vying for those drop spots, uh, it's actually frowned upon to third party them quickly. But when you switch it over to tournament, everything is fair game. Exactly. I, I love how you put that in, especially now that a lot of these teams already know where their points stand and what this sets them up for. Some of these teams have limited games left right now. We're entering game number four to determine where their finishing spots are in the mm. overall standings. I mentioned why Black Hand is so scary with the points that they've already accrued so far. Mm. They're sitting at the very top of the yeah. overall standings across all the teams here in Champs. You look at teams like IBG, the team that could third party that 50-50. I believe they're sitting in 10th in the overall standings. Mm. So teams like this that have these points already noted, that's why we're seeing opportunities where griefing is going to come into place because at this point, you can know which teams have much more comfortable room to work with or teams that are sitting in the bottom end where they really need to work and get not just the dub but the KP hand in hand before we jump into this game. Yeah, I mean, looking at those standings, it looks like there's roughly about eight teams that have sort of made it through to the winner's bracket, mm. most likely so far. Um, some of those other ones, like you mentioned, IBG sitting at 91, just have a little bit to do. They don't need many points, just a few on each of these World's Edge maps here, Vicky, and they will make it through. Yeah, because after this series here, we have groups A versus C. So for B and D, this is the last chance opportunity yeah. for these teams to be able to get those points. Because that's it. There is no other chance beyond these next three games. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, as we talked about, that cutoff will be somewhere probably between 95 and 100. Um, so if you're calling 100 safe, then it is NRG uh, and upwards from there right now. And the overall standings that have made it to triple digits, uh, and you will see them in the winners bracket. It's crazy to see that too, the disparity between the teams that have been so consistent when we take a look at our fans trying to give their energy to Red Order. But it's also the cheering that maybe uh, gives the power up to some of these teams that they need right now, as you can see, showing off our players from middle after taking that dub. With 12 KP, by the way, so far a lot of our winning teams have not only been able to take the dub, from that, those placement points, getting those 12 extra points, but also being able to get the KP that they need. Jay Lee's gonna get double digit KP, and they did get seven nonetheless, so that's something that they desperately needed, as well as Black Hand getting those 13 KP. But Black Hand also being one of the more consistent teams that we have seen thus far hmm. throughout yesterday into today. Yeah, I mean, we were even having a chat with Graceful back in the green room just before we came up here for this cast, Vicky, and he was saying <laughs> he considers them as, uh, you know, one of the more top teams right now. <laughs> Man, Riddle must have, like, 
some of the most uh, some of the most personality out of any teams here. Ha, uh, but long oh, talking about personality, you can't go past Nasky either. You're you're literally panning over all these players that are so expressive, excited. Nasky, of course. Oh. Any one of those veterans that come to mind, but it looks like we got the countdown now on the bottom right hand screen. And we are just getting set up to dive into this fourth game. Once again, thank you guys so much for your patience. But even more exciting, Stormway into World's Edge. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, look at this couple of crypto players here. Noise is actually joining Kishera on that pick. Skuri has been bringing it back with um, the Gibraltar as well. Maybe even seeing that out of FC Destroy. Yeah, we saw the you over there. Things have shifted around a little bit, but let's not waste any more time. We are already in the dropship. Let's get this game rolling. Our first game on World's Edge between our groups B and C. Crowd getting excited. And once again, keep your eyes on that early 50-50 between FC Destroy and Le Cite de France. But since we are starting off from the north side of the map, we get to see where all of our teams in the north side of World's Edge get to situate themselves first. Moist obviously going to Overlook. They got nice loot to work with on top of the Crafter, the Ring console, and the Survey Beacon on top of that. And this is the 50-50 that we're mentioning. Here's Lucita de France already moving up to Harvester. Yeah, okay, okay. so I don't know if Ascend were actually uh, you know, expecting this, because we did have Lucita de France over at Big Maud. Um, that was the expectation, at least from good old Sven's maps. Um, but it looks like it's going to be the Harvester Contest. I mean, we've seen so much of it throughout this year. And just as people have come to realize Harvester uh, more and more as that very important and uh, you know, powerful POI, the rotational access that it gives you, um, that's why we're seeing more and more teams drop there. But Ascend, seemingly wanting no part of it. They have tuck tail and run. Kashira said, I got the purple Evo, we took some shots, we are out of there, and they immediately rotate away. But unfortunately, this is what happens when you start shifting some of these POIs around, and uh, you start changing things depending on how the points are looking across the board, and this is your last chance to play in this lobby. This is how things are going to be moving around, and we are seeing a northern circle pool closer to Skyhook and Grandma's building. Yeah, as you can see, it was only the two teams uh, dropping uh, down at Big Mac, uh, Big Maud and Stacks there uh, because uh, we do see LCDF go into Harvester. I'm honestly a little bit confused. Uh, maybe they lost the, uh, the, the, the Drop Master contest. Maybe that's why Ascend went out because at this point, Ascend are at 102 points. They've really got nothing to lose, right? It doesn't matter where you end up in that winner's bracket match. As long as you're there, it's fine. Why not take the fight? Let's say the France landed in the middle, and with the addition of the middle, the Harvester mm, it's important. loot, yeah, you get gold loot basically guaranteed at that point. You have, if it's not a gold shield, it's some type of gold weapon. So they saw that they landed there first, and they had kind of split over to the north side of Harvester where they understand at least they'll get the purple Evo if they can obtain that and then just rotate away with that loot if they can. If it was a surprise to Ascend, sometimes when you're not actually expecting the contest, you do slack off a little bit as Jumpmaster, right? And as you're saying, if that's the case, they don't get the honeypot loot at the bottom of Harvester, and at that point, it becomes very hard to take the contest. You gotta think about your win con, too. If you're gonna be rotating quickly away from Harvester, guess who else is gonna be rotating in that direction? It could be Kick, with, since the, I've already taken an evac tower oh. to rotate to the north. <gasps> Ascend? 100 Thieves on the other side of this, they get... Oh, just tries to get the jump on them from up ahead against 100 Thieves, but while they're taking this fight, there's another team right behind them. I believe it's going to be Area 310, but they're just going to be rotating away from this opportunity. So Ascend have now taken Monument, have now taken the Crafter, and they actually have some room to breathe there because there's no other team other than 100 Thieves who mm. can now re-rotate back into this fight that can poke from, at them from afar, that can get engaged here. you got to be sneaky. you got to be creative when something doesn't go to plan. I like how they started out. The shots under Luka certainly are not what he wanted. It's also nice to note that there is a ring console that Ascend could take advantage of, and since they don't have information, they're running the Watson, that's what they want. And Onyx Esports in the middle of that rotation exiting out from that south side have already found themselves in some trouble. Yeah, and uh, it could be even more trouble for them soon. Kick, as you can see here, just on the southern side of that tunnel, and they could come up to pinch them now between LCDF as well. This is not going to end well, Onik. Completely removed. First team out of this lobby, and it's not going to be the team that went for a 50-50 themselves does get stuck by a knuckle cluster as they rotate away. 
Catalyst wall was called in already. Just in case, you know, it's the insurance policy, just in case I don't know if there's another team up ahead, but they were getting pinned from behind originally, and we have another fight happening on either side with Moist. Yeah, here we go, up on the drill tower, halfway up at least, that's Waltzy there. You can see Moist in a little bit of trouble. And are actually going and there, I gets the stick! <laughs> the perfect use of the gravity lift! Actually crazy, he went all the way up there. Don't know if there was another arc star that was placed in that position, but... The Creeping Barrage come in and he did get knocked, but it doesn't look like maybe it was another Arc Star coming in from the distance. Maybe it hit the knockdown shield? Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of there, why that wouldn't have done more damage and, get, and gotten a knock by itself. Either way, as you can see, um, once you take too much time, we've got other, pe up, other people, other teams, Jailings there, Blackhand also looking on. NRG, man, these spots are so hard to play early on. I do not like this tower as an early game position. That is, I'm so glad you said that. I was about to mention that right afterwards too, because when you rotate here early, unless you have the proper comp, it's going to be very difficult. I mean, in this case, they do have the catalyst. They have the piercing spikes that they can put at their feet. They have the Bangalore and the Bangalore smokes. But then when you have to worry about Diddy threat sometimes oh, there too, yeah. it can be detrimental. Yeah, Newcastle. If yeah. you're a Newcastle team, I could see this being a playable spot early, but I think we are going to see NRG just burn through meds at a rate of knots now. And they don't have a Loba, so... And oh my, there is 30, 30 shots in every corner. Where do you uh, go? Yeah. They have to drop down now. It's inevitable. And they've already used so many meds, giving up that position currently as FC Destroy all the way closer to Overlook, engage on this fight. We saw this earlier too. It was Riddle Order to the north of FC Destroy and IPG looking to get involved as they take their time to rotate into that next circle and play more so by the edge. Yeah, both of these towers attracting a lot of attention on opposite sides of the map here. And yeah, quite a few teams getting involved. It's not really a clean fight on either side. FC Destroy picking up the gold R9. Has that Digi 2, but spread out a little bit. You mentioned the Gibraltar at the very beginning diving into mm. this game. Pinotro was on that Gibby, and now Hammer Drew having oh, no. to play off to the side gets immediately focused on IPG, benefiting the most of this fight as they exit out of this Overlook area. Team Singularity are also looking to get a piece of the pie. Now that the other team has been removed from the height. While well, everyone's in the zone, it does give them a little bit of potential here, but after not seeing anyone, they're going to drop off and try and play it a little bit safer back into zone. Even having to burn the cat wall, you can see all three members have taken quite a bit of damage. Riddle order above them as well, probably on the med kits right now. This next move by IBG. Seeing where the circle's pulling now is going to be important too. If they still want to extend on this fight, tosses out the arc star here and starts rotating around through the low ground. I mean, this is quite a bizarre split here. We've got so many teams clustered into the zone, Skyhook, Northern Tunnels, and then you've actually got a massive concentration of teams over on the east side here. It's a very strange situation. And the cluster doesn't end. If you saw in the corner right there, it's Luminosity who want to get involved in this fight. A little upset that they didn't get an invitation to the party here. You see the EMP ringing out on the side as LG go right behind Riddle Order. IBG in some trouble. Ziggy on the other side has a Digi threat. Start a fight, get eliminated in your feeds here. And Ziggy may just join them in the lobby if he can't get away. Yeah, he's looking for that hint of red in his crosshairs, but he doesn't find it and IBG will go down riddle order we saw them struggling in the zone they've managed to make it in but only just barely and i think at this point it might be the play your life call so that already used the emp and they're still holding that north side by the truck but like you mentioned this cluster over here on the edge of the circle where they have to now rotate in the next 25 seconds it's going to be detrimental to see which of these teams get to those train tracks north of survey camp because that's going to be a nice spot to rotate from considering the fact that moist is already holding those tracks themselves through the tunnel so to make that final rotation to sky is going to be very difficult when you take too long in this fight yeah moist are giving themselves lots of options there up at the top and out of all of these teams on the eastern side here i feel like ascend is probably the one with the most options uh you can see lg Actually clearing up more teams down the bottom there. That's Riddle Auto might have to go even further into the zone. Maybe they can uh, pick up a banner and respawn, but uh, it's going to be a tough ask for them. I'd say Singularity also on their last legs as LG just look up uh, to clean even more kills. I mean, at this point, they've got uh, well, two to their name to start with. But, I mean, geez, this has been a bloodthirsty game. Look, round two closing, we've got 13 squads left. 
And with Ascend taken to the skies, gonna be able to take the high ground right here, close to Epicenter. Try to cut off the other teams that are gonna be rotating from the south side of this fight. So although, yes, they were quick on the rotate, it's about cleaning up the rest of those teams because they have the points already necessary that they've gotten to be comfortable enough to just fight for kills rather than for that placement. Yeah, it definitely has been uh, a struggle to see who gets the, the KP here over towards Overlook. That's uh, really all they're playing for at this point. The, the other 10 teams that we're talking about have just been sitting pretty because honestly, uh, it's the opposite of what you usually see in these Skyhook zones. Admittedly, you know, if you get it directly over Skyhook, everyone's pretty much going to go for a building this time because it's over to the uh, the east of Skyhook. Um, I think that's why we're seeing a little bit more chaos in this lobby, but uh, you know, teams still could have played for those buildings. They don't. They all head over towards Overlook, and it was just a, a constant stream. Where Moist is sitting in currently in the north side of those tunnels is very similar to what Exit does when they hold position, and they don't know if the circle is going to shift yep. to the right or yep. left, so they try to go for a 50-50 spot so that way they could get a better rotation. And oh. same could be said about where Moist positioning is. This is actually going to be pulling towards the rock side of Skyhook on the east side, kind of on the outskirts of those buildings. So the squads that have to exit out of those buildings themselves that have already found some space like Area 310, exit in mm. the middle of the of the area of Skyhook, it's going to be a bloodbath because then you're going to be out in the open for teams like Moist to just shoot at you from the high ground. Yeah, I mean, if you want to try and give Sweet some credit, right, I mean, he called the zone pretty much exactly, yeah. right? That tower is where it is going, but, oh. uh, you know, unfortunately, it's just one of those places where you can't get in there early, and, and unfortunately, NRG got taken out completely, right? So they're not going to be able to uh, take advantage of that. Yeah, Psychop with the Graber. Gravity lift, the Thermite at their feet. Kid is going to get taken down already. 3MZ with the cover fire. Doesn't even have a Digi threat here on his R9, also lacking on some line ammo as well. Taking this fight inside this building, though, is going to be an invitation for third parties to also try to get involved. Fans in the crowd trying to give them their energy here as Zane gets taken out. Exit in oh this fight my. themselves, trying to jump right beyond the knockdown shield, tossing out the nade, open up the door as they try to fight their way through the reinforced catalyst door. Okay, so I think we've got Dreamfire and Exit down the bottom here, and then it was KCP on the second yeah. floor right now. Um, this really is just a wild fight here as, as Exit go, hey, hopefully there's enough chaos around. I'm just going to stick this res because we've got the gold knock, and I may as well go for it. it it's a good option coverage because you throw the gravity lift by the door. You also are able to make sure that the door behind you has already been reinforced at that point, so they're going to be able to get the res around that corner, even with KCP being right there. Another team that's just trying to restabilize here while sharing that second floor. Or eventually, they are going to have to start moving away from this building. And Area 310, once again, is in the area. 100 Thieves neighboring the building next to them. Jaylings in the building to their north. Yeah, Dreamfire is the casualty of that fight. Blackhand uh, uh, probably in the most central position in the map right now as far as the next circle goes. Um, as you can see, playing that trailer a slightly safer option there than playing the top of the tower exit. Now that they've oh, reset, like that. are going to go up against KCP, who are down a member or two. Oh, he had rotated out of there right before they even all wrapped around the corner. But it's about that situational awareness there. Tries to see if he has the opportunity to wrap around. It's the Wraith that's trying to set up a portal here. Oh, no, that's a bad time to be taking that. Area 310 uh, wanted to see what the action was and it immediately regretted it right afterwards. Set up a portal as an open invitation that XS is just going to look at for right now. Not going to take that. May not be safe enough, especially if they haven't assessed the situation. And they see the Kraber in their hand from the window. Okay, over at Survey Camp. Uh, this is sort of the continuation of that Overlook uh, conundrum that we had going on before. So this is going to be Riddle Order versus <laughs> LG uh, version, I don't know, three by this point. Uh, oh, Neasel getting a great angle there through the Thermite and re -peaks it for another crack. Oh, it gets the knock though onto Nizula on the other side. It's Riddle Order, the Seat of Fonts, and Ascend sniffing out. The fight that they missed out on before. It's been 50 years since this fight has been going on, and it's gonna be 50 more. Going in, finally diving into this building. Riddle Order get eliminated. The Seat of Fonts. Oh no. Having some fun as the EMP comes in. The EMP, that signals you know who it is. Ascend on the back end of this. They might not have 
The Bloodhound scans to tell them who's in there, but the EMP would have given them the information. Wow. Do they have enough firepower to take this out? Though Kashera, he tries to get out, but no. The what Graver. a beautiful turnaround from LCD App with a little bit of help from LG. Psychop with the Graver once again until they finally take up the last member of the Cita Fonts that's gonna be at the hands of Yanya as LG now make their rotation. Okay, I feel like we can finally calm down a little <laughs> bit, right? Because essentially all of those Eastern teams, they've sorted it out. LG, you are the winners, congratulations. You only get two players to play the rest of the game with, but hey, you're walking away with 7KP or something like that um, right now in a top 10 position. So. Congratulations to you, all the other teams, uh, unfortunately, are looking on a little bit enviously. And everyone else who decided pl to play zone, they get to start now. But now you're forced to go through the choke point right in front of Moist. I've been holding this position since the beginning yes. of time of this game. So LG playing this out as a duo, already at a disadvantage in terms of the numbers. Teams out exiting out of Skyhook, this is what I was talking about, exiting oh. out of these buildings. You're out in the open. Yes, you have the natural cover of the rock's fence line, but now having to fight with the ring against your back. Black Hand, one of our more consistent teams right now, fighting for their life straight from the flame. Doesn't look at the shield swap, sees that it's already empty. He's gonna be able to pop the shield back for right now as the catwall is blocking to the right. Does look like it's a 2v2 Ooh. at this point. Oh, gets oh. the headshot with the Graver and they'll push straight through the smoke to try and get this final wipe onto Exed here. Easy flash to his head, I guess, here. Exit get taken out, and Waltzy take out Yanyo with the nade. LG Chivas get taken out of the lobby. Five squads left. Moist Esports still will be able to approach this next circle, even if they're not in it, from that slight hilltop of a high ground there in that next choke point that you can see currently. So they've been playing very safe, very uh, conservatively, and that's definitely worked out for them already. The four placement points in hand, as well as a couple of kills. Blackhand is the other one who we're worried about. Um, you can see them up in the top end there. Blackhand, um, they are playing Bangalore, Watson, Catalyst. An interesting composition. That's the Picasso painting that you see painting the entire floor of World's Edge right mm. now with the Watson fences. Made a little S over to the right side. But this also really highlights the difference of play styles that these teams are forced to play with. Moist playing for positioning patiently. They're at risk. That's why they're one of the bubble teams, unlike LG, Ascend, who can play a lot more aggressive to just take fights that they don't have to worry about losing against just in case they get third partied. I mean, I believe they were playing a bit more Wraith on World's Edge at the last uh, Split 2 playoffs, Vicky. So, interesting to see Blackhand continue to experiment here. And it's obviously working. I mean, mm. 52 points right now in this series. Very impressive. Let's jump into a listen-in with Easy Flash having the Kraber in his hand and what their next move is going to be since they're sitting in the circle. On you, Mark. Wait, Mama, 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 come on, come on. They're going, they're going here. Sire, one tiny on the fucking GP. I'm trying to go. I have fallen 20%. They won't, they bubble yeah, yeah. here. Chill, chill, chill. 65 on tower. I, I got, I, I have so many net. I have so many net, player. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just net, net, tower. Net. It's just tower. It's just you guys here. Yeah. They kill, they kill, they kill. 99 Very on tape. tower. Towers! Queuing up. Fuck. Okay, they're just there, they're just there. You can, you can just need to play oh, right side, right side, Mark. Right side. I think we'll need to take control of this eventually, just like we have to do it late. I'll, I'll, I can wall this way and then we can just look to play there. I'm gonna wall like a little bit early. 88 yep. and the guy on, on hype. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ma, do you need I'm gonna wall from me to here and then we just walk in for this. Yeah. We're good, we're yeah, good. Yeah, I need play slow, just play slow. Just hard stay tower for now, just hard stay tower for now. Yep, yep. I have so many nets. I have DJ also. I don't have DJ. I'm yeah. like pissing on these guys. Yeah, you have to like always shoot them. Clem. I am. You just need to stare my right. If I get peeked from right, I die. Yeah. Left vessel walking first. We just shit on them. We need to focus the catalyst, okay? Don't let them get a cat wall down. Yeah. That's their wind condition. I'm calling it now. I'm gonna dome this guy. I'm gonna double headshot him. Okay. Watch me miss every bullet. They're back in under. Wait, under what? Already. When they drop? They're dropping. Oops. I think. I think. I'm walling now. I'm walling now. Okay. Well, well, fence the wall. Fence the wall. Fence yeah, the wall. Yeah. We can't let them wrap our left, yeah. Yeah. They're pushing right. They're pushing right. They're underneath the tower right now. I'm, I'm, I'm holding. I'm holding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
They move, they, they get the ball, they get the ball. I'm kinda of shooting on them. Uh, fire, 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 fire. Yeah. Don't let us get wrapped on the right. Fence it, fence it, fence it. The king. I'm checking this one. Hey, play on me, play on me. Oh, I'm, I'm getting fences real quick. They're on the they're, field, they're, 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 they're on the right, they're on the right. West split, West split. Play, play towards the left, play towards the left. Play towards the left. Just play towards the left. Play on my side, player, play on my side. Okay, okay. Be clear, play be left, clear. Play left, play left. Play left, play left. Play left, play left. I need left, I need left. Play left, we're good, we're good, we're good. Play, play on me, play self, play on me, play yep, self, yep, play yep, on yep. me, play self. Which one, which one? I think. Yeah, I think. One, one, eight, ring. I, I think we just chill, chill, play left, play left, play left again, play left again. Okay, okay. Left again, left again. I'm getting, I'm getting hit by Q. Ten. It's chill, 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 chill. Oh, okay, no, I can't. Just chill, just chill. Just chill, just chill. I'm, I'm eating Q. I'm eating Zone, I'm eating Zone. They're not out yet. Straight Flame is still alive for now as Moist Esports takes to the high ground. The Cavals looking like tic tac toe Two squads left. A harder team's eliminated and the last member of Black Gang get taken out with Moist Esports taking game number four, our first game on World's Edge. And they needed it, Gino. And they've done it exactly in the fashion that Moist like to. A quick rotate up to a northern circle. They've got decent priority there from Overlook. They set up in the northern tunnels. As you mentioned earlier, Vicky, that gives them options. If it goes to Skyhook, if it goes uh, even further west or further east, either way, it's actually quite easy to either push out from the tunnels or you've even got the balloon in those northern tunnels. Uh, if it's a weird pull, it goes even further, as you do see sometimes on World's Edge. And from there, it's just that really rock solid gameplay that we see Moyes coming out and taking. I think um, the most interesting thing we got out of that listening from Black Hand, um, you know, for one, Strafing Flame, great IGL, right? You can hear him. Uh, he's got so much confidence in himself, but they did blow that cat wall a little bit early. I think that was one of the things that uh, probably stopped them getting the best position that we saw Moist take over them in the end. Shout out to the Moist boys. I know Charlie watching at home. Even got a, a plushie of him himself. <laughs> 10 kills with the dub, and they needed it. Once again, one of our bubble teams, Moist, that's why they had to play for position. And when I mention that, it's a very similar spot that you would expect teams like Exit to hold. It's because Exit usually likes to hold positions that they could go either rotate to the yeah. left, rotate to the right, yeah. have a better rotation point, basically. But they were also blocked by like five other teams that made their way into Skyhook. As we take a look at a replay. Yeah, so we saw the bang hole coming through there. Black Hand actually had their generators ready to go to block that out. You can see Moist hiding in the crate to make that happen. Uh, and then it was a matter of the uh, the high ground, which really helped them out quite a lot. Obviously, you see here waiting for the bubble to go down. As soon as that's gone, um, you know, these alternated disruptor shots start coming through to just shred those shields. Um, they, that was the uh, the peak uh, we saw. I think it was straight from playing with Easy Flash taking there. And from this point, uh, I, if they can't even see them, who cares? They're just throwing bullets out anywhere, and they will hit something. Especially since... You saw that 100 Thieves were engaging at first against Black Hand. That was just the green light for Moist Esports to rain all that pressure from the high ground. No one was looking at them. Finishing off with not just the dub, but with 10 kills to their name, getting 22 points. Once again, that they needed Black Hand as consistent as ever as well. I mean, getting second place, it may not be the dub this time around. They already got the dub, game number two. But it's being able to stay up in contention in the top three mm -hmm. with three points on top of that. I mean, yeah, going into that game, or at least towards the end of it, there was something like 20 points clear of the next team in yeah. this lobby right now. So adding to it with another second place, those guys are going to be on top of the world. I mean, I was even having having a go at landslides, right? Say, like, yeah, it's fine. They got the points on Storm Point, and uh, you know, World's Edge might be a bit tougher. Nope. Uh, straight into it with another fantastic effort from our Apex South guys. And on the other side, in the second page, you see Dreamfire in their team with only one KP, not getting the placement that they needed, KCP. We saw the chaos that went down inside the buildings close to Skyhook. So many fights broke out once that circle had to close and force all these teams outside the Skyhook buildings. Our top three squads, though, 100 Thieves, fortunately falling in third once they wanted to actually take that fight against Black Hand, because unfortunately they were the most exposed against Moist. That 10 kills, Black Hand and 100 Thieves. Again, they didn't pick up too many of the kills because all that nonsense was happening over towards the east side of World's Edge this game. Um, but, uh, you know, once that happened, we get to have a look at the scoreboard as it stands now. As we mentioned, Black Hand well in front at this point. Uh, a nice third place for 100 Thieves does put them up to 37 uh, with Riddle, Order and Moist just following behind them.
Super important there too. <clears throat> if you currently see 100 Ds being in that second place, so many of these points that were dist distributed by Moist getting in that fourth place, 33 total points in this lobby. This is the last time, once again, that these two groups will be playing in the group stage to see which of these teams are going to be sitting already in the winner's bracket or which ones are already going to be starting off in the first round of the loser's bracket. Yep, there's uh, a couple of teams. So, you know, Sen sitting down there, three points only so far uh, in this series, Vicky. But as we said, they're kind of chilling at the moment. I mean, whether you come first or 20th doesn't matter as long as you do make your way into that winner's bracket. Uh, it's in the bracket stage, the winner's final, uh, or I guess, actually, yeah, in the winner's final, because that's where the seeding points come from. You can't get them from uh, elimination round two. Um, that's where it matters where you stand in that lobby. And other teams are feeling very similar to that, too. That's why we saw LG take a very similar fight. All right, that was game number four, our first game on World's Edge in the books. We come back from this break. We got game number five continuing on onto World's Edge. Every Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the Apex Legends Global Series. Welcome back, everybody. We are here for the LGS Championship. We are done with game number four on World's Edge, where Moist were able to take it. Patience pays off eventually, and the crowd is getting wired up while we get set up for our fifth game. Yeah, I like that little snippet we had in the break there. Who got the most points in Apex South uh, during Split 2 there? Obviously, a lot of Dreamfire fans in the chat. Uh, and, you know, maybe there's some people thinking, like, wow, they look so good here. And I'm not surprised that they've chosen Dreamfire because, honestly, out of the Apex South teams we've seen so far, they are looking phenomenal. Absolutely, too. I, honestly, seeing the way that Dreamfire was able to perform yesterday and then even continue a bit of that performance at the beginning of mm. today, this is a lobby where, at this point in time, a lot of these teams have already found out where they're sitting in the overall standings and what that could mean for them in the final bracket, whether they stand in the winners or they're going to have to start off in the loser side. Getting set up now, though, and seeing the consistency from Black Hand is beautiful. Seeing Moist make the comeback after sitting on the bubble of having to play from the loser side is also beautiful here. Getting set up now, we saw that they were able to quickly rotate right outside of Overlook around the north side, away from the chaos before it even started, from the east side of the map. And we can see that continue most probably going into this game, too. Oh man, and uh, with the dropship parting right now, Moist, uh, you know, we call them like the turbo rotate team, right? It can't get any better than this. The dropship literally landed them within seconds of the game starting. They've got a ring console. I would be surprised if they're in God spot by the time other teams even put their feet on the ground. And when they're playing for that final circle positioning, you know how Moist is when it comes to those quick rotates. The ring console, like you mentioned, the craft rift, they need to craft something incredibly quickly. There's that jump tower that's over to the side of Overlook, too, if they don't have an evac tower or just want to hold on to it. 
taking a look at what their next plan is. And MT's already got in a blue Evo. And here's that 50-50 for Ascent. They decided to commit on Harvester. Yeah, this time they're ready for it, and they will take that fight. As we talked about last time, there's kind of no reason not to, honestly, at this point, with over 100 points to their name, they will continue to try and take on LCDF. By the fact that Psychop has the gold armor on him right now, Vicky, you would assume that once again they have won the Jumpmaster battle and got down there to the Honeypot loot at the bottom of the lava. You're too slow, and let's see if the is going to be able to get away with that. And a gold rampage? Psycho mm -hmm. just ate everything, left only crumbs for aimbot. Okay, but they're to deal with. Yeah, look, they are dipping. No, sorry, they're chasing Ascend. Yeah, okay, so Ascend went south. Uh, I was just thinking last time, uh, Ascend obviously went north and then eventually made their way to Monument. Um, just with the, how the fight has panned out this time, um, they are actually trying to track down a sand kick. We get Lava Siphon all to themselves. Who knows? Maybe they'll come a knocking. Oh, he found Lufka. He got the heady onto Lufka. Mm. All right, chasing them down. Kashira's like, nothing to see here. You know, maybe <laughs> we have some regrets at the same time. It's kind of free points at this point. And also playing inside of a little crevice on the outskirts of where Onik Esports is looting at Tree. They've already started rotating to the southern buildings right at the front of Tree. They'll be looking to craft later on, but little do they know right ahead of them. So let's see the France is trying to hunt down that last member on the other side. It's Team Singularity over by Kaiser, also finding themselves in a fight against FC Destroy. Fighting outside the circle too, as Elysium pops the Beast of the Hunt. Okay, there's the Mother Lode coming in already. One of the quicker ultimates to charge Ascend is completely eliminated. As these two teams go at it over at Geyser, FC Destroy. Only just using that. Wow, actually a little bit of information there coming out of the Fuse Ultimate. Yuka grabbing on top of the roof. Ooh, drops right down too. Tries to get out of their line of sight. Avoids and shifts his way away from the line of sight of the Arc Stars. Team Singularity have taken control over the inside of this building. No Digi. Releasing to work with the Volts, but it's fine. Runs right past it. Oh, the Arc Star breaks down the door. Looks in two different angles. I do like the approach that we're seeing from Team Singularity, but now another team has involved themselves, and it's Kick with the third part. Exactly. Kick comes in off the back of this, and uh, hopefully they can sort out their differences while they're inside here, because if they peek their heads outside, or even, you know, past the jail bars on the windows there, I dare say Kick is going to have some bullets for them. Every single squad engaging in that fight has backed away, wanting no business and to look at what the outcome may have been. Just trying to rotate away from the choke point of Geyser. Well, it's kind of serious business time, right? I mean, you know, you've got teams, you've got two games left to try and grab those points and make their way into winner's bracket. For some of these teams, like Blackhand, that's not such an issue. Uh, for some others, like Onik that we were looking Singularity. at before. Singularity. They do need a good amount of points here uh, to make it through. And they've only got two games in which left to get them. What's interesting is that looking at where the circle is going to be pulling, we got another very similar circle to our previous game, actually. It's going to be pulling towards the east side of Skyhook. Maybe more so towards the east than we saw in the yeah, last game. This, uh, the shift over towards the east does make me think it's uh, a bit more likely to be like a survey yeah. map circle here, Vicky. Um, probably, I still don't think it's going to be the one that goes all the way north to like the respawn beacon kind of area on the train tracks, but you know, we'll see. Um, either way, we may get that split. Um, most uh, teams, okay, you can see quite a few down on the southern strip of the map still, uh, but not quite as many, like Riddle Order and whatnot. They were all fighting towards Overlook last time, but they have made their way a bit closer in towards Epi. Also had my eyes on Moise, who already went for that rotate like we were expecting off the rip, mm. and they've already found themselves some safety inside of a building north of Survey, which is important, because if this circle does pull north, that's a good spot to rotate from if you're inside one of those northern buildings. And Moise, as we said, they've got the beacon right. They're one of those bellwether teams that you can kind of have a look at them and be like, well, if they think the circle's here, then well, there's a pretty good chance it's going to end up over there. And they haven't chosen that <laughs> northern tunnels side this time. They have chosen to, to, uh, to go towards Survey camp. LG Chivas playing off the low ground right here over by Lava Siphon. You mentioned it before, it's three teams in the southern side outside of the zone as it's closing in already. They pop the Beast of the Hunt and IPG do have height advantage for now. Calls out the zipline, he heard it and beams them right off the moment they pop their head. It's Nizul 
who is the victim of the beamage from the R9. And in the distance, get hold on is here. Where are you running? Where are you going? Get back over here with the Hemlock. This is just IBG getting some extra kills. Again, it's one of those teams that don't really feel at risk considering their performance in the other lobbies that they've played in. Yeah, not at all. They're actually going hard hunting for that last member of Luminosity there. As you can see, Yanya off to the, uh, off to the bottom of the screen there. That said, once they get back into zone, they may have uh, some other teams setting their sights on them with Singularity and FC Destroy currently in the northern parts of Lava Siphon. I love the patience. Nothing to see. <laughs> Smile and wave, boys. Gonna be able to heal up just for now, but he's got two syringes, he's got two med kits. Mm -hmm. Circle's not too far away, depending on how he wants to rotate around Lava Siphon and avoid IBG. But they know that there's still one left. They're looking around, they know he's still in the circle. Can he get away? We'll find out soon. Now with the overlook. Come back next episode <laughs> exactly. on ALGS. <laughs> the next fight against IBG LG. And also seeing the fights that have already been happening over by Skyhook. But it looks like Yanya has been able to find some safety, some room to breathe. He's literally right behind oh, them wow. and still was able to Both get the banners. The fi yeah, the final banner here. I'm okay, good moves for Yanya. I mean, you know, for IB IBG to hold out for that long, I'm surprised that they didn't camp the banners a little harder. Right, I mean, if you're going to look anywhere, that's uh, potentially where they're going to come back to. So. Either way, um, they did get the 2kp, and now it's going to be SC Destroy and Singularity uh, looking for some of those over at Harvester. You know IBG left those boxes on sticks, though, let's be honest. So there may not be much to look for once you start going back to your box. You may have to start rotating at that point if you're going to get res so far outside of Circle. FC Destroy, around Harvester. Going to be able to try to craft something. See what they need here, just in case you need more meds on top of that, or maybe a purple bag. The purple bag and purple helmet are in the replicator for the week. You know, the Herman Miller chairs, they're so good for your back, and I've got to say, Hammer Drill is probably using them uh, in the least, like, ergonomically possible, uh, good way possible there, with, like, the full shrimp lean forward. But, hey, maybe he's, he's close enough to the screen, and it just really helps him zero in. I don't know. Genome, didn't you get the word that if you hug your face against the screen, you just play better, you just oh, become a better player? Right. So that's why I'm not, that's why I'm not prayed, okay. Okay, exactly. Yeah. That's how it goes. As long as your nose touches the screen, you'll probably hit Pred this season. Mm. So that's just a note for everybody watching at home, too. I'll grab some super glue. <laughs> Leaning forward, LCDF. Having two gold Evos. Purple Evo on top of that. Rocking some good loot here as IBG involving themselves in the fight over by Harvester. Maybe catching that team that was crafting, which was FC destroyed before. Having to be careful, no digits there on that R9, but maybe it doesn't even matter at this point. We're seeing some trades going down as oh. Zicky. Finishes off Hammer Drill, gets the knock on top of that oh, earlier. No. IBG, Ziggy, finishing off FC Destroy, catching them, slip in when they were in the middle of trying to get some extra meds from that crafter. Yeah, and even the end of that fight there, I don't know if FC Destroy were just saying, like, okay, we're done for, I'm going to go for the, uh, just grab that one extra KP before we dip. Um, but it did seem like they were a little bit too focused on the down members rather than the ones of IBG who were still up. That said, IBG have once again put themselves in a position where they're very much in the ring, hopefully, at this point. Uh, you know, harking back, of course, to their old name inside the ring, right? But uh, uh, hopefully they've got the crafter there and they can pop enough med kits out of that to get themselves back into safety. I wonder what's going oh, on. I was just about to say, what is happening in LG world? Luminosity. <laughs> Hawadis didn't have any meds, or he does actually, but he's leaning forward, maybe just trying to see if he can inch his way mm. while the circle's closing in. They've already been limited on loot to work with while a fight is happening Ooh. and waiting for them on the other side of when the circle closes. It's Team Singularity facing off against Area 310. Let's see the burglar's best friend. Just allowing that Loba to get away, and unfortunately LG, even with the respawn, gonna have to leave a man behind here. You don't love to see it, but uh, <laughs> it does start to make you wonder what the point of the respawn was if uh, neither of those other two members get back in. Fortunately for the little blow that was left behind by LG, that was Nizul, unfortunately, that cannot get picked back up. He also, obviously, when you res, you don't have your ultimate. It takes more time to come in, and he didn't have Beast of the Hunt to start running through. But the de France looking great. Rocking the car, the triple take, taking another pick to their name too. So some extra KP that they so desperately need since they're on the bottom end of the overall standings in the second to last game that they could play in. 
but playing outside the circle and knowing that there's a team waiting for them in the safety of that circle, Team Singularity, will be able to meet up with them soon, and IBG may be right behind them. Okay, so now taking a look at the circle, it has actually gone quite northern here. Uh, now, when you get a circle, especially if the next one, uh, what is it, like the fifth circle, splits that highway, it is so important to be on the north side of it, right? The teams up there, I would say, like 80% of the time, will win. Such a good point because you also have that lip that you could LOS and play a little head glitch as playing around the knockdown seal. I mean, there's no head glitch to really play off of there in that situation. You're getting pinged by a 30-30. And here is Exit involving themselves in this fight. On the other side, though, it's going to be 100 Thieves to the north of Monuments Kick. So many teams are found in the south side of the circle and it's closing in less than 15 seconds. I mean, this is just a wild lobby. Once again, this is like the Overlook fight all over again. And I was looking at the map there that being like, okay, are XX gonna commit? Because if they do, Element 6 is on the back of them as well. But right in the thick of things, it is Singularity, IBG and LCDF. I mean, you know, you know I love chaos, but this is a different <laughs> level of chaos right now. Singularity, taking to the skies from the gravity lift into then getting the evac tower, already getting ahead of the curve with the circle closing in to beat a lot of these other teams to get a better position. But they're not the only ones. Oh, Exit awesome. coming in the evac tower, as well as under these waiting outside that circle to gatekeep them. The Cether Fonts, unfortunately, cannot get away. They get eliminated, and 100 Thieves positioning themselves here are also able to see where the other teams are able to rotate from the skies. Oh man, Arden's got a Guardian Angel managing to stay alive on that rotate. But, uh, okay, let's have a look at Dreamfire here. They're back in Skyhook, and they've got NRG just ringing them right now. Uh, just below them, though, it's KCP versus Black Hand trying to dodge that wow. black hole. KCP going to try and use that gravity lift. Oh, man, there's so much cover here for Black Hand, though. And if they don't get this done wow. soon, Exit will destroy both teams, I guarantee you. Well, that's one way to try to force a team outside of a Newcastle wall. And then you get stunned just for another team to try to third party and take a different off angle. It's Exit. Coming from the sky there, what are you resing here from the Newcastle? We had the purple knockdown, so it's not like you have extra health as if you had a gold knockdown shield. So now Exet gets a benefit as KCP are eliminated. Yeah, huge amounts of KP going over to them there. And because they get that fight so easily, they can now turn around and think about 100 Thieves, maybe even Dreamfire, who are back towards Skyhawk. Oh, wow. continuing on this fight, though, with the circle pulling so far northeast. We get to see where this next circle is going to be pulling. It's going to be pulling towards the survey camp, building that voice called out from the very beginning and that tall rock that has that natural landform that certified eSports can start rotating on top of if they're quick. Team Singularity versus Element 6 with what is left of Epicenter in the circle. Element 6 are going to trade that first kill out. Now they're a little bit on top of things. Too close range really to get that knuckle cluster using. Just trying to finish off oh, someone it. to get the armor swap. We'll do that. And Singularity go down, but 100 Thieves are in the hunt. It's just a uh, pops the mother load to try and retreat, but that'll do nothing but uh, put out some fireworks to celebrate 100 Thieves winning. Oh, all that hard work from Case Swinney to be at, shut down by 100 Thieves, rotating from the south side of the circle. And alongside them, it's going to be Exit and Dreamfire engaging in the fight in the mouth of the cave here. Dreamfire, they'll have a better rotation. They can just rotate through the cave if they so wanted to, maybe go through the choke point by survey. Mm. Or it looks like they're actually opting to overcommit and actually rotate from right behind Exit yeah, here. Don't choose that route. They want to take the hard way. And they're going to try and make it through Exet here. They do get on top of them. Both teams trying to slide down the hill and, and keeping their mind on that zone as it pushes them further and further towards Survey Camp. You can see members of both teams dropping and 3MZ, who has gone off for his team, is very unhappy about that. Honestly, it could have been a live or die situation there because look who was waiting for them to yes. choke. It was IBG. Oh. So even if they decided to go through that choke point, they would have been sandwiched between Exit and IBG. It's one of the best spoiler spots in the game, yeah. honestly. Uh, you know, this is such a great spot when teams have to rotate in for survey camp. It's, uh, it's quite a safe one, honestly. IBG playing this out as a duo, getting the last member of Exit, which was Nocturnal. Also getting that extra loot from his box before they start rotating right back to that high ground rock. Here comes the gravity lift. Thank you very much. They desperately needed meds, so that's why they were able to get that last driver. So thank you very much, Nocturnal. 
And while they are waiting here, the teams are, are situated inside these buildings, so that way you guys know they're safe currently in survey. But we'll have to move eventually in the next 35 seconds. It's J Links, 100 Thieves, Moist still in that building. Onik, Riddle Order, Starter Fight, and IBG left alive here. Yeah, so, okay, here we get the best view possible of what's going to happen next. As you can see, the train tracks are not in, so that means start a fight playing on the northern side there. Don't get the advantage they do if the ring had moved a little bit further up. Riddle order, as long as they can keep out start a fight, who you can see just trying to constrict space on their north and western side here. They just need to worry about start a fight. If they clear them out, we really like their spot. Meanwhile, those teams down the bottom who were around the buildings, 100 Thieves, Moist and Onik, uh, it's going to be a tougher, much, much harder entrance into the zone for them. Yeah, with Riddle Order getting ahead of Start of Fight, they're in probably the best position until this circle closes and Start of Fight is forced into their line of sight. Riddle Order will need to keep up the pressure onto them. IBT also feeling the pressure from Riddle Order on the other side as they're holding two different angles to make sure that there's extra pressure on the teams in the circle and Start of Fight that's outside the circle. Yeah, so Moist are good here for the moment, right? Uh, unless someone starts pushing into them, but too many teams are busy fighting on the outside. That's Onik and a hundred thieves here. Oh, can't quite make it out alive. Jailings will be probably dealing with IBG. There you go, they go down. Onik, they can they get the reset here? I think everyone else is just too uh, too worried about everything else going around, and Onik probably will make this. With Onik, or rather Moist, not oh. the oh, okay, I spoke too soon. I was gonna say Moist haven't left their building. They poked out just for that, and they were able to get Raggy. Yeah, a little bit of help from, I think it was Riddle Order maybe as well. I thought they'd be too preoccupied taking on the starter fight here, as Jaylings are actually rotating right underneath them. Ritter Order once again have the high ground, but look who is neighboring that right behind this rocking train. Oh no, right they down. don't see that at all! They just no drop down straight into the shark's jaws! Jay Leeds! JFW gets taken out, but now this is the green light for start a fight, and Moist Esports have an opportunity! This is a terrible blunder, and it means Moist! They are gonna take advantage of that immediately! The gravity lift up on top, Riddle Order. I don't think they can do anything about this. Oh and my god! They hit the what a beast! 360 Kramer shot into the top two combo! Moist! Take back-to-back -back wins on World Edge! <laughs> Spin it up, boys! Right round like a record! Oh my! Would you ever think you'd see that on stage at land? He can't believe it. I can't believe it. The crowd, the noise we got after he hit the shot, they can't believe it either. Incredible finish to that game for Moist. <laughs> that was disgusting. And then the smirk when we come back to them after they take the dub. You know those comes from, you know I'm pretty nasty. You know they're feeling themselves after that one. Shoot, everybody would at that point. It wasn't even the pop-off, it was like sheer disbelief. He was smiling. Who was smiling a little too hard out there? But that was, I mean, if you hit a shot like that and then get back-to-back -back wins, I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> Five kills. Another first place finish. They heard they're on the bubble. Said, you know what? This is what we like. Better late than never. You gotta keep you wanting more from the Moist Boys. Where is there to go from there, honestly? Two in a row. Cray but 360 to win it. I, oh, I mean, I just, I, I feel like I'd almost want to hang up the, uh, the mouse and keyboard at that point. <laughs> You've done, you peaked. There's nowhere, there's nowhere to go. Still one game left, Overkey. Final game. I mean, look, Moist have won three in a row before. It happens, they do it in high pressure situations. They've done it in a regional finals in APAC South. So, I don't know, maybe it's uh, maybe it's destiny here and they've got one more in the tank. Maybe they just want to feel something. They want to feel the pressure. Just wait till the very end. But again, back to back. Again, you also mentioned you see it happen three times in a row. Very possible here if it's in the works. But you could only expect after those back-to-back -back wins, what the overall standings in general are probably gonna look for them. You 
dare say that Moist are going to be tipping uh, their toes a little bit closer to the top of our series leaderboard there, Vicky. All right, let's take another look at that final circle. And, oh boy, I really hope we get, uh, <laughs> we get the view on MT here. A couple of red weapons for the team. Actually, it almost feels like they're playing uh, Loba right now with uh, how much they've got in the bags for them, the Prowler and the Kraber here. Uh, you know, as you heard, they were just watching that kill feed and being like, oh god, these teams are getting knocks against each other. You know, Riddle, um, they really were in a great position until they dropped down. Um, this is what it's meant for, you know, long range, sniping, that's what you expect <laughs> out of the Kraber. And then MT, he has, a, he has a different idea. I want to see it do it again. We're definitely going to see it. We're probably going to see it a million more times in the future. Oh, I hope so. Will you ever get tired of this? That's the question. It's the fact that Jay, I cannot believe Jay Lings pushed onto Riddle like mm. that. And Riddle jumping on top of them and not knowing. That was the grief of the century of giving Moist Esports all the opportunity to take height that Riddle was on top of. Oh Since my the God. last ring of the gravity lift. Was that like, was that like a 720? Was that a 1080? This man's snowboarding up here. I can't. Back to back. Taking a look at the team comparison. Taking first place after that game. Meanwhile, look at the damage output that Riddle Order put down and the kills. So still, even if they didn't get the dub, they got so much KP to work with. Feeling pretty warmed up, I mean, but you got one more match left, Gino. <laughs> oh, Riddle is smiling, definitely smiling after that. I mean, even if you got taken out by that, I, I feel like even the, uh, being on the receiving end, you still got to smile. And uh, if, any, if there's any team uh, that uh, you can count on smiling, it is Riddle Order and their fans, as you can see there. Let's take a look at the match results after that insane end game. Black Hand, though, with their consistency, probably still topples the leaderboard. But in match number five alone, it was just Moist standing on top of the rock. Coming in with the Kraber, spinning around town for them to get 5 KP and the dub. Riddle Order right after them with 10 KP. Start a fight, we're playing incredibly safe. Didn't really engage on the north side of those tracks. Instead, started inching their way forward before Jaylings were underneath the rock right below Riddle Order at the very end. Yeah, I mean, it's very rare to see someone get to the top three with uh, zero kills, right? But uh, hey, you take the placement points there any day of the week. Um, certainly putting them above the, the bottom 10 teams that we can see here for match five. And yeah, look, uh, you know, a couple teams ascend. Black Hand has taken it easy at this point, honestly. They're just yeah. cruising into that winner's bracket, but a couple of other teams uh, certainly need to make their way up. I don't, we may not get those until uh, match six has finished, Vicky, but uh, you know, it's going to be so interesting to see which teams have crept up past uh, the 100 point mark. It's a good point. The teams that were in the bubble right before we jumped into the series with KCP sitting in 14th, Moy sitting in 16th. We do, do we do know that that has shifted completely looking at the total series results thus far. Black Hand still lead the way. Moy's in third though with 50 points. Yeah, wow. It's uh, a big, big effort from the teams up the top there and doing it in style as well. I mean, MT on the Kraber is going to be, I think, uh, a highlight of this land and a highlight of ALGS for times to come. Did the highlight that we showed right before we jumped into game four, given the power up that they needed, <laughs> as the cheers come in from the crowd, I'm gonna throw it to Peeps. I hear he's actually tuning in with Orax having the watch party. Vicky and Gino, thank you so much. We are here with Orax and Wise Thug here, the French representatives of the ALGS. Uh, fellas, how does it feel to represent ALGS to everyone in the world that speaks French? Uh, it's an honor to be here. I'm really happy. I'm in Wise Thug also. It's really cool, amazing event. We were here the last two times also in London. It's, it's really cool, really, really cool. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And how do you feel? I feel great, man. I just want uh, our French guys to perform a little bit, a little bit more, you know, aggressive. But um, I have good hopes for tomorrow. C'est la vie. C'est la vie. Vive la baguette. My man. So what are your top three teams, favorite teams in the ALGS? Les Cités de France, TSM, and Fnatic, I'd say. Solid, solid lineup. I mean, to be honest, there are only two teams right now on Apex Legends, Dark Zero and TSM. 
but we support LCDF, you know, they are the French team. Only French team with uh, three players from France, so we are for them too, rooting for them. I love that, man. You guys are keeping it real with the Fran French. Um, all right, so one team to win it all, you got to, you know, place a bet. Who do you guys got? TSM. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. What about you, brother? To be honest, I'd say Alliance for the Europe or LCDF, I hope. It'd be nice to see somebody new to win, you know what I mean? No matter what, we have some of the sweatiest Apex ever. But I think that's it with our boys Orax and Wise Thug here. Vicky, Genome, take it away. Thank you so much. We the people, Orax, you guys are fantastic. Where's the Cito Fonge? Je ne sais quoi? We need to see more? We have to. They have to come out, they oui. have to perform. I mean, they, they, I mean, they have one more game. Mm. Hopefully they make the comeback tomorrow here, but they, again, they have one more chance and after performance that we've been seeing thus far with some of our teams that were willing to risk it all. Now some of these teams, the other side, the bubble teams, playing much more safer, playing for placement. We have one more match within this group series to see how everything plays out in the overall stand. And I'm hoping some of those teams start to throw that out the window, right? That's what you want to see. Game six, this is their last chance to make that difference up between the, the elimination bracket and the winner's bracket, right? And that's when you just have to go for it. You, you know, they'll be tallying up those points. They know what to aim for. And teams that are close to that right now, teams like Singularity on 95, they can confirm their place. KCP on 89. Uh, Onik on 84, these are, look, I've, I've, I've got a, I think this is an updated uh, uh, stats run here from Liquipedia. It'll be close to that if it's not, and these teams do need to make up some points here to grab a winner's okay. bracket slot. Having a little baseline to at least see where things are going to be shifting after this game. Let's not waste any more time, everybody, in our second series, final game on World Edge. Let's get started. Will we have a triple win from Moist? Will we have a new winner? Ooh, I needed to let the crowd ring it through a little bit. We have some split up chance. I hear Dreamfire, Riddle Orders out here. Let's get started. And coming off to the side, Moist actually get an advantage considering that the dropship ended up starting off on the east. So once again, we do have the contest going down LCDF. This time it looks like they don't actually make it to the middle first. Oh, we get a gold charge rifle. Not exactly what you want to pick up in a contest. Last time it was the gold rampage. So much better for the other team, but once again, LCDF do seem to get that honeypot loot. Yeah. That's... Oh, maybe it was split actually. Okay, so maybe Lufka went for the shield, and then we saw Psychop go for the gun. So maybe they both landed exactly the same time and just uh, had to split that. Timing wise, it would make sense since they had to fight around those bins when they were both trying to elevate themselves yep. to the high ground here. As Lufka is going to be able to try to find an opportunity oh. with the alternate and the hemlock. Oh my goodness. Oh, he has to reload. Backing away, though, on the other side. Post kill, unfortunately, gets cleaned up. They have two knocks, though. Ascent has a number of advantages. It's Kachira on the other side. Oh, look at that. I think that was actually the full stick with the knuckle oh. cluster. Ascend do come out on top this time. So both teams, uh, you know, they managed to get out in games four and five here. But Ascend finally saying this is ours. We'll take Harvester. Thank you very much. And then. Honestly, it'll be a pretty quick rotate over towards the geyser. All right, change up on the circle, you know. Got to have some change up here when you've been over to the north side of World Ed for so long, while Kick is also having some progress here. It's a double crack onto the Bang and Horizon. They are able to get the first initial knock, make it two onto Lemon. Kick already having the advantage to exiting out of the side, Bindo, sliding in. <laughs> Not in the way that you would want. And they are able to clean up Area 310, our second team that we say goodbye in this lobby too. That was a little bit scary. Still easy, man. Why have you got the space mace out? Come on. <laughs> Get your gun ready. Either way, they had it in the bag, so Kick will pick up those kills. I wonder if that meant, uh, I mean, uh, I'm assuming Area 310 were 
uh, you know, dropped directly into Lava Siphon there. That's how they got together so quickly, unless they came off a tree. Either way, um, it was a very, no, of course, Onik for uh, our entry. So Kick, once again, just like contest after contest, these guys are so practiced at them now. Um, <laughs> hopefully that, you know, does them well if they are, uh, because I think they're going to be making their way into the incarnation bracket. Especially on Lava Siphon. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. If you keep going there, there's pretty much no way to avoid a contest. Uh, teams will be coming at you. Also seeing the fight between Ascend after they were able to claim Harvester from that 50-50 that we saw earlier. It's NRG on the other side with not as great evil shields as the opposition from Ascend here. Does have some good weapon loadouts here for Guild as well as the gold Evo that he could at least rock. Looking behind him, he sees the Watson fence line in that choke point. Ascend actually opting to rotate away from this fight, maybe trying to already get ahead of where the circle is going to be pulling, because since it is going to be Geyser, they could rotate on the north side of Lava Siphon, closer to the bridge, or they will inevitably be met with Kick. Let's see, guys, uh, very much populated by, uh, by the 8-pack teams there. And then it was Team Singularity just on to the north in the choke. The way this circle is pulling, I think it's it's almost certain it's going to end up somewhere in Geyser, though it can be quite hard to tell whether it's going to be one. Oh my! No! No! They were waiting! Waiting for them to rotate in front of their face! They got ahead of them in the rotate, waiting in the corner, and they were just ready to strike onto NRG! Even closing out the door with the reinforce on the catalyst! We're seeing that more and more, aren't we? I mean, uh, it feels like the teams are just getting uh, better at predicting where the other teams are coming in. And they're like, hey, I mean, I don't know if uh, going forward is really going to help us here. We're probably going to get to our position one way or the other. Hey, why don't we just sit here, rat it out, because uh, we know where the other teams are rotating. But it's not done yet, because Dreamfire have also pulled up. We're definitely going to get some, get some, get them. And then Dreamfire now on the other side with Gita losing out. Energy finally getting called out, too. Ooh, the piercing spikes able to get the knocker to Kashira though. Yeah, you can see they're all shoved into that back room though. If Roy pops, uh, he's used the piercing spikes already, obviously, but he's got the dark veil. I don't know if he can use that to try and just pull its way into that back door. He actually is going to use that to try and stave off any third parties. That's not too bad. Still two nades in his back pocket though. I love the option coverage. He reinforces the back door, puts up the wall so that way the other door doesn't have line of sight of the res. And there was already smoke grenade right in front of them when they popped that res. So they have both doors covered inside this building. Tosses out the arc star, 3MZ, playing on the other side of these piercing spikes. While on the other side, another fight between IBG and LG. Yeah, this is an important fight. Fight. This could be God's spot. We'll have to wait and see at zones three and four where it does pull. Uh, but teams will absolutely in for one of these back buildings because it is so important, especially nowadays with Catalyst. This is a very reinforceable and playable spot. Ascender going out. Ascend get taken out after jumping on top of NRG where they left a rat before they were taken out. And I like how you highlighted this building in Geyser. That is usually the building where we see the final circle pull to. Yeah, okay, so Dreamfire obviously winning that fight with Ascend going out and KCP lurking around though. Dreamfire now, you can see they're stacked up two gold armors and a purple to take it to KCT. Uh, KCP picking up even alt cells in those boxes so that they can reset those ultimates as fast as possible before they take this next fight. And you can see, if they push that, there's a massive armor disparity between the two teams. Literally night and day here. Look at Dreamfire. Double gold, purple, white napkins on the other side. I mean, just taking their time, you know, they'll, they'll be picking up, they'll be prioritizing bats, grenades, alt cells right now before they do push it out uh, and try and take on that next fight. IBG get eliminated in your feed. Yanya in trouble, also getting knocked. It's the fight that's happening on the outside of this lava siphon area that have to start rotating into the edge of where the circle is going to be, where Kick is already holding the high ground building overlooking siphon. Moist, uh, you know, considering they're coming in from Overlook, uh, it looks like I think they didn't get Beacon. Right, okay, that would make sense because, um, you know, it's right next to them. They could have got a very quick rotate in here, I think, if they had have seen where this circle was going. Nevertheless, they'll try and get through the tunnel. Just peeking through here. 
a couple of teams ahead of them. And they might eventually end up fighting for this back building. And while that's happening, right in front of them, it's the fight for again. The outside of the building where 100 thieves are playing for their lives right around the break, but they're about to get hit. You see the creeping barrage called in. Nice deletion on that black hole. Calls in the Gibby bubble so that way they can be safe, specifically Vaxlon. So he doesn't take any fire from his own creeping barrage, but nobody was going to push. At least this gives him some time to reset, but it's still the difference of their evil shield. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Moist Bang Ult coming in there from MT to try and put them down. He actually manages to get Vaxlon down with the creeping barrage. Wow. And another team comes and knocking, but you don't want to mess with Moist when they are as locked in as they have been in this world's edge. That is actually insane. And the portal being put right in front of them too to try to contest through the armor doors of this tunnel side. Other thieves are still alive, and LG Chivas are poking them from afar while still maintaining the building security. Looking at Black Hand, who try to inch their way through the crates of that south side of Geyser, so then try to maybe get height if they can claim that building from LG. Okay, we're getting a great view here of our boys to trying to make this way into their circle. Okay, they call, go back. You can see just trying to smoke off different angles and work out who is ahead of them. They want that building. You can tell the way they're inching forward here but they're not going to take it unless they feel it's safe. Meanwhile, outside of the circle, Riddle Order, taking their time, using the Crafter, start a fight, are actually looking at them right now. Don't think they have information on where the circle is going to be pulling, considering there's a survey beacon in no name, only really revealing where all these other teams are already situated in. Yeah, so Exit very much out of the circle. They can pop in and grab probably the Survey Beacon in Fragment um, to allow them to feel, uh, think about their next move. Um, start a fight, as you can see, they're holding the top of the tunnel, so they may become a factor for Moist if they uh, move in at some point, but for the moment they're watching their backs, as they should be with Riddle Order close in pursuit. Patience from start a fight. Reinforcing the doors. No one's getting in here. They are going to be able to try to gatekeep Riddle Order, overlooking the outside of this tunnel. Most of the action is going to happen in Geyser, though, once this next circle is revealed. Some of these teams are going to be fighting inside of those buildings, and then when the next circle after that shows that they could be pulling towards the east side, that's when these teams are going to get funneled outside of those Geyser buildings. Uh, that next circle pull will be a telltale one. Okay, it actually shifts down to the pills at the, the southeastern side. So it'll probably be ending somewhere underneath that building. Black Hand at the moment do have Godspot. Can they hold on to it? You can bet your bottom dollar there are going to be teams just like evacing right on top of them, all around them. It can be a tough spot to hold. If it ends on that back building, you are so much safer. It's a lot easier to repel teams as they come in, but the this is what Black Hand have here. Actually, well, they've got the Watson. Okay, perfect pick here for that open ground. As we said, not as many other cryptos ascend. They're out. They're out already. So I think that was the only... I'll, I'll double check. I think that was the only other crypto team in the lobby. This could be fantastic news for Black Hand here. It's absolutely huge too because of the fact that aside from the building itself having that slight high ground, the way to get to where Black Hand is has a slight lip where you're forced to approach from the low ground and it can be a very difficult rotation unless you can move in for a third party and Black Hand finds themselves in a fight which is not something I'm expecting. Moist also rotating through the vault tunnel and pinch between start a fight and a hundred thieves here. Let's tune into a listen in with Moist Esports to see whether they're going to start rotating from. I got none. Fussy, how much light you got? M40. We can kill them once one zone's closed. It's going to be a really isolated fight. Yeah, yeah they're, they're not. Jesus in. Christ, what I'm is that? Fucking ear right. Answer for a team from um, HUD. Yeah, we, can, we just got a whole bunch of people. He's working. Use nades if we need to. 106 on one! They're walling! Yes, smokes! I'm getting to you, I'm getting to you. They're here, they're like. We need to play this left side, I think. Put them in the pinch. Yeah, I'm down. I smoked them, I smoked them. Selling and falling back a bit. They're, they're seeing party mechanic too. They might go. Play our left side, Fussy. Team in tunnel behind us as well. Oh, behind us. Gotta kill these guys. Fucking them. I almost cracked one. I'm batting. 15. I got smoked. I got charging, I got charging. Batting. 
I got Hazen Odin. Oh, no, that's mine, that's mine on you. Tifa, come to me, come to me. I'm trying, I'm trying, we're naded. We have to fight the team behind, I think. I'm just dead. Oh, what the fuck. fuck is this? I, I think we just need to Don't stress, don't stress. Wow, Moist, nothing they can do about that there. Wrapped on by multiple teams and start a 500 Thieves. And I think there's another team in there as well. Uh, Riddle Order, it looks like that yeah. was. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, just absolutely nothing they could do. They would have had to, to fight a team way earlier, uh, being way more aggressive, I think, to, to make anything happen. So it's 100 Thieves here, really, with uh, just a loot bonanza in the tunnel. I mean, who needs the loot vault when you got all the boxes? <laughs> I mean, when you have positional advantage closer to the ring than any of these other squads, that when Moist gave up that position, they allowed 100 Thieves to move there for free. That was the, what they had to pay when they wanted to try to gatekeep, start a fight or riddle order, depending on which entrance they wanted to go in through, through the tunnel. Yeah, Black Hand, we've seen the next circle, and it is 100% on Black Hand here. It can only get better for them at this point. They're number one in this uh, group here, in this series, and it's just going to be... Um, honestly, I think it's going to be a bit of a firing range um, for the Apex South boys here. So. Onik, they will be able to stay in their banana, in their snake, just a little bit. But you can see Jaylings up the top here. They will have to um, actually exit those buildings to try and get a little further in. Meanwhile, while Onik is inside the circle, inside of that building, they're going to get pinched by Dreamfire. And on the other side, they were already poking at Exit, so they could be the other side of the sandwich. Team Singularity, as they move in from an evac tower, from the choke point up the hill from Geyser to the north side, are on the edge close to Blackhand. You mentioned it before, Gino, one of the only ways to try to contest that spot is flying from the ground or flying from the sky, but it's about how you're going to be able to approach that next circle if you're going to get pinched by LG, who has rooftop of that building. That's when you have to start playing all the angles, Vicky. You know, that's why Dreamfire are underneath here. But honestly, uh, you know, since the uh, we don't see Gibraltar that much in the meta anymore, playing under and around these buildings is just so much harder than it once was. Smokes, sure they can stop other teams seeing you, but Digis, the Digis exist, and teams will have them at this point in the game. It's not from their own loot, it's off. These death boxes, Onyx Esports get taken out, so does FC destroy in your feed. Eight squads left as E6 takes on top of the roof with the Beast of the Hunt activated from Slayers. They've been here this whole time. Purple light mag in the hands with the car going for the reset as the Creepy Barrage has also been called in. Thanks to the gravity lift, they'll, they'll be able to avoid at least some of that damage. Yeah, and even if you weren't lucky enough to get a Digi, we're seeing a lot of Bloodhound here in this tournament. So they give themselves multiple options to see through those smokes. Tyler <laughs> just spraying it down here. As you, you can see, I mean, that's why one of the reasons why Horizon is such a strong pick at the moment. You can just get in there. There's so much vertical mobility, just like we saw there. Tyler, control legend here, can case when he clutch it up, though, right behind him. Is the other member, E6, get taken out by Rory. The last member alive by Dreamfire. He's playing off the knockdown skills. He goes for the quickest shield swap at the same time. But can he get away? This two-man squad is now approaching. Yeah, I don't know. Exit are looking over at this, just fight, trying to find some ridiculous angles. He wanted to go for the resets, but obviously couldn't with the attention there from Exit. They clean up the western side of the zone. Then you've got Jailings running away from 100 Thieves at the north. LG, they won't have that too hard a rotation, I think, from the east, actually. But in the center of it all, looking down at everybody else, we have Black Hand. Black Hand looking to take another dub under their belt at this tournament. 100 Thieves play this out as a duel. Ooh, nice. Toss the nade out. Was able to get a crack at the same time. Can they capitalize? Black Hand and Godfuck right now as the Catwall has been called up. Finally, they have actually moved a little bit out of some of those fences just to try and worry about the teams pushing in towards their north. It's LG, but I'm not sure they know they're there. The cat walls are up right now. As they go down, Black Hand will see this, but all the other teams are way too focused on each other. They're just going to peek over the lip here and destroy everybody. LG wasn't playing for the dub there, and now Black Hand are going to be able to capitalize. Well, Exit trying to get around Black Hand, but it's a full man swap from Black Hand. Well, Exit are playing this out as a duo. 
Okay, Gravity Lift goes up again. That will circumvent the black hole. At this point, there are still three squads alive, but there's only two members for LG and Exit. Black Hand with a full reset. Once again, they'll peek down and have full vision of these other teams. Black Hand looking to take another top here. Exit already cracked. Gravity Lift isn't going to be enough for them. Easy Flash drops all the way down, and then the last member gets taken out from Exit as Black Hand are your winners for our final game in the series. Easy Flash, the Indonesian fragger there, barely even registers on his face as they win that game. They knew they had it won. It was such a great position, the perfect composition to be playing that position. And from there, it was just too easy. It's a, I mean, that's a massive lobby from them. Blackhand have come out with, I think, the second highest series score of this tournament, 73 points. Barely losing out to the 78 the Dreamfire wow. put up yesterday, Vicky. That's insane. And when they're already topping the world standings for right now before we see our final group play out in their own series, what a performance from Blackhand, catching not only so many dubs, they had a good amount of KP to their name. They didn't have a lot that game around. They have already been comfortable playing out through these lobbies. They already know where they stand at this point where they're safe to start off in the winner's bracket. And you know, last time we saw Black Hand at LAN, I, I really felt like we weren't getting the full Easy Flash experience. Yeah. Okay, this guy has been such uh, a Terminator in Apex South for a really long time, Vicky. And it just felt like he dropped off at land. And there are people who do that, right? They look good in their home region. And then when you get them to land, they just don't quite hold up. But now, maybe it was just a little bit of landers. Maybe Easy Flash just needed to get that experience under his belt um, before he could really show us what he's made of. And he's done it right here. And confidence is everything when you're competing in front of a crowd. We got to see the Hannah, the Hannah flyer has come back up. I heard story-wise, the Hannah's actually his wife. So shout out to Hannah watching from home. And you love to see these storylines develop. He was able to declare his love and now they're already married. That was our Russian translator, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. So now the story gets to end itself here and we get to end our lobby, our second to last lobby for the day. We still have one more series to go, but we want to break down all the action. Toss it over to the desk, guys. Let us know your thoughts after an insane final three games. Thank you very much, Vicky and Genome. Talk about a dominating performance out of Blackhand. A second and first place finish on both maps in this series. They looked untouchable here, Mark. Yeah, very, very impressive. And I think Apex South in general will be very happy with how things went for them. It's not just, of course, Blackhand who got the win in that last game and looked very, very secure in their performances throughout the group. I think that you've got to give a lot of love to Moist as well. Back-to-back -back wins with arguably the clip of the entire tournament, the 360 no-scope. It was a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> I mean, we were waiting for Moist to kind of pick up that performance. We even got to see the interview that we did with them in the middle of the series, and that was what we were expecting from the beginning. Yeah, I think during the first set when me and Mark were commentating, we were a little bit worried because we looked at the points total Moist found themselves on, and we were like, if they don't get any good games here, then they might find themselves in the elimination. But as soon as they got that victory, it's all comfortable then. They could play with confidence, and as soon as they are playing with confidence, they become a team who can go back to back. That's the threat that Moist have, and that's why they're such a good team. All right, Grace. Well, we've got you back up here. Time to pick your brain a little bit because that Give was a that very, very strong finish. Talk to me about what you noticed just from Black Hand's performance in those final moments. Well, I think the best example we can give is literally the final circle of this last game. They, they've been consistent. I like to use the word consistent a lot, but let's just take discipline. They're so disciplined. If you guys look, it's, it's about to come up soon. The walls fall down. They see the teams fighting underneath. They go look for more points, kills, right? but they don't overcommit, they don't overextend. Look at this, he's stepping up, he's telling his teammates, hey guys, I'm stepping up, looking for kills, they're fighting right now, looking for some kills, looking for kills. His teammates get shot from the side soon. It's about to happen right about after this queue. They're like, okay guys, back up, we're about to get sent from left. Okay, group up, help me destroy the ult. Queuing up, okay, go back, go back, go back. And now they all return back again to their spot, and then they do it again, and then they clean swipe, like they clean wipe everything, right? They just have to keep being disciplined, and that's where the consistency comes in. 
There's one thing I noticed is actually very similar to how J Lynx played the first game, right? We were talking about discipline, we were talking about how they didn't overextend for those kills because they have every advantage you could want in that position, right? They have the high ground, they have the shield advantage, they've got everything you would want with the other teams fighting. The last thing you want to be is the player who gets picked over committing and then all of a sudden your game plan falls apart. And I think that as a Horizon player, there's always that extra responsibility in a final circle that you can be the one to regain the height if you do have to drop down. But you heard Genome say, easy flash. He's now popping off and showing what he's made of. You can see how the results look after match six. I mean, 16 points? Blackout, they didn't even need them. They're just taking points from other people at this point because they've already guaranteed themselves a winner's bracket. Yeah, but pretty evenly spread with these kills as well, with the exception of Dreamfire down there. Another squad that didn't really need the points got them anyways, keeping themselves up at the top of that leaderboard. This was an opportunity for anybody else to try and get something on the board. Ascent struggled a little bit this in this series. They've got five kills to close it out with match number six. I'm going to be interested to see how this ends up changing the overall series when the teams that were already at the top ended up performing yet again and just further solidifying that top 20 position. Yeah, I think there's a few teams that are going to be worried as well. I mean, Dan was kind of keeping his eye on KCP going through that, that series of games, and it's like, okay, they didn't have the best performance, and they kind of needed to be a, consi a consistent enough level to not have worries. Now they're going to be watching the last set of games go down, not competing and thinking, Oh, we're kind of preying on the downfall of others, which is not what you want to be doing. So a bit of a rough set for them, but you, at the same time, you've got to say you had the games in your hand at certain points and you weren't able to convert. Yeah. All right. Well, now that the series has closed out, we can officially say, even though I don't know how you wouldn't know, Black Hand is the winner of this series. Incredibly consistent performance. Like you said, Graceful disciplined as well in their gameplay. Very very deserving of taking this series home. But now, this is what it looks like when it's all said and done. Any of these teams outside of Black Hand, even here Graceful, that jump out at you with their performance? For me, Riddle Order popping off is really nice, but the one that I talked about the most yesterday is Moist Esports. This is what I've been expecting from them. I've always seen them as a world-class top tier, top five team even I would consider. And they're just waking up, they're just getting started. And I'm so happy to see that. Other teams we've also seen as Ascend has had a few good games today. j Link's had a few good, good, uh, good games today. I just want to see EU wake up, man, let's go. <laughs> yeah, j Link's they needed to have a big performance. That shoots them up to about 98 points, I think, which when we were talking about the cutoff, it was 92 at split two, it was 100 at split one, so 98 should be good. Could, could be but enough, the pioneers, should be though, enough. that Mark was mentioning, I think they find themselves about 91, which might be the benchmark that could everyone is looking for, but it could be enough, who knows? All right, well, Mark, we get to take a look at the overall standings now, seeing just how high Black Hand now sits after that performance. Exit following right behind them. This is a stacked top portion of the standings. Yeah, and one thing that always jumps out to me as well, there's a couple of teams who we need to give their flowers, right? I mean, Black Hand, incredible in that set. Yes, these standings are going to change when we get to the end of today and we get to the end of group play, but I think Dreamfire, they've been a standout. Undoubtedly, no surprise to see them in third place. LG, I think, as well, quietly gone about their business. I don't think we've talked about them enough, consistently putting points on the board, but can we give some, some props to start by eSports as well, being up there in seventh place? I think that's a phenomenal performance. Exactly as you've been saying about uh, LG as well that's been popping off, you don't notice the teams as much that are just consistently placing points on the board. They don't have huge games, they're consistent. Consistency is what carries you throughout the entire tournament. They give you more chances to handle it. And as you said, other teams are showing up as well. We still have one full series to decide. But if you can put that average 100, in, as a player we say 30, 33 points per series, but if you can put that 100 marker, you're safe. But if you're lucky, you could come come in with a little bit lower. Like you said, some teams. Need yeah, a few we more saw points. Pioneers at 15th with 91, and I think that is going to be where everyone's trying to look towards now, going into this final series of can we top all the Pioneers? It wouldn't be the Pioneers though without putting themselves in a rough spot, would it be? After the group <laughs> stages, they always seem to find themselves in elimination. I don't know why. Every time they get to that moment where you think they're going to be able to get through, they just fall short. But they're going to be watching, biting their nails for sure. Yeah, that's why that last series is going to be so important. But if I am not mistaken, we have have to talk to the winners, which means we have Peeps standing by with Strafing Flame to see how Black Hand's feeling after that. Glitter, thank you so much. We are here with Strafing Flame, one of the best players in the world, man. You guys just absolutely dominated that. Um, from positioning to gunplay to everything, you guys just look like you were ready to rock. So what do you guys do to mentally prepare, right, or maybe even physically prepare to play in the biggest tournament of the year? Uh, personally, for me, I think I, 
I try to underplay the importance of the tournament specifically because uh, I have struggled with playing under pressure a lot like throughout my career. And this time, you know, going into it thinking it's not important and thinking like I'm the best has really helped with my confidence and being able to perform at my best. And uh, both my teammates, none of them really struggle with it. Uh, Easy Flash is probably the best MNK player in the world. Best, like, I've never seen anyone as good as he is. And Player K used to play sports professionally, so he knows pressure like the back of his hand. And I could not, I do not want to play land with anyone else. Those guys are so good. I love that, man. And having confidence in your teammates like that, bro, that is just, that's the basis of good team play. You know, when you could trust somebody to swing that corner and get that knock, uh, that's absolutely amazing. So what, can you talk to us a little bit about the roles on the team and, you know, because the everyday viewer might not know too much about that. Yeah. So fill us in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Easy Flash is our fragger, and he's probably one of the best players in the world at doing that. Despite being on MNK, which is like fragger is usually a controller dominant role, Easy Flash will like smoke anyone else. Like I have fa that faith in him. And Player K is probably one of the best support players in the world. And I'm just the IGL. I just do whatever I need to. <laughs> I love that. Well, I mean, as IGL, in my opinion, it's the most important role. You know, you're the Tom Brady of the team. You're, you know, you're, you got f fourth quarter, two minutes left on the clock, you're down by seven. What are you going to do? You got to lead him up the field, yeah. right? Um, so what do you guys, what do you think is your biggest hurdle, all right, from winning this championship right here in Birmingham, UK? Uh, I think, believe it or not, it's going to be nerves for me specifically because I've always really struggled with pressure. Uh, I think if I have the confidence going into finals, I think we'll win. I think like there's just there's just we are way too good to not be able to like just close it in. But uh, personally, I, I have choked a lot under pressure, and as long as I can get through that, I'm confident like my teammates will just carry me to a win. I love that, man. Well, they're, they're going to need you. They're going to need you absolutely locked. But based on what I just saw there, you know, you have everything you need, right? And it looked like you had all the confidence in the world, man. So it, it blows my mind that you're, you know, a little iffy about that. But I think that's the first step in becoming better, right? Whether it's being a better person, a better player, that's the first step. What would winning this championship mean to you? mean to your teammates, mean to your family? I mean, winning would just mean absolutely everything. It's like every competitor's goal to like finally win when you're competing against the best of the best, right? And this is where it really matters. I mean, I, I wouldn't even know, like, I'd be way too happy, you know? It's, I, I don't know. Winning, I love is, winning is just the goal. Dude, I love that. Crowd's loving that as well, man. Well, this is Strafing Flame, one of the best players in the world. You can catch him all week long here in Birmingham, UK at the ALGS Championship. Thank you so much. Glitter, take it away. Thank you very much, peeps. I mean, I don't know if Strafing Flame's giving himself enough credit calling himself just the IGL. Yes, he's saying that nerves might get the better of him, but after the performance we saw with Black Hand now topping the overall board, the overall leaderboard, I just, I don't, I don't see the nerves. I mean, I've got to say that's one of the most honest and best interviews I think I've heard from a player in quite some time, you yeah. know. To, to give your teammates props is one thing. To admit your own faults and what you're trying to work on to be the best that you can is incredible as well. And, and trust me, now that I've heard that, you can see why Black Hand is such a good unit. There's so much trust there. And also you can see why you now want to get behind them and see them have this success because you're now rooting for them, right? You want to see them overcome the adversity. You want to see him being the player who does clutch up in that big moment. So I think Black Hand have just gained some fans for sure. Absolutely. Uh, relatable, graceful from the pro, pro player perspective. So um, since I came from a long way back with Nessie, we played in Europe for a, for a whole long time. I've seen the exact same thing. I came, I actually wasn't an IGL when I first started. I kind of got thrown into it on my first land a week before my land from, from a non IGLing role. Um, he's getting there, but the, the most thing is he's manifesting it. He knows his flaws. I'm working on this. I'm going to improve. He is improving. Currently, he's popping off like, you are already one of the best. If you can figure this out, GOAT. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Love that. Final thoughts. Going from the GOAT status. I mean, also, who backed you when you were on Nessie all the time? Oh, Jake and me. 
Yeah, but oh. who backed you? Oh, back, oh yeah. yeah. You know it. You, do. you know it. Even yeah. in the also, arena tournament. Prediction. Back, he, had to, he had to remind yeah, you that it was him. You didn't even remember. <laughs> but I'd say that Blackhand have shown that they can compete at the top, but are they going to be able to do it when TSM and Dark Zero are in the lobby as well, consistently putting down points? So I think this is going to be a very entertaining day when we get to winners' finals, but we still need to find out what teams are going to be joining Blackhand there. All right, well, speaking of that, we'll take a look at the schedule. Only one more series remaining on the day before we determine which teams will be in our winner's bracket and which will be in our elimination bracket. That means groups A and C will be closing the day out at 7 p.m. BST. And if you're unable to watch the stream or you missed anything that happened yesterday or earlier on in the day, just make sure you're following us on social media. That way you can stay up to date on everything that's going on the entire week here at the ALGS Championship. But like I said, there's only one more series left on the day. The most important series for some of these teams that are finding themselves on that bubble where we find out which 20 teams end up in our winner's bracket and the bottom 20 will be competing to keep their hopes and dreams alive here in our elimination bracket one. It's going to be a very exciting way to close out the day and you're not going to want to miss a single second of any of it. So before that, it's time for our final break. We'll return at seven for those last six matches of the group stage. So don't go anywhere. The action continues when we return. Win it. Black can come out on top. Red Lord are now should be able to clean this game up. They are dressed in red and they also can call themselves champions. Does look like it's a 2v2 Ooh. at this point. Oh, gets oh. the headshot with the Graver. Voice Esports takes the high ground. The Cowboys looking like tic tac toe. Don't think they can do anything about this. Oh and my god! He hits the 360! What? what a beast! 360 Graver shot into the top two combo! Easy flash drops all the way down into the last member gets taken out from XNS Blood Hand. Are your winners for a final game in the series? just to try and buy themselves a little bit of time. But you can see in Tropic, they know exactly where they are. They're just waiting for them to pop up. And Whack-A-Mole is going to be what they are playing. The ults are going to go down. The Black Hole followed by the Arkstar. The Wombo combo, but does it hit? It does, but not enough. And now, exacto has got to think about staying alive instead of picking up KP. I remember, Entropic started on seven points after finishing fourth in the winner's bracket round two. So they already have a good lead when it comes to trying to get to that threshold. A victory here would do them wonders for just edging even closer to that 50 points as now. Speaking of edging, the circle's starting to close in and forcing these teams together. Now, Danish can make a big impact on this final circle. And I think that's why we're seeing V2 just trying to eliminate them from the factor saying, look, if we can get the damage, if we can just force them into EQ here and maybe we can get the job done early but this is just so tough when you're a two at deciding who you want to try and push and Tropic are going to be hit by all sorts of problems one of them being the mother load coming in from Fuse Yolu doing what he can with the ult to slow them down and now the decision is made from V2 they want to try and push up they want to try and command the high ground and that's exactly what they are going to do Zidane gets that first knock there's the knuckle cluster there's the spray coming in from Yolu he's trying to finish this off himself two squads remain Careful over here. We 
Don't focus too much. I'm gonna play other side. We're in the zone and we just. Guys, if you have an 8 4 down here, guys, if you have an 8 4 down here, there will be free kills in like 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah, they have, they have no that's cover. just here because if they walk up, you need. We'll watch yeah, the climb up. I Anyone got an ultimate cellar? Anyone got a cellar? No, 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 no. You guys both focus that, okay? All right. I focus in front. Watch okay, the climb up. Yeah. Here. There's no one here. I've got. I'm gonna no there is a guy. Focus that, both of you focus that. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a there's a drone there as well. Careful. If you have ult, yeah. use it for this unlucky. Look, 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 ramp, look, ramp, open. Okay. Focus that. Okay, no, focus no, 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 no. Careful, careful the wall. Sh wall, 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 okay. Last one, the last guy's one, the last guy's one. Dead, dead. Nice, nice. Nice. All dead, all dead. Watch climb up, watch climb up. Okay. Watch, watch the terminal. Again. Watch the terminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flash, dead. I think the job, I think the job, I think the job. Okay. Can you, need, okay. Can, you get, can you get space on this team? Uh, why? I'm gonna shoot that. I uh, shot the pylon. My pylon said. My bangles, my bangles, my bangles. Scan, my bangles. Look at the guy in the open, Patty. I need heavy ammo right now if you have. I, uh, I dropped 60, you, drop 60. Drop 60 right there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I okay, under the bridge. On the fence, on the fence. Two ones, two ones, two ones. Two ones. That's that, that. Still on the fence okay. inside. Kill the fence together with the inside team. Okay? Let's try to get that. I'm three. shooting ammo. Yeah, good ult, good ult, huge ult. Nate. They got both TP stock, both TP. Another one TP. You're alone. I'm lucky you're alone. Shoot this pylon, shoot the pylon. That's the one. I'm dropping, I'm dropping. Yeah, the one? I'm dead. In the ult, in the ult. C1, C1. Dead. Nice. Hostile. Danger close. No, He's inside. Wait, nice. Nice. Okay. Down, but unfortunately, one of them's already fallen, and it's going to be the end for go next, but oh. not without going down with a fight. They got a lot of KP there. Did they get the placement points to force themselves towards match point? A very, very impressive game in the kills category for Go Next. But Maestro Gaming now, they've been in this position for the entirety of this game as we find ourselves now down to our final three. It's Blue White, Dan. Blue Whites have made it into top three from that horrible position they were in. It might just be a top three as Maestro make their move. But Dan, who's the team who's going to move in here and clean up the pieces? To who, Don are on there. Yeah, to try and get the victory, but they are taking their time. They back off. They do not get there quick enough. So Maestro now have a chance to reset, which means we're going to get a proper 3v3. But Tuhu Tonta do hold the better position. They have got the zone on their side, and they've got all of this utility to work with as Black Hole goes down. So they're all going to be used as well. They do have zone control, so they should be able to find a place to play. You know, up on that rock, he's going to be able to do damage onto Maestro. Akuma going to come and join him as well. The Dark Veil wasn't enough for Maestro to cut the zone in a way that they could rotate. This rock is everything at the moment, and Maestro is struggling to find a way through it. The good news for Maestro, they fully tanked up with red evos so in this fight they do have a hp advantage and they're hitting some good shots as well and maybe there's a confidence issue here as two who are reluctant oh, oh, to push oh. in and now the damage comes in from maestro as they continue on their way yeah this is looking like a maestro win all of a sudden my tax is gonna go down zero nothing trying to move in to clean things up and all of a sudden this is a jenny ready to put down if that's the case some fireworks for the sky as a double evac tower is called in just a distraction here too none of these teams want to possibly take this unless they want to try to reposition off the zip line carry that jump momentum forward these are going to take their time as you finally get called out as the solo we saw sonya live for as long as he can op now i'm starting the engagement while foot now take onto the roof bang all does go down everybody just trying to wait it out but still alive as well and like you're saying i think their play is to take the roof the problem is everyone's going to see them so they're trying to leave it as late as possible to show presence life and has to jump up there now alongside his two teammates as they have no other option now they try and cut the zone in half this is so no smart way. from for esports take the majority of players out of your eyesight now you can focus on one target in front of you it's a brilliant play call but they have to be aware of horizon behind them they know that they're right there, so they want to try to fully send this here, but the Rolling Thunder, rather, the barrage coming in here for them to worry about. Life in literally one, tries to duke it out, gets eliminated. Horizon now makes their way. The green light has been activated. Young Hong Kong is out of this lobby. We got outplayed now, playing from underneath down beast. Horizon Union in a great position, while the Cito Fonts are still fighting for their lives. Danish eliminated as well, so we're down to just three, and ANC outplayed, try to hold on, and see the France will go down, and Horizon Union, who were using the Dark Veil to survive the longest, look like they might be the last team standing, but no, Horizon Union suddenly on the back no. foot, can they? No Close way. Are they going to throw this one away? It's Annie Jackson who goes in here for N. It started here in terms of that engagement, Lacite de France and Maestro playing zone, going back to what we've said, it has worked so well for these teams. Can they get a result though here? 
Maestro Gaming probably doesn't have enough to finally find themselves on match point after this, but Lacite de France, could they maybe play spoiler and somehow take over the high ground? The question is, can you topple the king of the castle who has not moved from the beginning? That will be a win for any of these teams, especially the likes of Aurora, who have so much to prove and do not want to miss out oh my on goodness. an opportunity of getting the championships. Three squads left. They're climbing, Vicky. But what are they going to find at the top? Just bullets. Oh, is this the Halloween event going on right now? They're just trying to claw their way to force Maestro off this high ground here. Playing around zombies, just forcing them off their backs. Looking right, looking left here. Putting in the extra pressure to Aurora. They do get the knock off the art star, but they are not going to give up this spot. They need to hold this down. Yeah, you hear the catwall right behind them too, and the piercing spikes, but they're just going to stay here, and Lucito Fons are going to suffer for it. I mean, you've got smokes. Can the Catwall do anything for you here? I'm not sure if he's got the ability to play it right now. They've got the Loba Rampart and Path, so that's why they have this accessibility. It's going to be very hard to beat it, so you may just have to both, as two teams, jump up at the same time and find your spot, even if it's a little wonky. What? Maestro, they're feeling the pressure. Denze <gasps> almost goes down zero. Nothing goes down as well. This is Aurora. Sunset just made the move. Maestro somehow get taken down after what having looked like God's spot for sure. And it's the seat the front and Aurora who will fight it out for first place. Oh. And it looks like Aimbot is they can hold the bottom of this building. Vortex have the middle. And on the outside, there's definitely going to be a lot of ruckus as all these teams start to approach. I think Blue Whites are going to have the uh, toughest rotate here. You can see they're on the southern side of zone. They might be able to move up. And their backs are clear. So if they can get to this big rock in front of them, that's been frantically pinged and cut off line of sight by swinging right and maybe trying to just disguise themselves behind that dark veil. It might have a chance here to steal not only this game away, but a chance at match point as well. So really, really interesting moments for the team who has dominated the challenger circuit to try and poo prove here that they can do it on the biggest of stages in Tropic though. They need six points here, Dan, but my goodness, this is looking like a, a horrid position to be in. They've got ultimates, they've got nades, they've got everything being thrown at them. Yeah, Blue Whites have got eyes on them. Everyone seems to have eyes on them. On that west side in Tropic are getting absolutely demolished by grenades, by ultimates and by bullets as now the zone starts to force all these squads together. Whether you've got room in a building, on top of a building or under a building, you need to at least cut off some of those sight lines so you are not being kind of griefed by several teams as we're going to see another member of Entropic go down and Blue Whites are starting to push up. We certainly are indeed surviving for now. Having to just be singed but not burned. Nice spray coming in. We'll get one for Synetic. Dropping down to try and finish off the second as well. The knockdown shield a problem. They will start to fall as Flash is now left on his own. Smokes himself into a corner. Can take a little bit of zone damage here as six squads now remaining. But surely this is the end of his game. But no, with just about 10 HP left, he's managed to kind of avoid everyone here inside his zone. And Blue Whites are surviving. I'm not even sure he knows where he is right now, but he is surviving. That's was important foot go down they're into the top five are blue whites voltage are now using the portal to go in and out of this building to try and stay out of action as now we see tt go down as well four squads remain one team is still alive it's blue whites by the way Entropic, they're here too. Vortex, they're going to be eliminated in the meantime. Entropic, they will hit match point here with this performance as well. The team who are so impressive at the split two playoffs just came up short. That grand finals are looking to close things out. Blue Whites get into the top three. To deny, go next. But it's Lucie de France who find themselves now on match point for the next game and with a chance to try and play spoiler as well to go next. So it's all against go next right now. And it really depends as a team whether you're focusing on that kill feed. Do you have someone whose job is to really keep note of which teams have been eliminated which teams are still in the game if so there should be squads that know go next are still alive and there is a potential that it could end here and now as go next are starting to force their way in if they've got the ability to try and get to this rock they might be able to survive it's a truck excuse me that looks like a rock because it's got lots of greenery on it lots of shrubbery and they have just been able to work their way into the central side of this circle ever so slightly the overgrow has grown right in front of them too. Not just beyond the truck, but also this open space that they're gonna be forced to traverse. They are on the worst side of the circle right now too. Just waiting for dear life. Double art star and the seer tech. Oh. oh no! Go next with the art star from Alpha Draft. Give the points over to Phoenix Legacy. We are going on to another game. A game eight right after this. We have six teams on match point going into match number eight. Can Voltage be team number seven? They need to get 
Six more points, still very achievable, and they're in a good position to do so. They're just trying to worm their way out of this building using any utility they have just to keep teams away. Dark Veils go down now. Watson Fences and Jens available to them as well. Catwall for Catwall. Dancing around both sides. Voltage now getting taken out. Meanwhile, Libre says, this is none of my business. Focus on the fight in front of you. I'm just a fly on the wall that you don't want to deal with. Phoenix Legacy go out in four. Three squads left right now. Lucita Fons. The rest of the lobby starts doing damage to each other. And they can try and capitalize on that. Kraber in the hands of Davis, though. Stay. One poke. Oh, 112 is going to be good. Up on the high ground. And again, this is great for go next. More damage to them. Fantastic. Babies, keep doing your work because Horizon are going to be the ones that get punished. But it's not enough to get the knock. Go next, hoping the lobby takes care of itself and they can make one final push out towards zone here. Yeah, go next, going to try and delay this for as long as possible. Stay in cover, take as little amount of damage, and they'll be forced out and hope that everyone above them has already lost a member or taken a good amount of damage as Dark Veils now start to surround the final circle. Black holes go down as well. Horizon Union may be in a position to try and play spoiler and take us to a match number nine. Shots through the smoke coming in from Jay Savage. However, the piercing spikes are going to hurt. Now go next. Make their play call. The Dark Veil goes down. They're going to try and inch out. Use every single little bit of cover that they can. But now they're getting poked. Now they're getting prodded. Four squads remaining. But go next. Still healthy here. Can they get the finishes? The zone is forcing them forward. The Dark Veil is a problem. The piercing spikes are a problem as well. But Voltage go down. It's three squads. And oh my god. What an old that is. It takes so much damage. And now go next from an almost improbable position might be able to close this one out danish are done go next you are going to the alg yes you know still alive a, a real threat to this lobby with such impressive players on this roster players who have been at the very top of the Apex, Le Apex Legends scene and would love to return there and be at championships. And they are names who certainly are worthy of doing so as they now get aggressive and Ape Gang get eliminated. But is there going to be anyone to pick the pieces up? No, DNO survive. And that was a very important push just to try and take a little bit of space here. I mean, it's fascinating, isn't it? The team, you know, DNO, you've got Senox, Lou and Duplex, all players who have been some of the standouts, but for whatever reason, fallen off of, you know, the rosters that they've had put together for various different reasons but now they all find themselves together trying to pull off something in this last chance qualifier speaking of pulling something off i mean trev stacks at the moment he's yeah good good idea to turn away from that one because it didn't look too too good for him uh ksr eliminated we'll pretend that that didn't happen but dno still alive here as we're into our top three and now stallions had a good position but as they move into this circle it really depends if they can get onto a rock but i think because of where the other two teams are stallions still hold the best position because the other two squads are going to have to fight against one another and be forced into an engagement here at this rb well, Senox has got to pop a barrier at some point, you would imagine. Instead, he decides that the death is fine. Lou is going to be the last player alive for them. Duplex is still trying to do what he can as well. Excuse me, Duplex was still alive, but now this is just the trigger here, Dan, for Stallions to move in and try and pick up the pieces. Yeah, Stallions get into a position to try and get some angles here, but the knocks still haven't come through, so Stallions have to be careful. They are in the best position to win the game for sure, but they just have to have a little bit of patience before they get involved. DNO are eliminated. Stallions up on height. The IG are going to have to leave this building in a few seconds' time. The trailer is not going to be comfy enough. It's not going to be good. Stallions will be your champions of game number one. Acclimatize a finish on this, but they need to be worried about Secret Formula, who are holding that northeast side. I'm wondering if that Catwell was just a little too early, perhaps. Yes, they're blocking the vision off to their left, but you mentioned it. Secret Formula is off to their right. So is that solo from Meat Lovers here. Comes a creeping barrage as well. All the information that they can work with too. Four squads left. They lose out on design though. He gets isolated out of position. This is a squad that I was worried about that's now going to come right in front of them. That's going to be Secret Formula on the other side of this fight. Yeah, Secret Formula doing damage. Design for going down, but the res could potentially happen. Second guesses himself because the nade and Secret Formula will push up. As now Secret Formula holds central zone here and have a fantastic chance with a Kraber in the back pocket. Only one bullet left to maybe try and do some real damage as the grenades now starting to take more? onto the dojo. Oh, they finish up design. Can we get another one for Moin? They know it's a rat. They know it's a rat on the other side here. 
Just gotta hold on to it. The suspense while they play off the back end, but Secret Formula, they are in the best position right now in this lobby. Natural cover from the rocks. They have the black market behind them in case they want to swap off the Kraber after they use that last bullet, but they are locked in right now with the cat wall. They block out the vision and they're going to try to fully send it. Well, can the Dojo do anything as a two here? Secret Formula will send it on to the remaining player. And actually, they've taken quite a lot of damage there. Is the Dojo in any position to try and take this fight? Do they know it's a two that they're going up against? Still one bullet left with the Kraber, though. Well, they know. They took care of design long ago. Enemy gets taken out here. Yuvin is really low here, too. Oi is dancing around this rock with the PK in hand. Trying to contest that. Barrel stuffs him with the PK shot. And to think about how they want to play this final circle. 35 seconds to have a little bit of a think and a discussion between your side of how you want to approach this one. Furia, they're just a two on the low ground. So one of the most difficult positions for them. Everyone else seems to be healthy enough. But this circle is going to be going between these two buildings. So that those little crates that you see in the middle of your screen, that's about where the circle will finish. So it is going to be a tough old journey for everyone involved. No one is in prime position right now when it comes to the center circle. Oh, they're making a play on the roof. They're trying to take this most hated away from the dojo. And they might be the most hated if they're not careful. However... The dojo hold for now. Dynasty's last alive. Is anyone going to try and follow up on this damage? Two still alive here. Enemy is going to be taken down to barely any shields. And now Design Force says, you know what? You can all scrap. You can all fight. I'm going to try and survive. But it's going to be short-lived. The dojo are eliminated. As Stallions take the height. Stallions take the height. Stallions on 43. Stallions are seven points away from match point. A victory here would do it. In fact, I mean, top two and some kills would probably do it. And they're in a pretty good spot. Slayers, though, taking some damage. He's down low on his own and now that's so tough for stallions if they were all on the roof they would have had a real chance here but now they're gonna have to work their way as a two good news for them is there is another two on the board though furia a two that they're working with at the same time Fury down on that low ground. You can see that Zeratricky is trying to do what he can to survive i wonder if Fury have been taken down to just one that is going to be the case Stallions up on that high ground, so close here to match point. If they can close this out with a win and some KP alongside it, they've already got three, then maybe this is going to be our first team hitting match point in our last chance qualifier. Dark Veil vale ready. Dark Veil vale going to be raised here. They cut the zone, but they're going to be cut themselves. All of a sudden, what looked like a really good play looks a little bit more sketchy for them, but now they made the call to drop. Stallions is going to drop down here. Native Gaming looking to drop on this when the damage is now going to be done. They do, and Native Gaming... Circle starts closing behind them. Moby indicated that maybe Dojo could capitalize off of this, sends out that smoke here too. He is him. Can he be himmy though? Creeping Barrage now getting sent out. See if they got the opportunity, but enemy from behind gets caught by Yubin. Yubin is the solo player alive. <laughs> Manages to take him down, and now the Dojo... The keys have been handed over to Timmy. Had to use that Ulma as well just to try and buy a little bit of time. Respawn coming in here. Alvarelli will have a part in this end game, and there's a couple of death boxes in and around the vicinity of Furia. Question is, is he going to be able to pick something up? Because that zone is closing right behind them. Timmy somehow has managed to kind of avoid everything right now. Look at the placement points he's just picked up by doing that. Noxus has no gone, way. Native gone, Ryan's gone, Chatham's Prime, drop in gaming, all go, and the dojo are in the top five. Everyone dropping like flies, and Fury are on the rotate after getting the fresh rest, they're still able to access the box at their feet. Catwalk coming in, and Timmy is running for his life. Looked like they wanted to use a black hole, but holding on to it. Panders with a good decision making here. Looking at the other teams also rotating, that's gonna be KSR off to their left with the Rampart and the Amp Walls coming in too. I don't know how Timmy is still alive, but he is surviving as a solo. He takes the zipline up north, and now Yubin and him are gonna be able to face off, even with the shield swap. Timmy gets the knock and takes out Secret Formula, gets the revenge for his teammate. Oh my goodness, how is Timmy doing this? No way. About controller. Everybody loves watching MNK movement, and Timmy's one of the best in the world at it. He's still alive here.
as we have Beat three them. squads remaining. Furia, Team Stability, and it's Himmy if he can pull this one off. <laughs> he is him. And the fact that he juked them thinking, I'm not going to go on the gravity lift here. I'm just going to be able to take some extra cover, restabilize. But with the smoke, it's a little bit of an indicator. Zero knows, sends out the spikes in his direction. Timmy's going to take a shot at him. Taking to the skies, though, is an indicator that Fury know exactly where they are, or rather where he is, but they can't drop down here unless they want to try to use the gravity lift again and risk for a third party coming in from team stability on the other side. Timmy can kind of find an alt excel here. He can cause some pink. There's no way he gets him in, by the way. There's no way they call this in, right? No. It's going to be a little bit of extra cover, surely. You would imagine. If Timmy sticks... It would be the most Timmy thing in the world, by the way, if he goes to stick this reds and pulls it off. I'm just saying. All right, it's the bait. The circle's closing in. He's got to play for his life at this point. Evac tower coming in. Magnus getting the knock on top of Lily. This is... Things falling from the sky out here, too. Trying to greet them. Block out their vision with the smoke nades. They know he's right there. They can't give their focus and attention to a rat, though, when they have another squad right in front of them. <laughs> he's actually going to do it. Are you kidding me? He's sticking it. It's the most Timmy thing possible. As now Fury are forced down. No. The ground. They are going to fall. Shumi gets the first one for team stability. Madness is going to have time here to bat. But Fury are from that height are going to have to leave. And that is opening the door for team stability. But all of a sudden, it's a 2v2. And here comes Designful. He's got nothing to work with, but he's what? pissed. But maybe he can do enough to open the door for Timmy here. Open up the gates here. Timmy's playing up the knockdown. He gets a crack, but right behind him, he's out. way as team stability with just Shuby alive finds himself in a 1v3 furia with a number advantage and the team if they're able to get that cat wall online already quick enough Ooh, the bow check too hiding up the sky five squads left Avegan in such a good spot on this high ground they have some natural cover off the top once he wants to go back up again with the gravity lift gets a quick scope here it looked like maybe even maybe a shield back ammo? here too Oh, yes, he's got only 35 bullets, 10 in the reserve here for the Prowler. That's definitely what he's going to yeah. be working with here, too. Yep, good call out on there. Gets right back on top of the high ground here with the gravity lift. And holding this position and looking at his other teammates, they're playing split up. They get another knock, and that's exactly what we were expecting once that zone was going to close in right behind Secret Formula. I mean, now it's just a matter of being spoiled for choice. You, you have so many options. You just have to make sure that you can get it done. You only have two reloads now of your nemesis to be able to do damage. You got Wi-Fi down below trying to be involved, but look at Bursi on kick on the fuse. He's going to play a massive role here in this fight, allowing Thales to figure this out and push with the Prowler. They've got very minimal room for error, but I think they can do it, especially with their position right now, Vicky. It is just a matter of closing it out. They will have a win, and with 31 points, two squads left, they could easily be in the 40-point range if they can close this one out. Ape Gang need this, and they are in the best position to work with on this high ground. Fury are making their way now over. BIL playing off the low ground. Ape Gang get the memo. They drop down. They want an invite to the party here, wow. too. And what is left is cleaned up. Ape Gang are your... Secret formula. They need six more points to get onto match point themselves. No KP for the team at the moment, but they are forcing their way towards that zone. Keep your eyes on that kill feed. Good shots coming in from right now. We should be able to finish this one off as well and manage to do so. They're getting closer. They're getting closer and closer to match point, but they still need two here, Dan. Still need two. Seven squads remaining. DNO are starting to pick up some points here, which is catching them up to Furia. Remember, if Dojo win here, it will be second place afterwards. As Four, squads. Down. Four squads remain. Secret Formula going to fall as well. We're down to just two. It's Dojo versus DNO for a chance to be at the Apex Championships. Dojo. This is your moment. This is where you have to clutch up. They will know it better than anyone how close they are. The Bangalore Oil goes down. The black hole is destroyed. But the Dark Veil is also down. Duplex finds a safe place. And he also has a varnish spot here. Duplex! Duplex is down! Duplex is down, and that means the Dojo have a chance to move in with a 3v2 to close out match point and send themselves to the ALGS Championships. It's all about being patient here, Dan. It's all about the patience. It's all about the drama. They've played so incredibly well over the last few days. The LZQ has been dominated by Dojo and a chance to wrap it up here now with a 3 versus 2.
Three versus two, still Lou and Senox alive. Can Duke get back towards Lou? Are they going to be able to get a res off here? The damage is being done, though, and you can see that Design 4 has given the signal to go. They fly in the dojo. They came out swinging. They came out fighting, and they leave with tickets booked to Birmingham. SM holding on, they're into the top five. Guard eliminated. Member Ascend are still alive. SSG and Dreamfire are fighting, and Dreamfire have gone down. Fnatic are weak. This could be Ascend versus TSM. What a moment this is. Reps goes in, should be able to get the shield swap as well. Three squads remaining. One of them is Ascend, one Fnatic, and one TSM. Fnatic eliminated. It is a shootout to become the champions here in London between TSM and Ascend. There's two on the left and then one on the left on the box. Focus the guy on the left. You see you focus left. You yeah. see you focus left. Focus left. Both of you. He's going back. He's going back. He ran back. 64 on him. 64 on him. On me. He walked up on him. Zero to us. Zero to us. Zero to us. Now the fight goes down. So important that you get the damage here and it's done. TSM up in the skies. House goes down from the heavens. You smell it, I smell a third party Ooh. coming up right behind TSM. They gotta start watching out or else this fight is just taking way too long. Oh. They're getting the trade after those two cracks though. They need to be able to finally fully send it in. And Verholz is gonna call it. He beams one, Verholz single-handedly knocks one. Can he get the double? Yes, he does. Verholz going for the triple kill to kick off the ALGS playoffs in London. Welcome to the GD7 out here. Verholz with the hip fire Ooh. shot. He's looking to take out Alliance and Alliance is the first squad to go down. But in perfect timing, there's the third party that we were worried about. Reps gets taken out. And from behind them, because there are a couple of teams in the vicinity. Oh. A Zane shreds, and suddenly Urban gets hit to the floor. Oh my goodness, oh. what are you doing to a Zane? He fights two with the one clips. He's going to make oh. it three. Zane, you are a maniac. What a performance from Zane in the one versus three. Catches him off guard. He avoids TSM. He rotates wide. Get away. It's Zane. Zane is still alive. Zane. Still shredding as he gets into the top five. Zane is insane. Oh! What did you have for breakfast, Zane? I want some as well. It's going to be a full English. Surely Jay Ling's into the top four. And now Zane, the kill leader. Remember, he's been a solo for quite some time. And he's still going. What? Still hitting shots, but has to calm it down. Said they are going to make the push. They are going to make their way up. They don't want to wait any longer. They waited for the death box to be out. And they get involved in the fight. And it should be simple from here. There's a lot of damage. Hackers will get the second knock. Hackers gets the second one. One player left alive then on this high ground. Alliance looking to answer back. And Yuki looking to join the fight as well. Finish is going to come in as well, and let me tell you, that's BM, brother. He's not just looking for that armor swap. He wants to let them know that this is still Alliance's playground. It'll still work so hard, and here's Alliance and Flora finally re-engaging. Then it looks like this fight is going to eventually happen here. Mike is going to go down here. A little bit of hit fight from the Hemlock's going to be good enough to do damage, but it looks like Alliance maybe have the advantage here, but now Hackers goes down. Mandy goes down as well. It's all up to you, Yuki. He has been so clutch for Alliance in so many oh. moments. Go! Yuki. It all comes down to this. For three KP and three more placement points, 
It's the CEO versus the model. Yuki's an absolute monster, but Hell's better. He's gonna fry. Doesn't take any damage. Hell is perfect, but Yuki turns it around. No Get way. Get finish the shots. No. Yuki playing the knockdown, and Hell's gonna melt him again. Oh, he's most likely oh. him. He punches him, punches him away. He gets the extra space. He punches oh. him again. He's playing with his food, Vicky. He's playing with his food. He's won. But he's one HP. No, no! He was out of ammo. Was he out of ammo? Oh my God! Are you kidding me? Yuki clutches up against Hell in a one v one. How did he do that? What did we just see? The alley oop on the gravity lift in Dream Fire, moving in, cleaning up two of SCD. Can it be NorCal from the low ground who somehow wins this game? Azazel, last alive. Roy in a 1v1, I think. It's a 1v1 for the Brett. NorCal's out. Oh, SCD, Dream Fire right now. Roy trying to find a pop up opportunity. He doesn't have a knockdown deal for extra cover. Oh my goodness. FC Destroy plays the knockdown shield perfectly and wins the 1v1 against Roy. You will run the bank. Where are you, Jay? He's what? fighting. He's on the right side. Nice. They're gonna climb with you. You need to swing someone. Come inside, Jay. Come inside. Come inside. Swing. No. 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 I got a heal. I got a heal. Come inside. Come inside, Jay. Right Run with me. Yeah. Run with me, Jay. There's. Go, no, Jay. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go! I'm an out of score. What are you gonna see? What are you gonna see? Matei, 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 So Clan Eliminator were down to just five squads and two bullets with a Kraber, it could do so much, but pick up oh! Swinney gonna be swapped, gets the shield swap, gets the KP, needs to oh. stay alive, no melee does it! E6, they go down! But and it all falls onto the shoulders now of Waltzy. Have you got the nerve, son? Have you got the steel? Is the ice there to send your team through? Oh, oh. it is! Waltzy does it for ANT, a Sin will pick up the win, but that one kill! あ、ロペ、ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロペ。ロ
and shoot them in the air and then drop on their face. Yes, they did. <laughs> Luminosity. Uh, we'll 21 different. kills. 21 kills, setting a world record, and they're going to push Fulbrex and do the same thing to them. Turn around. LG with a huge game. Game number five to put them in first place. Over 20 kills for this team on top of the dub. <laughs> Look how slow this walk-in is, Vicky. We've never seen a finish like this ever. Shady, gonna finally push. He's gonna fly. He's gonna get deleted from the lobby. Waltzy and MT just hiding so well played. Singularity on top. Nice PK shot for 99. Alicia, Chile, Fabo. I have the high ground now. Singularity says. Alicia pushing him into the circle. Gets it again. Win! Singularity's advantage on the high ground does not come in clutch. It's voice and their positioning. Wrapping around, getting game number three. He's on, he's on. That, nice kill the right on team. You guys. That's fried on the right. They're all in one corner. One goes in the gap. I'm going to him. I'm going to him. He's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. The bang's almost back. The bang's almost back. Good on him. Both on me. Both on me. Both on me. Dead. One more. One more. One more. Is he low guild? No, I don't know. I don't know. Nice, nice. Good win. Good side. I'm sure canceling now. I'm sure canceling now. I missed. Thanks, one dead. Nice. I'm here with you, sweet. I'm swinging the bar. 100 on a two of them. Nice one. Good get there. Down on us. Down that are in the middle of Geo and NLG. They're the two teams we want to watch. Sweet is just keeping on going. Again, it is a train that's being run through, and it's Geo, it's NLG, it's a 3v3. And with the momentum that NLG have, is there any way that you can say Geo can do something to stop it? The Newcastle defensive wall will go down. Nathan trying to spray, trying to pray. There's a couple of shield swaps on the floor to play with, but at the moment, it looks like NLG are in a position to deal some damage. NLG just needs one kill, and they'll be on match point, but they want to win this game. Oh. That's where he takes him down. NRG will win the game here on Storm Point. And it was nothing short of the NRG death ball. He's on the box ceiling. I got him. Go, 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 Zero now. I'm shielding above them. Zero Get above this. Get above this. Get above this instantly. I'm pushing the guy up top. They're fighting another team. Oh, kill, this, kill this. Kill this. Kill this. Kill this. Kill this kid. TSM need one point, one point to join NRG on match point. The question is, can Howard Verholz get it done? And you heard the plan. They want to focus the team in the building. They want to ape it, but the team has gone now. So the plan is going to have to change. It's going to have to develop. They either need second place or they need one kill. They'll be on match point. Oh, and how gets the kill? How gets the kill? Needs to be secured. More damage being done by Imperial How. The CEO puts his team on match point. Match point achieved, but can they now double it up? It's two versus three. It's Onik. Here comes the black hole. Here comes the set. It's our swarm goes in as well. It's all up to Verhulst and Imperial How as a duo. Verhulst will fall down, but job done for TSM. Onik, however, will be your champions here on World's Edge. I have to bat. Have to bat. Watch out, Vernades, Vernades, Vernades. Watch out, Guild. 130 on Bloodhound. They're inside, okay. they're inside, I'm smoking the doors. Yeah. Brook the ult, Brook the ult. Can we get angles from the yeah, far yeah, side? Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm gonna get yeah. strong here. Are there two up, two I have no help, help, help guild. I'm batting on the door, I'm batting on the door, I'm batting on the door. Are they on roof? Yeah, yeah they're all so. on roof. I'm needing it. 30 on one. I'm, I'm medicating, getting, I'm medicating. <laughs> 80 on rock, fly up behind them, get and kill them all. I will, once I medicate. I'm on HP, I'm on HP, I need a bat, I need a bat. Follow me, 800 on this guy. Yo, you gotta do something. Blood on front. The guy's in place. Blood, blood. Bang, blood. Bang more slow. Blood, blood, blood. Blood, blood, blood. It's one to one, Gildy. It's very low. He's so one, man. You gotta just keep chasing. Why can't I talk? Nice. And then run forward in Falco. Run to the other way in Falco. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
Come on, come on. Come on. You have a send players going down. Now, the Valkyrie ultimate, the Skyward Dive, has been a flip of the coin sometimes for TSM. On match point, on the biggest stage of them all, will they find somewhere to play? The answer is yes. They find a spot and now they're griefing. They want to take the prime position here. They know Northeast is where you've got to go here. Smokes are down, but they've got the Digi Threats. Digi Threats. Perfect to see through those smokes, like you say. Rep picks up one, Verhoff picks up another, and TSM are looking hungry for it right now. LG, you are gone. for a lot sort of a vertical cover. Oh. DSM fighting for the high ground in this ring are going to be helped out even by, you guessed it. I feel like any time someone gets... Oh! Oh, they want to play. TSM wanted to play for a second, but they disrespected MDY White. It's going to be a quick clean up for MDY as they still own the high ground. They still have the power position. They never gave it up. Everyone gets it all black hole goes down. Go next, trying to hold on. It's all up to Hopley. Can he close out? Down. Two squads. Can I pull alongside him? All they've got to do is pick up the final KP. Damage being done. Flatline is the answer. It's a three versus three, but how much damage do you realize they get? Can they get the Gibby Bubble down? Have they already used it? Are they going to be able to reset? Kashira's going to go down and send you with that. Massive in his hands has made this one a little bit dicey. Lufka now moving in. He's got the car in his hands. Has he hit the reload? But this is looking like a Lufka game, but no! Series that saved them the game. With complexity and fight up against wow. LG, we're fighting for the winning squad. Whoever holds on to this spot should take it all. And LG oh. Shiva wants to go down. A collaboration of them and Luminosity. And in the 3v3, now Luminosity has to clutch up. Start a fight with the gimme. Crack Yanya almost take him down. And Cheeks pops over on the rampart. Getting melted oh. back at LG, the two. He has to reload. He armor swaps as well. Oh my god, are you kidding me? No way. Minion white. white. Minion white. It's gonna be a 1v1, Jen! Oh my goodness. It is indeed a 1v1, Greek. 
Can Jeb Burton clutch up here? He's done it so many times to get slowed by the Arkstar. He doesn't have a scan if he needs to. He has the knockdown shield and Jeb Burton clutches up!
gotta get you home in time to tuck in the pool.
in the city where things are happening. Maybe not that you would have thought, but definitely in the ALGS world. It's been London, the mecca so far of our eSport, but we transition to Birmingham to end the day and end the year of our championship. And we will crown someone as an eventual winner on Sunday, but first, there is an entire group stage and then a bracket stage coming up before we get there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Resorts World Arena. We are live and we are here ready for our final set of the day. Our series have gone twofold so far and we are here with the trifecta, but of course that means we've got to get three people on the desk that know what they're talking about. Unfortunately, we can only find two. I'm here alongside Onset and Gaskin. They're going to carry me, carry me through this one. Is that, is that for you? Was that a, was that a crowd chant for us? I hope so. Us and Gaskin, so. my God. I know what to do with that. <laughs> Some popular books. Can you just react to that for a second? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you guys here. Obviously, you've been watching today, Dan, though. Electric atmosphere in here. Obviously, the week's still warming up, and obviously, the weekend uh, will continue to bring more fans and more excitement into the arena as we head towards the bracket stage, but one more series to go. Yeah, this is crunch time now. We see two groups that have already concluded their games, and they have finished the points total they can find, but now we're going to have two more groups that are trying to catch them up. This is the most exciting part of the day for me, because I get to start doing my mathematics, <laughs> trying to work out those averages, trying to work out where people are going to be aiming for and we've said around kind of 95 points might be able to do it i think at the moment 102 guarantees you but that will go down as we see the points gathered by these teams well when it comes to gathering points some teams have been a little ahead of the curve so far we'll talk about what that means but let's show you a little bit about what happened earlier on in the second set of the day obviously we've had a long match series going on that has included a bunch of teams popping off mark but really for me the story has been APAC they have performed so well over the course of these last two days and they are positioning themselves to be in the winners finals yeah completely agree with you I think that Moist had a very very good run but oh, I think we need to talk about the team you can see on your screen right now that's going to be black hand and strafing flame with incredible interview to close out the set as well really kind of gave us an insight what it's like to not just be in his shoes as the the IGL the leader but also what he has to go through in those games and what he knows he has to work on if they want to have success but Moist Esports also I will say providing us with the clip of the tournament <laughs> arguably the clip of the year with a 360 no scope it was ridiculous you should have heard us in the green room everyone popped off understandably so it's been one of the best things to is. see Dan oh. watch this clip oh. right here your reaction to this I mean all of us, we were going wild. Yeah, it's just one of those, uh, I think I saw like celebrities <laughs> tweeting about it, or, or sorry, Xing about it on social media, because Very it was good. just one of those that popped off. And it just will build confidence for this Moist squad. And I think that Moist are gonna be a team we have to look out for as we move forward in this tournament. It really does shift the combo as to if we're expecting APAC to, in the winner's finals and in the finals, continue to have this level, level of domination. We've seen EMEA teams affected, by effects such as Alliance joining a little bit late, maybe to a late start as well. Ascend, though, had a really nice earlier start to the day. It's almost as if North America, where are you right now? We're going to have a chance to answer that question coming up in this final series of the day. But as it stood over our last six, we have Blackhand taking a commanding lead. It looks like what Dreamfire did earlier on yesterday in their first set, 73 points. Riddle Order coming right behind them from APAC North, Moist Esports, APAC South, and 100 Thieves staying in there, which have quietly kept into a very consistent position. And overall, if you look at the standings, you'll see right here that we've got a myriad of representation. Mark Blackhand obviously at the top, and Dan, uh, look at this. I mean, everyone seems to have a go. Even South America and start a fight esports there. So. And I'm pretty confident those 10 teams are into the winner's bracket with the points total that they find themselves Already. on. Wow. So at the moment, I think that they're guaranteed. Singularity and NRG should be, but then this is where it starts to get interesting. Jaylings on 98, 100 Thieves on 97. Yep. Could be okay, but Pioneers at 91. I feel like this is where it starts to get very dicey. And a lot of these teams that are playing in this next series are going to be aiming for that points total. So Riddle Order have to perform as well. We know they have the ability to do so, but only 74 points. Uh, obviously, this is a big chance. And when you look at the back half of this, Mark, what stands out to you as the teams in that bottom 20 that need to perform to get there? Maybe you would be expecting to be in the winners, but might not be able to do it. I mean, two teams that are in the top 10 of our finals at the split two playoffs are down at the bottom of the leaderboards at the moment. You've got Oxygen Esports. A lot of maybe pressure after the expectation level has been risen for them over the, the last couple of events. But FaZe as well. I mean, a lot of the time 
time. I haven't seen FaZe involved in end games. I've seen them getting caught on their rotates. Uh, it doesn't quite seem to be coming together for them at the moment, but you know, there's opportunities ahead of them to put that right. One of the more difficult things is when a team isn't winning, they, they don't get that interview at the end. So you kind of have to wait to see what they're thinking, what is going wrong. Maybe we talk about in between games or at the hotel later on. But of course, we are looking for several squads to answer the questions we might have of them. Best way to answer them, though, is through your gameplay. And speaking of who is about to play, let's take a look at the teams participating in our final set of the day. And uh, when it comes to it, I mean, to me, A and C have so many big names, so many stories around them. From It's Timmy, uh, you look at Designful, Enemy, uh, from Dojo. They've been performing well, all the way to the TSMs, the Optics, which I think have been phenomenal, and Disguise as well, our two LCQ teams. Yeah, I think one thing to keep an eye on on World's Edge especially is we've seen this long-standing contest going down between Alliance and Dojo. Yes. And with the position that both these teams are actually in at the moment, it doesn't really favor either of the teams to know that they're going into a game, and if it's a hot contest, that they'll come out a bit with zero, because both of them at the moment are kind of on the outside looking into that top 20. So I think for both of them, it's, it's either we maybe we can test game one, Maybe we can test game two, but I don't think you can afford to have three games in a row where you might lose the contest and come out with zero points. Both teams desperately need it. In fact, you just mentioned FaZe. That is what happened to them earlier on. A question, though, that cannot be avoided is two of the top teams going head-to-head -head again for our last group stage match. Of course, it's TSM, and it is Dark Zero. Dark Zero recently winning our split two playoffs in London. TSM taking the very first one in February. But Dark Zero, you have to say, they have put together not only a couple of unbelievable wins, but some surprisingly inspiring performances in the way that they have been able to battle people's expectations and keep proving that they are better than we think. In fact, we've had a chance to take a look at Dark Zero's story in a very cool way. The back-to-back -back champions. Match point specialists! Dark Zero, a team representing APAC South in year two of the ALGS, shocked the world, winning both the split two playoffs and the ALGS championship. And yet, their ambitions were still unsatisfied. Moving to NA just improved our gameplay overall. We're definitely a better team than we once were last year. And in their first split in NA, the region lived up to that challenge as DZ struggled and many questioned if they had made the right decision. Near the end of the split, things looked dire, but then in the regional finals, they narrowly squeaked into land qualification. Yeah, we're just like not very used to like the rotations of all NA teams, like that we've only played against the ones who had been to lands. But the split was behind them. All that mattered now was land, and despite having to go through the loser's bracket, they made it to the finals lobby. Dark Zero had the chance to do the unthinkable the three-peat to cement themselves as a dynasty and the greatest team of all time. The vibes were good, but we had to adjust to a whole new character comp. Just adjusting to the characters, like the fit wasn't very good. We didn't do too well when we first moved. Not only did DZ finish in a somewhat disappointing 13th place. TSM up in the skies, house goes down from the heavens! London belongs to T! but their rivals, TSM, took home the trophy. Heading into split two, the conversation was no longer about the dominance of Dark Zero. But they began the split strong, showing they had begun to adjust to the style of play in North America, and then a bombshell dropped. Sharky, a longtime member of the team, retired. I was like, oh, just pretty scuffed looking for a third. We had like very minimal time to pick Rambo and then to pick Zaino. Like the fundamentals he showed was like the main decision behind it. When I joined DZ, I was like, it was a little nerve wracking, you know, first running the team. Although Zainu was such a new addition to the team with little turnaround time before the regional finals, the results were instant. Oh. Dark Zero are gonna do it! Dark Zero oh. are gonna win it again! The match point specialists surely see this one out, and they do! But finally, the split two playoffs have arrived. Dark Zero's chance to redeem themselves on the international stage is here. During their run to the finals lobby, they went under the radar as TSM and Alliance stole the headlines. But all of that changed very quickly. It would be a mesmerizing play if he could pull this off, but Jens had time now to pop that battery, send in Zainu, send in Jen Burden, send the victory screen towards Dark Zero. It only took Dark Zero three games to reach match point. They came close to closing it out immediately after in game four, but ended up finally sealing the deal and winning their third land title in the last four attempts. The Dark Zero dynasty was now cemented in the history books forever. Zero once again proved to be arguably the greatest IGL in history. Jen Burton answered the doubters who believed he had fallen off since moving to North America. 
and the rookie Zainu won a LAN in his first ever split of Pro League. And yet, the job is not finished. In year three of the ALGS, both Dark Zero and TSM have won a LAN, and all time, they are now tied at three apiece. Yes, everyone hyping up TSM, obviously, because the CEO. But we are definitely the favorites, I would say, for this tournament. I don't like being the favorite, I like being the underdog. Like, it adds to the story, you know? But, yeah, we're definitely the favorites. I think it's just us and TSM, better than no one else, so, like, either or, all right, well, we're gonna win. But with our eyes now set on the championship, our Dark Zero, the favorites to win it all, and claim the title as the greatest team of all time. A heavy weight to carry no matter who you are, the greatest team of all time. Could they do it? Certainly, if they win here in Birmingham, we would have to start having that conversation. But as you can see from Zero and the rest of the team, they feel pretty confident that they'll be able to lift the trophy. One person who's been following their journey and now has been following us somehow to Birmingham, UK, they may not expect, was in the stands, helping to produce, create, narrate, and overall help us with catching these storylines and making sure to fill out the important moments that happen behind the scenes with these players. And it is none other than Jayhawk, who is joining us now as a surprise guest on the desk. Jayhawk. How are you feeling, man? Welcome to Birmingham, and it's great to have you working with us behind the scenes and telling these stories that are so important uh, to educate our fans about the journeys these players go through. It's a surreal experience, honestly. I've been on the other side of the screen so many times, watching land, seeing you guys talk about all these teams, watching these moments, and actually getting to be here in person, meet all the players, you know, and actually experience the crowd and the atmosphere, the Dreamfire fans. It's a blast. What's been the one thing that you, you feel separates being at LAN versus doing it? Because you make so much content on YouTube that people consume. We've consumed it in our backstage as well, prepping for some of the regions that we don't get a chance to see as much. What's the big difference that you have experienced so far being here actually in person? Just the sense of community. Like you get to meet so many fans of teams from around the world. You get to see the players, the meet and greets and just walking around the stadium, the coaches, the different orgs and the people behind the scenes, you guys, the talent here. The community that you get to experience being here in person, it's like nothing else. Yeah, and Mark and, and Dan, they can attest. We, we've been using a lot of uh, the, the not only narration for some of the videos that people have seen and may not be seeing very, very soon, but also just the fact that uh, these stories are really what make our eSport. And I'm curious to you if this story in particular, Dark Zero TSM, you feel that there's some type of um, I don't know, change in what the narrative might be? Do you think there's something surprising that people aren't expecting? Uh, maybe TSM coming out stronger than some might think? Or do you think, you know, Dark Zero, with their confidence, really deserve it and they are going to hoist that trophy this time around? Well, the interesting part about this rivalry is that I think a lot of people, when they see these teams constantly winning, you watch from their perspective, it seems so easy. They just walk into the zone, and it seems like, well, they got lucky. They got a circle that was near them. Something just was blessed to them, and they just happened to win. But when you really delve into their gameplay and the fact that only two teams have been able to win a LAN, you realize that there's something unique about these two teams, and it's really hard to not expect them to do it again here at Champs. Yeah. And so... I don't know who wins between these two. I feel like there's an added motivation for TSM having seen Dark Zero tie it up last time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I know that Zero, he is a man on a mission. Jen Burton is ready to win. And Zainu, this kid has never lost on match point. <laughs> well, that's, that's a hell of a record. He's only played once, but it is an incredible record to see that as well. And Jayhawk, I'm sure uh, either way, great stories will unfold, whether Dark Zero or TSM win this time around. They may get a title temporarily, but just like in Split 1, or is all TSM, Dark Zero, they have taken it back and have set us up for a wonderful champs. Thank you so much. We hope to see you throughout the event and throughout maybe the broadcast yet again. But in terms of getting to the games, which are almost underway, we've got to lean in with our predictions. And of course, the talent we've been talking about the scenes who we think is going to do well in this one a lot of optic gamings actually uh spider tip with a realized dark zero with genome who um you know i have to always joke with is now north america's pride because they you know they switch regions so he doesn't like not that sure joke. We, I'm not sure we like that joke i'm, not, I'm not sure yeah. mark likes that joke dan doesn't like it either um, i'm a fan yeah, Jay Jayhawk <laughs> likes it, okay? And so we've got that first one. I want to go to the final uh, page as well. That way we can kind of digest this completely because I think, Jayhawk, you've got a pick also. Why don't you talk to us about the pick? Oxygen Esports, talk to me about them. Yeah, Oxygen Esports is a team that, as we saw in the last Split 2 playoffs, they're a dominant force. We've seen them actually prove it on land. There was a big question mark going into the last Split 2 playoffs. Can they actually do it? They did it. They handled the pressure. 
Now the pressure's here again in a way they haven't experienced it before. But they've been a team this entire year. In Apex, there's a lot of roster shifts. They didn't choose to do that despite in split one, only finishing in 16th in North America. When you look in the stats of what they've done so far, they are struggling in two areas, kills and on storm point. And that is what Oxygen thrives at. They were dominant on storm point in the split two playoffs. And obviously they're one of the best fighting teams in the world. And so I am expecting them to handle that pressure, bounce back, the BR demons are gonna show up. I love it. I mean, that's I'm sold. Yeah. Oxygen, Mama Reeds, I know, is in the house as well. Plenty of family all around, and, and from Dark Zero and obviously Oxygen, we've got representation. TSM's parents as well. Hal's parents are here, and brother, actually. But Mark and Dan, quickly before we have to go into uh, the series, which I'm sure people are waiting for, talk to me a little bit about your picks, why you select what you select. I mean, I looked after gaming because coming into the tournament, I thought they were one of the form teams. When you were watching the international scrims, they were always within the top five week after week. It felt like they were just consistently putting points on the board, but yeah has been somewhat surprising to see them on the bubble going into this last set that we're going to see. But there are some good signs. I feel like there were some good optic gaming signs last time that we saw them on our screens. We saw them really start to participate in a few more end games. And I just believe that it will come together at the right time for them. I expect to see them in the winner's side. I was bullied, right? Okay. I wanted to put TSM. I wanted to pick Dark Zero. So you can't do that. It's boring. So I went for Alliance. Maybe there'll be an outside pick. But really, I wanted to pick one of TSM or Dark Zero. But the, the, the scary thing about this group is, because TSM and Dark Zero are going to be competing, it's going to be difficult for a lot of these bubble teams to get points, right. which what makes it so exciting. And that's what makes all of these other stories possibly the story that we start focusing on. It's easy to lose track when you have two big kind of bright lights in front of you. Maybe somebody sneaks in uh, in the darkness to go ahead and claim the spotlight. We will find out very soon. But for those watching, we want to make sure that you are getting what you deserve, which of course, well, it's a good time, but it's Twitch drops. That's really what I'm talking about. Thursday is today. It's Crimson Hawk Valkyrie skin time. So make sure you grab that. Hopefully you got your Crimson Striker Peacekeeper skin as well to go along with it to finish off some downed opponents in game. But Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we turn up the heat. You'll see more people in the stands. Here you will see more action from the exclusive AL LGS Championship stickers, hollow sprays, and ultimately the gun charm, which you can show off every single moment that you are playing Apex Legends. Wow. So excited about this. And you know what I'm very excited about as well? Something that happens to a, a very well-deserving player. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet, but EA Electronic Arts has introduced the new Positive Play Award. And they've selected Apex Legends and a player from this community to have the representation of earning that first award in this prestigious category of being somebody who honors the community in being a bright light, someone who is extremely supportive and obviously shows us what it means to be a true team player and a good influence. We have the votes tallied, you have voted, we have found out who it is, and we will reveal it on September 10th. So stay tuned for our Positive Play Award coming up on Championship Sunday. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited. It's our final series of the day. We've got bracket stage after this, but one more matchup between A and C. Let's kick it over to our casters and see what they got. Hey, thank you so much, Rain Day. We couldn't be more excited to be here in the Resorts World Arena. Spider Tiff and Dia, we're going to be calling all the action. But before we jump into that, I want to touch base on a point that Gaskin mentioned up there, talking about the big hitters in the lobby soaking up a lot of the points. Yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting talking to other teams that are participating in this matchup because, of course, everybody's looking at making it to winner's bracket, having a little bit of extra safety. But there's another point of focus, and that is that with the two LAN winners in the lobby, it's also your best opportunity not just to make the winner's bracket, but to practice for finals. That even if you jump into loser's bracket, you have the chance to make. So look out for everybody, everybody playing their best game of Apex Legends. It doesn't have to be about collecting kills. It has to be about preparing for the wins. And on Storm Point is where we're going to be starting that whole journey. And it's going to be really fun. We've got a couple contests to keep our eyes on. Specifically, we might get that Optic Gaming Gombre Otosan over at Down Beast. We'll look towards that later. But I know even in the green room, Bullet graceful they were talking about how it's actually really nice to start out on storm point as opposed to world's edge they might be able to gather a lot of points and for teams like oxygen esports you know jayhawk was mentioning it on the desk saying they are so good at getting points through the split two playoffs but think back to split two playoffs so many of those zones pulled barometer and yep. they were able to capitalize on that yeah and and, and it was also at a, at a point in time where beacons were a little bit more predictable for oxygen and now 
where beacons have, I think, been punishing for a lot of teams. We'll see how they deal with that because Barometer, while it is relatively central, is also vulnerable in that it's, it often has to go straight through the center of the map at the same time as a lot of other teams rotating. It's not exactly like fish farms where you can take your time looting up and still play a nice, decent edge game of Apex Legends. So I'm wondering whether Barometer will end up biting Oxygen, but they're a team that I had very high hopes for coming into this land, and despite the fact that they are not quite in position to qualify to winner's bracket, I, I haven't fallen off that train just yet. This is a series that needs to be the best of their life. Granted, you go to that elimination bracket, it's not over just yet. You'll be able to play your best, but that Aurora complexity at Cenote Cave, throughout all of international scrims, it has been so chaotic to watch, and I can only imagine, after reading the timeline between Oirain and Impulse and Monsoon, <laughs> they are just ready to duke it out. But Dark Zero nearby at the mill, should they decide to maybe third party one of the potential contests nearby, it could throw a wrench in their game, and Complexity needs to perform here today, as well as Aurora. You, you know that Dark Zero loves to third party, and I'll be honest, if it's me, I might pop over towards Downed Beast, because no matter who wins that particular contest, or contest, making making your the lives of Optic harder is going to be really important, especially as they're another arguably finals contender. The way they've performed in group stage has been really strong. There's a reason I predicted them for the series. Oh, well, tell me more. I mean, obviously, they're really impressive. Landing over there at Down Beast, they get a plethora of loot, usually good shields, easy rotates, and especially when you start to think about how some of those storm point zones have enacted to going up towards North Pad, where Fnatic will land, and they seem relatively uncontested this time, you know, obviously a little more clear, but TSM at the wall, Optic at Down Beast, Dark Zero at the mill. That's a lot of the top titans just surrounding them, and they have a must perform here to get into the winner's bracket. Absolutely. So, in fact, we're about to jump into the lobby. So, we got Legend Select up, which is an important time for us to figure out exactly how teams like MDY White, who do need a breakout series, are going to be performing this. Importantly, they've chosen to go with the Gibraltar, which is a departure from the meta of the championship so far, but not a pick that's been absent. 100 Thieves have been picking this up as well, and I don't think the Gibraltar is an out-of-nowhere pick. I think you can really get some serious value out of this particular legend. Well, the MDY White fans surely agree with you. I can hear them in the crowd now, but we are locked. We are loaded. We are in the dropship, and as our players make their way down to Storm point, it is all going to start here. I love the split drop that FaZe and Nax. They grab the Trident from Fish Farm, drive it straight up to Launchpad, and they will be able to utilize that for their later rotation. With the dropship starting us off in the southeast, it does mean that FaZe get that boots on the ground first advantage, which could mean a lot, especially because they already have a crafter at Launchpad, and they can get so much more done in this time using the time to craft bats, assuming they get themselves some nice shields, and maybe even crafting up shields if they don't. It'll allow them a priority rotate, and on the other side, Optic are gonna be late dropping over at Downed Beast. Although, looking at my map, it doesn't seem like Gunbare has chosen to contest. In fact, we've got them on screen, landing instead just off to the north of the wall, with the potential to rotate over to the previously unoccupied high point. Well, that's actually not bad for them. I know Minus was talking about the draw spots, but but before we get there, Aurora and Complexity. They typically like to land very similar on each other. Monsoon will take the building, grab oh a weapon, God. but Impulse, he wants to shut it down as much as possible with Luda already down, turning it into a 3v2. Yes, Uchok goes a little bit low, but raining on the high ground with the RE45, that's not bad to land on a flatline as well. That is what you need. Yeah, flatline feels incredible at every stage in the game. It is one of the best guns in Apex Legends, and Aurora, for their part, have a Peacekeeper as well. So things are solidly in their favor with an early pick and some serious powerhouse weaponry. Contest's not over, but because they already have an advantage, because they have the majority of the ground outside of this building, the complexity you're in, it's up to them to wait and ultimately for complexity to make a mistake. 
You can see the smoke out there trying to keep Monsoon and Cody inside the building with no real angles to put down on them as Oirein and Yuchako. You can see them kind of setting up the trap, grabbing those thermites, looking to use the grab lift to take to that high ground and force them. Now, the one thing that I've seen Aurora is so impeccable at is setting a trap where they'll leave one member outside and nade spam inside the building to force them out the front door. And it's funny how I immediately we got a small relocation. It's a delay on the contest, nothing more, but it's given the opportunity to chunk Impulse out and even up the numbers for just a second. Uchako going to drop inside, try to control this line of sight with the Sentinel. It's going to be pretty feast or famine, and he misses the first shot, pulls out the wingman, and just does a touch of damage. Hasn't had anything traded back on him, and it gives the rest of Aurora time to stabilize. You think about it, this Uchako holds push. this door, and it's going to nice. connect, but we just need one more, oh. but Uchako goes down. Oyer and Impulse are going to have to close it, and they are able to pick up the trade but they are not done yet. We just have one member of Complexity. Were they able to get away? No, they were not. Monsoon is gonna fall and Complexity will lose the 50-50 here on the first map. I respect going down trying to at least finish the fight. Complexity weren't gonna get a lot done just because of how long this contest had taken, but both teams have missed out on a lot of time taken to loot and rotate. We've sat in two buildings the entire time. Now Aurora get to loot the rest of Cenote, and they've missed out seriously. When we look at all the people around them, Mill is gone, Down to Beast is gone, North Pat is gone, even Oxygen over at Barometer have left. N almost nobody is left because we're all rotating up to where the game is ultimately going to be played. Yeah, it's really tough. You see Dark Zero, this is typically where they'll position themselves the moment that circle starts to pull up north towards Cascade Falls, and that's actually a really solid way because the last time they played from here, they were able to pick up so many elimination, so much damage throughout, but Fnatic, I love the rotation going through the wall and dropping down just below it. You control as much space as possible, and in all likelihood, most teams don't rotate back up to the north, pushing into high ground, so it leaves Fnatic in a relatively easy spot to play from, an unchallenged rotation. It'll be good for them, but other teams do have it a little bit harder. Say, teams like Oxygen, who are going to be playing uh, just on the top side of the ski lift, it's not a fantastic place to be, and for now, it'll be fine. But once we get later on into the game, the likelihood that Zone actually pulls over here is very low. Checking in, Gombre Otosan hitting the rotate, sitting on triple white. But this is the legend composition that they had played during split two playoffs. That's Valve, Watson, Newcastle. Time is of the essence, and look at them making unplayable spots playable. But check out, we had recently talked with TSM. They are going through the spiders there. But the command center positioning that they have taken, thinking that zone would be the ultimate high ground as things start to collapse around them. Their only real risk here is maybe someone challenging them for this position, but you have to hold out the teams rotating through Command Center. That you do, and the, the nice thing about it is that with a survey beacon in Command Center, you should have an idea of when and if somebody is there. It does tend to be a pretty popular rotation because it takes you around the inside, doesn't expose you to a lot of fire from afar, a lot of 30-30 shots, the likes of which we're seeing from HAL, but it is just a bit of shield farming, and something that TSM can afford to do and should be doing to Evo their shields up because they've got plenty of cells to back, back up this decision making to do as we keep an eye out. We got a good levels up there, Phoenix Kid, and now we're just going to be exactly kind of just vibing, as Nice Wig would say. It's so funny, we're on TSM. I saw some pictures on the timeline, even from Timmy, who's playing in this lobby. I think his dad may have went over and checked out the TSM booth and traded teams, but... <laughs> Loyalty, where is it? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he'll, he'll actually get mad about that. Dads are seriously territorial. He, he, they they want to know, or rather, they want their children to know that they're supported. So look out. It, I haven't seen Timmy's dad rage yet, but it's possible. Now, I will, I will say, I will say that for right now, there is no need to be upset. Everybody is doing fine. We have barely dropped a team at this point, having seen Complexity go out ages ago. And Dojo are getting to play their game. At Checkpoint, they've even got a beacon scan available to them, and it's going to be a pretty easy rotate out of Checkpoint. The real struggle will be when you eventually have to go over to Bunny Slopes, where we saw the game end earlier. 
here because that's where open ground can be a lot more punishing and timing from the dojo, competitive experience is going to be the most important. You mentioned their competitive experience, but we're in the group stages and they're coming into the final series with 83 points. So and you good. think of the threshold, they have set themselves up to advance to the winner's bracket barring any major deviance from that. So we just need them to have a relatively solid series here and they'll do just that. But as we get this beautiful free cam shot of Cascades, you can see that FaZe is occupying the building on the left, Pulverex in the center, Realize just north of it. And this is actually Realize's drop spot POI. So they have occupied to take that barring. Where do you think we're going to pull from that? They're trying to play the furthest north building on that side in case it goes forward. Yeah, I, I think it's totally understandable. And as a team with very little data getting further into the zones, you have to play flexible positions, or rather, that's certainly a way that you can approach the game. For teams like Alliance, who are going to be working with a little bit more information, they've chosen to take the opposite route. Instead, letting the zone tell them what's up. They've already got that third ring scan and apparently a lot of damage. Hackies opens up quite quickly with the 301, and that's the post-nerf 301. Still hits hard, still hits hard, running it with a car. But you know, most people worry about how much light ammo they have. 453 light ammo. You should talk to Hal. He should, but uh, you know, Hal would you have to get some of that, and that's not going to happen. So. Yeah. Lost no. <laughs> For the moment, it'll be, it'll be a nice bit to make use of, especially because Alliance are playing around the edge. The thing is, because they're not playing zone, they don't have to worry about shields as much since they will be taking fights with teams in front of them and ideally for Alliance, wiping them pretty quickly. We've already seen an example of them trying to pick a fight. It hasn't gone all out just yet, but as the zone continues to close in, they'll have plenty of opportunity. In the meantime, however, other teams are starting to set themselves up for zone close, and Disguised are certainly one of them. They don't have a position in Cascade just yet, but with the additional information they were able to gather off of the ring console, they know they're at least going to be inside the third zone and can pick a fight, arguably sandwiching Oxygen in between themselves and Alliance. Well, they're gonna need to do just that coming into the series with 58 points getting better and better 24 from the first 34 from the second and you usually want to average around 33 to 34 per series so they're going to have to have north of 50 points here to really solidify into that winner's bracket but back to the dojo as they start that rotation they have to choose one or two choke points here and they likely will run into another team that's going to be wanting to clear out their back and as you can see it's going to be optic gaming they may potentially run into tough to unseat optic especially in choke points. There's a reason that you see Optic sitting here, and it's because of the way that they're going to be able to use Catalyst and Bangalore in this choke to deny space, to buy time, and Horizon to engage when they darn well feel like they're going to win. So to push into this choke point may be a little much, but it's certainly not a decision that Dojo have to take at the moment. They have a whole other choke available to them, and this is a nice rotation for Dojo to have taken since over towards the north side of the map isn't going to be nearly as contested since there aren't as many teams that even come from a position where that's possible. You did mention earlier TSM needing to scout out other squads that would come from there. They've just gotten the heads up that there will be another team coming from behind them. And we know from looking at the map that that's going to be North Epson moving through command center. For Aurora trying to make their way just on that southern side of the ring. They are holding that very hard edge of it, which makes sense for the rotation. Coming from Cenote Cave, the only team with eliminations really thus far being able to take out complexity. They're safe here for the time being with only 10 seconds until that ring finally closes and then they'll get that information of where they need to go. But on you can see on the mini map, they've got two different options. Do they want to rotate towards the right or should they wrap around to the north? And they're gonna have opposition whichever way they go as we look towards that map. Go next and Enter Force 36 will lie in wait, but the right provides the easiest access to the zone and realize Pulverex and Phase. That, they have called that perfectly. This is, this is a really difficult zone to play. In. You know, we've seen Phase play around Cascade before. Previously, they opted into the building on height, closer to where Gonbari currently sit, right around where MDY White are at. With Go Next and Enter Force 36, they've taken the gamble this is pulling out of Cascade onto Bunny Slopes, much like Dark Zero has gambled as well. But now that everybody's going to have to cross into the open ground and into Cascade, there's going to be a lot of Bangalore smoke in the way, is, is the idea. Because teams on the outside need to survive, and they not only need to survive each other, but all of the uh, happy shooters in Cascade that are just going to be looking to pick up a few extra KP. Fnatic hitting a rotation in, going to that further east building before they 
may necessarily drop down to where TSM is kind of situated by Command Center. The Dojo have finally started making their way through the choke point onto Optic Gaming. Oh, no. Catwall being expended in an incoming frag, but the grab flipped in the black hole already. We just need it to connect. Design has multiple wow. arc stars. We just need some good opening damage. But once Designful has a wingman, <laughs> it could be chaotic. 90. As a quick couple shots from the wingman do push Optic a little further away. It's a cooldown advantage that they've been able to trade out. It's Horizon ult to buy space in answer to the Catalyst wall, and Optic do have to draw it back. Giving up space, not ideal for them, and they don't have Digis to fight in smoke. Fortunately, this Trident will provide a bit of cover, but they now find themselves sandwiched. And this is exactly the situation that Optic wanted to avoid. Dojo say, all right, well, we see that you're in a not so great position. Let's get out of here. It's actually really respectful hitting the evacuation tower once the other teams have started to get involved in Dark Zero, opting to leave their building and maybe take a nice poke at it as Aurora is our next team to go down at the hands of Go Next. Optic, remember, no longer have a Dark Veil to make this cross across the open ground easier. They can't cut off lines of sight with anything but Bangalore smoke, and even that's on cooldown. So much has been used to stymie the push from Dojo, but for some reason, nobody's even shooting at Optic. In fact, it's just now that Aimbot even takes note, and it's because he's being shot in the back. They should have had someone definitely anchoring. That is oh. Gonex go down. Skittle Cakes as well, that dropped and knocked, are going to be forced into the center of multiple teams. All of the attention is now on them, but Enter Force 36, the dojo is occupying them and able to take them out, but they're running into trouble. Timmy and Design need to answer back. Now, we knew when Dojo started moving off to the south, this was going to be difficult. They were going to have to fight with other teams. They must have known it as well. Oxygen go down the kill feed. 15 squads left, and Dark Zero have moved in to help clean up Optic. 15 squads in this zone right now is atrocious. Dojo are going to fall, and now Dark Zero have found themselves inching ever so much closer towards that zone. You can see the incoming ultimates that are going to be thrown their way. They've only got the tree for cover, but they will be able to avoid that with ease, but not before Jen Burton's able to grab a knock onto Fnatic's Yuka, who was looking for a chance to rotate, using all the chaos oh. as the opening to push. Zero. But Zero, we heard you were a madman, and look at you go. Nice slide in from Jen Burton as well. Use ca use this Catalyst's immunity to Pharaoh Fluid to keep some momentum and just take out Fnatic. It has been a clinic from Dark Zero off on the western side of this zone. They do still have a contest, however. TSM hold the high ground right above them. These two powerhouse teams sitting right next door to each other. But TSM, notably, has not partaken in the aggression, haven't accessed any of the low ground or the kills that come with it. We're sitting in 11th. Yes, points are available, yes, but TSM have no kills. They're playing it slow. This is a fight that may have to happen in order to clear out the northern side of this while the teams are rotating. Because if Dark Zero pushes down and tries to get into zone, TSM could easily wrap around. Let's jump on board with them and hear what they want to do. This zone might be open. Like, it might be open. Can we evac for it? Is it even safe? It's barely safe. Like, not really. Yeah, we, we should evac for it. I think we should yeah, evac for it now. They might shoot us off. Oh, we're in the open. Yeah, no. If it's taken, we have to go, like, bottom floor of this building. Okay. What, about, what about the, is the roof of Big Building open? The there there was somebody going? there, there was somebody there. I, I saw someone shooting. I'm there's looking at it right now. There's nobody there, yeah. Over here, they're fighting over here. Yeah. Someone watch your back. Yeah, yeah, you you start start I'm gonna make sure they're underneath us. They're underneath us. Wait, why is our ship rocking? They're right underneath us. Right underneath us. Even the building's rocking that. Yeah, I'm looking east. They're not really fighting at all. There's someone's, they're fighting on the. They were able to hit a nice rotation. Now coexist on top of Phase, but not before. Gombreo Tucson is going to fall at the hands of Sentinels and Alliance. They will fall as well. Go able to make that happen before. Now disguise, they are able to clear out their entire side of the zone. They're still on high ground and they'll have to work their way ever so closely to Cascade Falls. But for the time being, no one's in the next zone in front of them. They're all inside the buildings of Cascades. That mass exodus that we're about to witness, that TSM has just jumped into, is going to be the most chaotic thing I've seen in a very long time. Disguise should have a few fence lines to play on high ground and they can survive and even thrive in this environment 
should they play it right. As you say, with not a whole lot of cover left, in fact, almost no cover, we're going to be playing with corners of supply bins as the only real space. Sentinels still hold down towards the south of this next ring and also have the opportunity to play with just a little bit of cover. Them in disguise, actually, could go head to head. We talked about MDY White earlier as well, a team that needs to perform. They've got high ground in Cascade and they can even contest disguised. It is a battle for the high ground as that's going to be the most important thing during the course of this next Cascade close. Dark Zero, they start to move. Smoke and run into the building. Someone's on their roof. That's going to be likely a Pulbrex who have been in this building since the beginning of this game, waiting for someone to make something happen. You've got to realize they're hitting the rotation just to where, but the grab lift, they're going to try to play roof, and now Pulverex are going to go under fire. They hit the Dark wow. Veil, but so does Kill Opposing Co. So they're going to go to the right. There's going to be at least three of them, and everyone just wants to stay out of sight for as long as possible. Disguise working on taking up as much space on that eastern side of the zone, and everyone's like, throw out the ultimates. It's time to throw down. And look at where she have positioned themselves right outside of these supply crates. They've got one catalyst wall in between them and everyone else, but so many more are trapping the rest of these teams inside just a corner of Cascade, the last building available on the high ground. Disguised have suffered losses. Senox is down and down for good, while TSM on the low ground play for the kills. TSM finally forced into phase, able to grab a knock on to snipe. And they are going around the clearing wow. of it. Instead, it's Dark Zero who falls and phase behind them. The TSM fans, I can hear them screaming at this. Just keep realize. going forward. Big E throwing it all down. Let's go. Big e playing the knockdown shield of Rex. Able to do a little bit of dance oh that I God. would never expect. Big E, he is him. Somebody check him, PC. Verholst is going wild on the international stage. Just 50 HP and a dream. He's got a couple shield swaps available, but on controller, it's so risky. Jumps out in front, gets taken down. He's done an incredible amount of damage, but it wasn't enough. Colverex, smell the blood in the water, or rather on the edge of zone, come down and finish off Realize, earning the privilege of being one of the last three teams in the first game on store point. They were able to maintain the high ground as if that push didn't even matter, but now they're starting to pull towards Sentinels. Zenhail, maybe 150 HP trying to heal up is going to be Shunmi, and we are hitting the rotate towards Sentinels. Dark fail, One hiding their game. cover, and they have all of the space able oh to reset. Lord. The EMP oh is going to hit. This is going to be brutal for Sentinels. RKN and Co. are slowed, are taken down. Now there is a trade. Pulverex operated as a duo, but we know Pulverex, and Pulverex can absolutely slay out as a duo. They return to the winner's slot in our first game of their final series in group stage. This is exactly the way that they needed to start. Pulverex came into their final series of the group stages with 56 points, knowing that they were going to need north of 40 points here in this series to throw themselves into that winner's bracket. And to start off the six games with a win, that's what you need. And there are the signs, the golden Nessie support, and they are in. This is really great for them because Pulverex captured the hearts of fans back at Rally. And now that we're getting to see them succeed, and fortunately with all three people on their team, they are doing so well. Even, even with their struggles in the group stage, being able to pick up a win here in these lobbies, as was talked about on the analyst desk, is incredibly difficult and indicative of the performance that you can give in a finals lobby. And I love to see them on that crypto. I've seen them break it out multiple times. They've historically played that composition in APAC North, and they were kind of deviating from that, trying to adapt to the group stages. But now that they've returned back to crypto on the legend composition, just see how much more beneficial that is to be able to get that EMP off. Yes, you run the risk if one of your teammates have maybe already pushed to that fight. They get stunned in the meantime. But you said it best. They can operate as a duo quite efficiently. And, and can we just say as well, I know they didn't win the game, and I, I know that we just saw Pulverex walk up to them and kill everyone, but Sentinels got second place. And Sentinels have actually been performing quite well. They've got around 70 points so far, with a 30 points or so finish in this group. They could easily move on to the winner's bracket in just a little while. They've still got a newbie to international play in Koifel, and they're honestly navigating this really great given how little time they've had to prepare and adapt with a new player. 
Hawks run back that final circle, but that is a pr an impressive point. I think they were telling me he just turned 17, so yeah. incredibly young to be on a competitive stage like this, but performing so well considering how they have changed up their play style. Was once a heavy zone team, now adapting to edge, being more aggressive, and they were tied with 20th place coming into this series with only two match series, so they should be a shoe in but here is a look at that final push from Polvrex, focusing on healing up, trying to get away and not get stunned by that bangle. And it's, it's a really impressive finish from Polvorex, and exactly the right way to play the territory that they had. Their, their execution was simple. In this last team fight, it was just as clean as EMP and send everybody forward. But when we think about the fight that took place just before this, the wipe on TSM and realize that happened underneath them, we have to remember that they were sat in that building for a while. It was all about patience for Pulverex, not getting over eager, not sending on TSM or Realize or anyone before it was exactly the right time and exactly the right amount of squads. You know who lets you know that better than anyone? It's Crypto. It's a compositional difference that they're able to use to get perfect information on squads around them. We've seen other teams, much like Ascend, who was a big topic of conversation earlier today, use exactly the same strategy to perform out of their minds. And it's actually performing really well here, specifically if you're not able to get out of that building physically and scout it. You've just got the windows where that drone can kind of snake its way out and see who's approaching and who's looking to rotate and then farm with the EMP. So they did everything that they needed to do there. Now, if they keep up that momentum moving forward, it should be hopefully enough to get them into that winner's bracket. Because you think about that, what's, go what's on the line here? We're gonna have, you know, winner's bracket and elimination round two tomorrow, but those are gonna be eight game series. So if you have to go from that elimination round, you're going to be playing so many games. And, and honestly, a lot of this has to do with just player rest and recuperation. You guys have been here for a while. You know that we've played a lot of games in the past couple of days. And if you secure yourself a spot in the winner's bracket, it is such a comfort knowing that you no longer have to worry about fighting for your tournament life in the same way as those who have been put back into the lower bracket that do really need to be concerned with elimination. It's less study, it's less vaude review, it's a lot more confidence that you get to benefit from, and that is really what's on the line for these teams, because when you do go into the lower bracket, it's by no means over, but it does become that much more of a, a close battle. Speaking of close battles, you, you called it. You said Sentinels did a great job just playing for second, and like not necessarily playing for second, but the fact that they got second. Yes. But they tied 18 points, right? Nine placement points, nine eliminations, and that's not taking away anything from Pulver Rex. We were able to get six just playing from Cascades for the majority of the game, and it kind of made an interesting move here because you've got a ton of teams that are sitting with eight points, nine points, eight. It's going to be anyone's game, and for a lot of these teams that need to soak up and get north of 40 points, it's going to be challenging unless they can get maybe a north of a 20-point win here. And not as top-heavy as other lobbies that we've seen, which is interesting given the that it's only the first game. Gunbury Otosan, though, sitting in 11th place are a big question mark for me after game one. We know they switched up their draw spot to avoid a contest with Optic, something that could very well have let them net them two less points. However, landing in not a POI and uh, having to move your way up to high point didn't get them great shields, didn't get them great position, and ultimately they were taken out by DSG, who walked up with full purples onto a team of full whites. So you, you just can't let that happen. I mean, that's what you get when you play edge, right? You just focus on prioritizing getting that late zone information, crafting up the Evo shields, and preparing for an all-out battle there, and Disguise were looking incredibly well, and that's something that they have to do to perform here. I mean, at least any team that's outside of the top 20 will need to do that, specifically Geo finding themselves in 40th place coming into the final series. Yeah, and like you say, Disguised also need, need plenty of points to make sure that they make it over to winners. This is also, I mean, another interesting team that people had varied expectations of. I know that, speaking of Sentinels, they did a little bit of a prediction before we got into the competition, and they did not expect great things of DSG. We had a lot of doubters, even in the crowd, and yet they've demonstrated that they can win games during the course of group stage. I think they've done a fantastic job of making sure that they're actually quite competitive with other top level teams that we've seen win lands or at least get very close to. Hey, well, we'll see. Maybe they can get another one here in the final group stage series, but we'll have to see because we're going to cut to a quick break. And when we come back, we'll have match number two.
WD Black, the official storage partner of the Apex Legends Global Series. Welcome back everyone to the Apex Legends Global Series Year 3 Championships at the Resorts World Arena in Birmingham, UK. Look, I've really worked on my pronunciation. I live dangerously close to Birmingham, Alabama. Let me tell you that much. <laughs> but I am so happy to be here. We are on our final series of group stages coming off a Pulverex win in Cascade. And a critical Pulverex win as well. Something that they, as many teams in this final lobby of the night, need to advance to the winner's bracket. Those are the stakes. For those of you who are just tuning in, we're about to wrap up the group stage, at which point we will be competing for elimination. So with a win, some big points laid down during the course of the next now five games will make you all the more secure in those to come and leading into the finals. Yeah, Pulverex came into the series with 56 points. Not and a we, lot. Exactly, we talk about that threshold, right? 92 was the split two playoffs that we've thrown around, but you really want to feel safe. I think Graceful said it best, 100 points plus or minus 10. But yep. to feel really safe, we are looking for that 100 point threshold, which would mean Pulverex would need 44 points out of this entire series. And I think this is where you can actually be a little bit concerned because a win is quite good for them. It was a pretty low point win when we look at the history of group stage so far. Sentinels tied with them there and Sentinels had a lot less points to make up. With plenty more opportunity, two games left on Storm Point, three on World's Edge. Pulverex cannot rest easy even given the first game win. It's not given them as much forgiveness as other wins might, so it's time to lock in and get ready for game two of Storm Point. And as our teams, they hit the dropship, hit the Legend Select. I'm really curious to see kind of what this is going to look like. Is it the TSM plot armor for them, or did they just get hot zone in a ring console? Now, once again, Optic aren't going to be contested. Gunbury Otosan, one of the squads that did not get as much loot as they needed in the most recent series, are going to be forfeiting that preemptively once again. A contest, that we can, or a contest that we can look forward to is going to be that of Aurora, you have to imagine. But even now, looking at the dropship, it doesn't seem like we've got a whole lot of trails leading towards Cenote. This dropship that took us from this time, the western side of the map to the eastern, has given Optic and Dark Zero, even Fnatic first move, and Aurora have been left alone. That's actually really smart of Complexity to do. They came into the series with 47 points, needing a massive series. So electing to withdraw from the contest is totally fine for them because Pulverex already had done that. They had recently been challenging North Epson at Thunderwatch, but they knew that Jurassic was free and that's where they went to land. And I don't know, we, everyone always talks about TSM plot armor, but I think it's Pulverex plot armor right now because when you look at the zone, they land Jurassic after leaving Thunderwatch. Where is it pulling? It is going such in favor of them and they'll have a survey beacon to boot. It's one of the like blessing and a curse things because since you have a survey beacon you can theoretically see where everybody is going but because you don't have a ring console Will Pulverex even know that they should post up here? Will they get out of position, find a ring console, or get a survey scan and realize that they actually should have stayed home? That is the biggest gamble, and we saw that this morning in World's Edge, right? Where so many teams went to Skyhook, taking that gamble because they didn't have information. Yeah. And that is so challenging to make that call. And there's another interesting point about Pulverex here. Because they've chosen to go Jurassic again, complexity have denied them a lot of loot. Typically, teams that go Jurassic will be able to loot up just to the north. This time, because complexity are operating essentially without a POI, they've taken away a lot of Pulverex's momentum in the early game, which will make their round all the more difficult. Complexity will also have a, a tough time because they're operating with essentially half a POI's worth of loot. But you know who else could have a difficult one? It's Dark Zero and Optic. Is they zoom on past each other. Dark Zero are going to watch this happen. Perhaps follow suit. We could get a kind of car chase going on, but it doesn't look like we want to play Fast and Furious today. I was going to say, a little high-speed pursuit. No big deal. They might run into each other later on, but it's all about getting the primary locations off. early. I mean, this is honestly pretty intense. It's a race to barometer, and it's one that Optic have won 
so far. They don't take that much damage on the way in. So they win the race to the building. One that was surprisingly close and adrenaline filled for this early in the game. The fact that Down Beast Optic Gaming was able to zoom past the mill. The DZ was probably like, hey, I see what you're doing over there. We'd like to join you, sir. That was awesome. I, I love that. More Apex racing games, please. Now, given that Optic have prioritized this spot very early on, they are still going to have to share space with teams like Oxygen, who land over in Barometer. This is a game, actually, that could bring Oxygen, who had a little bit of Jayhawk's confidence coming into today's series, into the forefront of our minds. Speaking of confidence, I have all the confidence in the world that Koifel is going to be able to dodge out on the incoming frags, throwing down a couple of Arc Stars of their own, just trying to hold on to this building. Think of the teams that are rotating around this area. Go next, Oxygen, but with it pulling to Barometer, they will have their own quickness of their preferred location. So maybe they got the Jayhawk on, on the desk buff. They, they very well could have. TSM find themselves in a contest up against GO. You may know that because there's a Newcastle right in front of us, and not a whole lot of people are running it. Burles has an off angle right now. We saw him do incredible damage during the last series. Gets chunked, however, has to jump back. And Hal going low and going down could be the end of TSM. Jews not going massive there, and that is what we like That's to it? see. TSM cleaned up. Gombere needing as many points as they can potentially get. Like we said, 27 points coming into this series. And if you want that 100 points, 73 points would need to be acquired here. And I think that's almost competing with the highest score that we've seen from any of our group series matchups. One of our two land champions in this lobby was just taken out at the hands of a team that has yet to find success in group stage that is not playing out of their regular POI that has so many disadvantages. And that's how close Apex can be. One misstep from even the great TSM means that they get taken down by Gunbury Otosan, who are very much proving that even though they've had a rough go, are not to be messed around with. This is a team that I expected great things from coming into champs. And they, while they've had a difficult time, still can make that happen, still can make the finals. Definitely still can. We have to think of teams like FaZe. They want to make it in there as well. And I know it's their yeah. coach's birthday today, so that would be a really nice birthday present to Coach Dan. That would be cool. I, I do know that FaZe have uh, been struggling a bit internally with their approach to the game. Phony himself was talking about how they've not been playing with a lot of confidence, mm -hmm. and it's really impacted their results, simply not trusting that you're making the right play, being able to follow a call with complete faith that it will go well and that you'll be able to make your way out of it means that FaZe haven't been able to put up the results that I think a lot of their fans expect of them as well. So we'll see if they're able to clean it up in this series, but we know that it's something they've got their eyes on as they look to improve over the course of the next few days. Realizes rotation down is going to take them right through the, the recent site of crime, it seems the crime, that's the word that I'm looking for, of the TSM Geo fight, and hopefully onto the low ground, they should be able to take a nice evac tower, or even the gravity cannon if they don't have one. Checking in, G.O. still hitting that rotation, moving ever so closely towards the center of where that next ring will pull. And we start to think about the teams that have really impressive macro. You have the handful of teams that are electing to say, this is actually going to pull towards barometer more. And you think of the open bamboo forest over there. So teams that may look to operate that. But if you go to take that too early, which you can see as G.O. flies just above that area, sights out a team on the bridge, and they're going to get peppered and they're actually gonna just full set what? the team on the bridge oh my god but the confidence that it takes to the jump on one dogma has nades all over and manages to survive with 20 hp but instantly goes down jung -hee now on the defensive has a castle wall in front of him but isn't able to pick up dogma nearly as quickly bulber x they're here for revenge you land on shun me it's not gonna go well here comes the emp from saku and Chan trying to find an angle but when a team with a newcastle and a watson lands on you and they throw down that Newcastle wall, maybe start with the reses. Pulverex really doesn't have anywhere to go. They were playing underneath the bridge for a reason, trying to hide away from all the teams on high ground from Barometer. And oh. hey, hey, Gumber Atosan having survived the initial barrage of ordinances, have everything that they need. Now with the generator behind them, it's 
them who unseat Pulverex, forcing what? them out into the open, and good lord, the shots out of that G7. This is what I was saying. The moment that Pulverex try to move out from that bridge, they are just going to be in the line of sight, and Skittle Cakes is going to be the one to benefit from it. But this is the type of location that Geo is set up to play, utilizing the Watson fences. They already were able to throw down the Watson generator, and for Pulverex, hey, it's all water under the fridge. <laughs> That was way, that was way too relevant. That and, one's for and, you, and, Otter. And, I know you're yet, out there and somewhere. Yet, and yet, not exactly what I was looking for. I will say it's exactly what they were, what Ganbari Otosan were looking for, because they now have a position that is made playable simply because they have Watson. We saw Sen do this earlier in the day, where they were able to take up spots that otherwise people really just don't want to play because they have a generator, because it's all the safer. Alliance, however, they don't want to be playing this. Hackies goes low, but they're on the winning end of the fight. Yuki finds a knock onto Yuka with an arc star, and now the fight handily in Alliance's favor, they're gonna go push on forward. And this is a really wild engagement between Alliance and Fnatic because they are so close in group series points. Alliance coming in with 66 points, but they've been getting better each and every wow. series. And as Yuki falls, it's gonna be a fact that needs to close the distance. He's gonna hit the grab lip, try oh to heal up, but not before taking so much damage, but he's still able to get the bat off, and he's able to turn around and lock onto him with the hip no, fire. Sarah. The hip fire with 30-30 can no. hit. Sarah! And with their tap strafing, that's the mechanical movement we like to see out of Meltzera. Hakis gets a quick res, but that is so, so bad to have lost effect on the push and effect of all players who Alliance rely on so heavily. It will still mean that you only have one member of Fnatic escaping, and that at least temporarily, as Alliance could still give chase. But on the other side of the map, Realize are looking to make their exit from Jurassic, and with some nice smokes to cover them, could very well do it. All right, Realize, I had them predicted as my team to win this series, and they were so close to it. It's gone, but North Eption, they need to win as much as they possibly can. They are sitting just on that threshold, right underneath that points cutoff for the winner's bracket. And MDY White, they're a little bit further down, but this is going to matter to them. They need every elimination as possible. But when someone's sitting outside with a Craver, that is the scariest thing that you could ever expect. But North Eption able to go. Out. Unfortunate for them, as like you say, they needed plenty of points. They will have the opportunity to make them up later. We'll see if this Kraber shot lands, but through the smoke, Sangjun just isn't seeing the same thing that we are. Ends up tossing in a quick Horizon ultimate, gets chunked out by a third party, throwing in shots from afar. Realize have to be very calculated and very fast with how they take this fight, if they even want to. Oh. They look. I like they're playing the roof. It's yeah, good. honestly, yeah. you really kind of need to. I'm just sitting here thinking about this because this is going to be an atrocious zone pool, pulling over just a little bit further away from Barometer into that open water. The bridge is the move, and Geo called that perfectly. Yeah, this one is going to be difficult, but MDY White, having just picked up their Gibraltar, do have a safety net in the next rotation that should still take them past Realize, who have dipped rather back into Jurassic to hit a quick survey beacon. The zone does continue to make this a little bit more challenging, pulling further into Barometer, and Alliance know that very well, having just made their rotation around the outside of Jurassic, and now needing to hold the teams that would otherwise rotate in from their left from pushing in behind them. Their next move should take them down to the south and over towards the building that Optic rotated into earlier. Phase fight for their very lives in Barometer and seem to be doing, well, not so great. Phony's gonna go down, and while there's a res on the bottom side, this isn't one of those gold knockdown shield fights that we've seen so many times today. Where's the gold knockdown when you need one, but zero with the 30-30, able to completely throw down and knock onto Oxygen Esports. In Oxygen Esports' phase, those are the two teams fighting for their lives at the top of this series. You were talking specifically about how the a presence of TSM, how the presence of Dark Zero were going to affect a lot of these teams looking to find themselves in the winner's bracket. But if you run up against a powerhouse, a titan like Zero, what can you do? It's honestly, it's better to do it now because this same team is going to be punishing you in the finals. That is a promise. Dark Zero, 
playing the Gravity Cannon for now, are taking up a lot of space towards the south side of Barometer, making sure the teams cannot coexist around them. And it looks like the same thing is true even for Disguise, who, I will say, have to deal with a few other squads that are looking at them, but only have one member left. Oxygen Esports, they're going to fall at the hands of FaZe, who need every elimination with that 51-point mark that they came into. And Optic Gaming, so many of our talent teams' prediction to win this series it's like they're starting to connect a couple things together here. But as the rotation starts to move, we have Effect going up against Tom Young Tom Young and they're going to take them out. One fell sweep of that, and Alliance starts hitting the cleanup before they have to focus on which way they would like to rotate into the next circle. It looks like their Fnatic engagement was enough to wake them up. After that, after honestly barely surviving Meltstera, this is plenty for Alliance. They are dancing around right in front of Melsera, who is trying to hide on the other side of the fence by the tree. And with no Seer on the roster, it gives them that extra level of confidence to survive ability, but realize it's also going to dodge around. But Complexity, who elected to move out of Sonote Cave, has once again found themselves in trouble. But Monsoon mm. needs to hit this wow. and the PK. Look, we always talk about our PKs hitting for nine. Sometimes you just got to hit him with an Arc Star, throw it down, maybe hit for 90 plus. It's what Monsoon needs right now, because they're in trouble. And he, he's, he needs a little bit of cover as well. Really punishing, especially when the dojo were staring down thermal sights at you. Timmy, gonna swap out for a little bit more coverage, but this gravity cannon provides so much space and safety to any player on it. The dojo are, are even able to take some of the high ground that extends just off to the south of them. Are we forgetting? I mean, this is crazy. A big frag coming in, and Misi going to fall. Slab and code. They need to throw down because Sentinel. Nice. This isn't our zone IGL anymore. They are hard edge, ready to fight, redefining their legend composition in every wow. bit of their playstyle. RKN was on the desk at Split 2 playoffs, got so much more motivation, made some changes, and they are back with Vengeance at Champs. After Zenial gets a little bit more damage thrown at him, he's already used his Bangalore ultimate, so the disengage onto the low ground is smart from Sentinels, but remember they don't have a catalyst wall now, and they're gonna need to rotate up towards the north, up towards Ganbare Otosan, who playing under the bridge need these points. Yeah, but if no one's able to walk across the open water to challenge out on Gonbare, you have to think of who may be able to do that because FaZe, they will have to move ever so closely, but MDY White at one point was challenging Realize on the other side of the mountain, but as that circle starts to come in, you can see Alliance, Enerforce 36, they're all being filtered straight into each other, and the frags, the nades, Effect once again, utilizing the grab lift to reposition himself. He's actually doing a good job here of not over overextending and trying to make sure he's safe from the left. But just like the last game, we're down so quickly to just being able to play these supply crates, and it's not enough cover for Alliance to really make an aggressive move and clear out the team that's otherwise rotating behind them. Effect still is in the line of fire, still has so little space, and Enterforce could wipe them out here and now. And Effect really needed to suppress the fire onto Enterforce 36, so Hackus was able to get the res up on Yuki, but meanwhile, Chuzna, Zhonghi from Geo were able to... This is the fight. Off, but yes, this is the good one. Here we go. At this point, it's FaZe versus Ganbare for a game-winning position, and FaZe take it. FaZe, who need the points, who are fixing the mentals. They have got confidence this time around. They've won the fight, but Zero knows how important this engagement was. Takes to the bridge using that cover of smoke and the recent bloodshed off to the eastern side. The fact that they were able to get this bridge for free, the remnants of the Newcastle wall, they will keep going forward, wanting to capitalize on the already down players of FaZe. And just like that, Zainu says, I'm here, able to shoot through the catalyst wall. And Jen Burton capitalizing on what Zero has already started. If they can survive this, they will have such a powerful position knowing that they're cleared out and FaZe will fall to the land champions of Split 2 playoffs. And now, that was a marvelous push, knowing that FaZe were too weak to defend. It's great isolation from Dark Zero, and you'll notice nobody's even following up on it. Braver Shot from Realize, gonna go wide. Unfortunately, not enough value out of the Kraber to keep it still with them. Moving on forward, you have to think about how you're rotating to the next zone. And at this point, those teams that have the bridge are going to be the most important. Alliance managed to survive. Dark Zero still hold a bit of the island, but it doesn't have nearly as much cover as they'd like. And Realize, Realize are on the push. 
I'll be able to take down effect. So now we're looking at a 3v2 situation. There goes the full. This is what they need to do, but that ring is going to be at their wow. back. They're going to keep getting forced straight to that last member of Alliance who was elected to go straight into zone. But when you have sharks in the water known as DZ, they're going to look to encompass as much of that space. Let the chaos consume them. Dojo, Alliance are going to fall. And now Optic moving straight towards complexity. The same rotation that we We've witnessed Dark Zero take earlier. And can Enemy challenge Complexity? Optic certainly can't peek it. They've got plenty of threats in front of them, and it's a certain death sentence to try and send it onto Complexity. Optic are just gonna have to coexist like this, and it may come down to the final circle to take these teams actually enough time to fight each other. Dark Zero, however, they can harass Realize, who are our northernmost team with just a bit of rock cover and arguably the best endgame position that comes with the curse of also being the focus of every team in the lobby. Yeah, but so can Complexity as well. They're just playing just on the left side of Optic, right out of their line of sight. And when you've just stuck between a rock and a hard place, realizes Obli is going to be able to shoot straight into complexity. No amount of bang smoke is going to be able to protect them. Does look like it's bought them a brief respite, however. Complexity, try and get a little bit more space, but this wall from Optic solves the problem we were talking about earlier about T being taken down. There are some shots being laid in on them from afar, however, and Nox has gone down. Realize they're picking a fight. And now that we have just three squads yes, left, when Realize go forward, they're letting Dark Zero do the same thing, and they have to know that. They are essentially looking for as many eliminations as possible. And Dark Zero, you know what they're looking for? A win here. They, uh, at, at this point, Realize know that they're playing for a second, but now they've overextended. They didn't get the full squad wipe, and they're in the line of fire of Dark Zero. It is a big misstep, a lack of execution, and Dark Zero here to punish it. Quickly, the push comes in, and drop goes down. Optic are fallen first, but immediately after that, Realize hit the floor, and Dark Zero win yet another game. Absolutely textbook. Knowing that phase was weak in the bamboo forest, they push through, clean house, and bide their time until the right moment to hit the Dark Veil rotation onto the third party. Absolutely impressive. And honestly, they're looking full form here. And I know we had DZ on the predictions for the talent desk, and this is exactly what they wanted to see. I see a Papa Jen Burton in the stands right there, front and center with the DZ. He shook my hand today, and he hit me with a just a DZ, and I was like, I see you. He knew. He knew they were going to win today, and it's been great for them. I, even Jen Burton looked relaxed after, relaxed after that game, and you could tell why. Because looking at the way that this lobby played out, Dark Zero never put themselves in a position where a fight was 50-50. Even during the last course of this game, they were taking pot shots from a bar, ensuring that they had an advantage, and even capitalizing on, as, as you'll recall, phase over at the island, an over push from Realize. It doesn't matter to them who gets second, who gets third, who gets fourth. At this point, Dark Zero play for the win, and only the win. It's what makes them deadly, not just in these games, but on match points. Let's take a look back at that final circle so we can relive that winning moment. Kind of just a few steps back, right when we were at four squads remaining, they were already sitting on six eliminations, and Triple Red sharing out the light ammo. Look, it's all about the light ammo. Now, they, they don't have the same kill feed as we do. This is an anonymous mode for them. But looking at it from this perspective, even assuming equal information, Knowing that you have three squads left, as soon as you start seeing Nox, Dark Zero know that the fight is going down. And it's just as quickly that they drop the Dark, dark Veil as soon as Drop goes down, although, of course, they don't know that it's Drop. The Evac Tower actually adds an extra element to this, giving them a vantage point should they need it over the Dark Veil and access to a little bit more of an easy entrance over the previous Dark Veil of, I believe it was Optic. From, there, from then on, it is just a matter of Digging through the smoke. And how many times have we seen this recently? In a Bang Bangalore Bloodhound meta, Digis are golden, literally, and, well, no, I guess it's just figure, it's only figuratively, but it's figuratively in multiple ways. You know, I heard Digi's gonna be in the crafter later this week, so things are gonna get to be a little bit mixy in there. You can see we've got Zero's dad, we've got Jen Burton's dad and mom, and everyone so happy to be here front and center to support Dark Zero. That's what we love to see. Honestly, it makes me super happy. We have all of the family. Vane earlier from Oxygen Esports, I was walking by and I saw Vane, and then I saw, you know, Vane's dad, Vane's yeah. mom on the backs of their shirts. It's just like, I don't know, it's just super cool to see. It, it, I mean, it's, it's the best part of the event. I don't know how many times we're going to talk about it today. Or 
during the course of our casts because we talked about Timmy's father earlier being here to support and it's wonderful to, to see the support from the crowd and from the fans and, and most importantly from those that you grow up, you grow up with your whole life and having that has certainly inspired confidence a lot of teams, inspired their best, Dark Zero, perhaps not achieving a completely dominant game, but you'd be mistaken for thinking that it was a 30-plus point game after the way that it finished, because this squad never felt out of control. And I'll tell you who did make other teams feel out of control is Realize right behind them. This was a great game for them, and Tiff, I have to hand you credit. You may not have predicted Dark Zero, but Realize was not a bad choice. I've definitely been keeping an eye on them throughout international scrims, and they can have really strong performances when it matters. And yes, they're pretty much solidified to find themselves in that winner's bracket, but starting out from Cascades on Stormpoint, I thought they would have really strong rotations. And so far, the zones have been ever in their favor, and Sentinels as well, four points on the back half of this, but Fnatic, so close to on, on the cusp of the winner's bracket qualification. They need to have maybe a back half of the four games, at yeah. least, you know, 10 to 15 points per game. Yeah, with one more storm point, I mean, who's to say what happens? We, we, we do know that you can get a little bit unlucky in fights, and seeing how things played out towards the north of the zone this time, you do kind of have to chalk it up to bad luck for Fnatic. There are plenty of things to improve, but at this point, wow. you're just looking forward to the next couple of games, because as you say, the, the gap is small. And as we look through the top three teams of the match two results, Dark Zero with 5,100 damage, Optic Gaming with 4,400, and these are the two teams that land down Beast and the Mill, respectively, who started out match number two in the hot per pursuit of the Trident race to Barometer and fought tooth and nail throughout. So it's so nice to see them there in the top three, but realize a 3,900. And they are all about similar eliminations, right? Yeah. Eight, eight, seven, it's impressive. It, it's not that far away. And honestly, it, it demonstrates the value for DZ and Optic of getting to a POI early in an active position in that POI, even though they had different reads on it. It was very similar approaches, and I have no doubt that if Optic arrived 15 seconds later, the building that they ultimately chose is already occupied by Dark Zero. So having seen that, we do still have the opportunity to watch these teams play their best ga game, and importantly, one that is reliant on clean early rotations. Ooh, speaking of watching those clean early rotations, I know we had a chance previously to sit back, check out the Cyber Z watch party that's happening around here. So let's go ahead and throw and check out what that is all about. What's up, everybody? I'm We The People. We have Cole here, a special guest, all right? He hosts the Japanese ALGSs live on Twitch. And my man has an absolute insane production here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the Japanese community and how well received Apex is? It's actually, I think uh, it's one of the biggest community in the world. Actually, like uh, our broadcast is, uh, uh, is being, wa being watched by like uh, 60,000 people, like uh, average, yeah. You said 60,000. Yeah, 60, yeah. Yesterday, like, the highest was uh, 50 or, like, uh, 60,000 people watching the Apex. That is insane because when you picture 60,000 people, like, you can't even count that, you know? Oh, no. So that, that is absolutely insane. And I got a question. What got you started in, in Apex? Like, why Apex? Um, uh, yeah, I used to play FPS games a lot. And then, like, uh, the Apex is a... Uh, the very like uh, speedy, and I, I I really love that. So I think uh, yeah, um, I used to broadcast like a professional baseball yeah. or like a professional soccer in wow. Japan. So it's like a I don't know. I just uh, it's like a I'm very comfortable like a, when when I do commentary job on uh, Apex. I love that man, and you absolutely kill it. Uh, my final question is, so the Japanese community is amazing, right? Anytime I have a tweet blow up, it's nothing but positivity, right? Why do you think the Japanese community is so positive? Because it's amazing, man. It's, it's filled with love and, like, it's such a great addition to Apex. I don't know. We have a lot of, uh, you know, the otaku, like Japanese, like, uh, like a strong, enthusiastic fans. They, like, a, they have, like, a really... Uh, love the like uh, I don't know like uh, they're really like a fun community is uh, uh, getting bigger and bigger 
I love it, man. Well, it's amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Great to meet you, my man. Keep killing it, all right? And that's all we got. Well, that's super interesting. Always getting all the good information from the people around the stadium. So much cool things going on. So thank you, peeps, for checking into that. But for those of our viewers that are here in the UK watching from home, we'd like to welcome you back as we get ready for match number three because we have identified that there were some issues with some Twitch servers around the world that could affect your local region. If that does happen to you at home, please switch to YouTube as YouTube is currently unaffected by this situation. And now with that out of the way, guys, let's start thinking about match number three. We've so far had two separate winners, Pulverex, Dark Zero, and with our final match on Stormpoint up and coming, Dia, anything can happen, but for those teams that found themselves on the bubble, what do we need to do here, obviously? Uh, the, the important thing to remember about Stormpoint is actually something that we saw Dark Zero and Optic do, and that is that your rotations are much more easily punished mm -hmm. um, because when they're late, you have so much more ground to cover and so many less actual building to play. It's very difficult to share space in a place like Stormpoint. And if you are a team that's perhaps struggling during the course of these matches, during the course of groups on Stormpoint, there's no better way to solve that problem than by rotating in early, importantly, with a composition that you feel can play things out from a from a quick rotation. Perhaps you pull out a Geo and go with Newcastle Watson for the extra shields, whatever it is, because territory is one of the most important things. And then being active from that territory so that other people can't just land on you as Geo did. When you think back, that used to be a really favored le legend composition historically. Yeah. I know 100 Thieves at one point was even playing that and a few others. So it's really cool that Geo is like, okay, so it's group stages. Maybe we're just gonna test some things out for tomorrow's bracket stages. Similarly, if they've already made terms of the fact that it's anything goes, we have to give it our all here in the group stages or we're gonna be fighting our way through the elimination round because that's what matters, right? No one goes home home after today, right? It's where tomorrow, that is that risk. But as our team start to lock in their legends, we see reps on Bangalore. And honestly, that is one of the most refreshing things that I've seen here post split two playoffs is no more seer, reps not having the insta-lock seer on TSM and getting to kind of spread his wingspan and, you know, dabble in some other legends. You like his fuse, don't you? I do like yeah, his yeah. fuse. <laughs> Rex's fuse, honestly, Zero's fuse is crazy as well, but no. I, I know, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the, the way the way that Fuse is played by some of the best teams in the world, it makes you feel like uh, it makes you wonder why this guy wasn't meta for ages. But Fuse is not something that we're going to see a whole lot of, at least on this map. Once we transition over to World's Edge in a couple minutes, that's when you'll get to find it out. We've got our drop ship going through. This time we're starting off in the northeast, which actually means that Alliance get a really quick drop, and importantly. G.O. managed to do that as well since they have swapped over to High Point recently. This will be important for them with, as, an, as a Newcastle Watson team, an early rotation could mean the difference between a 15th place finish and a third place finish. Well, I guess it all depends on where that zone is going to pull. And with Alliance not having to even take a gravity cannon to get up to Lightning Rod for once having the easiest route. Think of that. They'll be able to finish the IMC Armory. They'll be able to prioritize their looting path and maybe even hit some crafting and not be two minutes late towards that next zone and, and they'll know where the next zone is as well it's it's so it's such a good landing for alliance and in a lobby where they absolutely need it one of our teams that does need to put up a lot of points to live up to the wow. expectations they set for their fans as that zone comes in, meanwhile, Dojo hitting those weapon crates. I couldn't have predicted a better game for Alliance. How lucky here. can you be? You, you, <laughs> this is it. This is everything that Alliance needed, right? They were slowly getting better and better each series, obviously starting off the first group series match with Mandy as a sub. Effect arriving at such a late hour. Just needed some little time to brush up, wake off, sh shake off the land nerves, because everyone kept talking about how you know nervous and not really, ne not necessarily effect, because that guy's probably locked in, ready to like one clip people. You but think you effect just, has ice in his veins? I, I, 100 percent. He seems ice. so sweet. That's uh, that's the difficulty with me, you know. Like you, to have ice in your veins, I, f I feel like you would be naturally colder, but 
Maybe, maybe that's just something. I, because I don't have it, I can't recognize it. It's true. I definitely don't have it, and that's why I'm here in the booth <laughs> watching the people that do have it, have all the skill out here, duking it out, playing with their hearts on the line, and Fnatic coming into the third map in only two points. This is actually going to be nice for them because you think about their rotation. TSM at the wall had ring consoles, so you know they're going to immediately scan that and hit for a quick rotation, which should enact Fnatic to be able to rotate out of North Pass grab the ring console information as well and prioritize their specific approach to the next zone. Yeah, it's, it's one of the great things about being a seasoned roster in Apex Legends is that, I mean, we can look at the map and know that TSM has moved on, but Fnatic being able to identify that just because of the way the ring is pulling that's likely happened means so much more and says so much more about their game sense, their skill, and their tenure in this title. Now, they've still got a ways to go as we move further up north, and that's where things can be a little bit problematic because a lot of teams are landing and setting themselves up at high point, one of the more common endings to rings like these. Honestly, high point zones are some of my most favorite that I've ever witnessed. They can get really chaotic, and you can see Geo just trying to navigate, fencing off the underground where MDY White has just elected to play. And I think that's going to be a strong position for them, especially knowing that they have a team on top of them. You don't really want to over peek out. But as more teams start to filter their way through this, GO are going to look for that preferred positioning, with this being their drop spot now. And, and, and the thing is that the, the place specifically that GO have chosen to play is a little bit more reliant on the ring pulling to a finish that's closer to Lightning Ron. But given where the zone is touching, right near the top of our screens, you can tell that it's going to favor that side. There's more playable space on that side of the zone. And GO predict that, recognize what's going on with the ring algorithm, and I think make an appropriate decision, one that's a little bit more high percentage than squads that'll set themselves up on the opposite end of high point a little further out towards the west. This is so crazy to me seeing TSM choose this building and not the one further into where the zones actually don't touch in high point. Because you think back to the turning point of their season back in the split two regular season, that building was what won them the high point zone where they threw down at least, I think it was like 19 eliminations yeah. from that rooftop. So TSM are no stranger to zones that end in high point and in fact have found so much success. They will be having, as we said, Fnatic rotate up right behind them. Fnatic stuck with the job of making sure that no team is able to make their way up late from Wall or even through the Prowler Caves right next door. At this point, they should be able to farm some kills from teams that rotate in late, like, say, the Dojo, who are making their way in now, Optic Gaming and Enter Force 36, who should all be moving through the wall or adjacent areas. On the other end, Alliance have interestingly chosen not to move. They've sat over by Lightning Rod, and they've got plenty of time to set up and may very well have to deal with complexities rotation out that could be a little bit wider as they've chosen to take high ground outside of high point, which is a silly sentence, but one that's accurate. To be fair, I actually really like Alliance's positioning. And you think about some of the end game zone pools that we've seen where you would assume they're going to pull into high point, but they're actually maybe going to pull straight to the Prowler Den where Alliance is. We do have endings here and multiple of them. So if they are anticipating that it could pull back this way, they would essentially have open season on half the lobby. And, and for, that, for that very reason, Yuki's going to get a lot of value out of having a marksman weapon because there's so much open ground in front of them, because they are playing the slightly lower percentage that it goes over towards them. If it does, they're going to get a lot of value out of marksman weapons, and if it doesn't, they're still going to get an Evo or two. So worst case scenario, you are still benefiting. Dark Zero, however, they're not. Their early rotation has put them out in the open. There are no buildings left, and this early move that they had last game has not resulted in the same position or the same safety as they had previously. Go next, do push up on them. Now trying to retreat, find themselves face to face with another squad, and now they're trapped by, between a rock and a hard place. Place. Dark Zero did rotate at least a minute faster than Optic Gaming, who comes out of down B, so they were able to beat Optic towards this zone, but will likely be punished by it, not able to grab a lot of materials. We saw Jen Burton was running low on light ammo and being stuck amongst all of the teams. They're going to need to pick an efficient but easier fight than necessary so they can grab the loot from that and carry on. But it's not going to be easy when you've got Yuki looking like a Grim Reaper with a triple take holding down every angle possible. At least he's fair. At, at least he's 
shoots at everyone. He's not just harassing one team. It is everybody who's in his line of sight. And that's with a 2x as well. Surprisingly accurate with the triple take at these ranges. Now, for the, for the meanwhile, Dojo are setting up. But we've still got plenty more squads and adaptations to zone that need to occur. Let's go ahead and bring up the map soon because that's where it's going to be really important to note that Alliance have actually made the big brain play that you were talking about. That next zone is actually going to pull directly towards Alliance. So think of that mass exodus of all of the teams that favored High Point. That's the gamble when you don't have that next zone information. But Alliance, they took the risk knowing that Lightning Rod has been their POI for so long. But for teams like Oxygen Esports, who needed a very strong performance here, rotating out of Barometer on Storm Point, a Lightning Rod zone is their worst nightmare. And not everyone has this information yet. Oxygen, in fact, are still fighting teams that, oh my lord, are trying to make their way through and into high point. We'll see how this fight turns out, and then we'll start considering what the fate of the other teams are. Oxygen Esports still trying to inch ever so closely towards that zone. Time is of the essence, ammo is of the essence, and Aiden looking to make every bullet count, trying to navigate the doorway, catching teammates off guard. He was about to try to shoot him in the back, but not before. Complexity was able to put suppressive fire, but Vayne taking to the skies, jumping around. That guy is just dancing throughout the building. Aiden gets chased, and suddenly the hunter becomes the hunt dead. Plenty of damage on Cody, the last member of Complexity. And that's another squad taken down. In fact, it's our first of this game as Oxygen retain their highest of high grounds on Storm Point. Now we have to turn our attention to the teams that will very soon be finding out that the high point that they invested in so heavily is no longer the place to be. Dark Zero usually has at least two evacuation towers, and the likelihood of them going out here now would be so strong if they can gather where that is going to happen, right? They'll throw down an evac tower, maybe a grav lift and jump halfway up it and try to rotate maybe towards somewhere that could have been free. But for the teams that are late arriving, they're going to have a completely free eastern side of that next zone. Disguise start pushing up on Sentinels in front of them. Both these teams with a late rotate, both hoping to frag out. And a quick wall bounce from Lou gets him out of dodge before Bangalore really becomes a problem. Does land a little bit of damage and pushes Disguise to back, but it's up to Sentinels to take that space and do with it what they will. What they've chosen to do is retreat on the other side of this engagement. I like this, though, because you think of the north side of Stormpoint being the oh, highest yeah, elevation yeah. on the map, and this climb to Thunderwatch is atrocious. Should they not work their way up and start getting into cover now, they run the, the risk of Disguise pushing in on them, but they're actually going to hit a Valkul, which necessarily won't go as far, but this will give them the best chance to get around Sentinels and find that cover closer to the inside of Thunderwatch. I like that you mentioned that it, it doesn't go as far because it's a really important point when considering how Sentinels will react to this play. They get a good chunk on Senox, but very quickly, it's a race up this hill. It's a lot like the race that we saw between Oxygen and Dark Zero, but this time it's on foot, and one that's a whole lot closer from both sides. Checking across the way, Dupe isn't going to get shot in the side, but both teams will arrive to Thunderwatch at around the same time, and now it becomes a much closer quarters fight. The fact that Thunderwatch was even free at this point in the game just goes to show you how many teams had moved into High Point. The fact that no one was even trying to play Thunderwatch. Optic towards the low ground are holding out Pulverex, trying to force them, or rather, I think it's Aurora now trying to force them to go into command center. It's going to end up working out for them. At this point, it's more about buying space than trying to truly influence the pathing of another team. It doesn't matter if you're mirrored right now. What matters is by how much distance you are. So Optic are going to leave this one. Not going to be checking behind them too often. What they're fortunately going to discover is that the positions right in front of them, right uphill, are occupied. And even an evac tower will not help you entirely. It'll be a, a band-aid on a bigger problem. You have to start to think about optics rotation, right? With two people in Thunderwatch, Disguise and Sentinels coexisting, yes, you could try to play the underneath of Thunderwatch, but you run the risk of people shooting at you from the side, knowing that Pulverex was able to walk straight in towards that next zone, knowing they have crypto. They're going to be constantly scouting with the drone itself, looking for someone that may decide to wrap around 
their side as well. The best part of this is that, as you say, they've identified that their biggest threat will come from the south. So few teams will be able to approach their position from high point because you have to go through Alliance and Dark Zero in order, in order to do so. And it's really not worth it. Pulverex have a fine position, but not one that's worth risking your life for. So instead, they will be focused entirely towards the south side. This next ring won't close it up off behind them, but the one following it will. What this next ring will do is push MDY White out into the open. We're about to lose half the teams of this lobby here as this circle starts to close. The fact that there's 19, it is all about how are you going to make it out into the open, out in the field of Prowlers, as you can see, Realize hitting the rotation, flying over Thunderwatch. Which rock will they elect to play? With no legends like Watson to be able to fence off, we just have the catalyst, and they're probably going to have to really utilize that Dark Veil. So prioritizing ultimate accelerants, but that one will not get them back. So it's 62%. Realize they're going to have to play the slow game. They've got a little bit of time to do it. And a lot of squads stuck in a traffic jam at their back, disguised. One of those teams that are looking to farm up a few kills, and in that way, gather a few more points for the up coming map. Disguised have a great position, with high ground, not a whole lot of teams can threaten them, so it is just profit that they can accrue for now. The real concern coming in the next zone, where unfortunately, Dojo will not be participating. Enter Force 36 was the first team to go out of that mass exodus, and we can see it is going to pull ever so further towards Alliance, but Dark Zero was able to take an early exit, but MDY White, White fighting for their life against Gombre Otosan, the first two teams that made it towards high point. This is their drop spot, and Ming Yu will fall at the hands of Zhonghee, Juzna and Ko and Gio trying to hit a quick reset before they have to make their way out. But TSM, they left their building. They want to make sure that their backs are clear before they hit the rotation. Shield swap from Imperial Hell keeps him in the fight and reps keeps the damage applied. Ganbare Otosan take out one team but cannot stand in the face of TSM. They're going to have all the teams looking to keep on moving forward. Oxygen Esports set their sights on Fnatic, needing every one of these eliminations, currently sitting on seven total points in the series, but they need to make it happen. But one member of Fnatic was able to get out Yuka just in the corner, and that's on Reeds for being Bloodhound and no longer a Seer. I know Coach Psycho was looking to make that transition to allow for a more aggressive comp, but now everyone gets to survive a little bit. And this game has been wonderful from Oxygen so far. They've owned the high ground. This next zone close, however, with just 12 seconds left, is going to be very punishing to them. To them, and of course, to Disguise. Remember, Pulverex are going to be holding out towards the eastern side where Sentinels are looking to push up, but Disguise have to take a Valkult, and a Valkult to, into where? I don't know. Let's jump in with a listen and see what's about to happen. Here? Yeah, yeah we need to get there. We need to get there. The team, the team right here, though. Split off of me, split just off land, of me. Just land, just land, just land. I'm a fucking wall. Land right yeah, here. I'm gonna do is right here. Smoke our feet. Smoke our feet. Right feet. Fucking smoke our feet. Yeah, I'm trying to. We're good, we're good, we're good. Just... You can I'm just batting, I'm out. batting. My only we're bat, right. my only bat. Drop me a bat, Lou. Yeah, yeah, I got you, brother. I got you. Right here. We, we need to watch this walk out. We need to watch this walk yeah, out. I'm, I'm watching right now. I'm watching right now. I don't see anybody yet. Just chill. Just stabilize. We don't have to do anything right now. They're walking up over here. Oh, is that dude? Why shoot horizon? On the right, we gotta focus this, guys. Okay, good, good. We're we good. got bang out there. We got bang out there. Do you want to bang out back? Yeah, yeah, chill, 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 chill. Do I bang out? Safe on me, safe on me, safe, safe on me. Safe here, safe here, safe here. Do you want me to bang out? No, 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 no. Okay. Safe, safe. Wall's about to go down, Luby. Careful. Yeah, so much KP over here. So much KP over here. We should bang out. You want me to bang out? I think bang out it. Okay, bang out it. Look for the KP. Yeah, yeah, look for the KP. Let's give me a here. Here. They're on the other There's side of the like desk. three fucking bang bro. Right here, take him right here! Watch the wall, watch the wall, right there! Get it. Hit him, yeah, hit him, right, him right there! We can't do anything. I look at zone, look at zone! I'll look, look at him, look at him! They're running over there! Zone. Oh shit, I have no energy. Crack, kill this one! Man crack, man crack! What are you lipping? What should we I do about heavy. this? I need heavy, I need heavy. I don't have any heavy. Here, here, I dropped your 40 right here. Look I think at these can... guys. I think we can walk up and just play like. Yeah, yeah. Wait, we wait, take from my take... wall. Maybe we There's take a team in landing round. Team in landing round. We can. Can we take? We can take the wall. building, bro. No, okay. no, no. I, I'm a wall. I'm a wall. Right, just I'm follow, follow, follow Dude. Oh, we just follow Dude. I have two cells, one bat. 
Yeah, I have one bat here, here, two cells. Yeah, I have one bat, one cell. I have, I have one hemlock clip as well. Lou, take this. Just, just get to me and click. Well, click disguise first. are safe for now, but it looks like Lou just needs some energy. Meanwhile, Dark Zero were able to take out TSM and move ever so closely towards that next zone. Having that building and everyone needing to push towards them is going to give them the opportunity to rack up so many eliminations. But in the end, Alliance is poised for perfection. They are, they are the home court advantage team. Alliance should win this game 10 out of 10 times. It's the, it's the fundamentals of Apex Legends. Your POI should be your strongest point. And yet, with Dark Zero right ahead of them, can you actually challenge this squad that has achieved so much and that has slaughtered in group stage? Pulver X is certainly trying to contest the high ground, not against Dark Zero, but they're not exactly succeeding either as they're quickly put down by Sentinels. Pulver X are pushed right back down, but the first knock belongs to them, and Koifel, on very little HP, could still be swung on and taken out. Well, the issue is FaZe is just above them, firing Sentinels down at Sentinels. Are gone. They're getting Sam and just like that, they will be eliminated. Disguise are rotating whoa, whoa, into whoa, the whoa. mix. This is going to be oxygen, and they are going to fall at the hands of a mix of all the teams. Now, Disguise, Dark Zero, still kind of coexisting in this building prior to having to move. So we're looking towards where that zone is going to pull from, because where Alliance is situated, they have to cross a bridge to get across Pulverex, who were able to walk in just from the most southeastern side of the zone for free earlier on, basically gifted that ability to stay safe with just a little bit of cover. A, a win here, though, for Alliance would be such a big boon, and they're so close to achieving it. Statistically, they should achieve it, and it could push them into the winner's bracket, even after a difficult group stage so far. But you have to overcome DZ, who have been unmoving even after they had to make a difficult rotation in. How how do you even unseat this squad who now has no lines of sight onto them and who knows that there is one team on this bridge, Alliance, who they can bully? They need to get DZ off the high ground because Jen Burton is holding angles impeccably, putting so much pressure on them, even though they have a trident for cover, even though they have that supply bin. Hack is on the Bangalore is only going to have at most two smokes to utilize, so they'll be able to keep trying to time them, but I think they're going to start moving. But F Chan and Co, they are the first that have to move towards the building. Now, now I will say Pulver X actually have a really nice spot because of the small amount of cover that's going to be afforded to them at the boxes. The boxes that Alliance are running towards. This is the fight that'll mean a game, but Alliance lose Hackies before it even starts. Yuki's not able to play, has to run right into Disguise, and Alliance are falling apart! Yeah, but this is all about Doop right now. Doop, who was recently trying to get into this more, was coaching for a little bit, puts together this team, gets signed by Disguise, Dark and Zero. has made it towards champs. We are looking for a winner's bracket run for them. Oh my and god. All of the dark veils being expended. Everyone dropping them. Alliances will fall first. And Pulverex still utilizing the cross section of theirs and are maintaining the boxes and undercover. We are drawing out hieroglyphs with these dark veils, but Dark Zero takes no prisoners. Alliance go down. Top three is theirs. Disguise walk up on Dark Zero. Take them out. And it's just Pulverex in the way. Pulverex who can find another win on Storm Point. Shunmi goes down, but Disguise go out first, and Pulverex take their second win. They needed that second win coming into this series in 29th place. We were talking about would that first win with six eliminations be enough, but they carried that momentum forward. Look at Pulverex, so pleased with that performance, and I am pleased as well. What an impeccable play from Pulverex, and what a, what a stunning course of storm point just in the nick of time kicking themselves into high gear this is a team that could contest in the finals given how they've played two of the zones of the three that we've seen so far look all i gotta say is i'm really loving all the crypto plays that we are seeing throughout group series and honestly ascend looked strong earlier now pulverick says all right i'm gonna stand up for the crypto players but hey analyst desk i'm curious to see what you've got to say about pulverex not much to say. They've been doing it without talking. They've been talking the way that it matters in games. Two out of three. That is a pretty good record for any Apex I've ever played in terms of win rate. And Pulverex continue on. 
What has been a Cinderella story from the very beginning of a team that's been a fan favorite has yet to cross that finals threshold and make sure that they have a chance at the end of the day. But I think that this could be a starting point, you know, and again, it's just nice to see Pulverex having their moment in the sun. They're always a team that represents APAC so well and also it just gives us good vibes whenever they're playing. Yeah, they are. Uh, doesn't matter how many of them are there. Uh, they will absolutely be putting their whole heart into it. And, you know, sometimes group stage, it can just be uh, a little bit of a warm-up in some ways, right? Or just a chance to, to get things right, to work through any issues the team has got and get you ready for when it matters, for when the money's on the line. One of the things they're so good about is positioning and getting into those top fives, like Gino <laughs> mentioned, as doing? two or as three. And they're also great at making a smile. But one thing I want to talk about is a little bit how they did it. And let's go to Graceful for our final zone and recap how Pulverex was able to take their second game out of three as we play that. Walk me through what you saw. A lot of catalyst play, and obviously Pulverex taking on a good fight against the Skies. So the absolute biggest thing that we all take notice of is that Alliance should win the game. They put themselves in a bad spot. Pulverex took the best spot, in my opinion. Um, the only thing that most teams aren't disciplined. Pulverex, however, is a different team. They held that vault super well. They knew the play from Alliance. There was only one play they could do. They denied that by immediately peeking the wall so that Alliance couldn't just walk to the short wall. You're going to see it right here soon. You see the wall on the far right side right here where the wall is crossed? That's where they are aiming to get to. Those exact boxes that they're just holding. They're not even stepping up aggressively. They're just holding hands, playing their spot. Don't do anything too rash. We win this for free if we hold hands. And they're just super disciplined. The Apex team so far today have been wow. Yeah, and this is what you said in terms of mechanics, right, and, and macro. You, you were talking about how they work so well together as a unit, or yeah. APAC specifically. Yes. So teams in general tend to have, especially when you play comps that aren't, uh, like their comps specifically, as you can see, is really team-oriented. Like you can play more aggressive team comps like Bloodhound Bang, which is like everybody's trying to make a play, and it's really hard to keep synergi like staying synergized. Like, you know, oh, I'm scanning something, oh, I smoked something, we need to swing this, and they're off timing. But when you play comps like this and they know what their role is on the team, amazing work staying together. And if you're talking about making plays as well, there you can see Shun Mi going past the Catalyst wall first, right? And in those end zones in the current meta, it is very important that your Catalyst player can make those plays because, of course, that is the one legend that can cross the opposing cat walls without encountering that stun. Exactly, yeah. Obviously, match three ended up in a Pulver X win, but a lot of teams in the mix as we take a look at a interesting Great shark here as well. Ben, what are you seeing? Pulverex disguised the team that's recently been signed. Welcome, Sky's Toast, to the eSport of Apex Legends. Uh, Duplex, Lou, and Synox, not a bad squad to have with you. And also, Dark Zero staying in the mix in top three. No, not at all here. Disguised, of course, getting their return. What feels like took a little bit longer than expected, but trust me, there's still three great matches to go here. Dark Zero, though, continuing to clutch at the heels of many. Walking away with 5K plus out of that game is nothing to shy away from and they truly were the pressuring factor in this lobby truly driving what occurred even if they weren't walking away with that win it's hard to overstate how important it is and how impressive it is to continually get top three top fives in these ever-changing lobbies not just because of the skill level um, that is so high but also the circumstances that you have to overcome whether it is that early game where there's a lot of zone rotating teams fast or those teams that like to play a little slower going against new challenges that is something dark zero has somehow found a way to overcome first place yet again genome but pulverex with those two wins has found their way back into second bottom 10 though have a conversation with me at least at something that you poke out here aurora obviously they've had some uh some new swaps here fire beavers formerly coming in and playing with them dojo maybe expecting a little more what's standing out to you so far yeah uh as the uh Cool, we'll get taken away from me there. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, my memory is telling me uh, that there was uh, a couple of teams there that uh, obviously need to push a little bit further, right? Because yeah. uh, obviously what we're worried about with some of those teams in the bottom 10 there, right. Rain Day, is that they're not going to make it through to the winner's bracket final, right? Yes. And that's where yes. the overall scoreboard comes in. And, and that too is kind of where you start to run out of time. I and mean, we don't want to say anything in terms of the tournament because you still have tomorrow, even if you're in the losers, or excuse me, the elimination bracket one, or if you're in the winner's final, 
regionals, Elimination Bracket 1 starts to get scary. That's when you have to really maybe consider changing a lineup, changing a drop zone, because you know you could be going home if you don't get it right. And that's where you sometimes don't want to be because that means you can't practice stuff that when you're winning, you don't have to change, right? You, you can basically continue to do what is working for you. One thing I do want to talk about in terms of changing, though, Graceful, you've teed up something that these players didn't necessarily decide the game did in terms of changes in our legend compositions. Walk me through what has happened so far between split two just a month and a half ago in our playoffs and now in terms of how the game has changed as far as legends. So split two in general, Seer was very strong, insanely strong. Let's even talk about Seer in general, is that he just brought so much to the team that they just played him regardless because you have 30 seconds wall hack, you have HP knowledge as well, uh, you cancel stuff as well. He was just so oppressive that you had to pick him. If not, you could actually lose a fight just by not having him on, on the team. Right? Yeah. You can see the pick rate right here as well. Seer's pick rate was sky high and this season now it's super low, right? Bangalore and Horizon, however, stays super viable due to the fact that Almost the same as here, but not as oppressive. Brings so much to the team. Bang can frag. She can play slow with her ult. She can, you know, uh, help with macro due to smokes. She has everything, right? Horizon brings a completely different thing that no other Legends has, is that she brings verticality to teams. And that's one, like, that's the biggest reason why people pick her. Sure, her passive is god tier for fighting, uh, and she's just a good solid fragger, but the verticality, so many zones end where one, uh, one, Good option opens up like on a ceiling due to a bang ult, which is why you play her with bang as well. You just bang ult, they are forced to drop off or rotate away because you will die. If you get three man stunned, you're just dead on three man horizon team lands on you, are just immediately dead. And right? that was split too. So now looking into this season here, we see Catalyst Bangler Horizon. Once again, Bangler Horizon, so strong. Catalyst just adds on to that. Now, instead of just being oppressive in fighting due to Seer, now we're adding the defensive capabilities to the characters and also more macro due to wall. But Catalyst actually opens up the, if you get a spot, you can play this comp on edge, you can play this comp, uh, comp in zone, you can play anywhere because you can bunker down, you can play edge, you can do everything. It's just so viable. And speaking of that, we also see more legends here, such as Bloodhound for uh, offensive comps, Fuse, Crypto, Newcastle, GB. Genome, would you want to take a head on uh, Fuse for me, maybe? Why do we see more of Fuse specifically tied to maybe specific maps? Yeah, like that is definitely getting more play on World's Edge right now. How I'm viewing him at the moment, he's almost like a long-range caustic, right? In the way that he annoys teams, in the way that his utility is useful, uh, because we do see a lot more building end zones in World's Edge, and so the knuckle clusters just come out so annoying at, at you know poking you into corners, doing damage, stealing those shield cells away from you. I gotta ask. Graceful, did, did you ask him about Fuse because he's Australian? I mean, is that is that why you threw straight to him? You just skipped Ben for some reason. I swear to God, I I, 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 I mean, mean, come on, man. Man. I mean, really? <laughs> okay. I mean, okay. I don't want to I don't want to have that on this desk. Okay, okay. everybody has parity here. Um, all jokes aside, I, I think obviously when you look at these these teams, you've seen also crypto drop a little bit to become a little more niche. Fifteen percent in split two, now down to seven percent. We've seen Bloodhound join the fray, who was completely unplayed, and that's been something that I think teams have figured out in this wiggle room time, but as we settle into what is going on for the rest of the tournament, I think you will see that these squads, these legend choices become even more refined and settled in. So keep watching and we will define this meta even more over these next three days. But of course, one thing that's already been defined is my favorite segment of the day. You know what I'm talking about. It's WD Black, what's in your pack? And today, Zephyr, I'm gonna lean in with you because this one, you just gotta talk about it when you see it. It's the Kraber. Walk us through what this weapon brings to Apex. Whether it's the pressure of a single shot alone or a quick 360 or 720 skill shot, the Kraber is something like no other. The pressure that this in I would say line of sight brings to the table is something that is unparalleled to any other weapon in the game. As a heirloom option, it has now found itself more commonly, especially in the early game with changes we saw just a few seasons ago, which means the threat is always lurking, and especially with new skirmishers also joining the pack. It lets everybody know that that Kraber is in action. One of my favorite things to see in action, and you got to see that a little earlier, Gino. That clip's been going viral already. Mate, that was one of the best moments of my casting career. I know it was one of MT's favorite moments probably in his career. He was in disbelief, but sometimes it's not even just the ammo, it's, it's the sound ringing out. That's how much fear it will put in 
the minds of your opponents. Mm, just <laughs> hearing the sound of a Kraber. We've all been there as well. And so we'll continue to see how these weapons, how these legends affect the remaining three games. Remember, we've only got three more before we have set up our elimination brackets and our winner's brackets tomorrow. So don't go anywhere. Of course, if you want to keep in touch with everything we've got going on Apex Legends-wise, make sure to follow us on, on X. I guess, Twitter, whatever you want to call it at this point. The, the one that we all use to talk about stuff esports-wise at Play Apex Esports. That's right, of course, Play Apex on Twitch and, of course, on YouTube. What a phenomenal day we have going on. We are heading into our next and our final three games. We are switching maps, and I believe our casters are ready for us as well. So let's kick it off. It's Dan Gaskin. It's Mark Hatcher. They're ready to end the day strong. We are so ready to get this going, and it is going to be not just the end of the day, but the end of group play as well. Tomorrow is where bracket play kicks off, but before we get there, Dan, we're going to find out which side of the bracket these teams are going to be in. Yeah, thankfully, I've got lots of mathematicians behind the scenes who are helping me keep everything updated, but I can tell you about 15 teams are locked in to the winner's bracket, which would leave only five places remaining. Remember we were talking about the Pioneers watching on? They're in 20th position at Ooh. the moment on 91 points, so the cutoff may be around there. So that's very scary for the Pioneers watching on right now. Well, this is going to be where we're having the action take place. It's been the end of Stormpoint, and now we move over to World's Edge. And if you're a Pulverex fan, you're probably hoping we play Stormpoint until the end of time. Two wins for them, Dark Zero, of course, getting their customary win, as you would expect from one of the best in the world. But World's Edge certainly poses a different proposition for this team. It does, but it's great news for Pulverex, who at the Split 2 playoffs performed far better on World's Edge. So now they're going to arguably one of their better maps, then maybe Pulverex can just get over the line here. Because I can tell you, Pulverex are currently tied with Pioneers on 90 one point. The teams that we're looking at, those bubble teams, we're looking at the likes of Pulverex, 100 Thieves, Dojo. These guys are around the kind of 15th to 18th at the moment, but the teams that are below them, they're going to be trying to overtake them. Go next, Fnatic, FaZe, Northeption, Tom, Young, Kung, and Alliance, all trying to break into that top 20. Well, you can see the Hall of Champions in front of you. The question is, when we get to Sunday evening, who is going to be the champion of the ALGS Championships? Well, we're going to find out who's going to be going to which side of the bracket, who's going to be in the winners, who's going to be in the elimination. Taking a look at our drops on Wild's Edge, Dan. What do you like the look of? Well, uh, there's something I don't like the look of, and that's Dojo versus Alliance. I was saying that Alliance are just about there. They're on 90 points at the moment. But that's probably a better spot than Dojo find themselves in, who are just a little bit further behind. Actually, sorry, they're a little bit further ahead. They are on 93. So both of our two bubble teams are going to be competing against each other on drop, and that will naturally rip points away from one of them. That's somewhat terrifying, to be honest, for both of those teams. Alliance who have been through it, Mandy doing his job, and filling in beautifully for them yesterday, but now the young effect is back, and you have to question if he's going to be able to get back on the lineup and do what he does best, send them through to the winner's side of the bracket. Sentinel's another team to keep an eye on here, Dan, as well as FaZe. Like you mentioned, they need a couple more games to solidify their position in that winner's side. Well, match four is live here in Birmingham. It's time to get underway. Time to get those legends selected and see if anyone's going to go for anything out of the blue. But I think at this point, it's crunch time. This is when you need to be playing your best composition possible. However, you might notice in the top left of your screen, Dark Zero uh, feel a little bit confident, and they're going to be going for something a little bit different. I see a Revenant on my screen. And of course, it's Zero who's going to be playing on Revenant by the looks of things. We'll have to get confirmation when we get in game if that is going to be the case. That certainly throws somewhat of a spanner in the works. But all eyes understandably, as we see the teams coming out of the dropship here, Dan, are going to be on Thermal Station. Are we going to see Alliance and Dojo duking it out for that spot? So Alliance on 90 points, Dojo on 93. And if we believe that the cutoff may be around 98, I think, is where J-Lings are, then this is going to be a situation where one of these teams has to make sure they can bully the other enough just to get that extra five points or so to take them over the line. Both teams out of the dropship. Keep my eyes fixed on our map overhead we have in front of us to see if that contest is going to be going down. And Force 36 is going to be going over to the tree and might even think about a little third party if they get their loot just in time. But looking elsewhere, yes, indeed, we are going to have the contest going down. It's Alliance versus the Dojo. And Hackers and Effects both down to barely any HP. Barely any. It's 
at all as now Hackers is going to go down. It's going to be Yuki in effect against the entire Dojo roster. And this could be a fight that potentially sends Dojo into the winner's bracket, really, with how many points they've already been able to get. But enemy's already taken a lot of damage here. Does manage to get the spikes down, though. That's going to be a problem for whoever's inside. And Alliance at the moment just hoping for a gun, and they're not even going to be able to get one of those by the looks of things. Yuki going to fall as well. One more player to go to delete Alliance from what has been their home for so, so long. And Design Force hungry. Alliance eliminated, and the Dojo stand up and let them know. I mean, that puts Dojo to 96 points, one behind 100 Thieves. And 100 Thieves and Jay Lings, they're two teams that are kind of watching on, saying, have we done enough? Aren't we going to be able to be in that winner's bracket elsewhere? Optic Gaming also in a fight down towards Stax. And it looks like they're going to win their contest against Gumbari Otazan. So Optic also holding strong. And they are one of those teams who currently hold one of those winner bracket spots. I mean, they were looking good coming into this. 89 points before they even started this series. And you can see 24 they've been able to put down after the three Storm Point matches. Well, this is where we're going. You can see the circle. You also get a little bit of a ring console information to show us where we're going to be going. And for teams like Sentinels, who mentioned, who really need to kind of solidify a position with a good game. And the same can be said for FaZe. This is a great zone for them. That high ground on the eastern side of the zone going to be so vital to hold down. Yeah, this is going to be a really tough one. Like Dojo winning that fight, but now you've got to try and make your way all the way to the northeast side. And you've got to go through quite a few heavy hitters to get there. Dark Zero are going to be moving fast, though, from Harvester, so perhaps they're not going to be too much of a worry. You might catch a few teams who are starting to get a little bit desperate now that might start playing a little bit more risky, potentially going for more KP, recognizing that if they just try and play placements, it could just be a little bit too difficult with some of the heavy hitters in this lobby. Well, here is a look at Epicenter, or just outside of it. One of those teams who are going to be making their rotate and playing for this eastern side, and some of that high ground is going to be phased. Complexity at the moment kind of stuck in a little bit of an in-between situation, caught in their rotate. This truck is probably going to be good for the long term, but we all know at this point how hard it is to hold down this truck, especially with so many fuses in the lobby as well. Yeah, it was hard enough back in the day before Fuse was even involved, but now with Fuse being so heavy in the meta, you're just going to get bombarded throughout. So Sentinels, try as they might, we'll have to see how it goes down, but as we can see, 26 points on the board for them. They've already secured a winner's bracket spot as well with their performance, so as long as they've been doing the math in the back, they should be feeling very confident going into World's Edge. Fnatic making their rotate as well. A bit, a bit of a quiet tournament for Fnatic so far. Somewhat of a surprise to see them as low as they are. And it's looking like potentially an elimination bracket run for them after their strong performance of the split two playoffs. But we know the talent on that team. We know they'll be able to put it together. You would imagine they'll be making a long run and trying to get back in that finals themselves. TSM, let's take a look at them. They do have ring console information. And you can see at the moment, that they're just going to be Set up outside of Overlook, playing the height on this tower, holding anyone out who's trying to rotate behind. Of course, TSM already qualified into that winner's bracket with the points they were able to accrue even before this series started. But this is a chance to play in a what, what is a very competitive script for them, in, in a way, against the best teams in the world and making sure they can stay on top. TSM don't just want to coast through to the winner's bracket. They want to dominate into that winner's bracket so they can show why they believe they are the best team in the world still. Two teams who are surrounding them, the team that Hal's looking at in that building, that is going to be FaZe behind them. It's going to be Go Next Esports. Also making their rotate to Overlook at the moment is going to be Disguise. You can see them just at the top of your screen right now as we see the Overlook of the POI itself and where all these teams are trying to fight for position elsewhere. Realize they're over on Landslide, completely out of it at the moment, but. Tom Young Kung, they're in Skyhook. A little bit of a fight going down here with Aurora. Yeah, and they're closing in on having a real shot at that winner's bracket as well. With how they've been playing and how the points have been going, they're projected to be in that winner's. And just adding an extra bit of KP will increase their chances even more so. So a couple of early fights, a, a few contests going down, but this is really important that everyone is just locked in going into World's Edge because there are still squads that could leapfrog you, even if you might be projected to get into that winner's bracket. You mentioned a team like Fnatic, for example, even though they are very far behind, a couple of wins, and suddenly they could be up there and snatching one of those spots off you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy to think that this is almost over, right? It, but there's three more games, and we know how many points you can accrue. And it wouldn't surprise me to see in that last game someone make a late run and steal away one of those winner's bracket spots. And on the other side, Somebody lose out on it. Tom Young Kung trying to hold off Aurora, who are going for that banner at the moment, and I'm pretty sure that they got it. The question is, can they get the res and get back to a three, or is this going to be the end of the game for them? Nine Impulse will go down. 
he will be finished off here as well. And Tom Young Kung, once again, just on top in this fight. Yeah, and they've really impressed me throughout this tournament. Uh, right on day one, we saw a couple of end circles that they were involved with, and they were a real threat in the lobby. And they show that they are going to be a real dominant force as we move forward further into the bracket. And they should be good to get into that winner's bracket as well. Now they can just hold up here at Skyhook, maybe look for that final player, but eventually they will continue their journey over towards Epicenter and further. Aurora's still alive in the lobby. It was Lorraine who managed to get away. Should be able to get back and maybe secure the banners, unless Tom Young Kung want to just camp those for a few more moments to see if they can pick up that extra KP. Or certainly make sure that Aurora aren't a threat to them on their rotate by letting them back into the game. Elsewhere, as you can see on the map overhead, right in the northern side around Survey Camp, you have Fnatic spread pretty wide at the moment, just controlling multiple positions. Realize making their move through Epicenter as well. A little bit of a, a maybe a fight starting to break out inside of Fragment, you can see before between, excuse me, Enter Force 36 and Pulverex, who, like I said, maybe wish the World's Edge looked a lot more like Stormpoint after their previous performance in the three games. But Fnatic, I feel like pressure on their shoulders here in these three games now. Yeah, and they're split at the moment. Fnatic, uh, only a two here. Their final player is over towards Survey Camp. So they have to be very careful that they don't get involved in an engagement too soon. Otherwise, they might just be run up on. But I think what they're doing is using that third player as kind of a scout to ensure that they own this northern side of the circle and they're not going to be pressed by anyone arriving through the ring. You saw when we had the map overhead as well, a few teams kind of banking over towards the east, closer to Overlook on the northern side of that, that circle that was coming up. And there's going to be a lot of open ground in this final circle, which is not going to be able to be held in the early stages. And that's going to mean we're going to lose a lot of teams kind of round four-ish when they're trying to break their way in and they're being contested by all the guys that have already found space. So expect there to be a lot of action in the kill feed once we do get there, but for now, there is plenty of space to play. Oxygen Esports on our screens at the moment. We've kind of talked about how the expectation for this team has shifted after their performance of the split two playoffs. And we're going to have to see if they can adapt to that new pressure, that newfound expectation that's been put on their shoulders. A couple of good games here would maybe just restore a little bit of parity to what is expected of them. But they're going to have to deal with Enter Force 36 and Pulverix, who are going to be pretty close to them at the moment. Aiden's going to be hoping that Vayne's, uh, excuse me, Reed Scan's going to give them the information this building is clear. So for now, it will be safe. And it looks like they might be playing for a little bit of recon. Yeah, Oxygen in the overall is on about 61 points at the moment. So that's 30 plus off of what we think would be the cutoff. And, you know, it's, it's achievable. But you've also Very got to do doable. it whilst no one else is getting those points as well. So you're probably going to need about 40. I think if you're around the 100 mark, you're all but guaranteed to be in that winner's bracket. And that is achievable for Oxygen. But we heard what Jayhawk was saying on the desk earlier. Storm Point is where they seem to thrive, but we're on World's Edge. Well, here's a fight breaking out. And it is going to be disguised to a finding the end of the vault from Verhulst. TSM clean them up so comfortably. And that Dark Veil vale was almost perfect there for him to just poke through Verhulst and get those kills on board. TSM fans back in the building. It's been allowed after the Dreamfire fans have dominated the crowd all day long, but it's great to hear some other chants. Tenth place at the moment in this series are TSM, but they still hold one of the power positions in the overall standings. And they're in a good spot as well, over towards Overlook. They can hold this eastern side of the circle for quite some time. It's only go next to a kind of near them and around them. And you can see the pings that are happening. TSM very aware of how much space they have to cover at the moment and they have to just apply pressure in the right areas, do damage to the right teams to ensure that they can continue to hold that spot. Just looking at the kill feed there, you can see Reeds has gone down on Oxygen Esports. Question is, can they get the res? Should be able to as the, the knock did come in from distance with that scout. Go next, just playing down on this low ground at the moment, kind of trying to rotate underneath the position that TSM just took out Disguised from. But no targets as yet. Dark Zero though, number one next to their name at the moment. And I've got to say, Dan, coming into this tournament, understandably, a lot of talk about Dark Zero being the favorites to maybe take this event home. Well, their performance so far, they are backing up a lot of people's prediction. I mean, even Dark Zero themselves said that they believe they were the favorites. Zero will tell you who'll win anything. Exactly, but even Jen Burton was saying, we feel like we're the favorites, although I'd probably rather be the underdog coming into the tournament because it does apply that extra little bit of pressure onto your shoulders, but it doesn't seem like it phases them. Dark Zero have been excellent so far this tournament, showing the same consistency we've seen for the past couple. But we'll have to see if it carries on into bracket play because group stages is one thing, but when it gets to 
pressure situation, a bracket play, that's an entirely different scenario. Now, circle, it's moving down, it's moving away from where TSM and Dark Zero were kind of thinking of, and does play into the hands perfectly, really, of Optic Gaming. I was going to say, it also it plays into the hands of the Dojo, because Dojo were crafting on their way towards zone, they won that contest as well, and they know by playing this southern side of the zone, they're going to be on the slow side of it. Fnatic, though. They're on the opposite end of things. They have to take some fights and find their way through the lobby. The team they're going up against right now is going to be MDY White. As Melzera is trying to get some damage down, but MDY White at the moment holding strong, but they don't have the shields really to contest unless Fnatic make a mistake here. Well, they're getting aggressive, our MDY White. They full send it out maybe to try and catch them off guard. The Fnatic were there waiting. Ready, you can get the first one, and MDY White looks like it's going to be all bad news for them as they get eliminated. Fnatic are able to hold strong and in good timing as well, because round three about to close. So Fnatic, they held the northern side and they are rewarded for their push and they should be able to reset before anyone else gets involved. Yeah, you saw that reps from distance there with the knuckle cluster managed to get a down as well, but not able to convert on it. The gold knockdown will certainly be good enough to get Fnatic back and ready to fight. Aurora are kind of hovering in the vicinity as well as we take a look at where we maybe expect this zone to be ending. Oxygen Esports, who are probably thinking, hey, this zone is going to be a very tough one for us to rotate into. With the shift that we've seen, are probably thinking and feeling a little bit more confident than they were a few moments ago. Yeah, if they have that information from a ring console, then they'll be feeling very happy, but I'm not sure they will have been able to get one looking at their comp. So it would have just been a survey beacon they would have to work with. Reed playing Bloodhound. But they are going to get aggressive now, get on top of this building, and you can see into the hunt they go as Reed wants to be the leading character here and wants to get involved in the fight. Aurora eliminated in the meantime, and here goes Reed. Pops in, does a huge initial damage. The Arkstar he has to avoid. The spray is pretty good, but it's not ending this fight quickly enough for them. Pulverix do get eliminated though, and even though Reed's went down, the rest of Oxygen clean up the pieces and start to find momentum. But here come Tom Young Kung. Looking to take advantage of the fight that's broken out, but have Oxygen managed to reset in time? Well, I think Realize, yeah, being here could be a threat as well. There's just those extra lingering players that makes this very difficult to try and navigate, because in one door, you find one team, you go out of the next, and suddenly there's a surprise <laughs> waiting for you as it's ring around the rosies at the moment. Well, here's another fight, and it's going to be Dark Zero versus Complexity by the looks of things, and Complexity is going to be swept aside. Complexity fall. In 14th position, Dark Zero once again controlling this bridge. And this is going to be a real test of Dark Zero, this lobby. They have a long way to rotate. They've got a lot of teams to go through. And back to the battle of Fragment at the moment. That's a beautiful spray with the R9. One of the worst feelings when you just feel it absolutely shredding you right from behind. And unfortunately, it's just going to have to be just asking the teammates to try and do something to save you. But it's not going to happen. Tom Young Kung now own this building, but they're still trying to find those last remaining players. And that 1v3 does not look like a fun one to me. Oh, but the Arkstar could make a difference. Oh, he got stuck, and now there might be an opportunity to fly in. Killer Boys is trying to do what he can. But here comes the rest of the support from the team. And Tom Young Kung, clean house. Dark Zero eliminated in the meantime. And it was FaZe, I believe, who took them down. Realize also fallen. And I mentioned how this shift has affected so many teams. Almost a fake prediction on where they thought the game was going to be going. And now they're all feeling the effects of it. FaZe Clan, who need, similarly to the likes of Fnatic, etc., we were talking about earlier, they need wins on the board here on World's Edge if they're to find themselves in the winner's bracket. Ooh, they are capable of it, but Phony Head goes down. And I don't know whether they're going to be able to get him back up. They might have to play this back as a two, as it will be finished off, as TSM are just being a nuisance as Oxygen Esports also go down. And TSM are just having a field day here from height. I mentioned how this height is so important for these kind of zones, not just if it pulls out to where we thought it was going to, but even if it pulls back to where we are going to, because you could just pepper shots down from that high ground, and that's exactly what TSM are doing right now. Sentinel's still alive, though, looking to clean a little bit of space in front of them. The black hole's going to go down. Is it going to connect for big damage? Yes, it is. Quaifal gets that entry damage and gets a knock as well. Nordemption have been eliminated. And you have to say that Sentinels are in a fantastic position for this endgame. Yeah, Sentinels have poised themselves very well here, and they've been well aware of their surroundings to make sure they don't allow anyone to just creep up on them. Dojo, after that initial win down in the southwest at Thermal, they're still alive as well. Trying to make sure they can ensure their place in the winner's bracket. An enemy's doing a job here with the R99. 
into Force 36 are eliminated. TSM eliminated as well. The Dojo who needed this game, who wanted to have this game where they get points on the board, followed up by kills. It's almost been the perfect game for them so far, Dan. Winning the contest and then going forward on the rotate, finding their way to zone and picking up yet more KP alongside it. And with that KP, that sends Dojo to an overall of 102 points. Now, for me, that's a good cutoff. That's what we're expecting, 100 to be that barrier. So they should be good for the winner's bracket, even after match four here. But look at FaZe. They need points even more than the likes of Dojo, and they're gonna have to do it as a two. Do not reload your gun. Do not pop any meds. Do not breathe. Do not breathe. No bodily functions for the remaining members of FaZe Clan. Dojo, though, confidence. You can see it in the way that they're just walking forward at the moment. There is a care package in front of them. You have to wonder what's going to be inside that, and if it's going to help them towards the end game. Designed for, though, with the wingman in his hands. One of my favorite players to watch with the wingman. He's always dinking away at those shields, and if he hits a headshot, it's usually the trigger to go. Snipe down and Frex. Still trying to stay alive, still trying to avoid everything, but there's a couple of teams above them. The enemy goes down. And that's not going to be good for Dojo now, because they try and get the smoke down, try and get a little bit of cover. Everything from Timmy being thrown here to get some sort of support to try and get back as a full three. A lot of utility being used by teams, understandably so, as we enter our top five. Timmy's going to have time to reset here, does have the smokes. And he's going to have to shoot across here to help out his teammate survive. Timmy now left on his own. Hugging the care package and hoping it's going to be enough to give him the care to get towards his end game. Slides away for a second. Can he survive? The answer is no. Dojo eliminated. We're down to four and FaZe have somehow taken the high ground. Yeah, this is great for FaZe because they can now get another team. Go next, eliminated. Three squads remaining and FaZe still have this height. It's Optic Gaming, FaZe and Sentinels left here. Optic in prime position. Sentinels down on that low ground, a shift of positions. We saw Sentinels up on height just a few moments ago, but they tried to clear out that side of the zone, and by doing so, gave this height up to FaZe. The ultimate's gonna come in from Bangalore, though, designed to try and force FaZe off of that high ground. FaZe just eat it up. They don't want to give up this high ground as Optic just wait on that low ground for any kind of fight to break out. FaZe should be able to do Optic a favor, and Sentinels maybe actually looking to push the agenda. Perhaps they've sensed that it's just a two above them. And they'd rather just wipe them out now and give themselves a fair 3v3 and they will push in, snipe down falls, but so does RKN. And now this should open things up for Optic, but they've got to climb, they've got to go up, but they've got a Horizon! Horizon with the Q. And now they just send it in, it should be a simple finish to this game as FaZe are eliminated. Sentinels versus Optic. Big spray coming in from Skittlecakes, but he will go down as well. The finishing pieces should be picked up though by Nox and Optic Gaming. Win your first game here on World's Edge. And just at the right time, with the elimination bracket and the winner's bracket to be decided. And Optic Gaming again, just further solidifying themselves in that winner's bracket with a victory and showing that they are real, genuine competitors at the ALGS Championships because that is multiple victories we've now seen them have across the first two days. Get the Green Wall fans in the building because Optic certainly are a team we have to keep an eye on. Yeah, I think one of the form teams coming into the event. Now, I've got to say the performance yesterday was somewhat surprising to me. We know the group sometimes can throw spanners in the works when you've got people contesting on different drops, you've got people rotating in a way that maybe they didn't do in scrims, whatever it might be. But for Optic, I think they are certainly a shark in the water and an underdog not just to get to those grand finals, but maybe to get their hands on that trophy as well. And I think that's what we've learned in these first two days at the ALGS Championship, is that even though a lot of the conversation is around Dark Zero and TSM, quite rightly so, for their victories and the only land victories, but there seems to be a good 10 squads that have been finding wins that we just start to think, well, you know what, if they have a day, on that Sunday, there's no reason why they couldn't be lifting that trophy and suddenly taking all the plaudits at the championships, the biggest tournament of the ball with the biggest prize pool. Well, let's take a look at the final circle from our fourth game of the series, our first one on World's Edge. And again, it's just a sign of discipline. And that's what wins you these games in these positions from Optic Gaming. They know that the rest of the lobby is in front of them. They're scoping out, they're scouting out. They knew the position of both Sentinels and FaZe. And you can see here, as soon as damage is going to be start, it's starting to be done, it's just, it's just the trigger to move in. It's one of those where you're a little bit worried when it's on the high ground, but because Skillcake's playing Horizon, then there's suddenly all of that worry and any doubt is just left behind. And we see this quite a lot in Apex Legends when you have three teams left and you wait for two to fight it out, you wait for some damage to be done, and as soon as RKN goes down, 
that's when it's Optic's time to just get involved in this fight. And of course, it's anonymous mode, so they wouldn't have known who was knocked and which player was knocked, but they certainly saw two knocks happening. And that's when they said, look, let's get involved. A good effort from the rest of the Sentinels players to try and make it competitive. They got down Skittle Cake, but it's not going to be enough. The positioning was perfect from Optic Gaming, who find themselves with yet another victory here in the championships. So say a pretty satisfying final kill as well from Knox, just whipping the 30-30 out. And a little bit of hit fight connects immediately. One out of one bullet, all that was required to turn that game into a win. But there's always the step before, isn't it? We always see these final circles and we're like, great Optic gaming controlled it and they always looked like they were going to win but it's before that where they cleared out the southern side of that zone down won that fight managed to survive through all the carnage that went down that put them in that position to to even third party and have the opportunity to go forward and win that game but also optic chose that position very early on as well they were right there at the center area where i said there's gonna be a lot of open space there's not many buildings to really kind of hunker that hunker down in oh wow i went very west country then hunker you down you do when you get tired maybe it's just yeah when i get yeah. a little bit more well, maybe tired the longer you spend in england the west country starts to come through but yeah optic had a very early position there and they made it count it's one of those things where we see teams try and reside in those positions time and time again, and they'll get bullied off that spot, but Optic held strong. Yeah, they certainly did indeed. And the leaderboards obviously will shift and will change. And I think it's good news almost for the bubble teams when you see one team that's in qualification spot take the game away with some decent KP because it doesn't really affect the standings around that qualification spot in 20th place. So even though it's like, unfortunately, don't win the game, if you're not the team, if, you, if it's not one of your, say, competitors in that bubble winning the game, then you can refocus and you can think about games five and six being the ones that could be yours. Yeah, just to give you an idea of the teams that have most likely qualified, just as we look at the match score results and we get confirmation, Optic Gaming, 20 points for them, but Central's picking up a big 19. 12 points for FaZe, it's a start. It's still doable going into match five and six, but they need to catch teams like Jay Lings, for example, who were holding down one of those winner's bracket spots a little bit earlier when we saw how they were performing. And also Pioneers, they were in 20th at 91 points, but I don't think that's gonna be enough. I'm imagining that Jay Lings on 98, 100 Thieves on 97, those are the two teams that are next in jeopardy. Those are the next ones that are gonna be targeted here by all of these teams in the lobby that wanna try and find their way to the winner's bracket. One thing that worries me though is Alliance, right? I mean, losing the contest, now they've got two games where they're essentially relying on having absolute bangers to get themselves into that winner side of the bracket. It's, it's a tough situation to be in, right? Knowing that you're going to be contested for the next two games as well, because why wouldn't Dojo? They just won the first one. They put good points on the board in a zone that wasn't favorable to them. You know Dojo are coming once again. I think what's more concerning for Alliance is they don't even need bangers, but they just need, they need some points. And if they are denied game after game here through five and six, they will fall short. They are at moment one point behind the cutoff. And if they don't find a couple of points, they're not going to even have that chance. So they need to win one of the contests here against Dojo. Otherwise, we might be seeing Alliance in that elimination bracket. Yeah, an impressive 10 kill game coming in from Sentinels to take that second place as well. Those points certainly do stack up. I'm pretty sure coming into this, the Sentinels were overall in 20th position. So it's before the group started. So good performance from Sentinels in this game. Number five might just take the pressure off their shoulders and relax them a little bit more than they were coming into this set but optic i just want to talk about them a little bit more not enough people are talking about optic gaming and what they are set out to achieve in this tournament yeah i think optic gaming are just an incredible fighting team so when they get a circle like that that they can play so early and other teams have to come to them they're always going to be in a good spot i will give skittle cake credit every single time i see him on my screen I you're think his biggest fan I, think. I think i might be with just how impressive his career has been and, and the rise to the top being on this Optic roster. I mean, being on an Optic roster is pressure in itself, a massive organization. But these guys living up to the hype here in this series. They're on 41 points at the moment, and that goes towards a total they already had of 89. So as I mentioned earlier, winner's bracket already guaranteed. Two more games to go, and that's how things look. And ANZ, hey. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. And now uh, I'm kind of looking at the other end of the table. I'm looking at Fnatic. What's, what's going wrong for Fnatic at the moment? Because it just seems that they're really 
struggling not just for placement, to pick up points full stop. Yeah, I think they are dying in very early situations. They're being out-rotated quite often by a couple of other rosters at the moment. And I don't know whether that's just because the pace of the meta has changed a little bit since Split 2 playoffs and Fnatic haven't quite caught up with that. They need to maybe just be moving that extra bit faster and speedier and traversing that map in a way that they can be the teams that hold out and just hold those choke points. Maybe map five is going to be that game for Fnatic. We'll have to wait and see, though. When we get back from this break, we'll have the game for you. Don't go anywhere. Herman Miller, the official chair of the Apex Legends Global Series. Well, the night is almost done here in Birmingham, but not quite yet. Two more games of Apex Legends to get through here in Birmingham at the ALGS Championships, and we are going to find out who heads to that winner's side of the bracket. And we mentioned that we're in Birmingham as well. We're in Birmingham for still. The, the fourth time as we are here. I mean, it's been a great day here in Birmingham for the ALGS Championships, and it's just going to get better. I mean, this crowd is going to get bigger. The games are going to get even better as well, but we have to send some teams into the elimination bracket. And we have the privilege, or I guess it's not really a privilege if you might look at it that way, to send those teams in these final two matches. Match five and six is coming our way, and I tell you what, it's crunch time. A lot of these teams now are starting to struggle to find those points. I was going to say, you can send teams to the elimination bracket. I'll send them to the winner's side. I'll be the good guy, you can be the bad guy for once. Usually it's flipped around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and that, that doesn't seem fair. But I can give you the lay of the land and tell you on, how things are sitting at the moment. In 20th position is Pulverex on 92 points. They have just surpassed Pioneers, which Ooh. is bad news for Pioneers fans. That means they're done. That means they'll be in the elimination bracket. Ahead of them, Tom Young Kung on 94, 100 Thieves on, on 97. So remember, they're not playing right now. Jay Lings on 98. So both Jay Lings and 100 Thieves are the two teams who are not playing, that are watching on and hoping teams will not surpass them. I'll keep you updated as best as I can when teams reach them, but we're back at Thermal Station. It's Alliance versus Dojo round two. You can take a little bit of damage off the rip as well, and he's gonna fall once more. So Timmy for the dojo with the opening pick. Now they just need to play tight, need to play together and make sure that they don't get kind of the free pick given away to them. Alliance kind of split a little bit differently on their drop this time around, trying to avoid essentially getting that first blood against them. But again, it's the dojo, not just the first pick, but complete control of the high ground as well here, Dan. This is the worst possible situation for Alliance. Dojo in the moment, as I've mentioned earlier, 16th position, 102 points. They should be good. So this fight is more important for Alliance, who are outside of those top 20 spots. They need points. They need to be surviving this contest. Well, it's not looking good, because Effect is down as well, and Hakis. Well, they know where he is. The shield crack comes in, and Timmy says, boys, he's over there. Go chase him down. It's just a matter of finding that last remaining player. 
as Alliance likelihood is they will fall here again at Thermal Station. Now, I will say, I don't think it would be the end of the world if Alliance were to be in that elimination bracket tomorrow. You have to imagine that they've been practicing with Mandy coming into this tournament. Now, Effect is back, probably hasn't been playing much this last week. I, I actually wouldn't mind an elimination bracket run if I, I was a well, I was actually talking about this in the green room with Genome, I think it was, and I think it might, like you say, might be a really good thing for them just to get more practice under their belt, start to feel comfortable again, and also go through a few games where the Dojo aren't in their group and they're going to be contested on World's Edge. But I think it's, a, it's an interesting dichotomy, isn't it? Because you don't ever want to be in the elimination bracket. You want to get to the grand finals as quickly as you can and as successfully as you can, but with what they've had to go through, it's understandable if Alliance gets stronger and stronger through that elimination bracket. And also with extra points, you can't get any extra points going into the grand final from the elimination side. You can only get it from the winner's side. So of course you would prefer to do that way. However, it would go against the narrative of Alliance usually being very good in groups and then slightly underperforming when we get towards the championship Sunday. Maybe if they underperform in groups, hey. who knows what look might at, happen look at on you, Sunday. Look at you Alliance. sowing the seeds for Alliance here with a little bit of storyline. I love that from you, North Deption making their rotate and you can see why they are going where they're going at the moment. It's going to be that high ground around survey camp. You would expect that to be where we are going to be finishing this game. MDY White already there. North Epsom, we just saw them. Complexity in a great spot as well. This is very, very much home for them dropping with their split between Epic and Survey Camp. Fnatic wrapping all the way to the north side of zone once again, and FaZe are going to have to be aware of that. So FaZe at the moment who are trailing those top 20 spots by around 15 points going to have to hope that this could be the game where they can propel themselves up the leaderboards. As for Fnatic, it's a lot to do. It really has to be back-to-back -back wins here for Fnatic if they are going to find themselves in the winner's bracket, but still doable, still possible. It has to start here, and it has to be that comeback story that looks unlikely at the moment, but with a, you know, with a zone like this, they hold the northern tip. Sometimes when you do get these train tracks in this final circle, it can bode well. Hey, like a lot of people in the crowd, I believe in Yuka supremacy. We'll have to see if that comes through, and he can really take over a few games alongside Umichan and Meltzer. But like you say, it's, it's a tough road for Fnatic, but it's still a road they can walk. Elsewhere, you can see Oxygen Esports. They're doing a little bit of crafting at the moment. They're going to be approaching Skyhook in a few moments' time, as Tom Kung are just ahead of them on their rotate. Elsewhere, though, we've got a fight breaking out, and it's Sentinels who are involved. Sentinels who more than likely have secured their winner's bracket places, but would like to unsecure it for some other teams, and it is going to be the opener as well, coming from Koipo. And they'll get that finish, so Sentinels making sure that they assert their dominance anywhere they may be on the map, but certainly in the surrounding areas of Epicenter, they're going to get a lot of neighbors. So just creating as much space as possible is good, as Aurora, on their rotation, they're going to be meeting potentially another squad here. Fnatic are going to be close by as well. They heard a little bit of gunfire going down, and they were like, hey, maybe we can get a few KP out of this. Elsewhere, you can see the Dark Zero. They're finding their way towards Survey Camp as well, but having arrived, they found that there's quite a few people already at the inn, so they're going to have to just retreat for a few seconds and think about what their next move's going to be. Dark Zero looking to just go into the winner's bracket as the number one team as well. They do lead it in the overalls with 166. Black Hand only behind them by seven, but of course, Black Hand have already played their game. So Dark Zero looking in really good stead, being the favorites uh -oh. going into that winner's bracket. Not looking too good here, though. They're having to find somewhere to heal up. Sentinels decide to rotate away because they know they've got an engagement to win here against Pulverex. They've got to finish this off. They did get that first knock a few moments ago. They know it's a 3v2 situation, but can they convert? That's the question the Ornator is hitting, but not quite hard enough here from Zanile. He's able to just get away temporarily, get those shields back. They're not getting too desperate for kills, but they probably can if they want to get desperate. They can play in whichever way they want, but you also want to practice and making sure you are in the best position as possible. You are locked and loaded, ready to go in the winner's bracket tomorrow. The Pulverex, very different story for them. We mentioned 20th position. They are the bubble team. They are the target for a lot of these squads. And they could do with a few extra points, but what a performance has been. 36 points in this set. Well, one thing I will say about Pulverex, as we know, and they're about to ruin what I'm about to say, because Saku just took a lot of damage. If any team knows how to play as a duo, <laughs> it's going to be Pulverex, right? I mean, they played an entire tournament as a duo, and they oh. really, really gained a lot of traction in the Apex Legends community for what they were able to achieve. But it's F-Chan, left on his own now. Can he do something magical for Pulverex in this game? Well, I mean, I remember a lot of rap F-Chan moments back then, and I'm sure he can do it again as Dark Zero 
It's yet another engagement for them. Complexity on the other side there. Another team are struggling a little bit with points. Maybe this could be the kickstarter, though, as it's oh. good damage with the R99. That's going to be Zainu and Jim Burton down zero on his own. Dark Zero eliminated by Complexity. So no points really for Dark Zero in this game. One of the first two teams who are out, but Complexity, I mentioned how this is their home ground. This is a zone they will know so, so well. Well, coming out of that, taking down Dark Zero in a straight 3v3 has got to feel good. And it would have to be, again, similarly to Fnatic, back-to-back -back wins really for Complexity. Big ones as well if they want to find themselves in the winner's bracket, but it's going to be a confidence builder taking down Dark Zero, that's for sure, as Oxygen Esports making their rotation. Now, there was a... A lot of expectations on Oxygen Esports coming into this tournament, and rightly so. An amazing split two performance, but they haven't really matched that as of yet. As for Tom Young Kung, maybe overachieving in terms of what we expected from them, but they deserve every plaudit that they get because they've been playing insane every single day so far. Should be safer now as well. Nobody really in the vicinity. You can see that they're kind of a little bit aware that there might be a few teams rotating in, maybe from. Monument where Sentinels actually are at the moment and complexity you've got to be careful here as well They try to approach survey camp once again Some unfriendly neighbors though putting down a little bit of damage for them Monsoon, ooh, ooh, he got a little bit of help on his way down from a grenade It should be safe for now nobody really close enough to challenge complexity here as they just reset Refocus and think about what the next play is gonna be the team. I am wondering how they're going to make their rotation is phase up towards Climatizer. They still haven't really moved. I imagine they will try and take this northern side off of Fnatic, who have been holding it for quite some time. But Complexity, they should be safe for now at Epicenter. But they will be joined because the circle is still moving north. So all these southern teams are going to have to join them. Now, this is phase what I was talking about. They're still just chilling, happy at Climatizer, but they are going to be forced in ever so slightly on this northeastern side. And if Fnatic do catch a whiff of it, there could be a little fight happening on the northern tip, but I think Fnatic, they focused their attention so much towards the train tracks where Aurora are that FaZe might be able to scamper in unnoticed. One thing that's impressive here about Fnatic is the position they managed to get, and also the info they're going to get that there's a couple of white shielded players on FaZe coming towards them. That's a double armor check now. One white, one blue. Fnatic are going to be looking at this and thinking, I don't think you really want to take this fight phase because we have a strong position up on this rock. Yeah, just as I said, they might scamper in unnoticed. Suddenly, Yuka whips around and spots them. And there's not going to be an easy move for phase now. They're going to have to try and think of a plan B here. As Optic hold a uh, solid position. And it looks like maybe they're thinking about getting aggressive here. It's TSM on the other side. Drop having to be friendly with this crate for a few seconds while he pops the battery. And instead of taking on the team on the height in the open, he decides that just rotating on this low ground with the natural cover and terrain is a much smarter play to make. The Sky's making their rotate into Climatizer as well, just off screen at the moment. But TSM and Optic, they're creeping up on each other here. Oh, and now they definitely know they're close. Yeah, and now Dropped is going to be laying down the law. Rolling Thunder comes through as well as Dark Veil. So all of the tools being used for Optic to try and either engage or just try and surpass DSM, but they really want to push up on them here. Yeah, you can see they're just trying to force them back at the moment, and that Rolling Thunder is certainly going to help them do that just so they can creep into zone, and then maybe they can take a little bit more time to take this 3v3 engagement. Drop does have the Digi Threat, and he's also sending a frag grenade up into the skies. Now, the question is, is it going to be a golden one? It doesn't look like it is for now. Now, TSM are playing this one very careful, not taking any risks at the moment, more than welcoming Optic Gaming to just shadow them for a little bit. But we do see Luda getting a knock on to rep, so they were trying to back off, but now we see other teams getting involved. We certainly do, and it's going to be complexity. And Monsoon poking in, but Monsoon being taught a lesson. You can't poke against Verholst. He gets ripped down, and now Reps tries to move in. TSM, though, all of a sudden, this is getting a little bit risky. It's all down to Imperial How 142, but Optic are just looking at this and waiting to pick up the pieces. TSM down as Optic move in to surely finish off Complexity. Yeah, that's a shame for Complexity. They probably thought their luck was in where they're able to get that initial knock, not knowing and maybe fearing that someone else could arrive, but it was Optic Gaming who arrived last. Complexity eliminated, and that might be their chances of the winner's bracket dying with them, whereas Optic Gaming continue to show why they're a real threat. I mean, Optic are looking like such a strong fighting team. I mean, we know that, right? Yeah. But in previous tournaments, sometimes we've just seen, for whatever reason, the chemistry has felt a little bit off in those 3v3s. Well, Optic looked like a well-oiled fighting machine. 
in this lobby especially and certainly through today's action. But we also have to remember in terms of like how many lands some of these squads have played together, it's often only one or two oh. and you learn a lot from LAN as Oxygen are going to get pushed on here. Main has to back off. Does a pretty good job of it though, let's be real. He's got that digi threat as well, so he'll be able to fire back through the smoke, but Vayne escapes. Much easier to do that on mouse and key than it is on controller, turn that fast and get out of there. You just up your sense, Mark. That's all you need to do. But I know you like to play it on low, and that's fine. It's acceptable. So do the pros. Optic Gaming. They just seem to be confidently pushing into anyone at the moment, and I'm not really surprised with how they've been playing so far today, but they still have to move from this southern side of Epicenter. Oxygen are going to basically mirror them on the other side. Sentinels are going to be the team in Epicenter, maybe holding out a few of these squads here. Well, the one team who's banged center zone at the moment is Go Next. We haven't even mentioned them yet, and you can forgive us for that. Coming into this lobby, 29th place, I believe. The Sky's taking a little bit of damage themselves, but in the kill feed again, you can see Koifal picking up one for Sentinels. FaZe, though, who have been here for so, so long inside Acclimatizer, trying to fight their way out of it at the moment, because they can see where that zone's going, they know they will not be safe, and the problem for FaZe is they've never been in a position to do damage in this game, being hunkered down in Climatizer, so they're still left with two whites and a blue. They're gonna hope and pray that a third party opportunity presents itself that they can swoop in and clean up easily so they can get some shield swaps and get upgraded without having to do the work themselves. Yeah, they've just been slowly walking up a little bit further in Climatizer because they were held out by Fnatic. They can't afford to cross that open ground because they know Fnatic are there. Now, this is the circle you were talking about. This is where Go, ne Go Next reside. And you're right, we hadn't spoken too much about Go Next. They are 23 points off the cutoff at the moment. That's still achievable, though. If they have a circle like this and everyone starts to come towards them, it is definitely winnable, but you still have to do it in match six as well. It's now down at Epicenter. This is where Optic is starting to get involved. There's Realize are taken down. Sentinels are above them, but Optic looks like they're wise to it. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting fight here because you also have Oxygen Esports working their way, way down from the high ground. So everybody who's in this little area under the central structure of Epicenter is going to be pretty mindful that they can't engage without having a guaranteed knock or certainly guaranteed damage where they can escape from. Sentinels have got a plan how to leave though, and if they drop from the high ground, it's only Koifal with the Horizon passive who's gonna be able to land and shoot almost immediately. So jumping the grab lift down may be a really smart play, and that's exactly what they do. Sentinels, wow, good damage from the R99, but not enough because Arkane's taken so much, and now Koifal, he's left on his own, and he's hoping probably the Oxygen wanna get involved in this one on the other side and maybe hold Optic back. Skillcake takes down Arkane again. And Optic's still very much ahead in this fight, but Oxygen are still not getting involved in the fight because this is far riskier for Oxygen. Optic and Sentinels can play a little bit more free, as now Sentinels will again be pushed up on. So now it goes down once again. Sentinels could not quite finish yet, but they might be in a few seconds' time. Dropped with a beautiful spray, and now snaps onto Koifu as the last player alive for Sentinels. They're out of the lobby. We're down to 13, and Optic, with this smoke, might be able to reset pretty comfortably. We've got seven teams outside of the circle, and this circle is closing. All these guys on the western side are going to have to try and force themselves in. Dojo, Oxygen, Aurora, Gambari Otazan, Northeption, MUI White, E36. They all have to move at the same time. It is not going to be pretty in this kill feed. Cambreo Tsan just thinking KP, KP, KP. Forget about getting to zone. We know we're not going to be able to really survive. We've got to clear this side. But they can't quite connect with these shots. The Hemlock's going to come out instead. It's a little bit windy, but snaps on when needed to. Young he moving forward now. Nothemption eliminated. And even though the zone is a problem, they might be able to just about get inside, but no. Gambare Artisan will be eliminated. The zone doing so much damage. Optic Gaming also got forced into Tom Young Kung. They're currently fighting right now, but it is still going towards go next. As Fnatic on this northwestern side have been holding this rock for so long as Optic Gaming do get eliminated, but still fine. They're still consistent. It's Oxygen, really. No! You have to do something as Vayne connects with the Kraber. Someone go and get that bullet back out of his belly button because that needs to be reloaded and used again. That was a beautiful shot coming in for Vayne. Can't quite connect with the 30-30 though. Smokes are gonna go down, and with a reload of the Kraber, Vayne is feeling hungry for more. And as like with the teams left, who importantly needs points? Oxygen, FaZe, Fnatic, they all need big games here in match number five to give them a chance to get into that one. Well, how about FaZe, right? I mean, they kind of crept their way into this end game. They have barely had an engagement, barely had a position to fight against. And they are still involved. And speaking of Fnatic, they are also still here. They are winning the fights. Yuka Supremacy might still be something we can talk about because we mentioned that Fnatic need to win back-to-back -back games to have a chance of going to the winner's side. 
It's looking like they may be in a position to do that now. Oxygen are also pushing up on Tom Young Kung, and it looks like it's going all right, but Vayne's just been taken down. And as I say it, though, Tom Young Kung eliminated. So Oxygen have won that fight on the southern side. Oxygen still alive. Fnatic and FaZe also on the northern tip are alive. By the way, Disguised still alive on the eastern side as well. They've been very quiet this game. FaZe finally up to Blues. That's good news for them. Maybe a fighting chance in a 3v3. But this passive playstyle has worked well for them up until this point. As we jump over for Fnatic. They need this more than anyone. Let's jump into the comms with Fnatic. これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ
No pressure really in oxygen in those final moments. It's all about discipline. We've talked about it so many times today in these situations, Dan, but oxygen showing as well that they've got that in the tank. So much information they gathered from Bloodhound as well. Reed's able to just get that scan as oxygen put 23 more points on the board, which could do them absolute wonders. I believe that will put them up to around 88, which would have them about kind of six points off. Top 20. Very doable. Very, very doable. But again, there are other teams they are competing with. It's not as simple as surpassing a point system here. You have to make sure you also beat the teams that are trying to race you there. Match five is done and dusted. ANC is not disappointed. And